seals are good, oxygen's good. Just do what you did last time, and you're fine. Follow my one simple rule. Hella, what's my one simple Listen rule? Listen to Lynn. Boss lady knows best. Exactly. Listen to me. Mining's just like any other job. Go steady, go safe, go home with a pocket full of credits at the end of the day. Yeah, totally. It's just like, um, now I work in the Stardock. Except, uh, with more cave-ins, lasers, and accidental dismemberment. Very helpful. Thank you. Ah, eh, you're gonna be fine. Your first outing was solid. And, you know, let's be honest, it ain't exactly astrophysics. That's why I keep him around. Good pep talks. Yeah. And the fact that I can pinpoint a helium deposit from 300 meters. <laughs> Not untrue. A shame we won't find any down here. But the metal deposits alone should pay for our own helium. Hell, after this, we'll have enough jump fuel to bounce from one end of the settled systems to the next. Hey, more minerals, more money. And so the cycle repeats itself. Just no more unauthorized jumps in the house for room space, okay? He's just a big baby. There are worse lives. You know, most Dusties don't even make it this far. I have a good feeling about you. Right, group hug now or at the end of the shift? <sighs> one of these days, Hella, I am going to leave you behind. Promises, promises. Okay, let's see what we've got. How are we on time? A uh, little longer. Grab some samples? Always. Uh, but not you. Check on Isabel. Make sure she eases up on the breach. I don't feel like getting buried alive today. Roger that. Remember, Dusty. Keep your breathing steady. And never take that helmet off down here. Oxygen processors don't extend this far. Yeah. Because God forbid we drill on a rock with a breathable atmosphere. Know what I love about working in Freestar Collective Space? Fewer regs. A job like this in the United Colonies? Huh. Green the red tail. Ugh. Look at this one over here. Calvert! No! Ah, no, no, no! It's a laser, not a sledgehammer! Ease up! Benning, if you got paid per break, you'd be a millionaire! Let's go! Yeah, yeah. What do we say, Dusties? You make your cut, you get your cut. No exception. Come on, pick it up! Troy, what's the yield? Minimal at this point. Occasional glimmer, but it's weak. What do you think? Stay the course? No, ma'am. Juice ain't worth the squeeze. Well, okay then. Let's call this one tapped. Why don't you move over to that big bay we looked at? Yes, ma'am. Grab a cutter and mine what you can. Metal deposits are in that cavern. I'll shout out when I need you. Uh, you think we'll be done here soon? You know, I hear this is the last dig. I'm busy. Is there anyone else to bother? I don't. You don't? 
What we're after? It'll read as an anomaly. That's what I was told, anyway. Okay, now you're starting to freak me out. Relax. It's just another job. Come on. We're getting close, I think. Yeah, everything is just... <laughs> Lynn, seriously, uh, there's something really effed up about this. Where is it, Hella? Through there, I think. Okay, you. You're up. Something goes wrong in there, we'll come get you. Uh, <laughs> why would anything go wrong? Would you shut up? Both of you do your jobs. Client is on his way. Um, still getting weird gravity readings. I, I guess that's a good thing. Just keep going! Take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. You know who you are? New recruit for Argos Extractors? Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar?
You were a good find when we hired you. Former military always knows how to get the job done. Well, you got the sample. Client's on his way, then we all get paid. You remember anything that happened? Easy there, High Flyer. Probably just the endorphins kicking in when you passed out. Don't go having an experience on me. You'll walk it off. More importantly, we got what we were looking for. All this trouble for that stupid thing? <sighs> sure don't look like much. Never mind what it looks like. It's worth more than this mine has pulled in all month. We'll be... Speak of the devil. Constellation contact is on approach. Wait, the Explorers group? <laughs> Thought they were kind of a joke. Not a joke. You're just too young to know better. Hey, I'm just saying they got a reputation. Hell, I bet half the crew here doesn't even believe they really exist. Half the crew doesn't believe Earth exists, but it's still there. Same with Constellation. Yeah, but come on. Exploring space? Who does that anymore? Ain't the space we've already got complicated enough? Not to them, apparently. All right, Dusty. Airlock. Put your helmet on. sophisticated now, huh? So, you found something? Right here. The new guy found it. That right. And everything went cool? Just like grabbing those minerals on Bendy? Kazal. And no Barrett. Not cool. He passed out after the extraction. Woke up saying all kinds of nonsense. Is that right, cowboy? Went on a trip, huh? Well, you could say that the infinite possibilities of the universe are full of everything but coincidences. Ha! <laughs> that fun, huh? Not the most gentle push into the great mysteries of space, but hey, been there. Look, just hand over the credits, and I'll be happy to never see this thing, or you, ever again. That's why I like you, Lynn. All business. Barrett. The scanners on the frontier are reporting a ship coming in hot from orbit. I really thought I'd lost them. Barrett?
course Barrett was being followed. Every time. Well, that was some fine work on the pressure. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? You're coming with me to Constellation. You're part of this now. You ever stare up at the stars at night wondering what's out there? Well, that's us. That's where we go. Marvelous. Oh, no, Barrett. No. You think you're just going to take off after the mess you caused? All right. I guess I did just put you all on the Crimson Fleet hit list. How about I stay and I send your Dusty here in my place? I, 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 I know, I know, but he's not some miner anymore, Lynn. Soon as he touched that rock, something changed. Don't tell me you can't feel it. Fine. It's a deal. Get out of here, Dusty. You're on to bigger things. Just go. Before I say something I regret. Well, none of that's settled. Vasco! Get him to the lodge! No deviations unless absolutely necessary, okay? Protocol Indigo. Indigo? Again? Very well. Oh, and hey, take this. You'll find it very useful out there. And it even tells the time. Hey, look at that. The watch fits you perfectly. Now, questions? Come on. You're really not at all curious about that light music show you experienced? Why it only affected you? Because if you didn't notice, we've all been handling it since with no problem. The way I see it, Constellation needs that artifact, but they also need you. This mystery is only getting bigger each step we take. And you're part of it now. Technically, it's not even mine. Consider it alone. Vasco will keep you on course. Besides, I'm making an exception, since you can tell Constellation about that vision you had. See, that's the problem with the settled systems. Too easy to take everything for granted. While everyone else is busy playing politics, we're the ones braving the unknown, charting the vastness of space. Without us, the galaxy is just a big room with the lights turned out. That, my friend, is the million credit question. And Constellation can find the answer, with your help. They're just following the loop, like pirates do. And I have something of a reputation as a loot collector. And Vasco, don't let him break my ship. We're still in one piece. Oh, God.
proven and adequate pilot. Are you familiar with ship combat tactics? Because that's a proven fleet ship bringing its weapons to bear. We will need to disable their shields. Laser-based weaponry is particularly effective. that I am to return to the Lodge with no deviations. We are here to stop the Crimson Fleet from pursuit. Nothing more. I have often asked Barrett that same question at various times and about various individuals that wanted to cause us harm. The most likely answer is that Barrett personally insulted him, typically by continuing to live usually after escaping from certain death, and often with an object multiple people wanted. Barrett would say that billions of years ago, we were all one with the cosmos, so technically you have known each other forever, but the more practical answer is likely that he needs you. 
the number of known people who have been affected by the artifacts is now two. Without your investment in Constellation's mission, he may never know more about the experience you both share. So he is showing you trust in order to gain your support. Constellation is an explorer's society founded over 50 years ago with the mission of seeking out the unknown. Members often engage in expeditions in small groups, typically one or two people, or like Barrett and myself, one person and one robot. The membership is intentionally limited and small. Should you join Constellation yourself, you will be the 10th active member.
I am not picking up the enemy on my scanner.
relay has been trashed. The whole room is trashed. We can't call for help. I can hear the terror morph roaring somewhere. And more people screaming. God. Frontier has a new captain? You working with Barrett, or did you pry the ship keys out of his cold, dead hands? We don't have a problem with Barrett. We want that ship, the Frontier. If you're the captain of it now, that means we're after you. Oh. You see, maybe your colleague Barrett didn't tell you, but there's a bit of a legend surrounding that ship. That constellation keeps treasure hidden in the cargo bays, the loot from a hundred planets, and it's going to be ours. That statement is partially correct. The Frontier has been to many planets and moons, but the only things held in the cargo bays are spare parts, dust, desiccated food particles, and a variety of species of Ant. I don't care what kind of lies Barrett programmed that robot to say. We're taking that ship. If he were here, Barrett would say he was proud of you for asking that. The answer is no. You're not talking us out of this score. They aren't? You sure? Can't believe this. There isn't any treasure? We've been trailing that old Constellation ship for nothing? Get out of here. Take your robot and your ship and get out of here. I see you all again, you're dead. We should now be free to travel to Constellation's headquarters without Crimson Fleet interference. Stop by to trade authority kiosk if you need to offload some cargo. Everything looks good here. I'll be at my booth if you need me.
sack on the United Colonies. You will be scanned as you enter the city. This is New Atlantis Transit, or The Net. It provides free transportation throughout the city. We can take it directly to the Mast District. I'm so excited to see Tony out here. city but constellation is an entirely neutral entity and always has been here we are the lodge the front door should unlock if you hold up the watch that barrett gave you i have messaged the other members of constellation they will be waiting for us inside of something bigger now and he hopes you'll make this place we appear to have a visitor welcome to constellation we have a lot to talk about would you care to tell us what happened to our friend why you're here and he isn't hmm very well this is a private organization dedicated to exploration Space primarily, but also anomalies throughout the settled systems. It's inherently dangerous work, so if one of our own doesn't show up as planned, then we tend to have questions. Speaking of which, where is Barrett? Sarah Morgan, Chair of Constellation. That means anything you discussed with Barrett is my business. Now, if you would please answer my question. I see. Bosco, verify. All statements made have been factual. Ugh. This is just typical. Barrett hands over our ship and our robot to some random employee of that discount mining outfit he uses. Walter. And if we hadn't insisted on installing those emergency protocols, I guarantee you this rock breaker here would be halfway to Neon. But that didn't happen. He's here, with the artifact. Thank you, Matteo. Now, let's focus on what's in front of us, shall we? What happened when it was extracted? Did anyone see anything? Hear anything? Interesting. Similar to Barrett's description of the experience, with less embellishment. Are you hearing this? Do you all believe me now? Whether it happened or not wasn't in doubt. But honestly, Country, if you expect us to believe in fairy... If this is the greatest mystery in the universe, why couldn't it be part of the ultimate mystery? But, gentlemen, can we please focus? Noel, I think it's time we tested your theory. Right. Let's see. We know the artifacts react to each other. The pieces we already have move when they're in close contact. Now, if we add this new one to the two we already have... The artifact. If you could place it on the table here. That's it. Just like the others. And to imagine, we thought there were only two of them at first. 
Oh my god, that's it. They're reacting. Look at how it's coming together. That energy that's arcing between them, no manufactured material in the solid systems can do that. None of them. This proves... Easy, girl. Breathe. You'll have a heart attack. She's not the only one. If they're coming together, that means there's a set. Built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. Still 2,000 credits for our little wager, Patrick? You're on, Walter. Well, if we had all the answers, it wouldn't be exciting, now would it? Not to take away from the moment, but what are we going to do about our new friend? <laughs> so, are you ready to get to work? See if exploration is the life you want to lead in this little universe of ours? Individually, they're just odd hunks of metal. Another oddity from the uncharted reaches of space. As to what they are, what they're building. Well, you'll be part of solving that puzzle now. You should take some time to get settled in. Introduce yourself to everyone. Some of our members aren't here, but you'll meet them soon. Come find me when you're ready. You and I are going to be doing some traveling together. Get your feet wet. And here, I think you've earned something for bringing the artifact to us. In addition to credits, why don't we set you up with a backpack with some boost capability? Hmm? You'll need it out in the field anyway. Just mind your head. Ready to get to work? Or was there something else? I don't know what you've heard, but I can imagine. First of all, I think you can dismiss any stories about us no longer existing. Hmm? I don't believe in smearing our name everywhere we can. Exploring the universe, charting the unknown, that's what counts. Besides, having a little mystery gives us room to maneuver. A fixed reputation could fence us in a lot of ways. We're going to be doing some old-fashioned detective work. The artifacts are relatively inert once they're out of bedrock. That means people can pass them around, not even knowing what they are. I've been letting my contacts know to be on the lookout for strange metal objects. Get back a lot of noise, usually. But a tip from the UC Vanguard sounds promising. A volunteer force that helps defend the edges of United Colonies' space. They're always looking for recruits. Lots of retired veterans and dangerous professionals mixed in with part-timers who barely have a laser cannon welded to a hull. My contact is in the recruiting office, so he hears a lot about what the volunteers are up to. Felt the same way when I started, too. There's an electricity in the air when you know you're about to uncover something. But it's not just that. I want to take this opportunity to see how you handle yourself, and for you to learn more about us. I'm going to be sticking with you for this. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact, or this lead runs dry. We'll need to head to Mast. Check in with the Vanguard recruiting office where my contact works. And listen. Whatever you were before, or whatever you do once you're out there, I don't care. So long as you don't bring UC security to our doorstep. Every member of Constellation is their own conscience. Understood? Good. Let's take a little stroll through New Atlantis, shall we? I am at your service, Captain.
Sarah, good to see you. Who's your friend? Hopefully Constellation's newest member. Thought I'd run through some legwork together. Ugh, oh, another space explorer. Hey, you ever think of joining up with the Vanguard? Help the United Colonies, earn some credits, even get your UC citizenship? All right, all right. Can't blame me for trying, right? I mean, I still haven't given up on getting Sarah to re-enlist. It's a game we play. He asks, I say no. Here's what I got for you two. Vanguard volunteer by the name of Moera. Helps patrol the old neighborhood. Sol, Mars, Neptune, you know. The Sol system? Which Admiral did he upset to get that posting? He's Martian, born and raised. Not like I can get anyone else to care. Word is he's got some fancy metal ornament he's been showing off to the old grounders. Matches that description Sarah gave me. Soul system is a lot of planets, but a vet like Moera will be checking in at Sidonia on the regular. You mean hitting the bars, don't you, John? Hey, nothing wrong with a little refresh between patrols. It's definitely a lifestyle, burning helium out there, seeing where the stars take you. I'm serious about that recruitment offer, by the way. You just come talk to me when you're ready. UC is a good friend to have. Faces passing through here. He ain't been around. One off on patrol. Hasn't been back in since. We're starting to think it might be time to pour one out to the blackest sea. Oh, believe me, I've heard it. After about round three or four it was all he would talk about. And he's got a voice that carries. Look. Nothing more I'd love than to help out a fellow Martian. Especially when it's missing. But... <clears throat> he has a tab, and you don't know if he's coming back. It's a lot of credits, okay? I let it slide for a long time because he's a regular, but... If I'm out all that money, I've got problems. What do you say? No, oh, I've done this routine. Let's skip to the part where you admit you're lying about what he owes. You calling me a liar? I'll throw both of you out of this bar right now. Oh, please. Two strangers arrive from Offworld asking for information only you have. You see an opportunity. Everyone always does. Lower the price. Don't think we can't find another way to get what we want. 
fan. Come on. Life on Sidonia ain't hard enough. You gonna guilt trip me? Yeah. I'll get your point. And maybe he's not gonna get found. I'm out the cash either way. Well, maybe we can still work something out. All right, I give up. Just trying to earn a living here. Last time he was here, Moera kept yelling about the Lady of Love. Just singing songs. All that kind of thing. Venus? That's only one planet. Hardly an entire patrol route. I got what I got, okay? <sighs> Fine. We'll make do. Ah, oh, 
it's all ancient history now, but the Earth lost its atmosphere. It started sputtering out into space. Humanity had about 50 years to evacuate the planet. That's kind of how the United Colonies government started, managing the exodus. Earth is more or less a dust ball now. You can occasionally find a few remnants of the world we left behind on the surface, but not much. Well, if you want to take a little detour, <laughs> I admit I wouldn't say no. Just remember, we need to find Vanguard Moara and that artifact when we're done. Lifting off right away, or do you need a little bit of time? Two steps in, we're already looking at a corpse. Okay, it's not Vanguard Moara. Looks like spacers were scattered around here and someone else came in and said hello. Oh, this won't be your last encounter with a spacer crew. They pillage abandoned facilities and shoot anyone who gets in their way. They're even less organized than the Crimson Fleet. Just countless desperate groups scavenging and killing to survive.
Starring Lord Moira? Sorry if I had to reclaim some UC property, but this whole Star Yard is overrun. I've patched up my ship, and I'm heading to Neptune. Going to put in another request to get the fleet out here to deal with these spacers. But until then, if any of you thugs are listening, I'm the damn ghost stealing your stuff in the night. Clear out while you have the chance. Much better odds destroying one of their ships than fighting them all at once here. I got to meet whoever you two are. Looks like we're all in one piece. Any day you walk away from, right? Ecliptic mercs. They'll work for anyone. And vanguards don't exactly make friends with local pirates, thieves, and scavengers. I think enough of them finally got fed up and they pooled their money to hire professionals. Now I know that kind of talk. You two marines? Constellation, actually. What? Seriously? Man, I've heard stories, but I had no idea you all were this dangerous. We've heard stories, too, about a strange object you found on patrol. So, you know what that thing is? 
I tried to hawk it in Sidonia, and the guy thought I was peddling phony titanium. Mm, it doesn't play nice with scanners. It'd be worthless to someone trying to flip rare minerals quickly. So you're saying I shouldn't be using it as a hood ornament? Hey, sorry. I just didn't know what it was. But I guess that's what you all are for, right? Here, happy to trade a novelty for a rescue any day. Let's grab the artifact. Good work. Let's get back to the lodge. While we're here, let's swing by Centaurian so I can pick up some ammo. I hope you are satisfied you have with it. the quarters available Go ahead. to you. Do the honors. It fits! Energy spiked a bit, but it's restabilized. Is there anything new showing up? No, it's the same as before. There's a massive output as the artifact is added, then it harmonizes. Like it's waiting for the others. Hmm, that's speculation, but I think you're right. We need more. Here. You've earned this. Welcome to Constellation. As a full member this time. Well, if you ever find a relic bottle from Earth, we'll all be happy to share it with you. By the way, how would you like to keep traveling together? I'm not sitting behind my desk for this. These artifacts are a new chapter for Constellation, and I'm going to be out there for it. And I want you out there as well. You got results. <laughs> I need someone like you watching my back. All right. We've got a few more leads we should talk about. First... There's an expedition that Sam Co has been putting together. It's in Free Star Collective Space, and he knows it inside and out. There's also the Eye, our star station in orbit. About time for you to meet Vladimir. He's been hard at work tracking down more anomalies. And last but not least, Noel. Have we heard anything from Barrett yet? A courier from Argos Extractors came by to let us know they're packing up the operation on Vectera. But that's it, no other word. Mm, that's not good. We should get over there and check on Barrett in person. It's all important, but if you want a direction, I'd grab Barrett first. He's not just an old friend. He's been all over the settled systems. Time to go? It appears things have gone downhill since the last time you were here. Argos has clearly washed its hands of this operation. Well, you're back. Oh no, don't start. I've had enough Barrett for one lifetime. I don't need the sequel showing up on my doorstep. More pirates showed up when you were gone. We weren't as lucky this time. Calvert. Troy, some of the new Dusties, 
they didn't make it. Who knows with pirates? Revenge? Peeking at the scraps? Maybe they're from a different crew and we just got hit twice by sheer bad luck. Well, how could you have? You weren't here. Anyway, I was pinned down behind some crates with Barrett. Bullets and laser fire everywhere. No smile on that damn carefree face of his. Like he knew this was it. I started stealing myself to go out fighting. Then that idiot puts his hand on my shoulder and says, Stay here, Lin. I got you. Not quite. Barrett is more dangerous than you might think. Next thing I know, two of the pirates are dead, and he's got the third one in a headlock. Drags him out into the open at gunpoint and demands to talk, or else I'm going to demonstrate Newton's third law on this guy's temporal lobe. And that's when they brought out Hella. I didn't overhear everything, but after the ten longest seconds of my life, Barrett put his hands up, and both of them ended up getting taken aboard the pirate ship. And that's the last I saw of either of them. They could have grav-jumped anywhere. I tried pinging a transmission to the ship in the comms building before they left, but the pirates must have fried it. You want to try it? Go ahead. But the odds of them being alive, even if you could find them... <sighs> I've lost a lot of people on this run, Dusty. I just want to pack up. Must be something they don't want us to find. Can't believe we got into this mess. Would you be quiet? Trying to make out the grab jump calculations before we're out of range. Out of range of what? Out of range of the sensor array on Vectera. Would you keep up? Once we're outside the star system, the bandwidth goes from instant speed to effectively never. What good is sending a transmission down there? You gotta tell Lynn how royally screwed we both are? She doesn't even have a ship. You underestimate how many of my admirers there are in the galaxy, Heller. One of them is bound to show up, looking to reunite with this handsome face. We're doomed. Capital D, doomed. Got it, okay. Whoever finds this, I'm attaching the interstellar coordinates to the metadata on the transmission. Rescue us. Repeat. 
rescue us. So, you actually get that computer working again? What? Let me see that. <laughs> Funny. Even knowing he's alive, I still never want to see him again. Hella, on the other hand... Okay. Let me send you the location data embedded in the transmission. Find them, okay? Well, don't start buying me stuffed animals for my birthday or anything. But yes, all right. I don't like seeing my people hurt. Even Barrett and Hella. Just get after them, okay? And hey, if you ever need a little extra help, I've been thinking about a career change lately. Maybe it's time to put Argos behind me. Seems like you've been keeping busy, Dusty. If, uh... You find yourself in need of a capable traveling companion, we should talk. My contract's up with Argos, and I could use a change of scenery. Works for me. I'm not fussy about assignments. I'll go where I need it. Right. I'll get to work. Let's catch up later. Might not be Jemison, but this ship is starting to feel like home.
Oh, hey, it's you. And here I thought you were some pirate coming back to kill me. Lucky me, right? Uh, you see, I laugh, but I'm on a lot of meds. Kinda just mellows everything. Man, I was so terrified when I got pulled on board that pirate ship. There it was all. Sorry, brother. I'll get us out of this. Trust me. Oh, I'm getting to that. He tells me we need to start pretending to fight each other. <laughs> Trick the pirates into thinking they need to come in before one of us gets killed. I just remember him shouting, this kid is a killer. How am I supposed to defend myself against these early whites? He's gonna bite my face off. I mean, I didn't think it would work, but they came in. All of a sudden, we were wrestling with two of them. Barrett reached for one of their guns. Bingo. Blasted the pilot right in the back. <laughs> Through to the flight console. And dropped orbit like a rock off a high rise. <sighs> I blacked out. And when I came to, there he was. Smiling like it was just another day on the job. You missed the fun part, Heller. <laughs> I mean... I go through all the trouble of saving your butt, and you weren't even awake to notice. Then, he did the little finger gun thing. Oh yeah, probably should have talked about that first. <laughs> did I mention I'm on a lot of painkillers? So, I was real excited when a ship showed up. <clears throat> then, less excited when I realized it was a Crimson Fleet ship. And then, really, really less excited when Barrett said, it's okay, I got this. He mumbled something to him, and then they were all gone. I was drifting in and out, but yeah, I think so. Got a signal from the ship before they grab jumped. Guessing it was Barrett. <laughs> Haven't really been in a good <clears throat> space to have a listen. <laughs> Here you go. Hey, uh, uh, I should come with you, right? I don't think anyone else is coming. Yeah, just, uh... Don't ask me to operate any heavy machinery for a while. Ugh, give me a minute. I think the worst of it is... Yeah, I'll be alright. I'll be alright. Ready to wisecrack with the best of them. Let me know when you want to head out. You've given the fleet a lot of trouble, Barrett. Hey, since when is surviving being attacked causing trouble? Isn't that just fighting back? Hey, pilot, could you move your arm a little bit to the left? I can't make out the console. Don't move! He's trying to figure out our destination, probably transmitting this conversation right now while we're still in orbit. Well, yeah, thought I was making that pretty obvious. Okay, okay, put the gun down. I'm done. See? My retinas are pointing away from the console and towards this lovely view of space we have out the window. Time up. Once we get back to the base, the fun starts.
There's no certainty to the universe at all. Once you really start getting out there, the laws of physics can kind of turn into suggestions. You're pulling my leg again, right? It's the greatest thing you've seen. No exaggerations this time. Hmm. Unicorn. Not kidding. Wait. The mythical mare with the magic horn thing? Come on. Was King Arthur riding on it too? Okay, it was more of an extreme of file in the vague shape of a horse. By my points. Holy shit. You actually found me. I wish I could say this is the first time this has happened with Barrett. But well, it isn't. Well, this is turning into a regular constellation party, isn't it? I should have brought drinks. Matsur the Grim here and I actually have a lot in common. Both escape artists. Being captured by Sistef myself plenty of times. See, that's what I'm talking about. Relativity. We're all just creatures of the universe trying to get away from what's happening. You know, it's actually been kind of nice. Matsura the Grim here is a great host. No sense letting people's last moments be unpleasant. See, that's what I like about you, Matsura. Real renaissance man. I have enjoyed our time together, Barrett. But I can't just let you go with nothing to show for it. Is Constellation willing to pay ransom in exchange for this man's freedom? We do have some insurance set aside for this exact problem. Does that mean you'll be paying me, miss? We don't need to be introduced. Here's your money. And we would appreciate it if you could spread the word in the Crimson Fleet that Barrett shouldn't be harassed. It's not working out for any of us. That's a fair point. But I can't control a man's reputation. Do what you can. A suggestion to the right ears can work wonders. Hmm. Very well. Goodbye to you all. I have enjoyed this little exchange. See you around, Metzer. Uh, I mean, well, you know, hopefully not. Mateo or Noel? I am at your service, service, Captain. Held up on Vectera. Barrett, you were worried sick. Well, some of us were. I see what you did there, Walter. And I know you've been secretly crying into your piles of money just waiting for my return. Actually, Walter has been complaining about you more than usual, which is always a sign when he's worried. Don't start. Wait, is that? <laughs> and to think the first artifact was taking up dust on the library show. Now look at them all. You feel it a bit, can't you? Ever since I found the second one, had the visions. Being around them is just comforting. So hey, I I'm still not a hundred percent, plus I feel guilty dragging you into all of this. Why don't I stick around, help you get adjusted to the weird corners of the universe? Marvelous. Hey. I hope you are satisfied with the quarters I cannot of wait to meet him. It's been ages like since I've Constellation has had someone there. Constellation, like. the artifacts. And you must be the latest <laughs> poor fool to get dragged into our dysfunctional little family. Whoa. I know a few dark sides of the Aquila moons, but if you're looking for deep history lessons, well, I'm gonna fall asleep before you do. Trust me. 
Don't encourage him. Koriko, by the way. Hi, hi. It helps to have a good teacher. Dad, don't let it go to your head. Good teachers are like supernovae. Brilliant auras of light that turn dust into stars. A <laughs> compliment from little Cora. Well, it's not even my birthday. Now, let's start business. Sarah tell you about the expedition? Sure enough, that's where we're heading. The three of us are heading to Aquila, for a settled planet of the Free Star Collective and, not coincidentally, the home of their capital, Aquila City. We'll land in the city's spaceports, but the frontier is our goal. It's a rough country. Spawned a lot of stories. And I got a lead on a tale that um, makes me think one thing. Artifact. Yeah, don't piss off the Free Star Rangers. As far as the Collective is concerned, they're judge, jury, and executioner. They're the good guys, but that don't make them any less dangerous. Outside that, just don't be an asshole. Okay. We'll meet you on board your ship. Talk more when we get there. Once we land on Aquila, it's gonna be you and me. So if you want to do any freewheeling before then, Cora and I will just be riding passenger. Oh, pardon me. Here. You ready? Because once we get started, I'm gonna be riding your tail till this is over. There's uh, something you should know up front. I'm a Ko. As in Solomon Ko, first man on Aquila. That tail I mentioned before, the one I think is connected to an artifact, it's something of a family legend. After planet fall, Solomon spent years mapping Aquila and he found a tiny little patch of nothing on his senses. The kind of nothing an artifact produces. He called it the Empty Nest. Said it was a place even the wildlife of Aquila wouldn't go. Ah, okay, okay. Smartass. This is why I don't like bringing it up. Solomon's maps are locked up tight in the local Gal Bank. We'll be heading there.
Hold it. By order of Marshal Daniel Blake, I need to inform you we've got some trouble at Gal Bank. Folks might be in danger, so you may want to steer clear. Never a dull moment around here. I know you. You're Sam Coe. Marshal will be damn glad to have another Free Star Ranger helping out. Afraid your information is a couple years out of date. If you think you might be able to help out, you could talk to the Marshal. Truth is, last I heard, things weren't going so good. Well, I doubt those robbers are gonna let us leisurely peruse the Galbang vault. We better see if we can help move the situation along. You planning to tell me your demands at some point? Joke. someone we can trust, and maybe we will. Like who? Not you, not one of your rangers, and not these city guards, neither. <sighs> what the hell am I supposed to do with that? You need to stand back now. I don't mean to be rude, but I don't know you. Now please, stand back. Aquila City at its finest, I see. Never a dull moment. Well, I'll be damned. Sam Cole. Been a long time. I won't hold my breath about you being here to take the badge again. Uh, listen, Sam, just so you know, I don't blame you for how it went down. For the others, though, you might get a different reception. Thanks. I appreciate you saying so. But I figure some of that reception is owed. Still, I appreciate the sentiment, Marshal. It seems you got a situation. My friend here may be the answer you're looking for. All right, Sam. I'll trust your judgment on this one. Some folks from the Shaw Gang tried to rob the place, but they got spotted by a guard. They took everyone inside hostage, and now they're keeping a watch so we can't move against them. They're using the intercom to communicate. They won't talk to me. Say they don't trust the badge. <laughs> they want a neutral negotiator. In other words, they didn't have a plan for this, so they're stalling while they come up with one. Hmm. All right, I'm willing to allow that. But a few things first. Say what you have to, but whatever they ask for, there's no way in hell I'm giving it to them. Also, there are lives at stake, so don't get cavalier. Find out what they want, and then report back to me. Take it slow and steady. Look for every opportunity to de-escalate. You got this. Hey, you in the bank. I'm sending in a negotiator, so don't shoot. Hands where I can see them, and don't try nothing. You're the negotiator, huh? If you think you're just gonna walk up here and get us to surrender, you're dead wrong. Uh, it's Jed. Jed Bullock. Well, ain't you polite. So tell me, stranger, how do I know you're gonna deal straight with us? I don't know you, so why should your word mean anything to me? Am I supposed to be impressed? Uh, look, just calm down, okay? No need to get violent here. Yeah, I'm already sick to death of this place. Okay, I can see you're not just the marshal's tool. You want what we want. A nice, happy ending where nobody gets hurt. So let's talk. They talk too damn much. Complain about everything. Much as we'd like to, none of us has shot one yet. We want to guarantee a safe passage to the spaceport and a ship. Drop the hostages off somewhere safe in the system. After that, we'll radio back where they are, and the marshal and his crew can come and get them. But if anybody follows us when we break orbit, we start shooting people. Got it? What, do you think we want to stay locked up in here? Hell no! Oh, hell, the Freestar Rangers have got ships. They can give us one of them. <sighs> this whole damn job's gone wrong. The 
supposed to be just a quick hit. Clean and simple, you know? So let's just... Let's all try to keep our heads, yeah? Because my guys, they're going crazy in here. I don't know how much longer we can last. What do you mean? Sometimes bad things happen to innocent people. That's life. You have to believe me, we never meant to take hostages. I know, I know. I'm not disagreeing with that. Nobody's been hurt. So maybe the judge won't come down too hard on us. Yeah. I think this has gone on long enough. You go tell the marshal we'll come quietly. You'd make a decent ranger with the way you handled that. Those guys are scared. I can tell. What's the word? First things first. How'd you get the Shaw Gang to stand down? Ha! Well, you don't like for confidence. Well, I bet you could sell dirt to a Dusty. Here. You've more than earned this. You got us out of a tough spot, and you did it with courage that's not common. As a matter of fact, you might just be Freestar Ranger material. If you're interested, head on over to The Rock and ask for Emma Wilcox. She handles the new recruits. I have right. complete confidence in the Marshal. Right. Let's get back in Galbag and see if we can get those maps. Baby. A few different deposit boxes secured in here, so let's look around. Here's a copy of the key. Okay, I remember Solomon was from an earlier generation. Oh no. Jacob. Of course that old mule saw this coming. There we do. I was hoping to avoid the estate when we landed. Cora's gonna be so mad. We really gotta do this? You're not wrong. I know, it's just... It's personal. Alright, fine. He's my dad, okay? We're not exactly on friendly terms. He probably figured I'd come for the maps at some point. Got ahead of me. Family business just wasn't something I wanted to get into, you know? Yeah, well, sorry I'm such a pain about it. No forgiveness between me and my old man. It's, uh, code tradition. All right, shall we? Just so you know, keep it to self-defense.
Solomon Cole really all that? I'm just saying, my family was on the Your next stop wouldn't be the Charybdis system, would it? We got a report of a distress call out there. But we don't have the ship to send someone that far out. Well, well. Sam Cole finally decides to darken our doorstep again. You know why I'm here. Oh? What's that? You come to your senses? Realize where you ought to be for us? I ain't asking again. You ain't asked once. Let's hear it. I want you to say the words about what's more important to you than family. Okay, this was a mistake. The only mistake I'm seeing here is you. Bringing your constellation lackey here instead of my granddaughter. Come to help Sam loot his ancestry? You're not getting those maps. Full stop. I got just as much right to those maps as anyone else in this family. That's exactly right, Sam. We all share Solomon's legacy. Only some of us are around to live up to it, and some of us aren't. All right, that's enough. Come on, let's you and I talk. In private. Hmm. Welcome home, Sam. Make your visit short, okay? It's what you do. Yeah, the way you handle things... Not bad. Not bad. Give me a sec. <sighs> Alright, let's talk options. No, I don't. It's just, it's been a while, but this is how it goes, every time. You're flying in the face of my 30 plus years experience with the man, but all right. I hope you like arguing. Sam's constellation lackey here to bother me again? You mean besides the fact that you're some independent group that doesn't know where your loyalties lie? Or are you referring to the fact that my granddaughter lives in your clubhouse rather than in her family home? Well, that's not your decision, is it? It's co-property by birthright. It stays here. Well, it's not your place to butt in. <laughs> Maybe you're right. I can't believe I'm saying this, but if I'll get you out of my hair, then fine. You can have the maps. They're in the other room, here. Key. Let's see if we can find the empty nest. All right, let me think. The way I heard it, the readings he was getting were normal at first, then they bottomed out. And no creature, alien or otherwise, would dare step inside. There. Found it. Oh, boy. <sighs> That's a problem. Well, you ain't wrong. But let's take a look at what we're up against. First, it's in the middle of the frontier, which we already expected. No problems there, but the usual tussling with alien wildlife. But the empty nest is a cave right in the middle of Shagang territory. Same outlaws who held up Galbank. Well, just remember, it's about the artifact, not them. Hurting bad guys puts a smile on your face, that's a bonus. Let's get to that cave. Have a nice day now.
Somebody hears something else.
Even smugglers might take a shot at you if you invade their turf. Grizzly, but part of the job. Cora was big into rock collecting when she was eight. Not so much anymore. Smugglers don't take too kindly with folk poking around their turf. I think that's far enough. Hate to put a hole in the head of Akila's own prodigal son. At least not before we've had a word. You must be Shaw. What I am, 
is disappointed. Sam Co in the flesh and he's peddling around the frontier with the has-beens of Constellation. Now you got past my crew, who I pay quite handsomely, I might add. Grabbed something from that weird cave. Probably whatever's been keeping the Ashto away. So, I'm down one hideout. Now, let's talk about what all that's worth to me. Your lives, your credits. One or the other, really. Oh, really? Let's hear it. <laughs> Tough talk. But you've backed it up so far, I'll admit. Huh. The Shaw Gang's name in print outside a wanted poster does sound nice. <laughs> Fine. Get the hell out of here before I change my mind. I see you again. You're dead. You. This is your fault. You better lend us a hand. Take it and get lost. You're lucky the boss is so generous. Back to meet its siblings. Just what are we building here? I haven't picked up any kind of frequency or signal coming from it. That doesn't mean much. This thing could be emitting something we can't even detect. As far as we know, we could be building a gigantic bomb that will blow up as soon as we finish it. Or maybe it's some kind of interstellar children's tour. Why would either of those things give the Discoverer visions and music? Vasco, it's a quick! Message. Top three one-liner moments. Yes, Barrett. Just have to Number three. Finding more of the Your retort to the secret. Crimson Fleet Raiders on Leonis Moving three. forward sometimes yes. it's fumbling around Quiet. in the dark. Number two. I think Cora and I can use some downtime, but you let me know if you ever want to team up again. Oh, and since it tends to come up, me and my Rugrat co-pilot work as a team. That's non-negotiable. If I'm coming with, that means Cora's on your ship. Hmm. Why not? What do you think, Cora? It's really nice to have more company. New stories, new data. What? Data? <laughs> All right. We're in. Let's see what the galaxy throws at us next.
comes next. We got a rook on deck. Good to see Constellation getting some fresh blood. Ah, gotta pass the hours on the star station somehow. And the iron's always been good to me. Word to the wise, don't arm wrestle him. I'm still hurting from that. Wish I could have been down at the lodge to see the artifacts come together. But I got a little lost peeking through the eye. Always preferred working alone, even around people I like. But we're all working together on this one. No finer group in the stars to be unraveling this mystery. Now, this station, the Eye, rigged up for deep space scans. Barrett and Sarah teased out the signs of where our artifacts could be hiding after we caught our second one. But the data takes a slow ride along the Sea of Light. Years or decades between us and the fringes of space without a grav drive. You won't be the only constellation out there. Andresia and Matteo are both following up on scans themselves. Matteo went out recently, but Andresia... It's been a while. Hate to pull a worried old man act on you, but... I'm an old man, and... I'm worried. She's as tough as they come, but happy to lend a hand if needed. She should be at one of the two sites I've marked on your star map. Can take care of herself, but we all need backup sometimes. Anyway, hopefully you'll be catching Fortune's smile, and we'll have some more artifacts to take a closer look at. Happy hunting. That's why I missed your little welcome party. Got caught up plotting all the data the eye can give us. Wouldn't mind the helper's hand, though. Could speed the process along. Up-to-date planetary scans would help filter all the data I have to sift through. Maybe help to find the anomalous bits. And Constellation can slide a credit or two your way. All part of the mission of charting the stars, right? Then we're hand in hand in agreement. Now get out there and burn some helium. Let's D. Show the words another time then.
Don't come any closer. Identify yourself. Ah, oh, good. I suppose I should have guessed. It has been too long since I checked in. Well, I guess making sure you were all right was a bit of an overreaction, judging by the dead body and all. You are the newest member, yes? Do they often send you to check up on other, more senior members? <laughs> I suppose. And yet you are here. Instead of checking up on Barrett or Noel. We waste time. We should complete our mission and then we can talk. Always worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets.
you did not respond when I called to you after you pulled out the artifact. Does that mean Barrett's theory and experience were correct? The artifact grants the first person who touches it a vision? The fact that it has happened to both you and Barrett is already more than we had before. I think it is important that we discuss what you saw back there. That man. What I had done. It was, yes. I appreciate that you see it that way. A very practical outlook, not one I find is shared amongst members of Constellation. May I ask what your background is? Argos. I have heard of this company. Small, reckless. Interesting. I do not have experience with this profession, but I have my own experiences with... <sighs> risk. We both seem to be... Unusual additions to Constellation. Please, I would ask that you not mention to Vladimir the... the circumstances in which you found me. This is not the first time that... Varun Zealots have attempted to corner me. If it is known that this has happened again... Well, it has been a while since I was given an assignment on my own. I would not want it to be even longer in the future. Do you understand? Yes. It would seem they have not yet learned how much it will cost them. But then that is their fundamental problem, is it not? An inability to see anything other than the path which they have created for themselves. Mom, this means we are in agreement. Thank you. That is good to know. I will finish here and return to New Atlantis when I can. You should go now, as they will be expecting us. Looks like we can use that cave to get inside the facility.
progress. If I could, must the old books, a bit of motor oil, and history. Why? Was there a concern that I would not contribute to the mission? No, of course not. We thought you might be hurt. Oh, I then thank you, but it was not necessary. We succeeded. Look at you two. I'm jealous. I tried following up on some leads myself, but came back empty-handed. They could be anywhere, can't they? They're embedded in a rock, or in the hands of an unsuspecting novelty goods trader? I wasn't aware we were competing, but game on. Oh no, don't you two start. We're supposed to be working together, not competing. What's wrong with a little rivalry here and there? I think it pushes us to be at our best. 
or causes nothing but arguments. Arguments which then breed distrust. Noel is right, Matteo. Well, I suppose there was that one time, and then the other. Mm, what do you think? A little competition can't be that bad, can it? Exactly. We're all friends here. Why shouldn't we want to bring out the best in each other? The best shouting, you mean? The halls of the lodge echo, you know. I prefer the big old happy family approach. I've seen friendly rivalries turn real too many times for my taste. You know what? I just realized I completely overtook this whole conversation. This should be about you and Andresia celebrating a win for the group. I do not mind being asked to join in a debate. It was good to hear everyone's sides. But I do agree that we accomplished something together. Thank you for your help. I have no objections. Let us see what else we can find out there. Noel, pulling some interesting data from those new artifacts. Tell the Rook to meet me back on board the station. It's too big to be stuck in the same place. Roger that, Vladimir. He's on his way. Now that those artifacts aren't just blips of hope in the Blackest Sea, I found an interesting pattern. The grav anomaly generated by one of those artifacts? It matches one on another planet. A bigger one. Alright, let me transfer over the data. But, I need you wearing caution's boots for this one. No telling what this thing is or why it's so large. Going to send you the mark close as I can, but I'm having trouble pinpointing the source. You'll need to explore the area on foot. Put your scanner to work. Don't know what you'll find. Keep your eyes open. And from there, maybe you catch a smile and uncover the source of it all.
Uh, are they moving? They seem to react to us. Not for the lodge, I think I would avoid this city. It is all just too much. I'm comfort in the idea that the odds of something killing us here are at an all-time low. Rix's bones. Look at you. If you don't mind, I'm gonna start doing some scans. Like, right now. We were right about the anomaly, weren't we? Tip our ears on the tail. What in the blackest sea are you going on about? What did it do to you? Um, Vladimir, look at these readings. Cardiovascular and neurological levels aren't in the normal range. I think we're going to need a little demonstration. Mind putting the paces to it? Everyone saw that, right? Like a literal gift from the heavens. 
and also the most practical consequence of our little venture thus far. Got no old shipwise for this one. Going to just call weird, weird. So we have artifacts, a temple, and this power. All connected. But we do not understand the connections. We need additional information. Can we find more of them? Already picked one up from the scans. Matches another one of the artifacts we found. In theory, there might be one temple for each. But sifting through all the signs to identify a match is tricky. Impossible if we don't have the right artifact to compare. And even then, it takes time. It's a strong theory. Couldn't find that planetary anomaly without the data from the artifact. We'll need one to find the other. Don't think it's just Fortune's laugh that this temple responded to you. The artifacts, the visions, this power you've gotten, all seems to be the same song somehow. Plenty to think about. Anyway, catch a smile out there. I'll work on finding planet anomalies that match the other artifacts we have. If you have a moment, I have something I'd like to discuss. I must admit, you've surprised me. I thought you were going to take off as soon as you'd gotten something from us. But I was wrong. I want you for a little soiree I'm planning. A business meeting, of a sort at least. It's about an artifact, and our goal is simple, we're going to purchase it. Our seller is a freelance operative in the city of Neon, which means the artifact is almost certainly stolen from someone. I just need a little more presence in the negotiation to show we're serious. And I think you'd be perfect. That settles it then. We just need to make a few stops when we get to the city and then the drinks will be on me. As long as the drinking comes after the negotiation or whatever this is going to entail. It'll be easy, I promise. I'll ride passenger on your ship until we get to Neon. Just let me know when you're ready to set off. To the Volai star system, then. I admit I'm a little excited. But they still can't get rid of the odor of chasm mass. A native species of fish. I often wonder what would have happened if they'd never found out about the psychotropic effects. I mean, on paper, a rich protein source is far more practical value than a recreational drug. But theory loses out once again to practice. Something to do with chasm bass's natural oils, apparently. If you're curious, the name is a rule. We need to stop by the Stroud Eklund offices. There are certain authorization procedures when large funds are being transferred, even for something like this. The effort to make this place livable is astounding. No end. 
done for what can be accomplished when there are credits to be made. Security? Cares far more about what you take with you when you leave me on than what you bring in the What the hell is this about? Cut the act. Sniffers picked up the Aurora you're carrying the second you step through. All right. Get up slowly and turn around. Try to run, and we open fire. Security has got its eye. Oh, I do not know about you, but I am starting to suspect that Benjamin Bayou has a... Clearly the intent is to get us into the Astral Lounge. Shall we follow the signs? Walter is very proud of his business. And he should be. His ships are very high quality. It's all right. I just need to have a short chat with my counterpart. Is she in today? Yes. Uh, allow me to bust you in, sir. Walter. Issa. Shall we continue from last time? The luxury cruise line market is completely outside of our core competencies. Investing into it is a mistake. No, I'm here about... Wait a minute. A mistake. Our ship designers are the best in the settled systems. They design personal craft and military ships, Walter. Large-scale accommodations and hospitality is a completely different beast. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here I am, arguing with my partner. <laughs> and you're just standing right here. Issa Eklund, the hyphenated Eklund in our glorious company's branding. Oh, aren't you lovely? Walter, wherever did you meet your new friend? I'm jealous. A colleague from Constellation. Ah, yes. The daring explorers my partner is so infatuated with. <laughs> you should hear him reciting that speech. <clears throat> There's no need to go into that. <laughs> oh, my heart skips a beat when he does it. Really, it does. Such passion. If he talked to the board that way, I wouldn't need to placate them so much. I know. It's my favorite hobby. Now, why are you here, my dear? The board meeting isn't for a while, and our vacations aren't coming up either. It's the discretionary fund, Issa. I need all of it. Oh. This wouldn't have anything to do with that meeting you've set up at the Astro Lounge, would it? I never said that. Did you have an agent hack into my files again? Only after you had one hack into mine. Tell me, can mutual distrust lead to a point where it's actually the same as mutual trust? Oh, don't mind the two of us. Challenging each other intellectually is a cornerstone of our relationship. Now I must point out the obvious. The Astro Lounge. Huh? It's a remarkably insecure location. That was the point. Neutral territory in the open. With no leverage. Oh, you must let me help. It's been too long. I have this all taken care of. Some investigation into the cellar. What's motivating them? Then, some preliminary casing of the Astro Lounge for security flaws. Give you the advantage if things go wrong. Bribe a few bouncers, alter the codes on the doors. Yes, exactly. I hate being selfish, but I would like some time with my husband. We need to go through the fund authorizations anyway. James Newell is the broker who knows our seller. He'll be able to help you find out more about them. And it shouldn't be hard to find the Astral Lounge. Here. Let me at least give you some operation funds since I won't be joining you. Meet me back here. Yeah, I'm going to be present for the negotiation. I'm not leaving you to the Neon Sharks, I promise.
that dude so you want. Welcome to Newell's. If you're looking for any specific goods, Rosa and I guarantee we'll beat Sieghart's lousy selection every time. I understand that. But when you're dealing with a snake like Siegert, normal commerce practices go right out the window. That man has absolutely no respect for the business community on Neon. He skips merchant meetings and refuses to participate in any of our group buys. Worst of all, he pays off Neon's security to keep his place safe. Yeah, sure. If all you care about is yourself. Every payment Seagert makes validates Neon Security's corruption. He's setting a bad precedent that many merchants are forced to follow. Anyway, sorry. I know I can get a little intense about these things. If you'll forgive the outburst and have a look around, I'm sure you'll find something you might want to buy. No problem. I didn't. Information isn't usually free. Easy, friend. Not looking for trouble. I guess maybe I can add this to his tab. Okay. I don't know much. But I did have one of my freelancers tail the seller back to his place. Sleep crate one. Let me write down the unit for you.
flashes under my dice, and I think it's Jafe from the pilot seat. What I don't sell. Name's Boone Morgan, your new best friend on Neon. If you're here for a drink or listen to the music, I've got you covered. But if you're here for something a little more exciting, we have plenty of Aurora for sale. Oh, we have plenty of that, but why not try something different? New planet, new city, new experiences. It's what life's all about. Here, and take a look at the menu. Now, I'm not going to lie, the Aurora is a bit expensive, but <laughs> let's face it, can you really put a price on pleasure? Excellent choice. The Sky Suite offers luxury and sophistication you won't find anywhere else in the settled systems. And since you'll be living in the same tower as the Astral Lounge, all of its pleasures and pageantry are only an elevator away. How unfortunate. The Astro Lounge is one of the safest places in all of Neon. Security is hand-picked from the finest officers in the city. Then I would say you'd be interested in the Astro Lounge VIP package. For a reasonable fee, our security can be your security. We do strive for setting the most reasonable rate. Yeah, I'm sorry, but promises make for poor currency. Bullets flying would certainly be bad for the club's reputation. Well, I think we can certainly offer a discounted rate for you. If you were still interested. Excellent. Let me just apply that discount we discussed, and done. We do hope your meeting goes to your satisfaction. Enjoy the lap. Howdy. Hell yeah! Clover over at Kelcor? She's too good for Neon. Sounds like she's trying to help someone or something. Honestly, I kind of tuned her out. for computer systems. Stop to ask you how you're doing. I'm fine. The board complains, I assure them. There's the occasional assassination attempt. So, you don't need anything from me then? I don't. 
Am I just some useless stargazer? You would have been better off marrying a Hope or a Tayo, someone who could be with you at every meeting. Oh, don't go on about that again. Needing you isn't the same as wanting you. And I'd much rather want my partner than need them. Less complicated. Now, I know Constellation seems to take up so much of my time. But I never stop thinking of you. Wondering what maneuvering you're doing to take over the company and drive me out. It's how I show my love. Any luck out there? Excellent. Good work. Let's head to the Astral Lounge. Goodbye, my dear. See you at the next board meeting? Oh, I'll be keeping an eye on this little operation. Just in case. Good luck, all of you. My mother wanted me to be a doctor. A doctor? <laughs> but... Get out of my face. You want to go get something? Take it to the end. If you are free soon, could we talk? Did you need something? Here, I have something for you. Yes, well, it seemed like a good idea. I saw it earlier and thought you might like it. Or find it useful. Or... Well, whatever. Of course. We are partners, are we not? I will keep an eye out in the future. And if I see something, I might hold on to it for you. Ever wonder how a crimson fleet? I have things. Now, I don't know what the cellar looks like, but they'll have a security briefcase with them, larger than normal, big enough to hold the artifact. We should split up. The code phrase to identify yourself as the buyer is Ramsey and Travers. It's not like people who trade in stolen goods are eager to share personally identifying information. Code phrases? Under different circumstances, Walter, I think you might have made an adequate smuggler. Remember, Ramsey and Travers. We'll meet back near the elevator. Can't you see I'm busy drinking? Oh really? I heard you all have a meeting in a few minutes, don't you? In one of those fancy VIP lounges? Speaking of which, I gotta get going myself. Excuse me. I just saw our cellar walk by. Good job. That's not surprising. This is a deal over stolen property, after all. Anything could go wrong. Now, before we head in there, let me go over the ground rules. He'll ask for twice what we agreed on. That's normal. He'll probably try to walk out. That's normal, too. Don't worry about the amount we actually settle on. The Stroud Eklund Discretionary Fund is just a chip to you and me. Our goal is to get him to accept that chip in exchange for the artifact. Anything goes as long as it's in our hands, and we're not dead. How does that sound? That's why you're here. Hopefully our combined countenance will be enough, but grabbing the artifact and running is an option. Uh, just do me a favor and treat it as a last resort. I have a reputation.
hill for a cup of coffee right about here. So you, Stroud, you look different in person. Our public relations always insists on doing some touch-ups for the official photos. Embarrassing, really. Your security here going to stand or sit for this little meeting, making me nervous. So polite, almost makes me forget what planet I'm on. to assume that briefcase has our item of interest? Yeah, here it is. Well, look at that. One of a kind, and I know you want it. I have the amount we agreed on. Uh-uh. Things have changed. I want double. Now how am I supposed to do that? I don't know, but your security here seems to have some fancy gear. Why don't they chip in? Oh, really? And how do you know that? Who talked? Does it matter? We know you're in a fix, and we're still willing to buy. For the agreed-upon amount. I got people after me, okay? I can't just set on what we agreed on. I need more so I can disappear. That's not our problem. We came here expecting one amount. Now you want another. You telling me Walter Stroud ain't got the cash? I'll walk out of this booth right now. I leave now. I can get a jump start on the people after me, instead of you all wasting my time. You'd be on your way already if you just take the money I'm offering you and shut up. What's it going to be? Take or walk? I... Ah. Uh... All right. You win. Hand over the money. This... thing... is all yours. Well done. Some high-pressure tactics, but we got what we were after. Time to go home, shall we? Stop right there! You're in possession of Slayton Aerospace property. Ah. Slayton must have been the original owner. We don't need to do this. All's fair on Neon, am I right? Hand over Mr. Slayton's property. Now. It's my employer's property. That's all I need to know. You gonna make me shoot you? Really? Huh. That might change things. I'm here for The Rock. I'm not your messenger service. You... You don't know what you're talking about. Huh. All right. But Nicholas Slayton isn't a man you want after you. Good luck with that. Sending our men to the Astral Lounge. Slayton must be serious about getting the artifact back. We'd better get off the planet quickly. Gone wrong, hasn't it? Slayton has put a bounty on your heads. He's greased a few palms. Your ship's been impounded at the spaceport. There goes our way out. Yes, yes, I'm fully aware this has not gone according to plan. Slayton Aerospace has offices here in the Trade Tower. If Nicholas is moving this quickly, he must be there or close by. Let's head to their lobby, shall we? See if we can make an appointment.
If you have the time, I wish to speak to you. Welcome to Slayton Aerospace. Can I help you? I'm afraid Mr. Slayton is a very busy man. No, he isn't. Nice try, but... He did? Oh, yes, I do remember overhearing something about that. Oh, I think we can make an exception in your case. Mr. Slayton will see you. Just use the elevator. Wait. This clearly isn't the executive. He's on to us. Walter. Uh, taking what's mine, then breaking into my office. A bold move. But one easily counted. Oh, we're trapped. Hello, Walter, dear, are you there? Issa? Took longer than I'd like, but I managed to pay off one of Slayton's security consultants. They've patched me in. All right. We've got her out. Once the door's open, just follow her instructions, okay? Well, if my wife and I could gallantly offer your majesty a rescue from certain death, let's go. are all over. Be careful. Okay. You'll want to use the vent system to slip around unnoticed. There's a cover just to the right of the elevator you came in on. That's the elevator you came in on. Jump right across the top of it and keep going to the end. Drop down and follow the conduit all the way to the end, past the fork. There's a vent above you. Just climb up. The room below you is clear. Drop down. Stop. One of the doors that you right into the open. I'm unlocking a safe route. Opening the door on your right. Go now. Head left, but don't go through the door at the end yet. There's a robot stalking the hall. Wait. It's walking down the hall. Go now, stretch across through the door. Keep going all the way to the end. Expect us to climb up the trade tower? There's a series of catwalks that lead directly up one floor to the executive level. Well, I guess seven. We're checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets. 
You know, it's moments like this that really makes Neon the best place to do business. You steal what's mine. I trap you in the city. You infiltrate my office. I lock it down. Where else can you match wits for the highest stakes but here? <laughs> Aren't you? In the back of your mind, through the tunnel vision of adrenaline, there's a part of you that belongs here. It happens to all of us. You have what's mine. I, indirectly, have what's yours. We are at a stalemate. Although I do count a few more guns on my side. Hmm. You do make a bold point, but that doesn't resolve our current dilemma. Perhaps I can help. We're both people of business, Nicholas. In the same industry, no less. Yes, I'm beginning to see the opportunity. There is, however, one final detail to disclose. Mr. Musgrove, my former employee, and the thief responsible for our serendipitous meeting was caught prior to your arrival. I think it would cement our new partnership if you were to decide on his sentence yourselves. If that is your decision, you need only tell him yourself and then we will handle the rest. Assuming there is no information we are lacking, that seems reasonable. My security brought Musgrove to my office. I'm sure seeing you again will be a fine conclusion to your previous business. I have an opportunity to spare a man's life. I know he probably would like wouldn't a do the same to for us. You, if you are that able. Oh, no. You. Slayton really does have a sick sense of humor. Slayton took it all. Probably in one of his secure accounts somewhere. I'll settle up with him later. Arbitration, lawyers, all that nonsense. Please. I was just trying to sell a product, okay? Isn't that why we're all here? Be lenient. We were taking advantage of his initiative, after all, even if we have found ourselves working with the man he stole from. 
Justice for some, huh? Fine. Rather be caged than dead. It seems you will have plenty of time to evaluate that sentiment. While you are in jail. I will make the arrangements for Neon Security to take him into custody. You're free to leave. Time to go. Let's talk more back at the ship. all in a twist because his robot got vandalized. We had a good laugh about it. Back the man who wanted us dead. I guess we can call that a win. What do you think? <laughs> Thank you. I guess. Some people call Issa a jewel, but she's more than that to me. I can't really describe it. There's me, and her, and an us. And I wouldn't trade the us for all the credits in Neon. All in all, a great success. Thank you for allowing me to tag along with Constellation's newest star. <laughs> yes, I used a pun. Forgive me. Speak our language. 
We know everything about you. That is why your kind cannot have the artifact. The more you understand, the more damage you will do. How could just knowing what you are be dangerous? Our distance from you is the whole point. We interfere now because we must. I'm not liking what I'm seeing on the scans. The energy output from that ship is far above the normal rate. If we spin up the grab drive now, we have a chance. We'll get through this. Hold on! Need some work done? Okay, no problem. You got to be kidding me. You will be scanned as you enter the city. Please keep moving. Of course, the United Colonies is in this engine. Heaven forbid something is Sergeant Hume is looking for reliable people to help the guard. Contact him if you're interested. We'd all appreciate it. Again, if you have the time, I wish to speak to you. 
How is Neon? Are you... Are you okay? Wait, what happened? Who was after you? Take a look at the ship's sensor data. I think everybody needs to see this. Uh, all right, I'll start transferring the data over now. Let me just bring it up on here at the table. Is that... Is that a prototype? No, that material isn't anything we... What the... Everyone, come take a look at this. That's no faction vessel or Crimson Fleet. Secret military tech, maybe? Hmm, no United Colonies Admiral approved that starship design. They call themselves the Starborn. Demanded we hand over the artifact. Like we were children, playing with their parents' things. What do people know? Any offshoot groups go by that name? Not in any corner of the settled systems I've seen. Maybe a distant human colony, finally popping its head up? Uh, another house for room. I very much doubt that. We ignoring the obvious here? A heretofore unknown group who just happens to know about the artifacts. I'm just gonna say it. Intelligent alien life or extra-dimensional beings. The original creators from the furthest fringes of space. Or beyond even that. Is the metaphor of avenging angels coming down to keep humanity from forbidden knowledge not apt here? So, we have a lot of theories, but nothing concrete. Except that they're after the artifacts, and they're willing to take them by force. No settled systems lab made these things, and I doubt one of them made that ship either. So, we got some weird extra-dimensional beings that coincidentally decide to build their spacefaring vessels exactly like we do. I'm not so sure about that. Noel, start analyzing all the data from the ship sensors. If the gravitational reason. wave they caused, scans of their weapons, shields, everything. We're in the dark. We need to learn anything about them we can. Including some way to fight them, if necessary. Until then, we stay the course. Collect the artifacts. It's even more important now that an intelligence we don't know or understand is looking for them. All we can do is be more cautious, but we are not stopping. This could end up being a race we don't want to lose. Vladimir, has the eye picked up anything new? Some glints of shine in the dark. Ready to hand them out as soon as you please. All right. Good luck, everyone. And be careful out there. I'd like to talk to you about something, when you have the chance. This is all exciting, but there's really a lot of pressure on us, isn't there? We have to get this right. As much it's as I so love I'm looking at questions, the scans, I wouldn't mind I can see star that. systems orbiting in my head. You had a hell of a shake, getting bullied in the void. Starborn sure know how to make an entrance. Ready to head back out there? The Eye can help you find the artifacts, but I'm afraid she's blind to our new competitor. Double check the safety and locks wherever you go, okay? Exploration's dangerous, even without some nefarious group trying to kill you. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Was that your stomach or mine? Something you need? Hmm? I'm more than ready. Let's go. Miss Morgan, I shall be here if you need me. It's actually comforting to know that, Andrasia. Thank you.
was a plea. have a when you have it.
See if they've got any weapons or ammo.
you might be interested in. Here, I have something for you. You're welcome. I picked it up on one of our latest planetary expeditions. I'm more than just an extra gun, you know. I'm just pleased I get to utilize some of my old field collecting skills. It's been a while. Check back with me from time to time after we return from our planetary jaunts. If I pick anything up, it's all yours. Now that we're here, when you have a few moments, there's something I'd like to discuss. I hope you are satisfied. How far we've come. It's all becoming so overwhelming. The Starborn, the artifact visions, the music. Is it all worth it? Mateo, are you having a crisis of faith? You? What if the Starborn are right? What if our hunt for the artifacts is a fool's errand, doomed to failure and catastrophe? You think we're doing the wrong thing? We just want answers. Isn't that why we all joined in the first place? The noble quest of discovery? <laughs> exactly. When the universe presents us with a threat, we can't afford to run away. We need to stay in the fight. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to shame either of you. Blame the workings of a worried mind. I just hope that this journey doesn't turn us into something that we wouldn't recognize from where we are now. Hate to interrupt. But I have a favor to ask. Lot of equipment on the eye has reached the span's end. If we're going to find more artifacts further out, we need work done. Got the nods and signs from Sarah and Walter for the materials, but I need hands. Won't be going alone. Need more than just the you and I. Ask around. A few constellations are already on their way up. Anything that gets us closer to more artifacts... I am at your service, Captain. Captain, I will proceed to my assigned post. Too many squats. You call it the wrong wires. Station showing red. Nastier than I measured. Figured a few of the parts might be iffy, but this is going to take more than a span. I won't leave you hanging, Vladimir. Kor and I can stay with you until the eye is back to 100%. No need for the martyr's clothes, but I'm happy to have the help. As for you, while we're giving the eye the sorts, need to tip your ear on another matter when you got the time. Don't want to worry anyone, but we got more competition. Not Starborn, 
rival collector. Captain Petrov owns a salvager vessel called the Scow, runs it like a palace of novelties, and he's got a new prize in his collection. Reached out through my hand-to-hands to see if we can do an honest swap. He says the rock ain't for sale for any price. Think we're gonna need a crowbar and bag for this one. Left the life of a jack of ones behind myself. I know what I'm asking. But I see a clutch prize not up for the prying any other way. Not sending you lone hook on the job. I want Barrett with you on this one. You two will be foot to foot the whole way, so make sure you're ready. As we always say, each member of Constellation is their own conscience. I'll leave the details of the doing to you. Catch a smile out there. here to see him. <laughs> He'll want to talk to us right away. Barrett, from Constellation. You're specifically on the list of people not allowed on this cow under any circumstances. Oh, right. I forgot about that. If I could just talk to Petrov myself, I'm sure he'd want to put that all behind us. Go away. No one uninvited boards this cow. Captain's orders. The captain does love letters. We could use the money. I don't know if you convince the captain, though. All right. I'll clear you to dock. Keep yourself out of trouble, or we'll have every hired gun in the cargo bay after you. Dusty, if you're ever thinking to yourself, oh, I could really listen to Barrett's dulcet voice right now, then instead of dreaming about me, I'll stop by and say hello, okay? Let's talk. When you have time, of course. I have to talk about the Starborn. Do you have a second? You do, right? Right? How could we not talk about it for the rest of our lives? It could be the dawn of a new era of humanity. Or it could be an elaborate prank or any number of mundane explanations. I didn't detect any localized time distortion, which isn't required for that hypothesis, but... Oh, yeah? Joking. I knew that. Geez, we just need more data. There has to be a way to draw them out and figure out where they're coming from. It's one of our few facts about them. It seemed very important to them, too. This could be a turning point for humanity, you know? 
Or it could be just the emergence of a powerful new faction or some sort of elite military tech or a gazillionaire with nothing else to do. All we know is that they wanted that artifact badly. Agreed. That is going to require more observations, more encounters with them. And who knows? Maybe we'll never see them again. Who let you on board? But Petrov was done hiring mosquitoes. Or maybe you're after something from the captain's collection. Oh yes, the rock. He's not selling it. But if you want to hear him laugh in your face personally, go right ahead. Yeah, we'll check with him directly if you don't mind. Go on then. Petrov's got a whole little alien zoo in the back. He's asking for trouble with those things. But the locks on the cages are pretty high-end. Thankfully. Trade it for it. Some dusty hauling ore from the fringe. <laughs> Was glad when he left. It's all shakes and muttering. Strewn about all over. The good stuff's locked up in a vault for Petrov's own personal viewing pleasure. And before you ask, Petrov's the only one with the keys, so... Don't try bribing any of the crew. You just waste your money. Enjoy your time on board the scow. You know, if it were up to me, we wouldn't let people on the ship we haven't vetted personally. Ah, I wasn't aware we had the visitors. Wadik, you didn't tell me we had visitors. <sighs> we have visitors. Excellent. Now that you've gone to all this trouble to get here, you should make yourself at home. Relax! Kick up your feet on the tables. I don't care they have scorch marks on them anyway. Oh, ho, ho. flattery, huh? My favorite pastime, huh? Between you and me, I do have something very special in the vault. Ah, but my jealous heart knows no bounds. I want to keep it all to myself. Petrov! It's me! Barrett! You dare show your face in my ship again? Hey, you still sore about that? Engines blow up all the time. Ha! You old son of a space flea! 
It's good to see you. Hey, uh, old pal. <laughs> How about a tour of the vault? Let me wallow in my jealousy one more time. Of course. Come with me. I know. People look at me and say, Petrov, your whole ship is a testament of splendor. Why do you need a special vault? Well, all I can say is that even the greatest collection needs its own private viewing area. Plus, between you and me, there are thieves everywhere. So I spared no expense. Every door between me and my treasures is painful. But that is the price of security, huh? Que sera? Just a bit further. This ship and I have been through some adventures, I'll tell you. I once collected salvage from a Demo Celestial class while it was exploding. The crew was scraping scorch marks and bits of metal off the hull for weeks. Ah, of course, yet? there was the time the I right hand? accidentally steered us into a UC Navy vessel after a particularly uproarious celebration of my latest acquisitions of fine art. But we were wedged perfectly between their two thrusters and were able to just kind of push them back into the star yard for repairs. Itself. Ah, beautiful, isn't it? The man who sold me this told me that it spoke to him. That holding it for the first time was like drowning in your own soul. Alas, I've held it several times and my soul is still breathing, devoid of any such enlightenment. Why, yes, he did. Oh, no. No, no, no. I can't. This one is mine. And it's only fair to warn you. Hands off! I would hate to sour our new friendship by becoming the victim of piracy. Uh, we're not pirates, Petrov. We're explorers who might do a bit of piracy on the side as a hobby sometimes. I'm afraid not. I'm easy in all things, except my collection. Then I suppose it's just a question whether my immeasurable love for my collection and my crew of hired cutthroats is enough to stop you. Go ahead. Make a move for the artifact. Let's see what happens. Uh, would it help if I said we needed it for scientific research? Wait! I surrender! I surrender! Don't kill me! This place ain't for the likes of you. The captain's word is good. Done! Stand down, everyone. Let the nice pirate pass. Get out now.
as that was, it's good to be back. Is mining on the schedule today? I can't reach anyone on the station. Noel, Starborn, came out of nowhere. Vladimir, get out of there! He already left, said he was going to, uh, to the launch. Sam, he's, he's still breathing, but... Oh, God, all that blood! Hello, Constellation. Are you there? Who are you? What did you do to our friends? They called me the Hunter. And now that I'm here, your part in glimpsing the unity is over. I'm already on my way. Say goodbye to your friends. It won't be long. Forget about us! That starborn bastard is after the artifacts! You can't let him take them! Pack up the collection, move it somewhere they can't find it! Damn it! Vladimir's right. We need to get the artifacts packed up, and that means holding off the starborn. What about everyone on the eye? We can't leave them to die up there. Look, I get it, but our best chance is staying here. I don't know how long it's gonna take to pack up the artifacts. I... I'll get started. Hopefully this will only take a few minutes, if my hands can stop shaking! Take cover, everyone! Where? You really expect them to bust? That's right, Walker. You should stop it by for a check on Potipon. you're going to leave, I'll be barricading the door on your way out. Won't be able to let you back in for anything. Right back at you. Life. Krix's ghost can keep waiting. 
saw the ship dock with the eye. We took up the arms call, but when the doors opened, there was no one there. Skulked in like a damn specter. Before I had to know, it was nothing but pain's wings and a cold sleep. Time's unknown, but I came too long enough to hear him gloat about going to the lodge, and seeing our friends trying to crawl away from him on a bloody trail. Not many sights to see before I lost the lights. No tears for the old. Got the others to worry about. Oh, thank heavens. You're all right. Oh, not that I've seen, but I've been drifting in and out. We didn't see the starborn ship dock until it was too late. By the time we managed to take defensive positions, the doors were already opening. We didn't see him at first. Vladimir went sailing straight into the control room. Then the starborn was just... there. The rest is just... combat blur. Adrenaline. Pain. I'll be okay now. Go on. Take care of the others. Dad! The others are here! We're going to be okay! I really messed up on this one, friend. Usually the last guy to get out drawn. Back at you. Well, let's get going. Oh, thank the stars beyond. out of nowhere. Thank you. Uh, I don't think I can move right away. But I'll make it. Go on. Make sure everyone's safe. Barrett. Barrett, can you hear me? It's Sam. He's got one foot in the burly gates already. It's over. We're... we're gonna find all those artifacts. Okay, Barrett? We'll solve this mystery, I swear. He's... he's gone. Come on. Let's get going. There's no changing anything now. I appear to only be seriously damaged instead of critically damaged. Fortunate. That you are likewise relatively undamaged is also preferable to the alternative. It went <clears throat> quickly after you left. We held him off while Noel escaped through the basement. There's a door that leads to the well district. Get moving. Long enough. 
Noelle, she might still be in danger. There's a secret door in the basement, leads right to the well district. That would have been the safest route for her to run. Thank God, thank God, thank God. I don't know. I just ran and hid. I keep thinking he's just around the corner. I still have the artifacts, but where do we take them? Oh, there you are. I wasn't expecting you to run to the eye. You! You're not getting the artifacts. <laughs> yes. Let's see if they can slip from my grasp this time, shall we?
back. Thank the Blackest Sea that you and Noel are safe. And the artifacts? The lodge. So, we slip from the Starborn's grasp, but not before taking a stab straight in the heart. We... Uh, we need to talk locks and bolts. Lodge and the Eye are not secure. Just means he's playing the waiting man's game. He'll be back once we've done all the work of collecting the other pieces. The hunter, he, um... Oh, he, he probably found us because we're somewhere obvious. High populated area, just like how the Starborn found you orbiting Neon the first time. But the fact that they're competing with us to find the artifacts means they can't get them without searching. So we put the artifacts somewhere in the fringe, or on something that can slip from their grasp if they do another strike from the curtain. Fine idea. Starborn show up, you can burn helium in one spin of the grab drive to anywhere. Here. Keep the artifacts safe. I guess... We'll meet back at the lodge after? Landing on new planets like this never gets old. We should be heading back. feel like we've been kicked into the ground a million times over, but I think I have something. I'm serious. If I may, I know our encounter with the hunter is the last thing anyone wants to talk about right now, but he said something that I can't get out of my mind. Unity. Do you remember that? 
because he was stopping us, implying that we were getting closer to it. The thing is, I've heard that word before. It's an important concept in Keeper Aquilus' speeches. The priest? Is the Sanctum Universum going to bless our little crusade of discovery? It can't be a coincidence. The Sanctum has always believed that answers are out there in the stars. Look, I know it's the longest of shots and the biggest leap of faith I could ever ask us all to take, but... Why not talk to him? It's right here in the city, just a block or so from the lodge. I guess it couldn't hurt. I've heard the Keeper's a pretty insightful guy. Thank you. I know it's not much to go on, but something about this feels right. I'll meet you over there. You forget how much you take a place like the Lodge for granted. Until it's threatened. out in front of mast, staring at trees, sounds upset. Whatever it is, it can't be that bad, right? When someone insults you, you want to just beat the shit out of them sometimes, uh, but you don't. <laughs> well, not quite what I was thinking, but that's actually a great example, Marcus. Keeper Aquilus, can we have a moment? Oh, Mateo, it's been too long. How are your parents? Your mother's still struggling with that azalea garden? No, she figured that out a while ago. Had to adjust the pH levels in the soil. But, Keeper, I didn't come to catch up. Oh. Well, what's on both your minds? Oh. Yeah. How humanity comes together. Uh, how we are to love each other, even as our universe becomes even more complex. That's... Not exactly what we mean. Keeper, when you talk about unity, well, does it mean anything else? Something secret? Perhaps you should talk about this inside. Now that we have a little privacy, why don't you tell me exactly what it is that brought you two here? We've lost people, Keeper. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And these Starborn, I take it they're different from the people of the settled systems? There have always been mysteries that seem to defy our understanding of the universe. Beyond rational thought. We enter life as an act of someone else's faith in us. There's no way of knowing who we will become, and yet the risk is made anyway. So you've pushed into the unknown, not knowing where it would take you. And it's brought you here. I think I can, if you're willing to find your way in the dark for a bit longer. 
I can give you a path to discovering its meaning. There's an old story, far older than the Sanctum Universum, of someone who walked the settled systems and saw every corner of it. This pilgrim claimed he found the true meaning of unity. I always thought of it as just a parable for trying to bring humanity together, but maybe it's more. In my story, the pilgrim met the founders of the House of Enlightenment and the enigmatic cult of the Varun, and he gave them each a part of the truth. Then he goes to his final resting place to live out the rest of his days in contemplation of infinitum addendum, his addition or contribution to the infinite. But what if the story isn't a metaphor, but a code, a way of finding the pilgrim again, or at least his grave? I agree. I think you need to talk to them about this unity pilgrim. And clearly, not just in a theological sense, as I have. Oh yes, typically. But there is a lone zealot that was captured recently for attacking UC ships. I've visited her a couple of times. Hopefully, she'll be willing to talk to you as well. And if you need directions to the Enlightened, they have a branch in the well helping the poorest citizens of New Atlantis find a better life for themselves. I'll stay here with the Keeper. We need to catch up. And I wouldn't mind asking him a few more questions. That's convenient. Kila City could really use something like that. Cora likes throwing stones into the pond. She did. God, that was ages ago. brownouts all the time. Mast finally sent someone down there, but nothing's changed. A visitor? I have all the company I need. He knows not the truth. He sends another to ask more incessant questions. I never can make heads or tails of these guys. The Great Serpent waits in the shadows. He will entwine the universe, and all but the faithful will be made as dust. That is the truth. No more, no less. It would be really helpful if you told us about it. 
if that even matters in the slightest to you. Yes, I have spoken to your keeper about this. I will tell you what I told him, and then you will leave me. Jinan Varun meets the Unbeliever. He gives false prophecy to Jinan. But such is Jinan's conviction in the Great Serpent, he does not hesitate. He cuts the Unbeliever down. But the Unbeliever returns. Jinan realizes the Great Serpent is testing him, and he will not be found wanting. Four times they fight. Over 120 rotations of the planet they are on. Remember these four battles, Jinan, the Unbeliever says. Remember these 120 rotations. But Jinan knows this is blasphemy and delivers the killing blow. That is all. I have heard of no such thing. If it exists, it is a shadow that the Great Serpent casts to deceive the Faithless. Strength and conviction show your worthiness to the Great Serpent. The kill is not as important as showing there is no doubt. I grow tired of speaking. Leave me. I'm surprised I have yet to see the inside of the security office. Here's hoping the street continues. You know why I hired you, Brody? You're a man who takes pride in your work. I appreciate the praise, but I wouldn't say it's anything special. It may not be special, but it's hard to find. And that makes it valuable. I used to drink. If it's about the financial or food assistance programs, we are backlogged. Don't worry, we're doing everything we can. Oh, we're not. Sorry. Can I help you? Did Keeper Aquila send you? Oh boy. Look, <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but it's important. Really important. Listen, I've talked about this with him a ton of times, and there's no record of a Unity Pilgrim. But since you both insist, our early records are mostly administrative. Humanitarian projects, group counseling notes, charity expenditures. But there is a series of exchanges the founding members recorded in a lot of detail. It's the closest thing I have to what Aquilus is describing. <laughs> we might actually have some, but uh, anyway. A man walks into the first house of enlightenment. The founding members just call him the Drifter. So they think he's a charity case at first, but no. The Drifter asks them a bunch of questions. If your philosophy is built on an individual's own morality, what about the second person? That second person might disagree. Isn't the problem of two what you're really looking for? And the founders respond, each individual must understand how the second person lifts them up. All of human effort is a story of cooperation pushing us forward. And it kind of goes on like that. He comes back every week for a year. Same conversation every time. Second person this, the problem of two that. Honestly, I think the founding members made it all up. There was a little more hesitation being openly atheist in the early days. I think they were experimenting with writing their own scripture. Fortunately, that got abandoned pretty quick. After the records of the Drifter end, you never see anything like it again. Besides what the Keeper would say about it, sounds like a gathering point or a center. Or in mathematics, it would mean one, like the one the first at the beginning. Always happy to help. 
If you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of aid efforts to coordinate. This is for you. Well, I see your parents didn't skimp on your P's and Q's. I spotted it on our last planetary foray. All part of the service. Hey, I'm gonna pick things up one way or the other. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Who knows? Check in with me now and again and I might find more. you learn? Was there something hidden in their stories, like we thought? Hmm. Planets are often named by number. That second might mean the second planet in the system. What else did you learn? If there really is a location the Pilgrim wanted us to find, those do sound awfully like coordinates. Was there anything else? Yes. What he added to infinity. Maybe that points to a name. If we're looking for his resting place, we'd need to know the name of the star system, wouldn't we? Let's see. We have something that could be coordinates. Something that could point to a planet in the system. But what's the name of the system? Infinitum addendum. What if we break down the parts? No systems named finite or add. That just leaves in and dumb. <laughs> well, that's certainly how I feel. Yes, that's it. The second planet in Indum at four and one hundred twenty. That's where you'll find the Pilgrim's resting place. And from there, maybe you'll find the true meaning of unity. Before you go, you've now spoken to many different perspectives in our universe. In a way, you'll be carrying their philosophies with you on this journey. I know you're looking for a specific unity, but if you had to guess what it was, what interpretation would you give it? Ah, but what makes something like that holy? Gravity is also a force that brings things together. Should that be sanctified? And so you think this word unity describes a similar miracle? The processes of the universe are all in accordance with some greater intent. This, uh, this is all a bit above my pay grade. Well, I won't keep you any longer. This has been fun, I have to admit. Go, find your truth. Uh, I got some stuff on my mind when you have the time. 
There needs to be a bigger word than thanks. More than gratitude. And whatever that word is, I feel that way towards you. I'd be dead. Flat out dead if it weren't for you. You and me both. Truly. I gotta ask. Why me? It was an impossible situation. And if it's wrong to ask, sorry, but it's gonna keep me up at night. Barrett's been in Constellation so much longer. He's, he's more veteran, probably smarter. It's gonna be hard knowing I get to live my life, but his is over. For my girl's sake, I cannot thank you enough. How are you holding up? Are you okay? Whew. I wish I could focus like that. That hunter bastard's gotta pay. Pay big time. I don't care if he's starborn and indestructible, we need to figure out a way to take him down. Nobody messes with my family like that. Just bring me along when you do. This is personal. I just want you to know, I'm here for you. The only way we're gonna get through this is if we all lean on each other. You ready to take up?
tanks aren't going to be a problem here. Those ruins, they look ancient. Oh, Vladimir would go nuts for this. Where it too. Introduction. Your success is unprecedented. Before you came, we were just discussing how continued use of force against you is unwise. <laughs> I don't think your patient counselor act is working on. 
on them. We are not a monolithic people. The Starborn are individuals. Some are united in cause. Others are in it for themselves. We are all in it for ourselves. Some of us are just more honest. The Emissary threatened your ship, demanded you hand over your artifact. How is that so different from what I did? We needed to warn you off. Every encounter with one of our kind could spell disaster. For whom, exactly? I say whoever can collect them should. And who gets to say that? You. Me. The Emissary. I have debated morality for near infinity. And all I have found are groups of people enforcing their will on others. Rules and laws spoken as principles, but backed by arms and violence. Enough. We have more to discuss. The Unity. You are on the path to it. It is a place, a gateway. It is where we were reborn. Not a relatively expendable Dusty anymore, are you? Look at where you've ended up. I'm not who you think I am. <laughs> this universe is only the first one you've been to. I've seen hundreds. Where I came from, I was the one who ran to the eye. I left you behind to protect the artifacts, and the hunter killed you. One of me, at least. I collected the remaining artifacts, and they opened the way to the center of my universe, and the doorway to an infinite number of others. That is the unity. When I stepped into it, I became a starborn. That's how I've entered other worlds, including yours. They are all connected. I have to. This is bigger than all of us. Help. All the artifacts are needed to complete the armillary and open the way to the Unity. In every universe, the Starborn fight over them. Innocent people die. You've witnessed the power granted by the Temples. The anarchy that can be unleashed. Someone has to decide who should get them. Here it comes. The Emissary tells you only the worthy should enter heaven. You're twisting what I mean. They're hypocrites. They use the chaos caused by the hunt for the artifacts to establish an order where they decide who's worthy. I attacked your lodge because I wanted the artifacts, and you held me off. You got away. That wasn't some morality play. You didn't survive because of righteousness. You won because of persistence, luck, and skill. As I have done countless times. I was also human once. But what does it matter who or what I was when eternity is within your grasp? It means I've seen thousands of universes, collected their artifacts, been to their temples. You have a small taste of their power, but it keeps going. Oh, say what you really mean. That if what you're seeing is true, that means anyone can act the way I do. See things how I see things. You say I can't be the same man as Aquilus. You're really just talking about yourself. The real monster lives within us all, doesn't it? You've never come this far. Not in all the universes I've seen. The path to the unity is opening to you. You're going to tip the scales one way or another. Better your hand be on one of our sides. Bingo! I want to 
truce between all three of us. Give you some time to think over which approach to the unity is the one you want. Mine or the Hunter's? Yes. Let's see how willing you are to live under someone else's rules. Just remember, one of us isn't trying to judge you. I'll tell you everything I can. Sure you have more questions. Ask. It's not an easy experience to describe. But the Unity will speak to you. Offer you the chance to become Starborn. You will be leaving this universe behind to be reborn. Everything you were before will be gone. Maybe that's why it offers the choice. Compassion? Or is it testing us? Different? I never know who you are when I meet a new version. But so much of you stays the same. It's hard. But each universe is precious in its own way. Mine will never have its original you in it again. As yours won't have its real me. You've seen the terror the Hunter causes. Every time a Starborn goes through the Unity, they get more artifacts, find more temples, gain more power. We can't let more like him abuse these gifts to destroy whatever's in their way. When all the artifacts are assembled, the device they create is called the Armillary. In many ways, it's a model of the multiverse itself. Through it, you can reach the Unity. And from there, you can become Starborn. You might think the Emissary is on your side. But your persistence is what forced them to tell you the truth. Remember that. Whoever created the artifacts and built those temples is playing a game with us. One whose prize is access to the center of all creation. There are no rules. Whoever gets all the pieces wins. And I've won. Over and over. I don't kill for the unity. I find the easiest pathway to it. I've simply found that it's the quickest way. Talking, forming alliances, waiting for the right moment to commit theft. It's all so tiresome. I'll admit, you getting away has been the most interesting thing to happen in quite some time. As soon as I realized what had happened, I knew I needed to wait until this meeting with the Emissary. To decide what to do about you. To see what would happen, of course. You might not understand just how many times I've done this. Usually, you're the one who ends up dead, and whoever cries over your body goes on to become the Emissary. Sometimes I manage to get you all bunched up and take care of the problem in one go. And sometimes the Emissary has gotten to me first, and I never arrive. Hundreds and hundreds of variations of me. Packing through Constellation. And it's almost never you. You making it to your ship on your own. That's... new. I took it as a sign. I don't get many of those anymore. They enter the Unity, take artifacts from others, employ force. All the things I do. I am many things, but I would never tell anyone what to do with their gifts. That is your decision, not someone else's. The Emissary wants to become the judge of who gets to enter. But the Unity itself doesn't judge. <laughs> no, we always end up having this meeting at this time. But it's the usual affair. Can we make peace? No? Oh, how tragic. Honestly, I was beginning to wonder why I kept tending. And it's bad habit I started a long time ago. Perhaps I just like meeting the emissary to gloat. <laughs> 
you have provided something quite new to talk about. Maybe you're a random die roll. Or maybe the Unity is finally responding to all my hard work. Before you leave, I want to give you something. A way to another artifact, but also a lesson in how dangerous they can be. Seek the moon of old Earth. There are secrets there you must discover for yourself. Here, to open the way. Yes, I will say no more. And I am sorry we have not always been forthcoming. I hope you will see what I have seen. You should also talk to your colleagues in Constellation. I am sure that they have gathered more information on the remaining artifacts in the fringes of space. Part of me wonders what they will all say about what you have learned. But I will leave that to you. Sometimes I just want to turn off the grab drive so we can float around. It, but I got to admit, New Atlantis is classy. I'm not a fan of the UC, but this here, it's a little patch of heaven. Hey, I've been talking with the others, and I'd like to get everyone together to say goodbye. You know, to bear it. Thank you. It wouldn't be the same without you there. I'll have everything set up in a few days. Mateo told us about your pilgrim's voyage. You found it, didn't you? The meaning of unity. What? It can't be. Our colleague is alive in some alternate dimension? A am I hearing this right? Let's take a step back. This is everything we've been building towards, and the implications are a lot to take in. Could you explain the part about multiple universes one more time for everyone? Yes, I wouldn't mind a little more detail. And that's why the Starborn want the artifacts so desperately. They're the keys to unlocking the infinite. I don't even want to think about the physiological changes you'd need to travel between universes. Plus what it would do to the mind? Enlightenment? Or oblivion? Like the Hunter. You have the opportunity to reach the closest thing to your god that might exist. And you're second-guessing it? One doesn't approach the afterlife without some trepidation. You're right. We have to see the unity for ourselves. I know this has been a lot for everyone to take in, but we finally have answers. Let's make the best of them. Uh, not to make a sharp turn in a grand tale, but I got the eye fixed up. Bruised, but still blinking. Let me know when you're ready to follow up on what it's seen. If you are free soon, can you? These last glimpses from the eye are from the farthest fringes of known space. Could be the only remaining pieces outside the hands of the Starborn. Catch a smile out there.
So, Miss Stay Up Late Reading Under the Covers, did you learn anything new from your book last night? <laughs> Don't pretend to be mad at me. I know you aren't really. I learned that back on Earth, people used to use the stars to navigate. That's so cool. But I guess it only worked because they just lived on one planet. Just be careful. Cora's grown rather attached to you. She might not be alone. Chief of Security. If you'll follow me, I'll show you to the Director. We're a small research station in the middle of nowhere. Pirates eat places like these for lunch. It is my job to make sure that we are not on the menu. Kaya Patel, our Administrator and Research Director. 28 years in quantum particle physics, or so I'm told. It's beyond me. We'll take the back way out. Here, you can see our lovely storage area. Don't touch anything. So, uh... What the? Easy! Easy! What the hell was that? What are you talking about? One minute, you're following me, and then you're just gone. Minute later, you pop in out of nowhere, looking like you were in the middle of a fight. In our storage room. I should have never let you inside. What is this? Some kind of stealth tick? Who are you working for? Look, I don't know what's going on. Let's get you to the director. Maybe she can figure this out. Come on, this way. Who's there? Oh, oh thank God. Finally, someone came. The distress signal. You picked up the distress signal, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. I wouldn't have made it much longer. 
It's been so long. I'm out of food, out of water, but I made it. I... Wait, how did you get in here? Hughes? Ethan Hughes? But he's dead. No. No, no, no. This doesn't make any sense. Unless... The accident. Maybe... Maybe this is a side effect of the accident. If the probe is still feeding power to the distortion, then... Right. Sorry. Three months ago, I was calibrating an experiment in our high-energy research lab. There was an accident. An explosion. It caused a gas leak. Sparked a fire. I was trapped in the control room. There was nothing I could do. They're... They're all dead. The lab was built around a xenolith with a dense metallic odd... Just disappear. We should... Wait. He's back. All right. We're on our way up. Hughes out. I was just filling in the director. Let's keep moving. If anything happens, the director's office is on the second floor in the view. You can't miss it. Come in. Kaya Patel, research director. And this is our chief scientist, Maria Hughes. Ethan said you disappeared right in front of him. Twice now? Three times? Director. You can't be taking this seriously. Look, I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but there has to be a rational explanation for all of this. What does our research have to do with this? No, it's fine. Let's start there. This facility and the research level two kilometers beneath us were built to study a gravitational distortion. Three months ago, our chief engineer was calibrating an experimental probe when something went wrong. We still don't know what happened. There was a series of explosions and somehow it's still running. That would make sense. That's why the field strength keeps increasing. We have a control unit for the probe. After the accident, I tried to use it to shut down the system but the kill switch isn't responding. We could shut it off manually, but the entire research level is locked down. We can't even get down there. Excuse me? That is quite a claim. What makes you think that? Tell us about this other universe. Raphael? Raphael died in the accident. He... Wait. Gas fire. Gas fire. The leak. Director, there was a hydrogen leak right after the accident. It was contained in a minute or two. But if it hadn't been, it could well have caused an explosion. Another universe, though. That's a lot to swallow. You mean this other Raphael? No. How could we possibly do that? Raphael was a colleague and a friend. If there was some way to help him, I would. But it does seem unlikely. We're not sure. Raphael was in the lab near the ventilation controls. He could have stopped it. Maybe he did. Or died trying. 
presumed dead. As Maria said, the research level is still locked down, so we don't know exactly what happened. If he survived, he could have ended the lockdown, but... An artifact? You mean the source of the distortion? You know something about it? The multiverse? Other universes? At least one other universe, clearly. And you have some connection with them then. Interesting. I wonder if that's why this is only affecting you. We didn't know. That's why we were researching it. That is science, after all. So far, no one else has reported anything unusual. Either it's your prior exposure to these artifacts, or perhaps simply the fact that you're an outsider here. How? I told you the research level's locked down. We can't even use the damn elevator. What? Clever. In this other universe, Raphael survived. He made it back from the lab. So clearly his elevator works. Take it. And you might be able to shut down the experiment. This is crazy. But first, we have to do something about your shifting. Maria, do any of the other controls still work? Could we adjust the particle sampling rate? Or the beam voltage? You can't be serious. We have no idea what we're doing. This thing is already tampering with space-time. If this gets any worse... It may also get worse if we do nothing. Right now, this seems to be our only path forward. <sighs> All right. It's worth a try. Then it sounds like we have a plan. Come with me. The control unit is in the fabrication lab next door. you. What happened? You disappeared, and the ceiling caved in, and... and... I thought I'd finally lost it. I'll manage. Look, can we just go? What? How? Look, if you think things are bad up here, the research level is even worse. I barely made it out, and that was months ago. I don't understand any of this. If I hadn't seen you disappear with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. I... Okay, okay. You're my ticket out of here. We'll do this your way. We can get out through the pantry. Here's the key. I'll back you up, I guess.
What the? You... Security break! Go. 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 Out of my way! Pardon? Yes? Excuse me. to clear this out, assuming the rest of the building doesn't come down on top of us. I'm not sure. It might stop whatever's happening to you. It's a reasonable theory, I guess. They're a native species. We had an electric pulse field to keep them out. The fire took out the generators, damaged the foundation. They just keep coming. I was in the lab, working on the frequency calibration for the probe. I was walking out of the control room when it happened. I heard the tanks rupture. The alarm sound. I only had a second to react. I jumped back into the control room. The doors sealed. I was safe. From the gas. The fire. Everything. But I was trapped. There was nothing I could do to stop it. If I had gone the other way, maybe I could have made it to the ventilation controls. Killed the system. Even if it killed me. I don't know. I don't want to think about it. How should I know? You're the one who keeps winking in and out of existence. I just want to get out of here. Go do whatever you're going to do. I'll see if I can clear a path to the door. You, you realize you just put into my locked office. So much for security protocols. Uh, sure. Down the hall. Take the stairs next to the atrium. Yeah, let me get the doors for you. And done. Is there anything else you need? Uh, yes. Kataxi. Nasty things. The original survey team ran across them. You're welcome to read the old logs if you want. Yeah, I'll unlock the terminal for you. The Kataxi in the other universe. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. I've got an experimental thing one of the engineers put together. But... Uh, what did I do to deserve this? That's typical. Try to be nice to someone and they treat you like a pushover. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. Maybe we can work something out. You may think so, but I don't. Sorry, I have... Bigger than you'd expect. We've got a particle accelerator. Whole lab complex, the high energy research lab. Real state of the art. Can't tell you what a tenth of it actually does. That's right. Has been since the accident. We can't connect to the control system to override it. The whole system's on a heads rigger. Cameras spot anyone not in the staff database. They fire off an alarm and all hell breaks loose.
what? Did you get lost in the hallway? Ugh. All right. This is the probe control unit. Most of these controls aren't responding. I'm going to very carefully adjust the settings I can. There's no way to tell what's about to happen. Pay attention and be ready for anything. I'll begin by adjusting the energy feed of the electron beam array. We're at 93 terabolts. Calibrating to 95, 97, 100. Ugh, nothing. Let's try the other way. 91, 89. What the? Okay, okay. It looks safe to approach, but what in the world? It's a micro distortion. Flux pattern matches the distortion in the lab. The setting is just exposing it somehow. Step into the distortion, please. Look, whatever's going on here, it's not affecting me. You want to call this whole thing off? Fine. Otherwise, step into the field. Nothing. No, hold on. There's a slight pattern change. Some kind of resonance. Alright, stay there. Let me turn the feet back up for a moment. Calibrating to 90, 91. What happened? Are you all right? So, the lower setting causes the distortions to manifest, and the higher causes you to shift. That seems promising. Keep it on the lower setting until you want to shift, and you should be able to avoid any more accidents. I'd give you my control unit, but it looks like you already have one from the other universe. Love to take a look at that when this is all over. If you can get down to the research level, you need to make your way to the High Energy Research Lab. Disengage the power interlocks, then pull the emergency shutdown to stop the probe. That should finally put an end to all this. Oh, and before you go, the director wanted to speak with you. It really is just down the hall. Well then, all set? If you need supplies, I've asked Dr. Barakova to take care of you. It's the least I can do after everything we've put you through. Before you go, there is one other thing we should discuss. If this experiment is the cause of your shifting, when you shut it down, the shifting will stop. What happens then? To you and to us. Yes, and what of us? Nishina is a closed system, two potential states held in tension. When you shut down the experiment, that tension will resolve. You are the outside observer in the system. Whichever reality you are in, at that moment, is what will become real. For you, and your universe at least. The question is, which will you choose? If this were a choice between my life and Raphael's, I would ask you to save him. But as the director of the station, I am responsible for the lives of my staff. 30 people. People with families, careers, futures ahead of them. In this universe, you don't have to decide now. But when the time comes, please keep them in mind. Now, it's time you are going. With the network offline, we can't shut down the security system on the research level, so you can expect some resistance. Be careful. Ethan, unlock the elevator lobby, please. Ma'am, 
research level is still locked down. I'm aware of that. I... All right. Done. Good luck, dear. It's been a fascinating day. Tatiana Barakova, station's doctor. This is not a public medical facility, but the director has ordered me to assist you nonetheless. I can spare a few med packs. Beyond that, I am not your therapist, your psychologist, or your cosmetologist. If there's anything else you need, ask. Really? <sighs> you won't even need a bandage for that. Hold still. There. Excuse me? Perhaps you'd care to try a dead-end medical post on some godforsaken planet in the middle of nowhere, huh? Six-year surgical residency, and I spend my days treating paper cuts and hurt feelings for a bunch of mathematicians and physicists. And now I have to deal with some spacer who thinks they're jumping between universes? Spare me.
The security lockdown is active. Emergency override controls are available on designated security terminals.
are available on designated security terminals.
you are. Welcome back. Ethan, how are we doing? Research levels back online. Definitely some damage, but it could be a lot worse. We will have to replace a few robots. Yes, well, that's a small price to pay, all things considered. This is a lot to take in. Artifacts, multiple universes. Look on the bright side, dear. Just imagine the papers you'll publish. If anyone even believes this. I am curious, though. Why did you decide to stay here, with us? Of course. I'll make sure the Consortium remembers his sacrifice. Our next supply ship will be arriving soon. I'll have a full report ready for them. For now, I'd like to extend our gratitude and what compensation I can offer for everything we put you through. Thank you. This has been a truly remarkable experience. Talk. Glad to see you're back in one piece. Dad, can I have a pet? A pet? We live on a starship, Cora. Pets and starships don't always mix up. Aw, come on, please. Up, up, and away. I need somebody to talk to the ship by myself.
So we know the answer. Who are the Starborn? Well, we are. We're some cracked mirror version of ourselves. The whole thing seems uh, unreal. Yeah. Uh, who's keeping track? You know, yeah, plus one for Team Sam. I was hoping the Starborn were somehow so advanced that their concerns were... cosmic? Significant? Instead, they're fighting over goddamn toys like we've been doing since caveman times. It's just a stupid game to them. And all their deaths and suffering, not relevant. And they seem to be just as messed up as the rest of us. So the Unity is a gateway. A gateway to countless possibilities. And you have a chance to go through it. Imagine. I'd be lying if it doesn't sound like the adventure of a lifetime. I don't know if you're taking anyone with you, but if you take me, I got no idea if I'd go through or not. If it went for Cora, I'd jump on it in a heartbeat. Cora would probably shove both of us out of the way and dive in first. Born explorer, that girl. Exactly, right? I know it's your decision who to work with. But you gotta remember that the Hunter murdered our friend. Sure, the Emissary may be a version of Barrett, but he's not our Barrett. But that doesn't make what the Hunter did right. Not by a long shot. If the Starborn are party crashers from different universes, I'd side with the one that's not willing to murder innocents to win. Excellent. Glad to hear it. My head is still spinning. Maybe after a few nights sleep it'll be clear. Take care. Any day you make it through, I wouldn't say no to an up. Not need not.
starting landing procedure. something? accepted the assignment up here, we were told to bring a couple of personal items. Some psychological study said it helped when you're away from Earth this long. I brought my grandmother's old abacus. I would play with it on her lap, and she'd teach me the Russian for all the numbers. She, uh... just... got word that she passed. The next shuttle isn't for three months, so I'll, uh... I won't be able to go to the funeral. <sighs> Goodbye, Babushka. Thank you for teaching me math. It brought me to the moon. And 
vision spin up time almost complete. Total time 5 minutes 22 seconds. Right on schedule. How are the helium 3 valves holding, Nova? We double checked the leakage concerns this morning before the launch. All signs green. Any changes to the calculation sequence from Voltaire? No changes since we uploaded the last figures yesterday. It's a clean shot from here to Jupiter. One day the computer will be on board the spaceship. Just imagine that. One miracle of science at a time, Canaveral. Counting down in five, four, three, two, one. Canaveral, are you reading? All clear, Nova. Indicators look good. The ship should be cruising Jupiter's orbit right now. Visual confirmation will be possible in... <laughs> 32 minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. <laughs> How does it feel to break the laws? We're all pretty excited down here in NASA, I won't lie. Excited enough to tell me where you got the original data? Not in a million years.
check. Remember, no agricultural products passed here. And hit up the duty free first. Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. The recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Aiza comes with two members of the military. Everything they have brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I have been trying to cozy up to Dr. Aiza, Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I... I think I'm being invited into the lab. Station log. Dr. Judith Satien. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was just to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I. I don't know how much I should say, but. The periodic table just got thrown out the window. straightforward. That's not what I'm asking. We've had no success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effects. No motion graph to explain its harmonic frequencies. I can't even establish a melting point. Judith. But you had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to pump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on a goddamn napkin? I just need you to trust me. I have been trusting you. We keep slamming our heads against the brick wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Where are you getting your information, Victor? I'm sorry, Judith. I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. I promise.
This is history. This is where they figured it out. The hard science the setup systems was built on.
need all of that? I'm up for a little adventure. I'll carry anything you need. actually got to visit your labs back when we were working on the grav drive projects. 
Seems like ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now, Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns we're seeing. Our guess is that the pods might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I... just want to be sure. It's not like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books?
lab drives and this.
Do you understand now why I asked you to come here? The artifacts unlock the secret of interstellar travel. At the cost of Earth. An easy trade, honestly. Why have one world when you can have all the settled systems? Billions of lives were lost. Not even the stars are worth that. Assuming we weren't going to lose it anyway. War, disease, famine, all the classics. Don't you see? The power of the artifacts forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? And what gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the Emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That's why we watch over them. The only thing you're watching out for is yourself. I mean, of the two, hard not to choose Team Emissary. Join me, old friend. We can collect the final pieces together. Oh, no, you don't. You're not his old friend, remember? You're from another universe. Don't try to manipulate him. Okay. I couldn't win you over on philosophy. How about pragmatism? I'm more powerful than the Emissary. Than any other Starborn. And you might not understand why, but I want you to succeed. You've never gotten this far before. I need to see what happens to you. Clearly the lesser evil, but I don't gotta like it. Thank you. Well, can't say I didn't try. We'll settle this at the usual place. Barry Temple. We'll be there. You're lucky I'm a man of my word. I'll see you there. Stay for a moment. You must have questions about what happens next. There's always a final artifact in a specific temple. The hunter and I agreed that whoever you sided with, the other would wait there. Expect anything and everything. Other starborn, human mercenaries and defenses, alien creatures under mind control. It's all fair game. He and I made a number of agreements over the years, if you can even call them years at this point. We let him go. In exchange, he'll wait at the buried temple. You'll be able to prepare any way you can before then. There is a temple for every artifact. You should find as many as you can. You'll need their power. I'll meet you in orbit above the buried temple. We'll face what's there together. stranger to loss. Our own founder left on an expedition and never returned. 
It is easy to talk about the glory and excitement of breaching into the unknown, of lighting the darkness, but it is harder to stare into the face of the cost. That all of our progress is built on top of the lives of those who dared, and that we owe them the courage to continue our work in their memory. Thank you, Sarah. If anyone else would like to say a few words. anyone else wants to say something. Hey, how are you holding up? Just don't forget to take time for yourself, okay? Plenty of rooms if you need to sit down and be alone for a while. We'll get through this. It might feel like everything's falling apart, but that's why we need to stick together. So, instead... We all have to get through this our own way. Don't worry about me. Really, ago. I'll be fine. Is God real? The more proper question would be... When you have a moment. I am told these types of gatherings are a sad occasion. That assumption appears to be correct. No, I don't. I'm programmed to analyze sensory and biometric data so I can cross-reference, but I do not feel as you seem to imply. I appreciate you verifying my analysis, although I am certain my thanks will do little to improve your current psychological trauma. If you would like though, I can add some consoling language to my programming. It will take some time to adapt, but it will be okay. How was that? I will note that feedback for later.
to this point to act as an additional line of defense. I doubt any of the people who built this complex knew what they were guarding, or how quickly they'd be disposed of. It is close to the Unity. The artifact and the temple here are one, unlike the others you have found that are separated from each other. You'll feel it as we get further. The power of the artifact seeps through the seams of reality here. The Starborn here are powerful, they will hold nothing back. Even the dead can be made to fight for them. And many of my kind aren't above making use of machines. They had this military base built for a reason.
reacting to all the fighting. Might be the only way through. Okay, you. You're up. Something goes wrong in there? shift in space-time, a dip into the multiverse. We'll have to go through a few more to reach the center. Both? Neither. Something much like yours, I suspect. A beginning, a regret, or a surprise. All right. Keep yourself steady. You didn't tell me we have visitors. We have visitors. Welcome. What's mine is yours. Well, no, it's still mine, but you get what I mean. I'm not quite sure what you mean, my good friend. Aren't you... Aren't you... You don't deserve the final artifact. This life you've led, you're nothing but a thief, an opportunist, a liar. It's more than credits that the Unity will demand of you. You think you have a right to the infinite? You're nothing! Guards! I never liked him anyway.
Come on, Rook. Come on. You can make it. Barely stepped on the juryman's road with us. Can't see another soul off to the void so soon. No. No! I'll pour one out to the blackest sea for you, Rook. What the? Crixus ghost! What kind of cruelty is this? This some starborn trick? Come to mock me before you twist the blade? Multiple universes? You're a visitor jumping through the gates of space and time? Not sure if you're just a reflection of a shattered brain, but okay. I get your meaning. Well, ghost from the other side. I'll keep what you said rolling around in my head for a spell. But for now, wouldn't mind if you gave me a bit. I just lost a friend. Time's right. I'd appreciate a chat.
I shouldn't be too surprised you made it this far. It serves me right for not being convincing enough. <laughs> Is this where you give your big speech? <laughs> Let's hear it. I see the multiverse for what it is. You're the one painting over it. An interesting conclusion to jump to. <clears throat> I suddenly find myself feeling the weight of years. Fine. Just this once. In just this universe. Here. I would have preferred negotiating with some bullets, but that'll do. I've uh, got some stuff on my mind. When you have the time. You've done it. The temple's artifact is yours. Yes, you've proven yourself worthy. The unity awaits. I know we aren't from the same universe, but it kind of feels like old times. Here, all the artifacts I've gathered. Place the armillary in your ship. Power up your grab drive. It'll take care of the rest. You'll see the glory of our multiverse, your place in it. Asked to make a choice. I'll say no more. I would speak to them before you go. No. My place is in this universe now. That's a difficult question. You might as well be asking when is the unity? Why does the unity exist or how does the unity truly work? It's not a fixed place in space time. You'll be have more luck understanding when you get there. It's 
natural that your mind would go there, and it's not a simple question to answer. You stand now at the very center of space and time. Center being the best word to grant you understanding, but still not entirely accurate. The unity is what was, what is, and what shall be. It is nowhere and everywhere, nothing and everything. It is the unity. Any other meaning is entirely up to you, all of you. Everyone says that when they hear themselves for the first time. But no, you don't sound like this. At least, not this you. I am as much you as you are a part of everything. All points connect to here. When a star is born or dies, its existence beats through the heart of this place. The unity. I have seen all you are, have been, and could be. Do you feel like you've lived a good life? Is there anything you regret? Fair. I wonder what your decision will be then. In order to become Starborn, you must give the universe one last thing yourself. That intangible part of you, that something that makes you unique amongst the infinite will explode like a supernova. A part of you will fuse with the essence of this universe, while another part leaves it behind forever. Do you understand what I mean? This one final leap will change this universe forever, even as you leave it behind. Unknowingly, you just answered your own questions. For who creates things but creators? That is what they have been named throughout the endless circle of time. Are they one or many? Human or alien? Terrestrial or celestial? One day, you might even meet the creators, but not this day. As for the why, so that you could ask that very question. So that you could stand before me for time immemorial and delve into the mysterious of the unending cosmos. Much like the death of a star creates new kinds of matter, so will the part of your being become fused with the unity itself. That part is what becomes starborn and crosses into the multiverse. Through your eyes, it will be as if waking up from a dream. Walk into the gate of light, and you will become starborn. Everything will vanish, and you will awaken somewhere else. But that isn't your only potential destiny. You can turn around, walk away from the unity until the stars fade away, and you will wake up on your own ship. In your universe, you could live out the life you have. I have enjoyed speaking to you once again. All of you. Every version that is here in the Unity, right now. Go out into the stars.
Excellent. Just need to do a little paperwork. An orientation on the UC, a knock out an exam, and a probationary mission. We need to know you'll be able to hack it out there after all. Do well. You'll be out there keeping the peace in no time. Don't forget, John. I need him back after you wrap him in that fancy get-up of yours. No worry, Sarah. I'm not forgetting about you or our little business afterwards. Promise. First things first, head down to the orientation hall. Get signed up at the registration terminal. System will walk you through the rest. Oh, and if you got a bounty? Well, you're gonna have to make things right with the UC before we'll let you join. But if you've got any questions, I can get you sorted. Only those on official United Colonies business. Registration accepted. You may now proceed through the historical displays in the orientation hall. Things like an artist's rendition, right? No animal can be this ugly in real life. just like these. They're startlingly realistic. Have fun. Ah, you must be our new applicant. I'm Proctor Samuelson. The simulator's already been prepped. You can head in whenever you're ready. Well, I can't answer that question directly, I will say this. Due to the solitary nature of our work, resourcefulness is a critical tool in any Vanguard pilot's repertoire. You're permitted, even encouraged, to use whatever tool you're able to find in there. Good hunting. This is the Mark 18 Flight Simulation Chamber applicant currently in orbit around a high-detail recreation of a remote world. When you're ready to begin, please take a seat in the pilot's chair. Your exam is simple. Defeat as many tiers of opponents as you can before your ship is disabled. You must defeat at least three tiers of opponents to pass the exam. Good hunting, applicant. Target's active. 
Progress eliminated. Progress recorded. Tier 3 reached. Congratulations, applicant. You've defeated sufficient opponents to pass the exam. You may now exit the simulator through the hatch to record your current score, or stay and try your hand at the remaining tiers. Congratulations, applicant. You've passed. You can head up to Commander Tuwala to receive your final results and your probationary assignment. Or you're welcome to take another run at the simulation if you'd like to try and earn a better score. We'll only keep your best run. Who's back? Everything go all right with the exam? Or did you have some questions you needed answered first? Ah, so these are your numbers that just came through then. You ready to hear how you did? I'll let the techs know you think so highly of their work, and make a note you've got prior combat experience. So, looking at the data? Skip the murals altogether, huh? Not that they're required or anything, but naturally inquisitive folks tend to do well in this organization. Your physiological results are... eerily calm. Not a vital spike to be seen. You really know how to keep your cool. Exactly what the Navy's looking for in our recruits. Now, how'd you do against your foes? Alright, clear tier 3. We try to set a high bar, so that's no small feat. Nice work. Hell of a job. I might even let you fly me around sometime. So then, looking at your results as a whole, and presuming you're successful in completing your probationary mission, you could have your UC citizenship after only... just five years. We've been hounding for some recruits with experience. Says here I can even offer you a bonus along with your signing advance. Citizenship in five years? That's quite impressive. Took me almost nine, thanks to some false starts. You should be proud. So, sounds to me like we've got Vanguard material on our hands. If you're interested, we could bring you on as a provisional member today. Get you the credits you've earned, then send you out on your probationary mission. First though, all UC service people, provisional or otherwise, are required to swear an oath. So, you want to make this official? Commit yourself to the cause of the colonies? It's a big decision. John, you're not about to have my compatriot here sign some kind of contract that sells you their grandmother five years down the line, are you? Officer's honor, Sarah. This is honest work for honest credits. So, you ready to do the deed? You're not in the Freestar Collective here. Vanguard keeps its work above board. You want in, you have to do the same as everyone else. That starts with the oath. Fantastic. Then just follow me. What can I help you with? be right doing this where we couldn't see the stars. Now, raise your right hand. The motto of the Vanguard is Supra et Ultra, above and beyond. That is where we serve, beyond the furthest reaches of the United Colonies military, and with honor and duty above reproach. Do you swear to protect and defend the citizens of the United Colonies to the best of your abilities? 
and to uphold the values of the Vanguard. Honor, loyalty, self-reliance in all your actions as a member of the United Colonies Navy I guess I'll take it. Then let me be the first to officially welcome you to the United Colonies Vanguard. Now, only thing left is getting you that probationary mission. And what I've got is... comms repair. Group trying to refurb an old colony war processing plant on Tau City 2. Sounds like they'd barely gotten set up when their communications died. Place is as isolated as they come, so Brass wants a Vanguard to deliver the repair suite and ensure anyone present is safe and secure. So, can the people of Tau Ceti II count on you? No major settlements on Tau Ceti. No real active industry, either. Doesn't make for a big target. It's got the potential to be a pretty quiet trip. But there's a reason they wrote, Here Be Dragons, on the map edge. So if it were me, I'd hope for the best and arm for the worst. And if for some reason you do run into trouble, don't forget, it's your job to protect those who need it. So, you ready to head out? That's the spirit. Head down to the spaceport and talk to Crew Chief Harath. He'll get you the repair suite plus your new recruit kit. Oh, and your advance. Give it your all out there. Supra et Ultra. for leeches, get it fixed up, and let her know we'll have it ready as soon as we can. Yes, sir. Ah, you are new probationary then? Crew Chief Herat, pleasure to be working with you. It's my job to make sure all you rocket jockeys are ready for anything that comes at you up there. Now, Manifest says we're fitting you out with one comms repair suite. In addition to the standard issue welcome kit all probationary pilots get for their first mission. Med packs, some small arms, couple spare ship parts, all the essentials in case of any surprises up there. My people will have everything on your ship before you lift off. Won't even know they were there. Hmm. So, paying a visit to the people of scenic Tau City 2. Nice easy one for your first job. Just keep your head on swivel and you'll come home safe. Any questions before you head out? I honestly didn't realize it had people living on it until we got your record. Report they gave us seemed clean, no known hostile outposts. But I wouldn't say that's permission to let your guard down. Just watch out for wildlife and pirates. Keep those med packs handy and you'll be fine. Then I won't keep you. Make us look good out there, recruit. Scenery.
meat packing facility built on the fringes of the settled systems. I wonder what happened here. Something's been through here recently, but left everything in place. <laughs> At least we know it wasn't the Crimson Fleet. hit harder than I thought, or you've got some incredible timing. Regardless, I think it knows you're here. I'll unlock the door. Second floor, main building. But be quiet. What do we got here? It's too clean to be one of the settlers. Or a pirate. You see on patrol, maybe? Yeah, make my day if you said you were a shock trooper up for a stroll. <laughs> Haven't brought the joke to your homeworld just yet, huh? But you see Vanguard's a hell of a lot better than what I've got. 
I'm Hadrian. I'm a... I was a researcher with the UC. I, I came here on a rumor of a... Well, I expect you saw the results on your way in. What's left of the settlers? The work of Oxisio Machina. A terramorph. One of the nastiest aliens humanity's ever crossed paths with. And this one, well, it's something of an anomaly. Possibly a worrying one. I can't believe that a terramorph did all this damage. I mean, I've heard the stories, but to see the decimation firsthand. I managed to scope out a fair bit of the facility before it found me. If there are any survivors of the attack, they're long gone. Other than a remorseless killing machine. Among apex predators, they're the pinnacle. Resilient, agile, smart, and their mental prowess only increases with age. Some can even dominate the minds of weaker species, keeping them as pets, livestock, or toys. <laughs> They're creatures without peer. Terramorphs have a unique growth cycle. They're usually only found on worlds that have been long colonized by humanity. But Tao said he's too young to have one. Yet, here it is. I came looking for an explanation and found... all this. <laughs> Makes two of us. But this creature... I need to understand what it's doing here. To do that requires a tissue sample from it, and to get a sample... I need its corpse. But, we're not without resources. This plant... it's got an automated security system. Though, getting things online, as I've discovered, is not a one-person job. The admin terminal in this building needs its connection reset. And to do that, someone has to get to the security outpost. Across the compound. Not a far walk, but a risky one. You think you might be willing to lend me a hand? Good. Once I see the connection reset, I'll get things underway on my end. Take care of yourself out there, and make sure you leave enough of that thing for us to get a sample. to need it anymore.
Production restored. I'll make this quick. Hmm. Plant's turrets took a beating. But I should be able to get you a couple of kill lanes. Just get the thing to chase you down the alleys between the buildings, and you'll lead it right into a crossfire. Oh, hello? I wish I'd found this earlier. You notice those sensors around the facility? Part of a livestock tracking system. Should let you keep tabs on how close the Terramorph is. But it's not connected to this network. There should be a terminal in the adjoining room. Tune it to 183.5. Tracker's reading green. What's that sound? Lockdown is active. Shit. Stop. Stop whatever you're doing and get in cover. It's on the move. Watch the fireworks. <laughs> Give it hell, Vanguard. Power levels insufficient. Proceed to next power breaker.
tracker's gone quiet. I suspect it's either hiding or... Wait. You did it, didn't you? <laughs> Heavens above, you just flatlined a terror morph! <laughs> no offense intended. No, I've just known whole marine squads who couldn't take down a terror morph. To do it yourself? That's something else. You didn't happen to grab me a tissue sample, did you? A lot of life gets recorded in our cells. Like, for example, if this Terramorph's cells have certain radiation or chemical exposures, it could point to it having been transported on a ship. Then, we could start getting some answers about this thing. So, did you manage to nab one? All right. I spotted a microscope downstairs. Let's see if we can't get to the bottom of this. Equipment? It's not set up to do a proper analysis of our sample. But this Terramorph being here, of all places, it doesn't make sense. Humanity's spread plenty of creatures in our travels across the stars. Pets, livestock, pests. But Terramorphs? They're different. To our knowledge, no one's ever spread them intentionally. Yet somehow, they follow us. So when humans settle a world, 70 to 100 years later, terramorphs tend to just appear. No one knows how or why. Dangerous, but at least predictable. Talcetti, though, it's too young to have a native population. It's only been colonized 20 years. But then the other option, that someone captured one of the deadliest predators in the galaxy just to wipe out some settlers minding their own business? That seems awfully implausible. Which means we're either looking at a truly strange murder or a faster type of terramorph growth, the results of which could be catastrophic. Terramorph outbreaks have taken down far bigger colonies than this one. Well, they're not exactly buying tickets and flying coach. The theory is that they're spread by some kind of egg or seed that's able to evade our detection. But how the hell an undetectable egg turns into a terramorph without anyone noticing is a question no one's ever found an answer to. And it's why what's happened here could be real bad news for the rest of human civilization. They have. They even took down an entire city once. A place called Londinian had to be quarantined due to a massive outbreak during the colony war. It's the only known loss of that scale, but it's the reason why any change in our relationship with these creatures needs to be taken very seriously. You're right. We just need more information first. Time was, I had access to one of the best repositories of Terramorph research in the galaxy. Seems a natural place to start looking, if I can figure how to access it. But we also need to get this sample properly analyzed, 
get confirmation on just how concerned we should be. Luckily, I think I know just the person to help with the sample. What would you say to delivering this to him for me? Yeah, I'd do it myself, but I need to call in some favors. See if I can't get access to that Terramorph data. <sighs> Plus, maybe just pop by a hospital for a little bit. Clear it with your commander first if you have to. You can even show them this. My gene tag. Tell them Hadrian Sanan is worried there could be more attacks on the horizon. They should recognize the name. I was, long time ago, family tradition. But I know some of the folks from my old unit moved into the Vanguard. A couple even owe me favors. If I'm lucky, your commander is one of them. Oh, you don't understand what a weight off my shoulders that is. I need Dr. Percival Walker to put together a sample analysis for this thing. Full workup. He'll know what that means. I'm not sure exactly where to find him, but last I heard he was contracting with the Trade Authority on Mars. There's a place called the Sixth Circle in Sidonia. Bar run by some old friends. I'll meet you and Percival there. And here. It's not exactly a bounty, but you certainly deserve them. Should cover the cost of fuel to Mars, at least. Now please, go check in with your commander. We need to know what we're dealing with. us to the nearest restaurant. Can we skip the local chunks this time? Never agrees with my stomach. Look who's back. All set with that probationary mission? We can do your debrief and formally welcome you into the Vanguard whenever you're ready. A terror? What? How did you walk away with the terror morph tissue sample running comms repairs? What happened to the settlers? A gene tag? Let me see that. Hmm, Sanan. I know that name. Let me check the database. Huh. A lot of this data's been classified. Here we go. Service record. Wow. That's a lot of commendations. Seems like she served with distinction as... Co-head of a UC Xeno Weapons Division. Faced tribunal at the end of the Colony War. And was dismissed from duty. Guess that's why I'd heard the name before. If she's former Xeno Warfare, though, well, we can at least be sure she knows her aliens. Notation says that Sanan already faced punishment for her actions during the war. Dismissal from the UC military. And her sending you to me first makes me think she's actually trying to do this above board. Considering her history, reaching out to the UC probably wasn't the easiest decision. Which means that must be a pretty important sample. Certainly seems that way. Did your survivor, Hadrian, did she mention why she thinks this sample is so special? She 
thinks there could be more of these? This uh, has been one of the more surprising debriefs I've ever been a part of. I did actually have another mission lined up for you, supporting UC system defense against the Crimson Fleet. But now I guess you have two options on how to proceed. Head to the UC Vigilance and help out SysDef, or deliver that sample. I'll make sure you've got the proper clearances for either path. Consider these your first official orders. And here, so everyone knows you're working with the Vanguard. Welcome to the Navy, Captain. Vanguard's also got some custom ship modifications. You'll be cleared for access to them next time you're down at the spaceport. Talk to ship services. Now, if there wasn't anything else, I'd suggest you move out. Captain, congratulations on joining the ranks of the Vanguard. Anything I can help you with? What can I do for you? Sure, how about it?
right. Let's get this crate into space. Sidonia Trade Authority. Invoices can be collected from the... Oh. Not here for a delivery, are you? Do you now? Well, I do wish I could help you, Captain, but Dr. Walker has been missing for some time. A shame, too. We had such high hopes for Percival. I brought him on myself to do medical and biological consulting around the city. Not the sort of work the Trade Authority traditionally does, but we thought it had the potential to become a whole new type of revenue stream for our branch. I invested no small amount of personal capital into the endeavor, but then he decided to run off after a discipline issue. I presume the miners have him hidden somewhere. <laughs> Plenty of cracks on this old rock. But at this point, it's probably for the best. Dr. Walker decided to start brewing and selling his own pharmaceuticals to our customers below cost. Something his contract expressly forbade. As such, we requested our cut of the profits and began garnishing his salary. Perhaps a little too severely, but well within legal limits. It was around then that he ran off, abandoning his duty and his unpaid accounts. That's correct. We're no longer interested in Dr. Walker's services. He did leave his post, however, with a sizable debt to his name. If you were to find him and get him to pay, the Trade Authority would be most grateful for it. Oh, I loathe the Trade Authority. 
Is it absolutely necessary that we have to help them? I couldn't have put that better myself. Hmm. Pity. Perhaps a little advance on my part might pique your interest. Visit the Sixth Circle, a bar on the lowest level of the city. If someone in Sidonia knows where Percival is, you'll find them there. yourself there. This bar is for devil's vets and their kin. Doc Walker? Well, you're barking up the wrong... You. Why don't you come here and tell me what some Vanguard captain wants with Walker? Stray topsider wanders into my bar asking after a man like Percival Walker. Raises questions. What do you want with him? What? Someone give him the keys to a battle cruiser? Look, you can make up whatever crazy story you want, but you should forget about Percival. You can spare us the performative stonewalling. We simply need a moment of his time, and you needn't hear from us ever again. And you're someone I should trust, huh? Why? I'm UC Military. Retired. Can give you my gene tag code, too, if you'd like. Not necessary. But look, even if I decided I was going to help you get in contact with Dr. Walker, Percival made himself scarce for a reason. His debt to the Trade Authority. But if someone resolved that debt, well, Percival wouldn't have to hide anymore. Can bet that person would make a friend out of Percival, and the rest of us devils. And I'm always inclined to help a friend. Red Devils were the meanest marine unit the UC Navy ever had. Couldn't get in if you hadn't done at least one stint as a Martian Dusty. Made us tough. Reliable. It's why they chose us as the handlers for the UC Xeno weapons. No other unit could handle that pressure. Percival, though, he wasn't a grunt like all of us. Science officer. Made sure the monsters behaved themselves around the devils. And didn't with everyone else. But it was those monsters that did us in. When the colony war ended and the armistice came down, Everything associated with Xeno weapons got shelved, Red Devils included. Now, ah, now they're just a memory. Well, the most straightforward way to take care of this debt would be to just saunter up to the authority and pay him direct, if you've got credits to throw away. Of course, rumor is the Trade Authority keeps all their records and collections files on a central server inside their storeroom. If someone was to break in there and adjust Percival's debt to something a little more reasonable, say, a few hundred credits, I'd be happy to cover the costs. Making that adjustment would be illegal. I don't think this is a road we should travel. And uh, one soldier to another. Sidonia's full of old utility tunnels and crawl spaces. Wouldn't be surprised if there was one that let out right into the Authority storeroom. Say, with an entrance behind the bar at the Broken Spear. Ooh, and you might need these. And I look forward to hearing the good news. Heard you talking with Lou, so you're going to help Dr. Walker? 
Oh, <laughs> no. I, I mean, I've got my suspicions, but look, you're planning to help Percival, right? Oh, good, good. Oh, Percival's a good guy. Listen, I know how you can do it without having to resort to any... B and E. Aqueous hematite. Mars is full of it. People think it's just garbage. But Percival and I, we've been working on some projects in the deep mines. At least when he wasn't slaving away at his trade authority contract. But we stumbled on a way to make it useful and profitable. You give our research over to Octai at the trade authority, it should more than cover Percival's debt. That guy's always looking for an angle. Well, yeah. We were never able to finish the research. Spacers moved in and ran us out. Started setting up shop. Oh dear. I believe I see where this is leading. But if you can clear them out, I can walk you through how to finish the research. Then you can give it over to the Trade Authority. They'll get folks working in the deep mines again. Jobs come back, I become a modern-day folk hero. <laughs> then I don't have to sleep on an inflated spacesuit anymore. Uh, a bunch of parasites and cutthroats. They're folks from the fringes of space, willing to put down anyone who tries to move in on what they've decided is theirs. Even when it ain't. Strange this group would pick Mars as a new home. Sure, we're not downtown New Atlantis, but there are places where they'd be bothered less than here. My guess is the Authority tipped them off when they heard we were working down there. It cut off what they thought was the competition, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. So access to the deep mines can be found outside the city. It's not far. Shouldn't even need to hop back in your ship. We'd set up right near the main drill. Taking out the spacer leader should get the message across to the rest of them to buzz off. Once you've managed that, phone up here on the comms panel and I can walk you through finishing the research.
invaluable? stairs lead deeper into the mines. I hope we remember the way back to the surface. I'll only carry the good stuff. <laughs> Just kidding.
by. of the life form should prove useful.
lasers, huh? Good. Now to finish off the research, you're gonna need to collect a sample of hematite to run through the thresher. Grab a laser cutter and head back to the chamber where you came in. Once you've got a sample, thresher's the big machine in the next room. Passcode to start it is Ares 2330. Take care of all that, and we'll have Percival's name cleared in no time. Let me see. Reduced joint wear? Oh, increased lifting capacity? A dose of this stuff could make a miner way more efficient. This formula's gotta be worth at least as much as whatever Percival owes. Okay, so here's what you do. Tell Octai and the Trade Authority you found a business proposal that will make miners more efficient, higher yield, synergy, you know, all that business crap. And that you'll trade it to him for clearing Percival's debt. You good at doing pitches and stuff like that? Aw, oh, this is gonna be great. Oh, and here, a copy of the formula for yourself, in case you ever wanna try maximizing your own industrial output. Oh, use that if you can. Good luck. Maybe I can give you the same discount I give to locals. 
Hello, welcome to the Sedonia UC Exchange. The best goods, all courtesy of the United Colonies, straight to all of the wonderful UC soldiers, workers, and other citizens. I've got a little of this, a little of that, and maybe a little of some other things you wouldn't expect to find at the UC shop, hmm? But that's because I try to provide for everyone here. So, please, browse my stock and let me know what I can get for you, friendo. Take a look! Just that I'm... Be safe out there. No stranger to terror attacks, but how and why they occur is barely understood. As it's was there something else? Hmm. I'm never one to turn away an opportunity. But I'd be curious what you think you've uncovered in the Martian market that others have missed. Aqueous hematite, iron and wastewater. Well, I'm not surprised no one has proposed something like this before. And exactly what does this new drug of yours do? An interesting proposal, if your data pans out. But where's this hematite coming from? The active mines would be too expensive to retool. The deep mines could be an option, but they're full of spacers. Or so I've heard. Well now, that is intriguing. A completely untapped resource pool. 
and the sort of utility every mining firm in Sidonia would be clamoring to get their hands on. We could contract out all the actual lab work, bring on one of the hungrier mining concerns for materials, the licensing fees alone, and think what it would do for our image with the general populace. This mine reopened thanks to the Martian Trade Authority. Very interesting indeed. And what do you want for the rights to this drug? Dr. Walker's dead? That's it? Consider it wiped. Well, it seems we have a deal then. And here. A finder's fee from the authority. A perfectly reasonable amount for a discovery with this sort of potential. Wouldn't want you feeling short change down the road. We'll just be taking that slate before you have any second thoughts. It was a pleasure doing business with you, Captain. Red devils aren't exactly your average bar crowd. You can see it in their eyes. We don't belong here. Yeah? Did you now? Fine work. My end of the bargain then, I suppose. He's holed up in the old Red Devils HQ. Place was sealed up tight after the UC shuttered our unit. But we snuck him in the back entrance through the deep mines was also going to warn you about spaces down there. But it sounds like you might have already tossed those dregs. Yeah, the passkey. And I'll let him know there's someone he owes one hell of a thank you on their way down. a few choice items. Oh, it's fine. Go ahead. My parents considered themselves to be enlightened, but their lives were so busy they rarely pursued their beliefs. By the time I was old enough to start questioning these things, the idea of following any organized religion was almost an afterthought. It's not that I don't want to believe in anything, it's that my scientific mind is often at odds with my spiritual center. 
Having been out there, in the Starfield, seeing all those magnificent wonders with my own eyes, I need answers, not religious theory. I'm sorry if that disappoints you, but don't worry. While we're on this journey together, I fully intend to respect your religious beliefs. You mean, apart from being the chair of Constellation for the past five years? Well, let's see. I pride myself with my aptitude for astrodynamics, calculating optimal trajectories for grab jumping. That's been quite useful in the past. And as far as planetary exploration, my area of expertise is botany. So, don't worry. I won't let you eat anything that might put you in the hospital. <laughs> exploration is my entire life. I consider it both a career and recreation. That being said, I will make a confession, but you have to promise to keep it between us. Before I graduated from school, I was in a band. And no, I don't mean the school band. I mean, a rock band. We called ourselves Ironic Comet. <laughs> a ridiculous name, I know. But uh, we were just a bunch of teenagers getting together and having fun. And before you ask, no, I wasn't the lead singer. I actually played the drums. The band never really went anywhere, of course, but those were good times, and I remember them fondly. Oh, okay then. Until later. can't get through this way. Perhaps we should try making our way down using the caves in the back of the area.
like building a ship in a bottle. various old men by wiping away their hard-earned debts. Adrian sent you. She's... did... did she look okay? Sounds like Adrian. Watch that woman lose a digit trying to get a better tissue sample. What? You can reattach a finger, Percy. So what exactly did she have you bring me? Terramorph attack, huh? Not exactly sure why you'd be bringing that... Wait, Tau Gourmet? Like Tau Seti Tau Gourmet? That's a joke, right? There's no settlement old enough on Tau Seti to have a Terramorph. Either someone's setting up the worst petting zoo in the universe, or... If she made you come all the way for this... Let's get inside. I need to see these cells. Gonna ask you to not touch anything. Got some projects in the works down here. I wasn't expecting guests. Oh, and Lou mentioned how you took care of the dead. Can't say I'm thrilled the Trade Authority got their mitts on the research, but I guess that's the price you pay not to live in a cave the rest of your days. All queued up. Let's gaze into this abyss, shall we? All right, just get those cellular markers tagged. Wait, where are the markers? This, this can't be right. This sample, it's Londinian. I'll, I'll need to get this all in a slate. Adrian really gave you this sample. You're not lying to me? Because if you told me this was a hoax, and it'd be the best damn fake I've ever seen, I'd be mad and very, very relieved. Can't just humor an old man, huh? This sample, it's got all the indicators of the worst terramorph attack in human history. I presume you've heard of Londinian. It was. An entire city wiped off the map. The swarms are so bad, they had to blow the spaceport and seal the place off from the galaxy at large. Not a lot of samples made it off the world from the time of the attack, but the ones that did, well, they look just like this one. I didn't detect any of the telltale signatures this specimen ever sat on a ship while it was alive, either. I don't think it was transported to Talzetti. This specimen, it grew there, faster than any Terramorph should. Which means... If we're about to start a new era in human terramorph relations, where big, sudden Londinian-style attacks can happen outside Londinian, that's not gonna end well for humanity. It would be the end of us as a species. So, you lugged this bad omen all the way here. You wanna tell me what your plans are for it now? Because until now, the Terramorphs that wiped out Londinian had the good sense to stay put. What happened there? It was a tragedy, but at least it was contained. So to find evidence for a similar attack on a different world, well, we don't have enough information to know precisely what this means, but I doubt it's good. So I'd love to know what it is you're planning from here. 
The circle, huh? Could use a drink about now. Here, faster we take the lift to the servants. Not supposed to use it, but given the circumstances, I'm inclined to just ask forgiveness. Let's get going. Entertaining the notion of Xeno warfare angers me to the core. yourself anymore, Major. Our friend here showed me your sample. Suffice it to say. Not here. Let's talk somewhere more private. Lou said we could use the back. gave me the abridged version of what went down. Yeah, I can't thank you enough for taking care of all that. Makes two of us. I hope it ultimately didn't end up being too much trouble. That's... well, that's certainly not what I was expecting you'd have to go through. But thank you. I'm just glad you both came through intact. So... Were you two able to get that work up together? Got it right here. That sample? It's an exact match for the ones from Londinian. Londinian? That's... That's exactly what I was afraid of. Not thrilled to be the bearer of that kind of news. That's for damn sure. So tell me you've got some kind of plan for that work up. Well, right now, we've got more questions than answers. So I've been trying to figure out what it's going to take to access our old Terramorph data. Good place to start. What'd you find? It's in the archives. The Armistice Archives? Doesn't that mean we'd be dealing with the Cabinet? And the Freestar Collective? And House Varun somehow? Guess we can kiss that approach goodbye. I didn't think the Cabinet would be willing to hear us out either. But I called in some favors. They've agreed to hear us out on two conditions. 
One, they want to see this analysis you two have procured. And two, they want to discuss what happened on Tau Ceti. With both of us. The Cabinet's the UC's highest governing body. The President, top military brass, scientific and diplomatic division heads. Any major decision the UC makes goes through them. They're the only real chance we've got of unlocking the Archives. So without their blessing, we're flying blind. Well, when the Colony War came to a close 19 years ago, with the signing of the Armistice, three factions were involved in the negotiations. The UC, Freestar, and House Faroon. They made a lot of decisions about what sort of tactics should and shouldn't be permitted in future conflicts. All information related to the things they decided should be banned was locked away in the archives. Now, it's possible to get things out of there, but only with the agreement of members from all three factions. And as to what our research is doing in there, well, I'll get to that. Well, that's about the best news I've had all day. But before you commit, I want to make sure you know the whole story. Percival and I, we're not just researchers. We were military scientists, ran a division of the UC together that deployed aliens on the battlefield as weapons. Place I was hiding out, that was our unit's home base. After some early fits and starts at other facilities, the place eventually became the heart of UC Xeno warfare. A practice that's been banned ever since the armistice went into effect almost 20 years ago. And the UC military cut us loose for what we'd done. Well, it was during that assignment that the UC asked us to explore deploying terramorphs on the battlefield. The project never got off the ground. But the data our team gathered is now sitting in the archives, along with all the other information banned after the Colony War. Under the watchful eye of monitors from all the galactic factions still participating in regular politics. But if we can convince the Cabinet to help us access that data, it'll give us the tools we need to decipher what exactly this sample might mean. And hopefully, how to prevent more attacks like the one that spawned it. Because the Terramorph project was doomed from the start. Terramorphs are too mean, too smart, too hungry to be used in combat. Trust us, we tried. The data that's in the archives, it's historical write-ups, anatomical notation, food chain analyses. I doubt they would have even classified it if it didn't have a Xeno Warfare logo on it. You have my word, it's not a threat. All right. I'm gonna go get this work up into the Cabinet's hands. I'll meet you out front of Mast in New Atlantis. Good luck. You two are gonna need it.
Captain! Over here! The workup's in the Cabinet's hands. They said they'll call for us once they've gotten to properly review it. But, listen, I know I should have been more forthcoming about who I was earlier. So, in the interest of full disclosure, there's one more thing you ought to know before we head up there. My relationship with the UC. It's more complicated than it might seem at first glance. The UC's actually the only reason I'm here in the first place. I... am a clone. Of a man named Francois Sanon. One-time Fleet Admiral of the UC during the Colony War. Former head of the UC Navy. They called him Ve Victus. Woe to the defeated in Old Earth Latin. A title he earned. The program I was a part of, it was the UC's attempt to create a new generation of military minds from one of their most respected tacticians. Secure the leadership of the UC military for generations to come. A non-trivial amount of gene editing. Clone, honestly, isn't even really the right term for our relationship, thanks to the amount of donor material that was required to bring me into this world. He and I are different on more than a few levels, but there's no denying the fact we're inextricably linked. No. They made a pretty grave miscalculation. The man I was cloned from, my father, was executed for acts he committed during the war. The man caused a lot of death on both sides. Freestar Collective and UC. Military and civilians. And the things he did, well, they're a part of the reason the UC and Freestar Collective aren't really on great terms to this day. So my involvement, it could be another obstacle they throw at us up there. I just wanted you to be forewarned. I, I really appreciate you saying that. I just thought you deserved to know, considering how much you've done already. You know, while we've got a second, was there anything else we needed to discuss? I know you got dropped into the middle of this pretty fast. Or, if you've got any last-minute business to attend to, now might be a good time. No telling how long the Cabinet's gonna keep us waiting out here. That's actually a souvenir from my time on Mars. The Red Devils unit I was a part of, they were founded by recruits who'd worked some of Mars' deepest mines. Folks used to adversity. The dust at those depths, it seeps into everything. The human eye included. Where the name Red Devils came from in the first place. It became an unwritten rite of passage that anyone wanting to enlist with the Devils had to do a stint in the mines before they could join up. The Devils were always talked about in such revered tones during my training, so as soon as I was old enough, I signed up. And the eyes were my parting gift. Well, thinking about it more, I suspect there'd be value in sharing the fact that the Terramorph project was, well, a failure. There's no need to be afraid of this data being weaponized. Knowing that should calm some of the Cabinet's fears and make it easier for us to dispel any suspicions the other factions might have about our intentions. Then I guess it's just a matter of... The Cabinet meeting is about to begin. All parties, please proceed to the cabinet chambers. Sounds like our cue. Here we go. Here on Vanguard business? Welcome. You must be the captain Hadrian mentioned in her report. You have our thanks for the risks you faced 
in securing this information. Oh, I'm sure she did. Yes, well, precisely how urgent is what I hope we'll determine here today. So now, we have two petitioners here making a surprising request. Access to the UC Xeno Warfare team's Terramorph data, currently housed in the Armistice Archives. A request which will require not just this body's agreement, but that of all three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, Captain, we've all read Hadrian's report on the subject, but we have yet to hear from you. Perhaps you could summarize for the Cabinet what it is you see as the goal of this endeavor. That's quite the leap, Captain. Madam President, I object to the very premise of this meeting. While no one would argue that what happened on Tau Ceti was anything less than a tragedy, Terramorph attacks are not some sudden new threat on the horizon. They've been happening for generations. To demand, we hand over banned archival knowledge and possibly upset the balance of galactic diplomacy because of a single attack. Seems at best panic. And at worst, a power grab by the daughter of a bloodthirsty warmonger and her associates. I would remind the chief diplomat who he's speaking to. If it's my father you're looking to address, you're welcome to consult a medium. I would also ask how many deaths the cabinet requires to act. Fifty? Fifty thousand? Because if tragedies like Tau Ceti are just prelude to more attacks, I have no doubt you'll get the body count you require. Let's keep this civil, shall we? And while there should be no doubt, the preservation of life stands paramount among this body's duties. Chief Essene has a point. Will a single attack, however troubling, be sufficient to convince the other factions to grant us access to what they no doubt consider weapon data? I don't think it's enough. Perhaps you can help, Captain. As the one who actually collected the sample in question, did this Terramorph seem at all alarming to you? That is worth considering. This attack took place on an almost completely uninhabited world. The casualties were minimal as a result. But if there's another attack, will we be so lucky? Hmm. Yes, a fine point, Admiral. So then, Captain, given the discussion now and the information you've been privy to thus far, if you were in our position, would you grant the request made to open the archives? I'm uncomfortable opening the archives without gathering more information. However, if that's the path forward you prefer, then so be it. I'm inclined to agree. As am I. Uh, I suppose that does get to the heart of the point, doesn't it? Very well. I consent. The galaxy was lucky you were here today, Captain. You and I are in agreement, Chief Diplomat. So, if there are no other objections, I believe we can agree to give our full backing to make the request to... <gasps> Chief Sarkin, what's happening? There's been an attack at the spaceport. Terramorphs. Terramorphs? More attacks. Just as predicted. Good God. Damn it. They're here. Now. There. There must be another explanation. The creatures evaded our scanner somehow. There will be plenty of time for conjecture later. Chief Sarkin, order the evacuation of the spaceport and have your men contain the things, but do it discreetly. The last thing we need is a citywide panic. Yes, ma'am. Admiral Logan, the local barracks can provide support? I'll make the order myself. The nearest anti Xeno squad, though, is off world. It should take a while to bring them in. Well, then, we'll have to make do with the tools we've got. You too. 
We can't risk those things getting out of the spaceport. I want you both on the next train there. We'll let them know you're coming and that you've dealt with these things before. Now go show them how it's done. We're on it, ma'am. Captain, I'm right behind you. Let's get down there. you for what you did we didn't we didn't want to hurt them the way those people were acting i've seen this before they were under the terramorph's influence weren't they i i don't know they were down at the port and they just started screaming we tried to restrain them get them on the train to get them out of harm's way but but some of the other officers down there, we couldn't restrain them fast enough. They just started firing on us. People we knew, they went berserk. Thermonic projection. Some terramorphs, they can induce this fog. It affects everyone differently, but some people just lose control, turn against everyone around them, even if they don't want to. They're like a puppet. You kill the morph, you break the hold. But this means we're gonna need to be real careful with our fire and keep that EM weapon at the ready. I honestly was just wondering the same thing. But no, you don't need to worry about me. I've had a Terramorph try it on me before. I'm not susceptible. So we'll just have to make sure to watch out for each other down there. Let's do it. Nat's unlocked. Please, do what you can to help them. creatures locked down on the landing pad. Barely holding our perimeter. They said you've done this before. Well, one fire team to spare and whatever supplies you need, but I can't risk them taking over any more of my men. Put those things down and do it fast. Hold them as best we can. For some backup. You say the word, we're out there on your six. You two have any experience with Terramorphs before? Only the brief they just gave on the way here, but we know how to handle pressure. 
Surviving a full-on mental assault isn't the same as keeping your cool in a firefight. Might make you more liability than asset. We're not UC security. You don't need to worry about us. Your call. We're on the line. things reached the populated areas of the city, we would have had an absolute massacre on our hands. They weren't kidding about you two. The universe put the right people in the right place. Hmm. Certainly doesn't feel like it. I don't want to think what would have happened if you two hadn't been here. Just glad we could rise to the occasion. Captain, we should report back to the President. Let her know the Terramorphs have been dealt with. Take care of yourself, Sergeant.
Those people are getting treated now. Don't know what would have happened if you hadn't shown up when you did. How the hell do terramorphs get into the city like that undetected? That's a relief to hear. Thank you, gentlemen. Let your people all know how much we owe them today. Yes, ma'am. Anyone in the wild ah, do there you are. It's a tragedy. I believe these attacks. We have some things. They we can't should happen again. You've got the cabinet's full backing to prevent more attacks. Understand? Captain, Hadrian, it would appear that the cabinet owes you our thanks for what you did for the city today, as well as an apology. Your concerns about the Terramorphs. Well, consider them validated. Thank you, ma'am. Of course. I only wish we could have acted sooner. Now, today's events have only clarified our path forward in the eyes of the Cabinet. You will have our full support in collecting the Terramorph data from the Archives, as well as a subsequent investigation into the nature of these attacks. But to accomplish those goals, we're going to need the right people in the right places. As such, the Cabinet has authorized me to reinstate you, Hadrian, effective immediately, to your former rank of Major. As soon as we've got the data in hand, we want you investigating these attacks and how to stop them. Will you do this? I... Uh, yes Yes, ma'am. I'd be honored. Excellent. But as you've both made clear, for such an investigation to succeed first, we're going to need someone to convince the Free Star Collective and House Varun to play ball. Someone who knows precisely the sorts of dangers the colonies and all the galaxy are facing right now. The Cabinet wants you, Captain, to be that representative. We see your atypical background as a strength, not a hindrance. The people you'll be dealing with, they're rather atypical themselves. In exchange, we're willing to fast track your citizenship upon collection of the data. So, will you help us? It has its perks. Only citizens can purchase property in the city. We also pay reduced prices on most goods and services across the UC. There's also a credit disbursement when you first join. Help get you on your feet. But above all, you'd become a dedicated part of the greatest faction in the galaxy. If you're willing to help us, we can open that door. I'm glad to hear it. Now. We, of course, won't be sending you in without the proper support. Deputy McIntyre in the Office of Interstellar Affairs will be your guide on gaining access to the archives. You should be able to find her in her office across the hall. And on behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our thanks. We are dismissed. We're counting on you. I'm gonna go Don't check your logistics in your Start getting the Work they're doing. Sure they get what they require. That must make you my vanguard captain. Welcome to Interstellar Affairs. I'm Deputy Chief Diplomat McIntyre, Chief Yassine's second in command. I heard you were instrumental in protecting the city from the attack. You have my gratitude. I was also informed that you gave quite the presentation to the cabinet. Chief Yassine wants you to know the Interstellar Affairs Office is fully committed to this endeavor. 
accessing the Terramorph data and beyond. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure you have the tools you need. And that means first getting you into the Archives. You do know what the Archives are, correct? Hmm. Someone paid attention in current events. So, then you also know that it was originally managed by the three major galactic players. Access to the Archives is only granted in cases of dire emergency, and requires a one-time use code from each of the three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, the UC is already on board, so that means we'll need to convince two people, the Ambassadors of the Freestar Collective and House Varun, to hand over their codes. Get them both, and you'll have your data. But that's a lot easier said than done. I couldn't agree more. However, both ambassadors have reasons they won't, or can't, work with us. Now, I'll provide guidance on how we believe you can acquire each code, but ultimately, it'll be up to you to get them both to cooperate. And I do mean cooperate. Threats and violence are off the table here. Though that doesn't mean we can't get creative. But it does mean we need to get you up to speed on who you're dealing with. Who do you want to start with? Ambassador Radcliffe of Freestar, or Ambassador Balmore of House Varun? Ah, <sighs> the good Ambassador Radcliffe. She's a veteran of the Colony War, and her only goal in life is to make ours miserable. Now, officially, our office is suggesting you try and negotiate with her. Use your experiences as a member of the military and with the threat we're facing to convince her to lend her support. And who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stranger things have happened. But my suspicion is we're going to have to rely on other tools to get her code. Huh. Well, if that's the case, I'll wait to be pleasantly surprised. But we do have one item up our sleeve. UC Intelligence has a recording device planted in the Ambassador's living quarters, which we suspect you can use to your advantage. But getting caught trespassing is a quick way to land yourself in an embassy holding cell. So, if you are going to try and access the device, you're going to need to find a way in there without being seen. Now, we recovered some intel we believe should be able to help with that. But there's also a disgruntled staff member you might be able to pump for information. Maybe even convinced to work with you. Yes, many. Don't steal anything. Don't get caught anywhere you're not supposed to. Absolutely do not harm anyone. If something goes wrong, we'll do our best to smooth things over. But I can't make any promises. Name's Cameron Long. He's younger than Ratcliffe, bears less of a grudge towards the UC. He works closely with the Ambassador, making him a promising source for information on the ins and outs of Embassy life, and someone who very likely hates her guts. All right. Here, your diplomatic ID. I'll give them a heads up, you're on your way. Not likely to let you through the door otherwise. And take these. Chief Yassin wanted you to have some options on how to proceed in there. Ambassador Balmore's... a challenge. When the rest of House Varun retreated into seclusion shortly after the signing of the Armistice, Balmore stayed here. He's since lent his support to a small number of archival requests so there's real hope he might again. Though claiming to know how a member of House Varun thinks is a quick way to earn yourself a psych eval. Well said. There's no reason to assume they're any worse than us, despite their cultural beliefs. Of course. But there is... another wrinkle. We're not 100% sure Balmore's actually still alive. Like his public appearances were always rare, but it's been several years now since he last poked his head out. 
Scans of the facility show life signs, but not the kind we were expecting. Your task is to find him and kindly but firmly remind him of his duties under the armistice. It would at least be a speedier negotiation, but I of course hope the Ambassador is alive and well. Now, the Embassy front door isn't an option, but our spies have stated there's a side entrance that should allow you access. Here. This device should get you all the way down to the Embassy interior. Once you're inside, though, finding the Ambassador is going to be up to you. And fair warning, we received a report that alarms might have been tripped inside the Embassy during the attacks. Watch out for automated security in there. Now, if you have additional questions or require clearance for a new approach we haven't already discussed, don't hesitate to ask. I'd suggest you start with Ambassador Radcliffe. Approach her while the attack is still fresh in her and her staff's mind. Be smart out there, Captain. What can I help you with? I'll only carry... Discovery reports have come in while we were away. I hope you are satisfied with the quarters available to you. Hey. Dropping off a few choice items? Talk to you later.
Want to see what I'm carrying? Until later. Visitor? You'll find Hard to believe it's been two decades since we were at war with the Collective, when it seems like only yesterday. Visitors are only allowed in the lobby, offices, or conference room. That means you. I'm going to be up front with you. I'm not happy visiting anything related to the Freestar Collective. But you lead, and I'll follow. All that security, and they still can't protect their own spaceport. The UC never fails to disappoint. I just wish I hadn't received the news from an SSMN broadcast. We have a strategic advantage to maintain, Mr. Mom. Of course, ma'am. Yeah. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, excuse me. Are you supposed to be in here? This building is Freestar Sovereign Territory. I'm sorry. Do you have an appointment? Ah, you're the one McIntyre called about. The eyewitness. She said you were at the spaceport. You have my thanks for what you did down there, truly. Saved many lives. Now, she also mentioned that, and maybe it was just a bad connection, that now the UC wants Terramorph data from the Armistice Archives, some of the most highly guarded information in the galaxy, in order to protect us all. I can only presume you're here to tell me I misheard her and that they didn't send you, local hero, to futilely beg on their behalf. Tell me I've got that right. Excuse me. A less level-headed person might think that was a threat, Captain. The only threats you're facing are the eight-legged variety just outside your door. Now can we please stop playing games here? Lives hang in the balance. A lecture in morality from the UC. How quaint and short-sighted. Let me be frank, Captain. The answer is no. That information is there because it is dangerous. I will not be the one responsible for its release. Now, why don't you quit wasting my time, and yours, and go. You're really gonna push this? All right, I will give you one chance, one, to convince me. Understood. I'm listening. The warmongers of the UC will find a way to make it dangerous. You have my word. I suppose you're right. Our job and our responsibility. You think this is about a grudge? <laughs> this is about safety. And that's not something I take lightly. Captain, I'm sorry, but my answer is not changing. The UC is just gonna have to find another way. Now, I presume you can see yourself out. Sorry. Oh, what? You're the Vanguard captain, right? You know, I was about to board the Nat to the spaceport when the alarm triggered. Sounds like I got real lucky. And like I've got you to thank for things not being a lot uglier. Heard that, huh? Yeah, the Ambassador likes to treat us like family, yeah. And she doesn't care for most of them, either. But, but, look, 
They said you were coming here on official business. The Ambassador likes to handle all that personally. Even if she does have trained diplomats here to help her. And I don't want to get shipped back to Aquila City, so... You should probably go speak to her. You... want to work with me? I... Why don't we talk somewhere... Uh, a bit more private? So you want me to work with you, but why now? Why me? No, I, I think that's a pretty safe assumption, and no other city should have to go through what happened here. So then, uh, what would you need from me? Okay, uh... <clears throat> First, you need her bio key, and that thing doesn't leave her side. Better chance of splitting the atom with a spoon than me getting that from her. The code machine. Only the ambassador's cleared for in there. Sorry. Her quarters. Huh. Well, that's doable. And you? And the UC will be providing me with what for my services? Oh, wait, I thought you were looking to hire me. I'm not taking a bribe. Uh oh, uh, <clears throat> that much, huh? Uh, okay, no, okay, yeah. Okay, so. There's a utility corridor that leads into the Ambassador's Quarters, which you can access through the main conference room. Here, the key. Whatever you do, don't let the guard see you entering or exiting the utility section, or you're gonna be in serious hot water. I'll, uh, I'll keep an ear out for more instructions from the UC. doesn't belong to you, right?
Zone. Did I not make myself abundantly clear, Captain? You're not getting access to the archives. Excuse me? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. No, no. If the Council found out, I'd lose my position. I'd be exiled. I'd be... Look, I believe we may have gotten off on the wrong foot. The issue at hand is one of trust, no? So perhaps if I can trust you to keep this little secret between us, then maybe we can find a way to trust the UC with access to the Archives. But where are my manners? Here. My pistol. Laredo. Custom made. Now, with my error rectified, I presume we have a deal? You... You're joking, right? I... Okay. Please. Pretty please. Don't tell my superiors I was thinking about double-crossing them. It was just talk. Nothing more. And I know you, my dear, dear friend, wouldn't let anything like that get in the way of the two of us and our factions working together. In fact, I think there's an opportunity here. Keep both our factions happy and ensure an air of legitimacy to the whole proceeding. I can only let you get the information on the Terramorphs. Anything else and people will get suspicious. And all research will need to be monitored. Freestar scientific observers making sure everything's being used for the right purposes. But those two items should be enough to allay any suspicions. What on earth are you... Ah, oh, yes. How could I forget? Here, the fee. Now let's go get your code piece so you can be on your way. It is reassuring to know there are still some people in this universe you can trust. Uh, I hope that'll be enough to maintain your discretion. You're gonna be discreet with that information, I hope.
It's a shame House Varun abandoned their embassy. I bet we could have learned a lot from one another. at all. It appears the flora they were using as decor has overgrown the entire embassy. to drop some stuff.
glad to haul whatever you need. Bye for now. not to trip any security.
So, what seems punishment becomes providence. <laughs> A reminder we can never truly know the Great Serpent's designs for us. You have my thanks, and my apologies for the ordeal you just endured. Come, let us discuss. Not the ideal introduction, I suppose, giving you a grand tour of the embassy via barely functioning intercoms. <laughs> I do greatly appreciate your persistence. I suspect the Venom Tree upstairs has worked itself into more systems than I'd realized. But then again, who could cage such a beauty? <laughs> Tell me though, what is it like outside? I heard the broadcast mentioning an attack, uh, then the embassy was struck with a power surge, and then... Silence. Has the rest of the city suffered quite so badly? <sighs> Is that right, huh? I shall need to have these repairs seen to sooner rather than later. Now, it cannot solely be the Serpent's Grace that brought you here at such an opportune moment. You were sent by the UC. That much is obvious. Who else could just waltz through my door, hmm? And the broadcast spoke of terror morphs at the spaceport. A worrying occurrence, certainly, but coming here of all places, when all I could provide is some enthused cheerleading and... Uh... <sighs> An archive code. So the UC requires information then. On terror morphs, presumably. Hmm? Do I see this all clearly? Yeah, the preservation of life stands as the very purpose of the archives. Using its data to prevent more attacks? There is logic there. But, if I am to grant you access, I have a requirement. For years, House Varun has been known only as an agent of slaughter. We founded this embassy with hopes of shedding that legacy. With little success. In exchange for my code, I require this. You must be the one who ensures it is used for good. Ensure House Varun's legacy is more than just carnage. The knowledge you ask for isn't evil. No knowledge is. It is we who bend it to evil ends. Oh, you must assure me this will be used to save lives, not endanger them. We'll do everything we can to make certain that happens. Well... Then I shall not fear. Please, follow me. Why are you bothering to carry all that junk? Anything useful? Bye bye.
Captain, you're back sooner than... Oh, oh, wait, did... did you actually succeed? With Radcliffe? And Balmore? We're all in agreement. That's... incredible. I wasn't sure Radcliffe would ever get on board. I'm very much looking forward to getting the debrief on how precisely you managed to pull all this off, but that'll have to wait for another time. Regardless, superlative work, Captain. And now, I've already arranged everything with the archival monitors. When you get down there, the UC monitor will give you instructions on how to deploy the codes. Follow them to the letter. Here, the UC code piece and an archival access card. The entrance is just on the other side of the plaza across from Mast. Absolute best behavior down there, all right? Captain, can I help you? I'm just... If you have any gear, you want me to... Maybe another time. Surprised to find out we're having visitors as we work. Major Sinan and I were just discussing the merits of your planned interfactional cooperation. I think it's a great idea. Get them invested in the solution. Make it clear we've got nothing to hide. I'm sure they'll be lovely house guests. Now, Captain, if you wouldn't mind transferring the documents to the Major, she and I have been discussing next steps.
Time for us to start getting some real answers. And figure out if we've been asking the right questions. So whenever you're ready. I... Yes. It will be. Percival and I have done our damage. This... This is us starting to put some things right. Plus, you don't need her word. We'll be setting up Oversight alongside the Collective. You're carrying the most comprehensive collection of information on Terramorphs in the known universe. If we can't pry an answer out of there, it likely doesn't exist. Certainly doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but we're not going to know until Percival and I dig in, so whenever you're ready. Acknowledged and accepted, Captain. So with the data out of the way, we've been discussing where exactly this work's getting done. The Red Devil's headquarters on Mars, back where you found Percival, seemed the natural spot. Already has the equipment, the safety measures. Should even be able to house its own cadre of independent observers. Though it sounded like the deputy had a few more things she needed to discuss with you first. Indeed. The most important of which is getting you your citizenship. Then I guess we'll see you on Mars. Captain, if you'll follow me. Follow me. Hello. It won't take long. Excuse me. This Requires a little more pomp. Howdy. You see that scientist out in front of Mast, staring at trees? Sounds upset. Whatever it is, it can't be that bad, right? All right, Captain. Are you ready to become a citizen of the United Colonies? Good. This isn't the only item we need to discuss, so I'll give you the short version. Please raise your hand. Captain, through your actions today and in days past, you have earned your place among the United Colonies. Through service, bravery, strength, and upholding of the mutual good, Will you carry and cultivate these values for as long as you remain a citizen? Then, Captain, I'm pleased to welcome you into the United Colonies as a full citizen. Here, your official ID and your citizenship dispensation. We've also let the Aphelion Realty Office out in the plaza know you're approved to purchase property. Now, the other item we needed to discuss. There's a member of the UC who's asked to speak to you, but this person is in a sensitive position. Normally, we wouldn't even consider something like this, but we think this person has information that could prove useful in dealing with the Terramorphs. And they've stated they'll only share it with you. They asked for you by name. So I need your agreement that everything you're about to see is kept in the strictest confidence. You can tell no one. Can you agree to these terms? I'm sorry. I can't share any more without your word. Do I have it? Let's hope it never comes to that. Head to the elevator. You're going to subsection 7. I'll make sure you're cleared for access by the time you get there.
lived in New Atlantis almost my entire life, and I had no idea this place even existed. The UC certainly excels at keeping secrets. You may proceed down the corridor. But there are no additional visitors permitted to wait out here. I'll be fine. You go on ahead.
do not make the mistake of confusing me for a simple cutthroat. You can certainly try, but the man's been out there 20 years. He's likely gone feral by now. Easier for all if you simply blow up his ship and be done with it. If that's what you require to sleep at night, so be it. According to my information, he's been hiding around the world of Etheria. Wolf system. There is a star station in the vicinity. The Den. The head of the local vanguard, one Captain Marquez, should be able to help you find our man. Yes? What? Captain, did your, uh, meeting go well? I hope it's clear now why we needed you to agree to all the secrecy. Exactly. Just another prisoner. Nothing you'd ever even think of bringing up in conversation. With anyone. Ever. We understand each other. The Major doesn't have clearance for this sort of information, and she certainly doesn't need a distraction from her current very important work. Which is why I need you to keep this to yourself. Short of jailing you? No, you're right. But in this moment, I think it would be a big mistake to tell her. Though I presume he didn't call you down there simply to discuss his daughter. Dr. Reginald Orlais? He's finally found him. Of course, killing Orlais is completely out of the question. But bringing him to justice... He's been on the lam for years. That'd be a huge win for the UC. What's being offered in return? Really? He found the members of the research team. We'd already initiated a search for them, but it'd save a lot of time and manpower if he just gave us that information. Captain, if that's the deal, you have my endorsement. Just so long as you make every effort to bring the man in alive. Now, was there anything else you wanted to discuss regarding your meeting? Trusting the man downstairs would be a mistake, but I don't think you need to be too concerned. This is far from the first name he's handed over, and all previous missions went off largely without a hitch. So while I'd certainly warrant caution, I think you can proceed. The Den? It's a star station. Orbiting Wolf, the second star station actually to bear that title. The first one was blown to smithereens by House Varun during the Serpent's Crusade. The place has always acted as a remote strategic hub, primarily for repairing and refueling UC military vessels. But because of its distance from the rest of the UC, things there have always been a little more lax. Patrols included. I can think of worse places in the galaxy for a criminal to hide out. Then I'll bid you good day, Captain, and remind you of the importance of discretion.
Need some work done? UC did a hell of a job piecing the station back together after the Serpent's Crusade rolled through. Need some work done? Well, this station's seen better days. I wonder if the UC will ever fully restore it to its former glory. Looking to lodge a complaint? Then you want UC security, not the Vanguard. Oh, apologies, Captain. Didn't recognize you without the uniform. So, what can I do for you? Think you got some bad information. If there was a wanted man in our skies, he wouldn't still be out there. Unless... Are you talking about the Warlock? There's been rumor of a ship out there for years now. Doesn't respond to hails, 
never docks. More than a few amateur investigators have tried to find it, and at least two never came back. Ethereus debris fields are plenty dangerous if you're not used to flying in them. But if you're suggesting it might not have been the fields that got them, well, I can give you the coordinates of the warlock's last sighting. Sure thing. Here, this should get you pointed in the right direction. Good hunting, and stay safe. Ah, our warlock. Things you should know? The den's not really that kind of place. This is a quiet assignment. Keep an eye out for pirates, make sure smuggling's kept to a minimum, occasional rescue job out in the debris fields. Otherwise, it's mostly long haulers and staying ready for the day the Collective wants another round, or House Varun comes back in force. Understood. Recycled air. Just isn't the same as the real thing.
Okay, uh, can we skip the local chunks this time? Never agrees with us. What is it?
we lifting off right away, or do you need a little bit of time? I was afraid you might have gotten reassigned. You've been gone so long. So how's it feel to be a citizen? <laughs> Must have changed up how the ceremony works. I just raised my hand and said, sure, I'm in. But it is real good to have you here again. We've been going through the Terramorph data and, well, we're gonna need all the help we can get. These logs, they're even more thorough than I remembered. Genetic workups, population statistics, hell, even their food chain. I'd completely forgotten, for example, that there was a creature that actually ate Terramorphs. <laughs> At this point, the data's given us more options to explore than we have people to work on them. <laughs> That'd be something, wouldn't I'm sorry, are you? You're serious. You found our research team? That's incredible. That accelerates everything. With them back, it'll let us... Wait. Kaiser. Did you find Kaiser? Well, Kaiser's one of a kind. Special built for the sort of work we did. Dealing with unfriendly beasts in hostile environments. No other robot in the galaxy like him. So did you really manage to track him down? That... That's right. You would need that. Whoever gave you these leads sure knew their stuff. Well, how? How exactly did you manage to find them? That's not funny. Seriously, how'd you find them? No. That's... that's insane. He died. They executed him. They... They faked his death? My entire unit, they threw us all to the wolves, but kept him? And now he's what? An advisor? Commanding the fleet in secret? What was so important that they had to keep him alive? Oh, they certainly picked an expert, didn't they? He's... alive. Vey Victus is still alive. I don't care if they're using him to solve world hunger. The man is a criminal. How could the UC do something so foolish? I guess it makes sense though, doesn't it? The UC of that era only created me because they were afraid of a world without Vey Victus in command. Why would they get rid of him? As long as I live, I'll never understand the loyalty that old bastard elicited. You've got nothing to apologize for. Because the UC, they did a lot of terrible things for that man. But even knowing they did, knowing that they kept him alive all this time, you know what I feel right now? It's hope. I had no one when I was outside the UC. No red devils, no family. But that old world, 
where I was no one and my father mattered? That's gone. Thanks to what you and I have done, I have a place again. A purpose. But it's finally one I can be proud of. You and I, we're getting to change what the UC stands for. So I don't care if Vavictus is alive or dead. He can rot for all I care. We're the ones who are making the settled systems and the UC better. Precisely. Because there's nothing we can do about past choices. What we can do is try and make the right ones now. So, let's get back to the business at hand. Now, my father just handing over the information on the research team and Kaiser out of the clear blue, I can't say I trust it. But if he has something to gain from helping us prevent Terramorph attacks, I'm not seeing it. So while you'll absolutely want to be cautious, what would you think about trying to bring back Kaiser? I'm honestly not sure what his endgame might be. Involving himself in preventing Terramorph attacks after all the damage he's done? Something doesn't add up. But he clearly understands how valuable it'd be to have Kaiser involved in this endeavor. So, I still think it'd be worth looking into. If you're willing. I can't blame you. If you decide you want to track Kaiser down, Come back, and I'll get you squared away. You thought some more about collecting Kaiser? I think it's the right call. But if Kaiser has been out wandering on his own for all this time, you're gonna need a couple things. Here somewhere. Uh -huh. Here, Kaiser schematics. Actuators, weapons, batteries. That old robot's been MIA for a while, so chances are he's gonna need some repairs. He's also got a lock on his voice controls. You can give yourself authorization with the phrase nos belli machinis. Now, where exactly is the old machine? A battlefield? On Nera? Ugh, oh, sheesh. No wonder no one's found him. That sector of Nera was destination number one for Xeno weapons during the war. Add to that general environmental devastation and the kind of lawlessness that comes with any Freestar world, and that planet's got more than enough ways to make a visit your last. But I think there's a place where you can start your search. Hmm. Yep. One of a kind salvage. Licensed to an Angelo Alonso. Goes by Gel. As good a place to start as any. And I'll make sure we're ready to put them to use as soon as you've got them.
result of humankind laying waste to a planet in the name of war. The ecosystem here has been totally destroyed. on the floor. Welcome to the one of a kind. Refuge and rest home for the hardest scrappers anywhere. Name's Jill. Proprietor. Appreciate it. Took years to get this place self-sustaining. Plenty elbow grease and creativity. Can I get you started on a tab then? Or you here to try and make your fortune in the fields? I'm happy to take your credits however you want to hike them over. All legal, I swear. Kaiser? No bot around here with that tag. Oh, unless you mean Captain Ahab? At least, that's what we've all been calling him. No clue what his actual designation is, since he's got some sort of security protocol that prevents inquiries and general chit-chat. But he's a combat bot, right? Yeah, that machine's been out there a while now, hunting this one siren. His white whale. But it's been a while since anyone's laid eyes on Captain Ahab, though. Maybe he finally got the thing. Or it got him. Nasty kind of alien left behind after the colony war. Pretty much blind. Original ones brought to Nera were all Xeno weapons. But those critters have long since passed. But they left behind more than enough untrained babies to keep the fields plenty interesting. That's where I recognize that insignia. Red Devils. Yeah, Ahab's definitely your bot. So, sounds like you've got two options. You can wander around out there, hunting your bot. Little old white whale of your very own. Maybe you find him. Maybe you get yourself killed. But knowing this rock is part of what we do here. So if you want to find him a whole lot faster, I'll sell you what I know about this. Kaiser's location. Going rate's a little steep, but I'm willing to negotiate. I'm listening. Sorry, but I can't. There's nothing to talk about. I've already made myself clear. I hear you. I'm still willing to talk. You don't know what you're talking about. Look, I'm gonna stop you there. I've got my livelihood to look after here, all right? So, I'm sorry. The fee's the fee. I mean, great for him, but that won't keep acetylene in our tanks. And honestly, would you be able to tell if a Terramorph was attacking outside? Sorry. 
You didn't get this far being that naive. This facility isn't self-sustaining, and you know it. If Terramorph attacks start wrecking cities across the galaxy, no one's coming to help the salvage yard at the tail end of nowhere. We're all in this. Together. I, uh, I guess I see your point. Look, I have to make something on this. But I'll lower the price, okay? Pleasure doing business with you. So, last anyone heard of him, he was out near the Syracuse, shipwreck about a quarter click down the main strip. One of my roughnecks said he heard some kind of beacon. Just keep your ears open. You should find your machine. Eyes open too. Sirens and ecliptic out there, and neither takes prisoners. Oh, and corpse retrieval is not included in this transaction, so now you know. Give Ahab a Kaiser, our best. Jow says you're all right. I'm pleased to see scrappers disassembling these mechs. Damn war machines are better off being erased from history. I'm sure there's something nearby.
finest supplies on the planet. Also, only supplies on the planet. Ah, so that's where your machine's been. Ran out of juice. Heat leeches, wasn't it? Those little stowaways are everywhere on this rock. Suck the power out of a pen light if you let them. But a microcell. That's military grade tech. I think we might have one, but I can promise you it's not going to be cheap. You could probably Frankenstein one together using our fabrication system here, but only if you had some quality schematics. So I just brace for a little sticker shock. Here's what I've got.
must be getting desperate if they've resorted to searching piles of scrap for mech parts. I'm in total agreement. A frontal assault sounds like it's in order. Moving out.
work here is finished. Now, what is this mission that requires my expertise? That. Hmm. That is a cause I would like to be a part of. You are docked at. One of a kind. I will meet you there. Expected, guys. Shouldn't take as long to get you back up to full fighting capacity. This is good to hear. I was told there was a new threat on the horizon. I wish to learn more. Percival will give you the full story. Plus, get you dressed for the occasion. Occasion? Where are we going? Londinian. Hmm. Londinian, Doctor. I will require additional armaments. That's the plan. Come on. Captain, you're with me. Time to walk you through what we came up with. So the problem we're up against is vast. Terramorphs, they can be anywhere. Meaning us finding and disposing of them ourselves isn't an option. But what if we could let something else do the work for us? Yes? Come on. I'll walk you through what we're thinking. You remember that creature we talked about before you went to Nera? The thing that eats Terramorphs, the Asilis? Apparently, they were bloodhounds for Terramorphs. But when the UC ran low on synthetic foods during the Colony War, the Asilis were chosen to fill in the gaps. We thought they were harvested to extinction. But in the data, the research team found the location of a few remaining specimens. As you can see, what we're proposing is bringing them back. We'd breed populations of them, distribute them to human worlds, and then let nature take its course, using a method that thousands of years of adaptation have already perfected. We could speed up their breeding process using, well, using some of the same technologies that were used to create me. We even think that with some time and investigation, we could use the Asili's hunting skills to track down the Terramorph transmission method at long last. Find out how humanity spread them and put an end to the Terramorph problem definitively.
Well, there is another option. It'd be faster, maybe even more effective. But it's got its own risks. A microbe. Something we could aerosolize, let spread, and have it clean up anything with Terramorph DNA for us, which would include morphs, and we expect their transmission method. It'd still take time to build, test, and distribute, but no other method could hold a candle to it when it comes to sheer efficiency. Not even the Asilis. Percival assures me that they're minimal. He'll be able to encode safeguards against mutation in the agent's genetics, so that they stick to the task of cleaning up terramorphs. But the microscopic world has a tendency to behave in ways you can't always predict. So to say there's zero risk would be a lie. Well, so that's tricky. Both plans are going to take major investments in time and resources. We're talking years of work, and not to mention some highly specialized materials. Terramorph cell lines we can breed quickly and consistently to test on. Asili's gene samples we can use to rebuild their bloodlines, or sharpen our microbes' tracking skills. Not the sort of things any labs just got lying around. But we think we found a lead. One place in the known galaxy where we know we should be able to find all the materials we need. All paths lead to Londinian. Hmm. <laughs> it's certainly not encouraged, but the UC's given their sign-off for this excursion. This trip is all above board. It's dangerous, yes. But Kaiser, Percival, and I, we've trained for this. And you're not so green yourself. And the last thing I want right now is for the UC to stick us with some gung-ho jarhead who's gonna put us and the mission at risk. Captain, you're the reason we're all here right now. You're the person I think can help us finish it. Will you join us on this? Exactly what I was hoping to hear. Now. The UC has a small operating base on Londinian's outskirts. We're cleared for access, but we'll need to check in with the base commander, Sarah Hatoum, when we touch down. I'm gonna help Percival and Kaiser prep, but once that's done, we'll rendezvous with you there. But you need to know, Londinian? It belongs to the Terramorphs. They'll have anti-Xeno gear for us at the base, but I'd make sure you've got your favorite arms on hand. Romanticize a place when you're away from it for long enough, but I forgot what a dust crusted pit Mars can be. Now you, what do you need? Oh, that's you then. I was informed we might be working together. Don't much care for Vanguard. It sounds like you two really got into the thick of it back in New Atlantis. My sister's kids live in the city, so, um, thank you for what you did there. Yeah, they both came through okay. One science division, others an artist. Effectively useless human beings that would have had no reason to be anywhere near the fighting. Still, I would hate to see anything happen to them. Now, what was it you needed? No more reliable hardware in the galaxy.
What can I help you with? Have something for me? Fun. Now what?
I pride myself on knowing everyone on this world, and I don't know you. You're with the collection team then, I presume. Either that, or you're one deeply unlucky trespasser. Hmm. Deflection. Lovely. Nervous, then. I certainly wouldn't blame you. Well, perhaps I'll just get my answer from them instead. Commander Hatoum, I'm... No need for introductions, Major Simon. Dr. Walker, your reputations precede you. Can I also presume he's with you? Oh, uh, the captain? Yes, ma'am. Couldn't do this without him. Hmm. Then let's not waste any more time. Now, Londinian is one of the most dangerous places in the Milky Way. It's with good reason my soldiers and I do everything we can to avoid entering the city. Terramorphs are omnipresent, and the structural damage left behind when... when Major Sanon's father bombed its spaceport has turned large swathes of the metropolis into a decaying labyrinth. As such, We'll be providing you all with gear, information, and uploading municipal unlock codes to your robot. Every tool you could need to succeed out there. Except one. Once you're on the other side of those barriers, you will be on your own. If you get into trouble, my people will not be coming. Do we understand each other? The initial Terramorph outbreak that overran Londinian during the tail end of the Colony War came as a complete shock. Waves of the creatures appeared out of nowhere, and the city was quickly overwhelmed. There were some attempts at evacuation, but Ve Victus decided more definitive action was merited. He ordered the spaceport to be bombed, ensuring no other ships could leave the city, halting the spread of the outbreak but leaving large sections in ruins and condemning countless lives. And the intervening 20 years have only made Londinian more hostile, not less. So my people will not be coming for you out there. Understood? Hmm. <laughs> we'll do our best. I'll leave you to your preparations then. You can find your equipment in our armory, base of the tower just outside. And I do believe there's someone waiting for you there, Captain. Now, once you're outside the base, it's my personal suggestion you make a beeline to the nearby Aceles plant. It contains one of our field caches. Though, I can't guarantee it won't contain anything else. I hope you all find what you're looking for out there. Robot, you're coming with me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Commander. Percival, you all set to hook into their comms tower? Should only take a few minutes. Let's get this done and get the hell out of here. Percival will be scanning the city for our samples from here. When he finds one, he'll transmit the coordinates to us out in the field. Ten points a bit strong. The equipment will be able to get us a rough location of any acceptable samples in the scan area. It'll be up to you, Kaiser, and I to find the things. All right. Head over to the armory and gear up. Once you're done, we'll meet by the entrance to the city. chat right now. Yes? I'll only carry the
Maybe another time. Howdy. You match our description. The Vanguard captain? The cabinet wanted you to have something. Make sure you had the best tools for the task at hand. Now, if you'll excuse me. Give him one for me, all right? All set on your gear? You... Are you ready to do this? Yeah, just pre-mission jitters. You hear about a place for so long, it maybe gets bigger in your head than it should be. But you don't need to worry about me. I I'll be all right. Now, are we doing this or not? That's... That's damn right we are. Come on. Let's get out there. Diver. Percival, everything green on your ends? I am ready. Personal comm should be routed through Kaiser now. You copy that? Roger, loud and clear. Perhaps too loud. Oh, you're a riot robot. Kaiser, kick it off. Unlock code transmitted. You may open the gate when ready.
over to Kaiser, and let's get out of here. Samples secure. Nice work. Now, earlier Scan picked up a valid Terramorph sample, but, well, it's in the spaceport. And the quick route there looks like it got blasted when the port did. There are steam tunnels under the city, which will allow us to access the spaceport. What do you... That... That's right! Kaiser, how did you know that? I... am not sure. Percival, you see any better option? Not from where I'm standing. Then we've got our answer. Access unlocked. We may proceed. Kaiser, this flora, this is Lazarus' plant, isn't it? Confirmed. You know, no one even realized it was a living thing until someone got it under a microscope and saw it had cells. Can't be cultivated anywhere but Londinian. Real marvel. Keeping you things warm. in bloom. You know, we might be some of the only... What's... What's happening? Are you seeing this? Can't be true. Heat leeches are everywhere. They live everywhere. That means terramorphs. Oh my god. You just saw that, right? You would tell me if I was losing my mind. That heat leech became a terramorph. The pests that have snuck onto every planet are baby terramorphs. Heat leeches hide out in ships, sneak away after landing, and then, with time, they transform. We, we just found out how terramorphs move between planets. No, Lazarus plants can't grow anywhere but here, let alone blossom. People have tried. Plus, if what we just witnessed was happening anywhere else, well, it wouldn't just be Londinian lost to these things. What we just saw, it, it must be some kind of alternate growth method. One that winnows 70 years of maturation into seconds. It's incredible. I am sincerely inclined to agree, but... Current evidence suggests nature manages it just fine. 
The Lazarus plant. It's clearly an accelerant for the Terramorph, a heat leech transformation process. Make one into the other in an instant. But that means if anyone knew about this, they could trigger a Terramorph spawning. You could sneak a leech into a city or even multiple leeches into a place like New Atlantis. Good God. The attack on New Atlantis, does this... Could someone have set that up? But first, you'd have to know the truth about all this. Well, we're never gonna know if you don't catch that thing, get after it! We may proceed. Go! understand what it is we just stumbled on here. Exactly. Someone saw the Lazarus plant in action and used it to trigger the attacks. A bioweapon no one would recognize as one. Oh, that's a terrifying prospect. Sort of thing that'll keep you up at night. And the sort of thing whoever did this probably didn't expect us to uncover. Makes some sense, actually. Tau Seti was likely their first test. Someplace remote where no one would question a few settlers going missing. Ensure the big show, the attack on New Atlantis, would be a success. And the timing of that one. It couldn't have been just luck that it happened right when we were asking the Cabinet to do something about the Terramorphs. These attacks. I think someone planned them to set all this in motion. They certainly were. But having this answer, well, it raises a couple big questions. Who could pull something like this off? And why? Save the discussion for when you all aren't standing in the universe's closest equivalent to hell frozen over. If we're gonna do anything to prevent more Terramorph attacks, human cause or otherwise, we need that final sample. Roger that. Kaiser, get us into the spaceport. The entrance is this way. Scout it out. 
Kaiser, see if you can't find another way to get it open. Roger that. I have restored power to the office entrance. You may proceed. Exactly what we all thought he was. 
But if the plant was used to trigger the attacks, could Vey Victus have been involved in the massacre on New Atlantis? Good point. Deal with one monster at a time. Let's go get that final sample. frantic on the comms towards the end there, but it sounded like this was a success. Got everything we need to put this plan in motion. Hey, <laughs> was worried about that myself, though I know I wasn't nearly as much at risk of limb loss as you all were. Now, my connection might have gotten a bit fuzzy there, but do I have it right that Vey Victus knew about this damn plan? That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Guess the old Admiral must have told someone what he learned. Even he's not clever enough to pull off an attack like that from the Great Beyond. 
It's a bit more complicated than that. I'm sorry, what? He's pulling my leg, right? Adrian? No, I don't believe he is. So that means we have a suspect. I believe that's exactly what that means. Look, Captain. Percival and I, we need to get these samples back to the lab. Ensure we'll be able to handle cleaning up the leeches as well as the terramorphs. But Ve Victus is the only solid lead we've got on the attacks. Since you're the only one who knows where he is, can you speak to him? See if you can get him to cough up anything he might know. Good. We'll all meet back at Mast, outside the Cabinet Chambers. They're gonna want to know everything we've uncovered here. Best of luck, Captain. And thank you for dealing with him.
discovered the plant, I did consider handing over what I'd found, but we were at war. And I couldn't risk information that dangerous falling into the wrong hands. So I ordered the bombing of the Londinian spaceport, fixing two problems at once, halting the spread of the city's terramorph outbreak and sealing away knowledge of the plant's potential. Simple to say now, but with the outbreak raging from a barely understood source, the moment demanded quick action. So I did what was required. I removed the dangerous variable from an already catastrophic war. But then, as the war ended, my trial, my execution, I made a decision. After all, I'd given everything for the colonies. My life as I knew it included. And what did I get in return? Was there any effort by the UC to protect my legacy? My daughter's legacy? No. We were sacrificed when all we did was serve. So I kept what I'd learned and arranged the attacks to set things right again. My daughter. She becomes a hero. I become a trusted advisor, having found Kaiser, the research team and cement my new position of influence when I hand them the name of the person responsible for the attack on New Atlantis. The dear departed Dr. Reginald Orlais, the associate who aided me all these years, and whom I always slated to take the fall. What luck he was stopped dead before he could hurt anyone else. His decades on the run brought to an end by another unlikely hero. You. Can't remember the many lives you've taken. <laughs> Orlais was the man whose death you brought about around the moon of Etheria, the pilot of the Warlock, the man I had to eliminate to hide my secret. Why would I want to be in the good graces of the people who control my very life? I don't know, Captain. Maybe I still dream of a life outside these walls someday. A new face would be needed, of course, but it wasn't an impossibility. Though now, I'm not so sure. Captain, please. You've benefited here as much as I have. Maybe more. It's why I had our lays reprogram Kaiser. Had that old machine guide you to where I found the plant all those years ago. I went to great lengths to ensure your and Hadrian's success. And look at the results. I know for a fact the Cabinet's planning to honor both you and Hadrian once this is all done. Isn't that preferable to languishing away in obscurity? Running jobs on the tail end of nowhere for the Vanguard? With only the vague hopes of perhaps earning the right to buy a home in the well someday. You're being honored only because I arranged the situations where it could happen. Be grateful, and let's not forget the importance of our actual endgame. Eliminating the Terramorphs, securing knowledge of the Lazarus plant. What we've set in motion is going to protect thousands, maybe millions of lives. I'm simply requesting one more life be protected. Mine. I've already sent along the evidence of Orlaise's role in the attacks to the Cabinet, leaving out my own involvement. All I ask is that you confirm as much to the Cabinet. Tell them that it was Orlaise and Orlaise alone. After all, I do still have a long list of threats to the UC. This needn't be the end of our good works together. Hunting down criminals, and other threats to the United Colonies. I expect they'll give me a bit more free range once this is all over. You would help me, 
like you did with Orlais. Track them down, and keep them from doing harm to the United Colonies. Impossible, though. If the Cabinet learns I'm the one responsible for the attacks, Perfect timing. We just got in. So on our end, good news. The Microbe and the Aceles are both as effective against heat leeches as they are against Terramorphs. Means either plan should work for clearing those critters off our worlds. Considering what the Lazarus plant is capable of, I don't think we can deal with those things fast enough. I already sent along info to the Cabinet to get them up to speed. So what about your end? Did you find anything? Did my father tell you what he knew about the Lazarus plant? I knew it. The second I heard that recording, I knew. Why? Did he say why he did it? <laughs> it takes some deeply twisted logic to think anything did more harm to the Sanan name than him. So you're telling us that the attack on New Atlantis was Ve Victus's responsibility, just like the dooming of Londinian. All that. Just to help restore the family name. <sighs> How did he ever think that was going to work? Well, once we inform the Cabinet, they can ensure he won't be able to do anything like this ever again. Exactly. Bring justice to everyone he's hurt. So I guess that gives us our final answer. Nothing left to do but head in and see what the Cabinet thinks of it all. Unless there was more to discuss, this might be our last opportunity to talk things through before the Cabinet weighs in on a decision regarding the Terramorphs. Microbe is going to make the cleanup a whole lot quicker. If we're concerned about this Lazarus plant getting deployed again, that's the way to go. The Cabinet can secure the Lazarus plant, and then we're not risking any surprises when it comes to dealing with a microbe. You're being paranoid. You know the science. You know we can make this safe. I do know the science. I also know math. And a one in a million chance of a mutation isn't zero. So I guess we're still in discussion. Probably best at this point to let the Cabinet weigh in, see if they have a preference. Asilis aren't hostile to humans, but they are mega-fauna. If someone decides to pick a fight with one, it could get ugly. But they've already been spread far and wide once before when the UC was raising them as livestock, so the risk of introducing them to new worlds is minimal. Using them to clean up the terramorphs and leeches, though, it's not going to be nearly as expedient as the microbe would be. Given what we know now about the Lazarus plant, the speed of the job does matter. But going with the Aceles, we're at least dealing with known risks. It's hard to know. Unlike my father, the Cabinet aren't butchers. But killing UC citizens, along with everything else he's done, is unforgivable. But if you're really that concerned, you could request they be lenient. They might be willing to spare him. And here we go.
Welcome back, all of you. I wish we were meeting under better circumstances. But according to Hadrian's report and the second one I just received, it seems the Terramorph attack on New Atlantis was no random occurrence, but a planned strike. Is what I'm reading here true? My god. An attack? Using Terramorphs? How is that possible? You will all receive a full briefing once we're done here. So then, is what the second report claims correct? Did Reginald Orlais commit these attacks, Captain? Orlais? It's true, ma'am. I heard the recording myself. My father figured out how to use Terramorphs as weapons. He did what? That... that... that's impossible. He doesn't have the kind of access to... Clearly, he made his own access, Chief Sarkin. Madam President, I have been saying for years that not dealing with that man was gonna end in tragedy. Enough! I hope everyone here understands that what has just been shared is a state secret of the highest order. This information does not leave this room. Now, that's quite the accusation you're leveling considering Francois Sanon has not left containment for the better part of two decades. You have evidence to back this up? It just transformed a terramorph out of thin air. An invisible weapon. No planet would be safe. Heavens help us. It, is that actually him? I'd know that voice anywhere. That's Francois. He knew they could do this, and said nothing. He's a sociopath, plain and simple, ma'am. Officer, please collect that recording. Yes, ma'am. Begging your pardon, Captain? We'll, of course, be launching a full investigation into how this could have happened. Though I have little doubt the Admiral will be quick to share all he knows on the subject once confronted with that recording. Chief Yassine, can you send one of your interrogators to have a little chat with the Admiral? I'll issue the order immediately. Good. Combined with everything else you all have uncovered. Well, I don't think the United Colonies can thank you enough. We failed the people of the Colonies by not dealing with Ve Victor sooner. I intend to rectify that mistake immediately. I'm inclined to agree, Captain. Now, with our villain unmasked, we can attend to the other matters at hand. With the threads you've brought together here, the Lazarus plant, the attacks, the heat leeches, the three of you have likely spared thousands of lives, but it now falls to the cabinet to ensure this can never happen again. As such, the cabinet will be securing the Lazarus plant on Londinian, all materials related to the plant will be classified to ensure no one else learns its true nature. A sound decision, Madam President. We're already discussing the elimination of one species, Captain. Explain to me why you wish to eliminate another. Yes, absolutely. The UC has to be as transparent as possible from now on. Otherwise, we could be risking a second colony war. That... that is an idea with some merit to it. Decrease the likelihood of anything like this occurring again, and further relations between our two factions. Two birds with a single stone. Very well. We'll include the Collective in the removal process. Thank you for the suggestion, Captain. So then, to our final topic. The Cabinet has agreed to implement a plan that will deal with the Terramorph, and now also Heat Leech, presence on human worlds. In fact, we've already begun enacting measures to check all UC ports and settlements for undiscovered nests. But we all understand this is only a partial solution. The project we're embarking on will be a long and difficult one. 
So our first step must be deciding how exactly this all will be handled. Madam President, this microbe is clearly too much of a risk. The Asilis are the safer approach. To someone with limited knowledge of biology, perhaps? The technology behind the microbe is solved science, Madam President. It isn't dangerous. Using it to wipe out the Terramorphs would be the quickest path to protecting humanity. And fast results always lead to the best outcomes, don't they? As you can see, there remains debate among the Cabinet. We were hoping your group might issue a recommendation. Major? We've been having similar debates ourselves, but the Captain has yet to weigh in. I see. Captain, I know this may not be your area of expertise, but we'd like to know your take on the matter. I'm in full agreement. No need be delving into unpredictable sciences. Here's hoping they'll be kept on a short leash. That, madam, is most certainly the plan. Order, please. And Major Sanan? Dr. Walker, you'd find this acceptable? We trust the Captain's judgment. Then the matter is settled. We'll begin the process immediately. Today marks day one for the United Colonies Terramorph Management Division, making you three the founding members of the TMD. As befits such a group, the Cabinet wanted to display its gratitude. Today, we will be adding three new Class I citizens to our ranks. Class I? For the three of us? Are you joking? What he means to say is, thank you, ma'am. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. It's a status reserved only for those who've dedicated their lives to the United Colonies, or done great things for its cause. Class Ones enjoy an ample credit disbursement, an additional reduction on the cost of colonial goods. And I'm told the penthouse is rather impressive. You all have earned it. Now, there's much to be done. Major Sanan, Dr. Walker, I hope you two are willing to continue your efforts spearheading the TMD's research on Mars. We'd be honored, ma'am. As for you, Captain, the Vanguard will be providing much of the on-the-ground support for the TMD. As a member of both the Vanguard and the TMD, I believe you'll have your pick of duties. Speak to your commander, Tuala, if I recall correctly. He should be able to provide you with assignments going forward, plus help you collect the benefits that come with being named Class One. On behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our sincerest gratitude. This meeting is adjourned. Captain, I guess we've got our assignments. I just wanted to say, I could have never guessed where all this was going to lead. But now, knowing what I do, that my father truly is the monster I always thought he was. Well, I've just spent a lot of my life in pursuit of the truth. So, you bringing it straight to me, it just means a lot. Just glad it was me. You know, I was thinking, while we were there on the podium, if I wanted to try and see him again. After all, it could be my last chance. But I knew the answer before I even finished the thought. I didn't. Because confronting him, what would I gain from that? From letting him remind me I can never truly be rid of him. Nothing. Now, all I'd be doing is acknowledging that he still has some sway over my life. And while I can't do anything about his role in my past, I'm not about to let him control my future. And thanks to what we've done together, that future is brighter than it has been in a long time. 
Words can't do justice to how grateful I am for that. You know I can't do that. I've got an assignment. But I wouldn't be upset if you came by the HQ every now and then. Remind me how much I owe you. Well, I think it's safe to say you succeeded beyond anyone's wildest dreams. It's been an honor, Captain. Good luck out there. Gotta say, this is a first. I've never had a Class 1 citizen in my ranks before. Congratulations, Captain. No need to thank me. You brought this all on yourself. I've already gone ahead and processed your Class 1 benefits. All UC goods and services should now have a thanks for protecting the colonies discount. And the credits should be in your accounts now. About to get into your penthouse, you'll have to pay a visit to the Affilion Realty Office. They should be able to grant you access. Higher-ups wanted to make sure you know how much they appreciate what you've done. But, with all that squared, it's time to get you a new assignment. There are your standard Vanguard missions, putting those pilot skills to use defending UC space. Or you could help the TMD in cleaning up terramorphs. Oh, and I got a request from Dr. Walker. Wanted your help collecting biological samples to keep an eye out for any, uh, new alien threats on the horizon. Any of those missions call to you? Sure, you'll have all the specifics. If you find yourself looking for more work, you know where to find me. By the way, Captain, Sergeant Yumi was looking for you. Next time, use your jetpack. All are here because you can handle it. So any questions, concerns, anything at all, give me a call. It's a damn shame that it was necessary to reopen this facility, but someone has to deal with the fact that the Terramorphs have resurfaced. Interest you in a new assignment? No one else I'd rather have doing it. You heard right. These Terramorph attacks, they caught the UC off guard. UC Brass doesn't like that. So, they want us patrolling the front lines of xenological life, 
ensure we've got intel on any possible new alien threats. Which means, we need someone to track down said aliens, and harvest samples from them. And not just any sample from these animals is gonna do, either. We're trying to build a comprehensive picture here which requires specific cells from specific family lines of some oftentimes unfriendly creatures. But since dealing with unfriendly creatures falls square in your wheelhouse, well, I figured we might be able to recruit you for the task. Glad to hear it. There is just one additional wrinkle. You see spec this as a one-person job, but I convinced them this sort of task merits expert backup. So, if you're interested, they've agreed to let you take Hadrian with you. You'll have to convince her, of course, but I don't think she'll fight you too badly. We could use Hadrian here, absolutely, but we have other scientists. Not a lot of other people can go up against Apex predators and come home again and again. You and Hadrian are the right people for this job. I expect she wouldn't mind too badly being out there herself, so pay her a visit before you head out. Now, let's get you the details of your first quarry. Here you go. Head there, find your specimens, and bring those samples back here. I'll have a tech waiting outside to collect them from you. And so you know, you shouldn't need to kill these critters to harvest the required cells. This isn't the same level of analysis you were doing with the terrible. A little will go a Excuse long me. way here. Just get close, take a few scrapings, and get out before they see you. Hey. You need something? Okay. I'm listening. What's going on? Backup? What does that have to do with me? Oh, I'm flattered, but I don't think so. I'm doing important work here. Percival needs my help. He would not okay me abandoning my post. I... I mean, I do too, but leaving the TMD? That's a big decision. I... I guess you're right. I always imagined that future would be here at the TMD, but... Well, maybe a change of scenery wouldn't be so bad. Besides, Percival will never let me forget it if I turn down field work in favor of a desk job. If you really need backup out there, I'll watch your six. Yeah, I think so too. Thank you for the offer. Really. It was unexpected, but... I think this will be for the best. Both for me and for the settled systems. I'll head out soon. I just need to talk to Percival before I go. He's gonna get an earful for arranging this without talking to me about it first. See you, Captain.
Ah, you must be the one with the samples then. I'll get these logged ASAP. If you're interested in collecting more, you can speak to Dr. Walker. Oh, and your pay? Here you are. Thank you, uh, Captain. Need my help? Geared up and ready to go.
better diesel security is only here for your safety. Pretend we're not even here. We try to stay out of our guests' way. Welcome to Paradiso. Jiro Sukiyama at your service. Do you have a security concern, or is there something else I can help you with? <laughs> Neither. We're our own private force. The Paradiso Group pays top dollar for top-notch security. And I dare say we're some of the best in the business. We have to be out here on the fringes of the settled systems. Ah, yes, of course. I'm glad you came. As you can imagine, we're in a bit of a predicament. Under normal circumstances, we would not enlist outside help in this manner. But this is a matter we can't afford to worry our guests about. As such, we need to handle this discreetly. Failure on your part to do so could have severe consequences. So, before we proceed, can you swear not to discuss this with anyone else unless explicitly directed to do so? I understand you're eager to get into it, but if you're unwilling to take this seriously, I can foresee problems in your future. Not too long ago, a strange and enormous ship appeared in Parima space. It is now locked in orbit around our planet. So far, it doesn't seem to be hostile, but any attempts to communicate with it have been in vain, so we're unsure of the ship's intentions. It is. Whatever's going on, we need to approach this with care. First, see if you have more luck communicating with them. If not, you may have to try boarding. Whatever you do, it's important to remember to seek diplomacy with who or what ever's on board. As soon as you have any more information, report to Oliver Campbell. He's the CEO of Paradiso. All formal decisions will need to go through him. And he'll have your pay. Good luck. It's just that we weren't expecting to find life, let alone human life out here. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. Imagine being cut off from humankind for that long. How terribly frightening that would be. Perhaps we should greet our guests. Of course. Manners. I'm Captain Diana Brackenridge. This is Security Officer Bomani Reader. Hmm. And this is Dr. Mabuti da Costa, one of our elders. A pleasure to meet you. You've come aboard the Earth colony ship, Constant. Generations ago, we set forth from the planet Earth with the mission of colonizing a new habitable world in the spirit of our ancestors nearly a millennium ago. I see. As you may have presumed, we're in a bit of a bind. Our ship has finally completed its near 200-year journey from Earth, only to find our new home seemingly colonized by... Well, we don't know. Communications haven't been successful, so your arrival is fortuitous. Perhaps you'd be willing to act as a middle person between ourselves and... the others.
We do. Well, sort of. We saw structures using our surveying equipment. We've also seen the various ships pass us by. Some even seemed to want to communicate, but couldn't. Of course, we had no idea that they were being piloted by other humans. Of course, we know that now. Human or not, we were still unable to communicate our intentions. As soon as we discovered them, we fully expected negotiations would be necessary. Now then, please follow me. There's much to discuss first. We'll speak more on the matter once we reach the bridge. Dr. DaCosta, you may return to your quarters if you wish. Thank you, Captain. I will follow you to the bridge, ma'am. For security purposes. I do not believe we have need to fear our guest, but I'll allow it if you insist. Welcome to the Earth colony ship Constant. In the early 2100s, my ancestor, Rupert Brackenridge, researched a number of scientific scenarios, climate change, asteroid impact, nuclear war, global pandemic, and more. Each scenario showed the likelihood of an extinction level event to be within 50 years. He fully believed Earth was destined to be rendered uninhabitable. We've always assumed that's what happened. So, he gathered the best and brightest he could find, built the constant, and set a course for this planet here. We were told that it was the largest, most advanced ship ever constructed on Earth at the time. If you can believe, entire generations have been born, lived, and died on this ship. It really goes to show that there are no limits to human ingenuity and perseverance. We've got strict rules around here, but they're strict for a reason. Careful waving that fancy gun around. You don't mean to see what it can do. I have to say, with technology this outdated, I'm amazed this vessel is able to navigate at all. It's almost like walking through a museum. No matter the outcome, I won't priority. let my crew down. I think I'm coming up on six years now. I was only a teenager when my father died, passing command of the ship to me, as is tradition. Because of that, I've had to sort of learn as I go along, instead of taking years of study and apprenticeship under the prior captain. I think some people on the ship resent me for not having the level of experience as my predecessors. But at the same time, without my command, we likely wouldn't have made it here so quickly. A bit frazzled, as you can imagine. People are anxious about discovering that we're not alone and also worried about what will come to pass. While we hope we can work out a deal with the people on the surface, they seem reluctant to reach out, so there's no telling what will come of that. I do know that we can't afford to stay here in orbit forever. The ship was built to sustain us for many years with backup provisions just in case, but even that will come to an end eventually. Mm, difficult is the wrong word. It can be both challenging at times and also exciting. Our mission was to rebuild humanity on a distant world, believing that we were Earth's last hope. To think that while there has always been a Brackenridge in the captain's chair, that I am the one to finally oversee our journey's end is truly exhilarating. But with this stumbling block in our path, at this final moment, I fear tough choices will need to be made. Well, as I mentioned, we've been unsuccessful in communications with anyone up until you arrived, though not for lack of trying. But since you're asking, maybe you'd be willing to be a sort of diplomat between us and them as we attempt to resolve our situation. Does that sound agreeable to you? Ah, oh, so they have a name. Paradiso. And it sounds promising that they sent you here to speak with us. You see, we intended to settle here, but we assumed that they intend to defend their claim given their presence here. We'd like you to go speak to them on our behalf and help us negotiate a solution, preferably one that favors us. Based on the data our ancestors had when they launched this endeavor, it was determined that this was the perfect planet for us. Even if we had another viable candidate planet, we lack the resources to get there. And as you know, it took us 200 years to get here. Our people have no desire to go back to drifting the stars so their children's children can possibly settle on an inferior planet. 
Yes, yes, of course. But we need to start from a firm position and state our goal. If need be, we can... compromise. Work out a mutually beneficial deal or some such. But initially, I'd like you to be firm with them and convince them to leave the planet to us. Let me know how they respond, and we'll go from there. We thought about it, but it simply won't do. I need to think about the distant future of our people. Sure, our first settlement may be small, but our predecessors dreamt of our new civilization spreading across the globe. That will be difficult if someone else plans to do the same. While we're not completely close to the idea of sharing, it's much easier if we have complete domain over this world. Now, now, it makes little sense to give up before you try. Thank you, and good luck. I know Captain Brackenridge has essentially given you free reign to wander the ship, but security will still be watching you closely. I hope you understand, given we have so little experience with people from the outside. It pays to take security seriously, something I understand much better now than in my youth. Just because our equipment's old, doesn't Brew accounted for. We're ready to depart. Good to see you. Paradiso. Oh, this is even better than in the brochure. Excuse me, you can't just waltz in there. Do you have an appointment? Oh, you're the one they're waiting for then. Do you need anything else from me before you meet with the board? People were a little freaked out around here, understandably. It looks so different, and it's so massive. We honestly thought we were under attack by an unknown entity. But then, nothing happened. It just stayed there. No one could communicate with it. And we've been very careful not to alert the resort guests. The board believed it would be... Bad for business. Sure. Have fun in the shark tank. And don't worry, even they call it that. We've got some of the best I just feel that we should be focusing on the natural beauty of this planet, not our amenities. There are millions of planets out there. People can go to any one of them. The resort facilities are precisely what we bring to the table. Heck, it's the only thing we've really got to offer. Ah, I don't want to risk us coming off as just another artificial, shady, trash fiddle dump like Neon. Hello. That's not who we are. I didn't realize are. TV was we've letting people in here. We've got something special here. We should embrace that. 
I am. And you must be the diplomat Jiro told me about. Welcome, welcome. Normally I'd offer you an all-inclusive stay at our resort before we spoke. But given these circumstances, I'm gonna cut to the chase. We've got our friends, the aliens, up there causing all sorts of problems for our resort. You like that? The marketing team came up with it. The thought is, if we can't get rid of them, it might actually attract more tourism. Come see the aliens! <laughs> Despicable? Hardly. Just a backup plan in case we can't get them to leave. But you're right. No one's gonna buy aliens. Remind me to fire the marketing team. So tell me, what's the actual deal with this massive eyesore of a ship? Besides scaring people away. Well, that's something. Shame we can't just tell them kindly to bugger off. Something tells me that's not gonna work. Now, tell me, what are we going to do about it? Give me some proposals, people. I need something to work with here. Hmm. We could offer to resettle them here. There's more than enough space. They could stay here. Temporarily. But it'll cost them. Quite a bit, too. They'd need to work off all their debts before being allowed to leave. Ah, uh, maybe not. What if we help them get out of here? Outfit their ship with a grab drive so they can find a new home. We could even lend our engineers to help and give their captain an updated star map. What do you think? Sounds costly. We can't absorb that cost, and it's unlikely they even have compatible currency, let alone enough for the transaction. Someone else would have to foot the bill. Oh, I swear this would be a lot easier if they ceased to exist entirely. Anyway, Seema's got the right idea. Either works for me. Just tell me what you want to do. Oh, I'm not suggesting anything. Other than it would make our lives so much easier if that ship ceased existing. Make of that what you will. We own this planet, they don't. Here at Paradiso, we don't like leaving things to chance. Who knows what these people will do with their land? Imagine the landscaping disasters they might come up with. And how that might mar the satellite imagery of the planet in our brochures. No, much better to assimilate them into our culture if they come here to live, rather than leave it to chance. Well, absurd or not, that's our official stance. I make the decisions that are best for our entire group, you don't. We operate outside of the Free Stars and the UC, partially because we don't want anyone else meddling in our affairs. And we'd rather not draw attention to it, as I've mentioned. It could be bad for business. We'd much rather settle this independently. It's not our responsibility to bear the brunt of that cost. We're being more than generous by offering the use of our engineering team to help install it. A custom grave drive can't come cheap, and I assume they have neither the monetary means nor the connections to get a hold of that kind of technology. That leaves the only other party in this negotiation. You. And which proposal will you be taking to the good captain? I assume there's a captain? They'd be hard pressed to defend their claim in any courts. Our charter goes back years. It was registered with both the UC and Free Star Collective, per the Centaurus Proclamation. We may be outside the settled systems, but that child as official as can be. I'm sorry, but you're going to need to be the one to break the news to them that they need to make a compromise or leave. I have no idea, because I'm not suggesting anything of the sort. But it's a wonder that old ship made it all the way here in such a relatively short time. Must have really been pushing themselves. An engineer friend of mine told me once that the reactors on those old ships have a tendency to self-destruct if they overload. Of course, their engineers must have taken great care not to push it too far. Someone would likely have to override the safety systems in the reactor computer. But who would do such a thing? Don't even think for one moment that this would be acceptable behaviour. You can't just blow up their ship, that's insane! Ah, good on you. 
You want to see a man named Benny St. James over at Hope Tech. He's the best in the business. If anyone can retrofit a 200-year-old ship with a modern grab drive, it'd be him. We'll coordinate our engineering team with his when you return. Though you may have to help the Constance engineers prepare for it on their end. Good luck! I know this was a difficult decision. But if it's any consolation, I think you've made the right choice. Compared to the destruction of their vessel and relegating them to a life of servitude, I'd say this is the best chance they've got. Right. On behalf of the Paradiso group, we appreciate your help. The bomb's right. Thank you. I... We don't... I don't want to hear any complaints. Excuse me, excuse me! I remember meeting Ron Hope once. Idealistic and perhaps a bit of a dreamer. <laughs> but you have to admire what he's accomplished. Keep an eye on your valuables. You can't protect your own. Can I? Ron Hope, certainly. Welcome to Hope Tech Sales. Give me your invoice. Oh, a potential customer, huh? Well, what you need to know about our ships is they're from stern to bow built for reliability. Other star yards might got glitz or some weird crazy lines. With Hope Tech, you get people that care about you making that 300th freight run safely and on time. A smart person chooses substance over form every time. Sound familiar? So what are you in the market for? Certainly. I just want to get all these approvals over with. Oh no, that wouldn't work. The O2 
crew needs enough capacity for the whole ship. Oh, hello. Someone worth paying attention to. Sure, that sounds like me. What can I do for you? I'm a little busy, but uh, I think I could spare some time. Ah, so that's what this is. Oliver Campbell told me to expect you. His courier just left. Didn't say you'd be so rude about it. But I guess that's the kind of company Oliver keeps. I did some research on ships from that era, so I have a decent enough idea of what we need to do. So grab drives didn't really take off until after the ship was built. But I've got access to an ancient grav drive that looks like it could be compatible. With some minor adjustments. It's in good shape, too. Parts not cheap, though. Neither is the labor. Just pay the combined cost of parts and labor and it's yours? It's a pretty big ask, given how rare these old grad drives are. True, I keep telling myself I'm holding on to it for the right time. Perhaps this is that right time. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. I'm trying to be reasonable here. Tell you what, sounds like this is for a good cause. While I can't give you the part for free, I won't charge you for the work. You're done, right it is. I'll get to work on it right away. I recommend you go back to the ship and ask the captain to prepare for its retrofit. Standard stuff. I'm sure they have an engineer on board to help. We'll send the part along when it's ready and install it with the help of Oliver's people. Pleasure working with you. Times the constant almost came apart at the seams. Whew! Well, thankfully, I never let it. <laughs> I was hoping to talk to our visitor from outer space, and here you are! Welcome, welcome! I have a million burning questions, but I won't overwhelm you. There will be plenty of time for that later. Please, indulge me just a couple. How did you do it? Did humanity finally discover faster than light travel and eclipse our poor old ship? I read about this technology in our archives from Earth, but it was only theoretical back then. Amazing! I'll have to learn more. Oh, I've got so many questions, but I'm being rude. I haven't even given you my name. Chief Engineer Kazemi, but you can call me Amin. And, I might add, I'm one of the reasons we're still floating out here today. Yes, of course! Anything for my new friend. What grab drive? 
<laughs> Just joking with you. The Paradiso engineers filled me in. Okay, let's see what we need to do. Hmm. All right. This will be fun. And hopefully there will be no explosions in the process. I have just received word that the drive is here. Ready to get to work? Great, great, great! There are three preparations I need you to help me make while I set things up on my end. First thing I need you to do is reroute the power from the port turbo pump to the auxiliary cryogenic radiator. Then, turn the plasma runoff inhibitor function to 5%. Last, you'll need to decouple the magnetic flange pipe enclosures from the auxiliary module assembly. Got it? Let's hop to it! Looks like oh, everything is good to go, both your end and mine. Uh, can you go and inform the captain while they're finishing the information? Thanks! to you. The engineers even upgraded our communications equipment so we can speak with passing ships. Turns out it was a pretty easy fix. Thank you again for all you've done. Without you, we'd most likely be stuck. But you went above and beyond. I'll make sure people tell tales of your generosity for as long as our society lives. I don't know if we can ever fully repay you. Thank you again. That planet was not right for us anyway. No doubt the next one will be. Goodness, I'm not sure yet. We'll need to study our new star map. Then, well, I suppose we'll venture forth and try to find the perfect new home for us. It may take some time, but I'm confident we'll find something. And when we do, we'll find a shuttle to take us planet side. Thanks again for your help. We were never trained to address yes. threats coming from. I'll us. only carry the good stuff.
I have noted your repeat appearance at our resort. Thank you what for can your I help you with? You have been dropping off a few. Until later. Atmosphere. For safety, we probably shouldn't stray too far from our ship. The lair of the Mantis is ours. Five, four, get the hell out of there.
Set aside anything useful and just leave the rest. Possible. 
She never talked about where she got her fortune. And man, she could handle herself anywhere. It's... a, a lot to take in. Not gonna last much longer. Don't shoot! I am unarmed! Look, we can help each other. I can be useful. Just don't kill me. It's because I'm smart. You've killed so many. I am nothing. No chance. So we can make a deal? This place was full of traps. Traps everywhere. I removed them. But this... this corridor is just too dangerous. See? Looks normal. One step inside, slam! You are trapped, and nobody's been standing after the doors reopen. No one knew how to get through the corridor. But I figured it out. There are letters on the floor. It is a grid. Those letters must spell something. But there are so many words or small phrases. Why does everyone always say that? See? I've been helpful. You... you could let me go. Or better, I can help. I know these traps. I know how this mantis thinks. Please, let me help. And just give me a taste of the cachet inside. You can trust me. I like to think of myself as a merciful person, and I love giving people the benefit of the doubt. But I don't know about this one. Spoken like a true spacer. You won't regret this. I will hold back here. And, well, good luck. This place has killed so many of us. You've 
Got something for? Want to see what I'm kept? Maybe another time. bothering to carry all that junk.
Well, that was fun. Now what? Welcome aboard the UC Vigilance. Did you have any questions before I escort you to the Commander? Yeah, listen to him. Carefully. The Commander's a one-and-done kind of officer. In other words, he hates to repeat himself. Other than that, just observe standard military decorum, and it should keep you from serving any time on the ship's cleaning detail. Of course, if you'd follow me, please. So, you're the vanguard that took down that Terramorph on Tau City. You've made quite an impression around here. Everyone upstairs is talking about it. Damn. That must have been one hell of a firefight. I almost regret missing out on all the fun. Of course, we don't normally see that kind of action on the Vigilance, but we have our moments. All right, Vanguard. Take the lift up to Ops. Commander Akande should be waiting for you. Good luck. Okay, hello. Hello. Pardon. <clears throat> ah, there you are. Commander Kibwe Kande, UC Sistef. Glad to have you aboard. I was beginning to think you were having second thoughts about Commander Tuala's offer. UC Sistef is a division of the UC Navy. While they handle big picture stuff, we deal specifically with pirates. Since you're already involved with the Vanguard, I don't have to underline how important your contribution will be to the security of our spaceways. Yes, I know. I was intentionally vague when I advised Mast of my needs. But rest assured, I'll answer all your questions in due time. So, now that you're part of the team, allow me to introduce you to your new home. This is the operation center of the UC Vigilance. Sysdef's nerve center dedicated to the destruction of the Crimson Fleet. Whether this ship is impressive or not, you're the key element that we've been lacking. We need eyes and ears inside the Crimson Fleet. Someone who can feed us information, evidence, and expose their weaknesses. The catch is that you can't just knock on their front door and ask for an application. Getting inside is going to take some finesse. Good. I have just the right place for you to start. Our intelligence has managed to find a possible opening into the Crimson Fleet through Sersha Bowden, one of their contacts. She works for the Trade Authority in Sidonia. So you'll be using a container of Aurora we've loaded on your ship to get her attention. That's right. So it'll be your job to convince this person that you're the real deal. Once you bluff your way into the Crimson Fleet, then the operation proceeds to evidence gathering. That's where my second-in-command, Lieutenant Gillian Toft, comes into the picture. She'll explain everything you need to know. If I didn't have confidence in your abilities, I would have told Commander Tuala to send someone else. Remember, this entire operation rests on your ability to infiltrate the Crimson Fleet and bring us the evidence we need to take them down. I wouldn't expect any less. Look, before you begin, I want to make something perfectly clear. As an undercover operative for UC Sysdef, You'll be expected to follow our code of conduct and ethics. Allow yourself to stray too far off the path, and you stand a good chance of spiraling out of control. That's what I wanted to hear. Anyway, it's time to hand you over to Lieutenant Toft. She'll brief you about the details of the evidence-gathering portion of the operation. Now, get out of here. Good luck. That's easy to answer. You don't. We'll be monitoring your activities from the vigilance and attempting to keep it within your vicinity. When you feel you've gathered enough evidence, 
and at the completion of your assignments, head back here for a debrief. Beyond that, you're completely on your own. Dismissed. All right. We don't have a lot of time, so I need you to listen up. While you're working undercover, it's imperative that you gather as much evidence as possible. If you find any records that look suspicious or incriminating, you bring it to me. Is that understood? You better make it, because Commander Akande cashed in all his chips to get this operation off the ground. I want data slates, computer downloads, handwritten notes. Hell, I'll take anything if it'll get those bastards thrown into the brig. For the sake of the settled systems, I hope you're right. That minor skirmish you had with them on Vectera was nothing compared to the death and destruction those pirates leave behind. If you've seen what I've seen, you'd understand why I'm pushing you so hard. Yes, of course. I'm sorry if I brought up any painful memories. Oh, uh, one last thing. A bit of good news, actually. Commander Akande has authorized a credit disbursement for each piece of evidence that you return, as compensation for your efforts. It's not generous, it's motivational. Commander Akande's idea. All right, we've loaded a container of Aurora into your ship's cargo hold. We're also providing you with a sample you can use to tease the goods. We've cleared your ship for launch. Proceed to Sidonia. Make contact with Saoirse Bowden. And with any luck, she'll point you to the Crimson Fleet. That should do it. You're dismissed. Not really, no. I've learned to keep my personal experiences separate from the job. Yeah, maybe, no, no, it's not really an appropriate time to be going over my private life. There are much more important things to be done. Let's just stick to the job at hand and concentrate on the mission. But uh, maybe we can talk about it some other time, okay? I'll be here if you have any more questions. Yes, what? Howdy. Captain. Welcome to the Sidonia Trade Authority. Yo, hey, what's up? I'm Manaki. Feel free to ask me anything and I'll do my best to help you out. Cool. That's what we do here.
See you around. Just because the governor's office is right there on the main level doesn't mean it's not secure. If you're here to buy or sell, you might want to talk to Octai. I'm busy. Hmm. Wouldn't be the first time I've heard that line. Oh, don't give me that look. I'm just having a laugh. What have you got for me? Whoa, way too hot for me. That stuff is nothing but bad news. Why don't you take your shipment and try somewhere else? The Trade Authority turning away contraband? Now I've seen everything. All I'm going to point at is the ceiling, with my middle finger. Get that stuff out of here before UC Security catches on. Of course, if there's a finder's fee you're offering, I might, well, bend the rules a little bit. You know, it's funny. Suddenly, I do remember someone who might be able to unload that stuff for you. Well, well. It appears she suddenly remembers everything. Hmm, how nice. There's a buddy of mine who runs with the Crimson Fleet. Goes by the name Adler Kemp. If he isn't passed out, you can find him killing the rest of his brain cells at the Broken Spear. Oh, and uh, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. Unless you're here to serve me another drink, you can turn around and walk away. Hey, why don't you say that a little louder? I don't think every single UC guard in Sedonia heard you! Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we can help you with this. If you've got a whole shipment of this stuff, you're going to need to move it fast. But you're going to have to do something for us first. <laughs> yeah, sure. If the Trade Authority won't even deal with the shipments of that crap, where else you gonna go? Just cool your thrusters for a minute before you wreck this deal for the both of us. Well, this is utterly ridiculous. Do we really have to jump through these hoops to get what we need from you? <sighs> Lady, if you want me to move that shipment for your pal here, you're going to do whatever the hell I want. You got that? Now listen up. Because I'm not going to repeat myself. I need you to deal with a miner who's racked up a bunch of debt. He probably spent it all on booze, not that I blame him. Either way, I want that money back. Perfect. His name's Carl Fielding. I think you'll find him wandering around the Deimos Miners' quarters. Don't worry, you can't miss him. Just look for the most miserable looking guy in the entire place. Thing I can help you with? Adler Kemp. Who the heck is that? What? Play what games? You're obviously confusing me with someone else. Look, I'm tired. It's been a long day in the mines. I just want to go home, 
wash off the dust and relax. This has been fun, though. Whatever. Adler, uh, Adler, Adler. Oh, wait, you mean that Adler? Yeah, sorry. I thought you were talking about someone else. <laughs> I told him I'd pay up next week when Deimos cuts our next profit share check. I'll even bring it to him personally. Hmm? Sound good? Yeah? What the heck do you want me to do, then? Huh? I've... Look, I haven't got a single credit to spare right now. Okay? He can't squeeze blood from a stone. You know? Right? Perhaps he's already been through enough. What games? Why are you doing this to me? I don't have the money. Maybe so. Please, tell Adler I'm sorry for trying to wiggle out of the debt. I didn't have much of a choice. It's not only a blows. Towards the duty here, and I can retire from here. Things can get pretty glum around here. If you really have something for me. There, would you look at that. I knew that bum was holding out on me. He going to be a problem anymore? Or did he get the message? Nice, nice. You're kind of a natural at this. Leaning on deadbeats comes easy to you. I like that. You know, if you like this kind of work, I can get you more, a lot more. You think you can handle running with my, uh, associates? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I like your style. All right. I'll call ahead and get a hold of Neva Mora. She's second to the big boss himself. Head out to Europa. You'll find her there. I suggest you listen to whatever she has to say. Oh. And I've taken care of that Aurora shipment for you, too. Don't spend all that cash in one place. Okay. Something I'll only carry... Talk to you later. Be careful down in the mines and
What are your intentions with this crewman? Oh god. I do not know. Keep in mind, we're not threatening to board you. We're asking. The distinction is rather important. Well, normally I would say no, but... Frankly, it will be safer for us that way. All right. You can dock. We will talk then. sure what to make of you being here. If you wanted to kill us, you could have done that from your ship. If you wanted our cargo, we could have jettisoned it. I guess I should just stop talking and let you say your piece. That is true. Which means you don't want somebody to know what you are really up to. Now, do you mind telling us what this is all about? You really do not know which one of us is Rake, do you? And you do not seem to care either, which makes me think you really want to save him. Okay, I have idea. We can strike his name from Manifest, make it so he was never on board. Then, when we dock, we will leave him on this ship and deliver him to another port. That is fair. We do not want any part of the fleet. Is that all right with you, Austin? Do I have a choice? It does not appear you do. Well then, it is agreed. You go back to your ship and we will make sure Rake was never on ours. And in case any of your handlers get suspicious, here. We had an extra crate of supplies loaded, in case one got damaged. This should be proof you were not here to bargain. I thought we were dead. I can't believe it. Need a hand with something?
help with the ecliptic. I had it under control, but it definitely went faster after you jumped into the fight. Now tell me about the Ragana. Give me some good news, then we can go celebrate. Huh. No kidding. That'll make Delgado happy, seeing as our hands are clean. I would have preferred if you hadn't left witnesses behind, but at least you got the job done. Anyway, you want it into the Crimson Fleet? Well, you're in. Yep, it's that simple. Hope this business with Rakes taught you something. Because I'm about to stick my neck out and vouch for you. If you screw up, and I wind up looking like an asshole, I'm gonna send someone after you. Clear? You better stow that crap before you make me change my mind. And now that you know the deal, it's time to see what you signed up for. I'm gonna upload the coordinates for our headquarters in the Crick system. Spacers call it the key, the fleet calls it home. Head out there as soon as you can. Don't keep me waiting long. Well, we're in. I hope you know what you're doing. This death certainly isn't taking the Crimson Fleet threat lightly. I hope I'll be able to see him next time, surely. The Vigilance is our flagship. Where it goes... We got the message from the Ragana about Austin Rick. We had him dropped off at a separate port, off the books. Suffice to say, he's got a lot to answer for. That's a smart line to follow. Part of this role you're playing means having to make hard choices. Just remember not to lose yourself in the part. I'll do my part to make certain that doesn't happen, Commander. Oh, one more thing before we move on. For transparency's sake, you should know we were the ones that hired Ecliptic to attack Neva's ship. There was concern after what happened with the Regana that you might have trouble earning Neva's trust. Coming to her rescue ensured that would not be a problem. Ah, so I take it you have good news. Were you able to join the fleet? Then it worked. You're in. Sounds like everything is going as expected. Now it's time for the next phase of the mission. Our intel on Searsha was correct. After we received reports on your interaction with Adler Kemp, we picked up on your rendezvous with Neva Mora. Our files indicate she's second in command, so getting on a good side will ensure you get into the Crimson Fleet. That's where you're wrong. You can believe in honor among thieves. But I venture they suspect everyone until proven otherwise. You just need to make sure you allay any suspicions they have. Staying within the proper moral boundaries, of course. Do what you have to, but not what you can't do. The Crimson Fleet has yet to leave us enough hard evidence to build a solid case against them. Be careful not to underestimate their intelligence. So what's next for you on Neva's agenda? Where you'll meet Delgado, no doubt. 
Delgado is the leader of the Crimson Fleet. I have a profile here with some information on his background. You'll want to know the individual cadences of every member of the fleet, but Delgado's most of all. Agreed. The last thing we need is to infiltrate the fleet, only to be kicked out because we've underestimated one of their people. I don't disagree, but it's important to know your enemy and the best way to defeat them. In any case, now that you're with the fleet, you'll be operating independently. We will shadow you eventually, but we'll need to maintain our distance for now, especially while you're on the key. This will also give us time to bolster our defenses, should we need to engage with the fleet in the future. Sir, on that note, shall we begin implementing the upgrade to our shields? Immediately, Lieutenant. Notify the engineers and relay the information to the crew. I hope your entry into the fleet has overcome any doubts you may have had regarding your mission. It certainly increased my estimates on success. Keep up the good work. We'll expect further reports. Dismissed. Jemison, but this ship is starting to feel like home. Hey, steal from me and get caught. 
better off dead. Sounds like you did the fleet a favor. Now toss this body out of an airlock before it turns into a damn air freshener. The hell took you so long? Forget how to grab jump or something? Maybe for you. I'd rather shove a shotgun up my nose than remember the face of every low-life rook who passes through this station. But, all that aside, you made it. So now, you get to hear a nifty history lesson. Pencils ready? Good. This floating scrap heap you're standing on is called the Keep. Used to be an old UC military star station, and now it's the fleet's base of operations. Might look a little beat up on the outside, but we keep it together. Hell yeah it is. Just watch it back when you do. Cred sticks tend to disappear around here, if you catch my meaning. We'll be certain to keep a close watch on our belongings. Anyway, I'll tell you all about the key. But it's better if I show you too. Follow me. history time. So, the key is in orbit around Suvorov. That's the very same ice ball where the United Colonies built a supermax prison they call the Lock. The UC is so clever. Supermax prison, Lock, key, uh, cute, huh? Everything the fleet needs right here. Of course, you've got to pay for it. Remember, on the key, credits are key. What the hell is this? All right, all right, hang on, Nev. Before you get pissed, I've got my hands full. Jasmine, sweetie, I'm trying to give a tour here. So you want to tell me why those damn doors are sealed? It's called a malfunction, you know. That thing I spend most of my day dealing with, believe me, my people are on it. Have a little faith for once. Aww. And you always, Angel. This here's Jasmine. You need anything for your ship, she's got you covered. We'll hit up the depot next since these doors have given out on us. So anyway, we were talking about the lock. About a hundred years ago, the prisoners down there rioted and took over the place. After stealing some ships, they were actually able to make it up here and took over the key. About time you brought us new blood, neighbor. I was getting tired of trading with the same old faces. You're just ticked everyone's getting wise to your ridiculous prices, Alutra. Anyway, welcome to the depot, Rook, where you'll be lucky if these blood-sucking leeches don't bleed you completely dry. Whoa, whoa. It's not our fault that people don't appreciate how much it costs to get untraceable merchandise onto the key. Neva's just whining because she thinks she lost a ton of cash selling us a shipment of gear. She should have done her homework. Yeah, sure, laugh it up. I'll remember that next time I need something from you cheapskates. Let's move on. <clears throat> Back to my story. Well, well. Everyone or the liberated prisoners grab Hey, if you want to pour credits into... I carry most of the standard hardware. Occasionally. I just don't screw me up. Oh, we all. A little advice, Sadiq. You bleed for the fleet. Anyone who says otherwise. Well, most people just glaze over and... Kinetic, electromag...
done here, fine by me. Yes, I'd be happy to carry a few things. collected the hard way <laughs> the hard way oh no rook protect me from zuri's vengeance enough of the bullshit zuri i'll pay you when i pay you deal with it got a problem with that take it up with the boss see On anything the right, you like you've got bradley from the trade authority i'm sure you know the deal there he'll buy pretty much anything no matter how hot then we got our med bay on the left run by the one and only samina misra She'll patch you up, if you've got the money. We don't run any free clinics up in here, you don't? Okay, this is our final stop. Over there, you've got the last Nova, where Vogue serves watered-down drinks at ridiculously exorbitant prices. And right here is the most important place on the entire station, the Reckoner's Core, run by the incomparable Shinya Voss. Another new Rook, Neva? I can't believe Delgado still lets you recruit, given what happened with the last one. You mean Austin Ray? It's been taken care of, alright? I don't like loose ends, and this Rook is the one who tied it off. Perhaps next time you'll try to be a bit more discerning regarding your choices. It's far more cost-effective. Yeah, yeah, love you too, darling. Anyway, Shinya handles our life the money. We call him our Reckoner, but if you ask me, he's actually a pain in the ass. And Neva will slit your throat if she thinks you'll bleed creds. Go to hell, boss. Take care of our new friend here, or I'll find a way to pull the pin on that little party popper in your chest. Anyway, Shinya will get you set up in our system. I've got real work to do. Once you're done, head upstairs and I'll introduce you to the boss. Time for a proper introduction. I am Shinya Voss, the official reckoner for the Crimson Fleet. And since Neva so thoughtfully mentioned it, yes, this is a bomb embedded in my chest. And no, I'll never know the meaning of the word humble. In fact, I find Delgado's idea of a security measure to be quite empowering. Glad you approve. Obviously, betrayal isn't taken lightly around here. Since I oversee the bulk of transactions and maintain all accounts for the fleet, I'm a prime target for information. Should our enemies capture me or I grew any semblance of a moral conscience, you might consider me the greatest threat we have. For Delgado, the bomb grants peace of mind, and a certain degree of safety. It's been over five years since I've stepped off the key. Leaving this place puts far too much at risk. Now, let me get you set up. A moment while I convene with the core. Thanks to advanced modifications even Ryujin would envy. I can interface directly with our mainframe and the Galbank network. This allows me to move and clean credits faster and more efficiently than any run-of-the-mill cyber runner. There, you're done. All you need now is Delgado's blessing, and you'll be one of us.
Getting into the system is a piece of cake. Getting out? Not so much. Anyway, I need you to listen up. Thanks to our relations with contacts across the galaxy, we always have a steady stream of jobs available. I've granted you all the necessary permissions to access these listings at any time using the computers that surround the core. Fine by me. There's plenty of others who do. You do less, you make less. It's a pretty simple equation. Now, I believe that covers all I have to say. So you can run along to Delgado. Take the elevator to the upper level. You should be able to find your way from there, I hope. Alright, listen up. You can all stop complaining. Atrium to cargo bay doors have been repaired. Help you in. You're welcome. Ah, there us are other new recruits. So, now that we are all here, it's time to get down to business. The two of you are the only rooks that have made the latest cut. The rest, well, let's just say they won't be joining us ever again. Neighbor's willing to put her neck on the line and vouch for you, which means you've got what it takes to join the Crimson Fleet. You'd better not disappoint, or you'll find yourself answering to me personally. All right, let's get started here. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, you're in it for the long haul. No one quits. No one retires. The only way out is death. You stay loyal or you pay the consequences. Fleet before friends. Fleet before family. Fleet before yourself. Hey, if you've got a problem, I can decorate that wall behind you with your brains. Room could use a little color if you ask me. It's all right, neighbor. I admire this Rook's backbone. Takes a lot of guts to crack jokes with the threat of death staring them in the face. Can we get on with this? I want to get drunk at the last Nova. I'm impressed. That is the first intelligent thing you have said this entire time, Mathis. Since you two seem so eager to move forward, let's get to your next job. Pack your cold weather gear, Rooks. Where we are going, you're going to need it. Oh, God, don't tell me you're dragging him down to Suvaral for another one of your little initiation runs. Ten Johns to the surface, twelve dead Rooks. You'd think by now you would have given up on that goddamn campfire story. Crix's legacy is no story, neighbor. We've got fresh eyes in the fleet. And if these two want to impress, they're going to help me search those ruins. I hope you're right, Dale. That new code we grabbed for the lot cost us a ton of credits. And a decent captain. This initiation, as Neva calls it, is your chance to see where it all began. On Suvorov with Jasper Griggs. Griggs led the riots that gave birth to the Crimson Fleet. And if his legacy is still out there, we're going to be the ones to find it. Before Crix left the fleet, he left a message talking about a major score. One that would set up the fleet to be a big player in the settled systems. Somewhere down the line, they started calling it Crix's legacy. And everyone who's tried to find it has wound up empty-handed, missing, or dead. If we're gonna beat those odds, we'll first need a lead. And I would wager we will find one on Subarov. Dale's leaving out the best part. That this whole search is based on a handful of words on a very old slate. Crix left a lot of big talk on that recording. And not a lot of facts. Some of us believe in it more than others. <laughs> Don't listen to her. When we get our hands on Crix's legacy, the fleet will be operating at a completely different level. We will become more than a match for UCC's death. Listen to the words that I am saying. The legacy is real. You will find that out in due time, provided you're willing to put in the work. 
nothing worth having ever comes easy. Though the idea of the legacy has probably been blown a bit out of proportion, I'm certain there's an element of truth to its existence. Exactly. Now you're beginning to understand. Okay, enough discussion. We have got a lot of work to do. To that end, the next stop is the lock. I've had Jazz feed the coordinates into your ship's computer. Since Mathis doesn't have a ship, he's going to ride with me. I'll see you down there, Rook. Don't keep me waiting. Plenty of organic materials to harvest from this world. About time you got here. I told you you were wasting your time, Del. I'm not taking anyone's side at anything. All I am doing is watching the both of you and waiting for one of you to do something as stupid so I can put you on the ground. Yeah? We will see. And Mathis, I am running things around here, so keep your mouth shut. You got that? <laughs> Fine. All right, listen up, because I am only going to go through this once. We are here to dig up any info about Grix's legacy. We are not here to scrap for loot. Whatever you pick up, don't think, don't get creative, bring it straight to me. If that was supposed to be a joke, I am not laughing. Don't worry about laughing, Delgado. It'll be a goddamn laugh riot when I split open his head with a crowbar. All right, that's enough. If either of you want to fly with the Crimson Fleet, then you need to follow one simple rule. When you're on a job, you do exactly what I say. No questions asked. If that doesn't work for you, just say so, and I will leave you on this ice ball without a ship. You will be dead within hours. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and there's one more thing. Your little friend can tag along until we get to the outer doors of the prison, but I will be damned if I'm letting them inside. Oh, very nice. I'll just remain here and soak in the planet's lovely winter-like atmosphere until I go hypothermic. We have a lot of ground to cover between the landing area and the lock, so let's get moving.
here we are. The place where Jasper Griggs laid the groundwork for finding the legacy, and eventually, the Crimson Fleet. The Lock. Oh, grow a spine, will ya? God. There is a huge difference between being a coward and being careful. So both of you, watch yourselves. All right, let's keep moving. Standing out here isn't doing us any good. This ID card cost a small fortune. Let's hope it pays off. <laughs> we are in. Let's go. First time I have been inside this part of the lock, so keep your eyes open. See anything unusual? Call it out. If it's hostile, take it down. Good reason. How many people did the UC stick down here, Dal? A couple of hundred at least. Might not look like much, but it was better than trying to survive on the surface. Much better. Oh, this place looks like a goddamn dump. Now you know why the prisoners got fed up and looked to Griggs to lead them out of here. And that's how the Crimson Fleet began. Yeah, yeah, we've all heard the story. It's not a story, Malice. It's history. Remember that. Now, keep your mouth shut and your eyes open. them than us, though, am I right? Wait, shut up a second! Did you hear that? Wait, what was that? Oh, I bet these things are crawling all over the place. Yeah, and their bodies probably heard us firing from about a kilometer away. Hallelujah. If we weren't on this job with Delgado, I'd drop you for saying that. Enough already! I should have known better than to bring both of you at the same time. Now let's see. Looks like we are inside some sort of prisoner transfer area. But everything is locked down tight. Since you are such good friends, why don't you and Mathis head up to that control room and see if you can get some more of these doors open?
Well, this is just great. The hell are we supposed to do now? The plan? Who gives a shit about the plan? Let's face it, we're on our own now. You think he rigged that collapse on purpose? No. No way. I get that we're down here trying to prove ourselves. But I don't think this is what Delgado had in mind. Why? Because that's what his loyal little soldiers are supposed to do? The hell with that. I have a better plan. We use this opportunity to take out Delgado, and at the same time, make some serious credits for ourselves. We bide our time, and when the moment's right, we hit him with everything we've got. Even the almighty Delgado won't stand a chance if we work together. Oh, come on. We're just a couple of rooks. When are we ever gonna have a chance like this again? Let's pretend for a second Delgado's correct. And there's information here about Crix's legacy. Once we get rid of him, we'll dig up the garbage ourselves and sell whatever we find to Neva. We'll be rolling in credits. Are you crazy? I'm no rat for Delgado. I'm busting the ass to become one of the Crimson Fleet captains just like you. And in case you missed it, that icefall trapped both of us in here. Unless we find a way out, no one's reporting anything to anyone. Ever again. Playing it safe, huh? <laughs> I can respect that. But you better have me back when I make me move. Now, let's find a way out of here.
have you thought about what I've said? Well, maybe we won't have to. You saw it back there. Those things, whatever they were, they've probably ripped him to shreds by now. Did the job for us. And if they haven't, we can still handle the job. We just have to get our hands a little dirty. Wouldn't be the first time, am I right? You've got a point. All right, I'll follow your lead for now. So, now that we've made it to the guard tower, what's our next move, genius? Keep doing what we've been doing. Right. <laughs> Glad I asked. I suppose we should start off by searching the tower for the location of Crix's cell. If he stashed any useful information, it might still be hidden somewhere inside. Cell D03118. Okay. It's a place to start, I guess. Delgado was right. Crix must have hit the Galbank transport and stashed away the money or something. But we play this right, and we're gonna be filthy stinking rich in no time.
to live in this kind of cold. That's bullshit. years old, eh? It's amazing this entire place hasn't collapsed by now.
Was this an armory? Looks like they cleared this place out. Well, well, what do we have here? Now, give me a sec. This ought to come in handy.
They aren't paying us enough to be poking through this scrap heap. Bullshit, Delgado. I help plenty. Is that madness? Tell him to shut up. I will deal with him later. Whatever. Okay. Now all we have to do is find a way off of this planet. Um, let me see. Ah, here we go. I'm looking at schematics for the lock. And I don't think there's a way to get you back to the surface from there. But I can open the outer doors to the shuttle bay and let you fly one of the shuttles down there directly up to the key. According to the schematics, there is an emergency evacuation exit I can use to return to the surface. Then it's just a quick run across the ice to my ship, and I'll probably still be you to the key. Yeah, sure, and I wish gold coins would start raining from the sky. Now, if wishing time is over, maybe you'd be kind enough to stop running your mouth and listen for a change. Okay, let me see. One of these probably opens the door. Shuttle bay activated. Initiating the process. Please stand by. Yup, it's got it. Might take a while, though. Those bay doors have not been opened in almost a century. You have done a hell of a job, Rook. We will talk when you get back to the key. Why the hell did you lie to Delgado about me? You didn't do all this work alone. Whoa, wait a minute. You think I was gonna... Oh, come on. All I've been doing is looking out for you this whole time. Hey, if I wanted to kill you, we wouldn't be talking, right? Look, um, about all that killing Delgado stuff, why don't we just forget about everything that I said? You know, like it never happened. Yeah, yeah, of course, don't worry, I'm good for it. Now, let's get the heck out of here.
fix something up for you. Pleasure. Every captain here's earned their stripes, bleeding for the fleet. Bog Krog is fine if you like cheap moonshine. First time visiting the infirmary, huh? Let me give you a piece of advice. Try not to get into too many bar fights. I'm trying to save my dwindling supplies for sale and pirates coming in off of raids. <laughs> That's what they all say, until they stumble in bleeding out on my floor. So here's what's what. You need med packs, curatives, preventatives, I've got you covered. At least as long as my current supply holds out. You need enhancers, legal or illegal? I've got those two. Hopefully that won't be often. Now, if you don't need anything else, I've got a particularly annoying supply issue to deal with. All right, let's take a look. You look like hell. All right, can't have you bleeding all over the place. This might hurt, but nothing you aren't used to. All patched up, for now. I suppose I can spare a few supplies. Be careful. I don't have endless supplies, you know. Those mission boards aren't going to clear themselves. Took you so long. It's about time. I was about to fly down and loot your bodies. Not now, neighbor. Well, you said you found something. Hand it over. That's it? Just one slate. After losing so much of our crew, it better be a map with a big red X on it. Well, I'll be damned. Legacy wasn't referring to Crix's fortune. It's the name of an actual ship. A Galbank transport probably loaded with credits. Never heard any stories about a Galbank ship going down. And even if it had happened, it would have been picked clean years ago. 
No, neighbor. Think. If Galbank covered it up, and over time, the location was eventually forgotten, it wouldn't be on anyone's radar. Okay, this changes things. Now that we know what we are looking for, we have to narrow the search. I'm sure he did not have a choice. People would kill to get a crack at a score this big. I know I have. Let us start with what we know. It was a Galbag ship, which means the company is going to have records of where it went down. Neva, weren't you working on a deal with Rokov? Something about a big wig charity event on one of Trident's Starliners? Are you serious? I've been working on that gig for three months. That's my score. Adios mio. Will you shut up about your score and think for a second? That Starliner has a Galbank VIP suite aboard. Which means... Come on, Neva. This isn't hard. Which means a Galbank exec will be aboard. We grab their credentials and get ourselves into the Galbank archives in New Atlantis. Holy shit, that might actually work. I'll send a message to Rokov right away. Pack your bags, Rook. You're going on vacation. And since you've earned it, take this gun with you. Might come in handy when Rokov screws everything up as usual. Good, because that is exactly what you are going to be doing. Neighbor and I are too well known to walk around the Starliner without being recognized. If Trident Security spotted us, it'd be over. I need you to board that ship, make contact with Rokov, and get me those credentials. You'd better. Oh, before you leave, I wanted you to know that I took what you said about Mathis into consideration, and I've decided to cut him from the fleet. Honestly, I'm surprised he made it off Suvorov in one piece. Because you're the one that finished the job. You followed orders, and you put your neck on the block to get that data to the key. As far as Mathis goes, I'm sure you had to drag him through the lock and prevent him from doing something as stupid. There's no need to cover for him. Your first impression told me everything I needed to know. That's it then. Next stop for you is Rokov Starliner, the Siren of the Stars. And remember, Rokov does not need to know anything about Grixis' legacy. For now, it's just between us. Now get out of here. Hey, Rook, before you head out, I need to have a word with you. Meet me at the last Nova after you wrap things up with Matt. It appears we've stumbled across the embodiment of the phrase, absolute mayhem. Hey, I want to talk to you. Thanks to you, Delgado's cut me from the fleet. Well, you know what? You better get your own fleet, because I'm coming after you. Oh, I see. You think you're some kind of big shot, is that it? Gonna show poor Mathis a little mercy now. You're Delgado's best buddy, yeah? Well, guess what? Your generosity is getting me kicked off the key. And that means you better watch your back.
I stayed to give you a message that you better start looking over your shoulder. You'll never know when I'll be right behind you, ready to pull the trigger. Like my colleague said, it was so nice of you to stay and wish us well. Now get the hell out of me way! You lost Rook? Bars over by the back wall. I hope Bug has something strong enough to- There you are. All right, look. I've been lining up a score with that asshole Rokoff on the Siren of the Stars for months. I'm not about to let a payday slip through my fingers. So guess what? You're gonna finish the job for me. My friend's got a point, Bug. Every my score involves a one-time event being held aboard the Siren of the Stars. If anyone finds out the Crimson Fleet's aboard that Starliner, the event will be canceled and I can kiss my payday goodbye. There's no way I'm gonna miss this window of opportunity. I'm about to tell you, so shut up and listen. Rokov's been tipping me off about some kind of bullshit charity event that the Siren of the Stars is hosting. At the event, they're gonna give away something called the Earth Savior Award, which is worth tens of thousands of credits. So it's simple. While you're on the siren, swiping those gal bait credentials, I want you to grab that award and bring it to me. From the pictures I've seen, the award is set with 12 blue diamonds and covered in gold filigree. If I get jazzed to take it apart, I can turn it into a hell of a lot of cash. And best of all, the components become untraceable. And I'd prefer to have the money that award's worth in my account. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. Look, you can make all the jokes and excuses you want. But if you don't come back with the ES award, I'm gonna deduct it from your pay. Either way, I get my money. How much you walk away with is in your own hands. Got it? Unless you plan to walk away empty-handed, she really isn't giving us a choice. Then it's settled. Good. All right, Rook, we're done here. Now, get your ass to the siren and bring me my good. Because that's exactly what you are. A rookie, a newbie, fresh meat. Beneath all of that inexperience, I'm sure you have an actual name. But honestly, no one gives a damn. So get used to hearing that word. Until you earn your stripes, you're a rook to everyone in the fleet. We'll talk later. I don't trust you. Got something for me? Let's see what you've got. Goodbye.
Most of our operations team graduated top of their class at the academy. There's a fleet out there. Excuse me. Where it is the fleet has you chasing ghosts on super. Yo. Back. So how did it go? Frankly, it's because we've never gotten this far before. The last agent I sent to infiltrate the Crimson Fleet ended up in a morgue on New Atlantis. Even with our best intelligence equipment, we can monitor very little from the Vigilance. We can pick up local communications chatter and use long-range scans to see where you travel. But when you're on the ground, you're on your own. If we get too close, we not only expose ourselves to an attack, but we might blow your cover, and that could get everyone killed. Then things are moving forward. Perfect. Nice job, Rook. I was certain we'd fool Delgado, but never. She's a sharp one. Overcoming her scrutiny is no small matter. Did you discover anything worth reporting yet? If the intelligence I've read is accurate, Delgado is a charismatic leader, but a bit short on judgment. That's why you want to stay on his good side, and stay away from Neva. She's shrewd, and she sniffed out everything we've thrown her way. I understand your concern, but you can rest assured that every member of this crew has been thoroughly vetted by both myself and Lieutenant Toft. Any information that you turn over will not be leaving this ship until it's fully encrypted and encoded. I give you my word. Legacy. Why does that sound familiar? Wait a moment. Are you telling me Delgado may have actually located Crix's legacy? Excuse me, Commander. Did you say Crix's legacy? Please tell me you aren't seriously going to give that any credence. Everyone knows that's just a... I don't know, a myth? I'm holding tangible confirmation of the word legacy attached to Crix's name. That's too much of a coincidence to attribute to myth. I suppose it's possible, sir. Intelligence picked up a bit of chatter on that subject recently. We assumed it was some sort of tall tale or a story to attract recruits to their cause. Well, we can solve that little mystery in about ten seconds. Let me see what we have here. Nope. There are no records of a gal bank transport named the Legacy in the database. <laughs> I think Delgado's trying to manipulate you. What do you think, sir? I think there's no record because Gal Bank is hiding something. Delgado's no fool. If he risked his own neck to get that information, then he must be on to something. We have to take this seriously. What's your next move? Clever, Delgado. Very clever. If I were in your place, I'd be trying to do the exact same thing. We can't let Delgado get his hands on what could potentially turn out to be the largest haul of credits the Crimson Fleet's ever seen. Maybe I should head out to New Atlantis, sir. I could press the Galbank execs for information. Get ahead of everything. No. Let's allow this to run its course. We have our agent here feeding us information. I think that's good enough for now. There's more to this than just finding the location of the transport. Jasper Crix was clever. For some reason, he never got there. And let Neva Mora take his place. Or Shinya Voss. Or any one of a number of pirates already gunning for his position. No. The solution is to stick to the undercover operation and determine how much of this is truly a credible threat. It's imperative that you do. If the Crimson Fleet gets its hands on a transport full of currency, it would be disastrous for the settled systems. I need you to do whatever you can to bring us more information. And for God's sake, don't kill anyone on that Starliner. You're both dismissed. What can I help you with? It's 
fun. Now what? Hey, Captain. About time you showed up. All right, I want to know what's going on. I've been trying to get Delgado's attention for, oh, I don't know, three years now. And what do I get? Nothing but radio silence. Then out of nowhere, just when Neva and I are closing in on a huge score of our own, Delgado orders me to help you out. Because the only way to achieve a win is by agreeing to play the game in the first place. Worst case scenario, I don't make the fleet, but I end up a couple thousand credits richer. That's almost a win-win, a don't you think? Happy. Oh, I'm thrilled. Still, this leaves me with a lot of unknowns, and in our line of work, unknowns get you killed. So Neva's message said you were here for Dombrowski. Was that all she sent you here to do? Or was there something else you were sent here to steal? Oh really? Did she now? I can't believe she's trying to cut me out of this deal. Without me, the award never would have ended up here in the first place. I spent months manipulating the Turan Preservation Society to hosting their gala affair aboard the Siren of the Stars. I had to arrange the event to make sure that the award was aboard the ship. Neva said she'd do the rest. When I got a message about Dubrovsky, I assumed she'd be tagging along to steal the award. But looks like uh, she said you in her place. Yeah? Funny you're only bringing that up now. Fine, I'll help. But you're doing all the legwork, and I'm still taking my cut of the payout. Anyway, we'll get to that later. First, we have a much bigger fish to fry. So why are you targeting a Gall Bank exec anyway? Not exactly your average Crimson Fleet prey. Why the interest?
Playing it safe for now, okay. I can respect that. But let's make one thing clear. If I'm gonna stick my neck out by helping you get near Dombrowski, I want something in return. Like him or not, he's the Siren's captain, so his assistance is going to be invaluable. Maybe we should hear what he has to say. Well, well. It appears we have a mind reader here. You're absolutely right. I don't want money. I want back into the Crimson Fleet. It's as simple as that. Fine. You want to play it that way, and suit yourself. Dombrowski's a full-timer aboard the Siren of the Stars. Probably spends more time cruising the space lanes than actually working. Fortunately, the Siren is hosting the Tehran Preservation Society charity gala. Larry won't be able to resist showing off his VIP clout. To get what you need, you're gonna have to attend the gala, talk to his fellow philanthropists, and dig up some dirt. Oh god. I'd rather hunt down Varun's zealots than mingle with those egotistical frauds. Yeah, well, lucky for you, it's not black tie, so you'll be fine. This card will allow you to access the Starview Ballroom. If you need my help, I'll be relaxing in one of the upper level lounges. Head inside and mingle with the crowd. No one likes Dombrowski, so they'll be more than happy to share his dirty secrets. Now you're speaking my language. Oh, there's one last thing. Dryden equips all of their Starliners with the latest acoustic threat detection. Meaning that you lose patience and kill anyone aboard the ship, security will be alerted and all hell will break loose. Anyway, I suppose that's enough to get you started. Good luck. As long as you remember that I'm getting paid my cut, I'll help you with anything you want. What's the status of your plan? Okay, then let me point you to the person in charge of the award. Her name's Sheila Holbrook, and you can probably find her in the Starview Ballroom. I'd press her to reveal where the award's hidden, and we can go from there. And if you're thinking of pulling the trigger on poor Miss Holbrook, remember that any gunfire is gonna set off the ship's alarms. Oh, and while you're at the gala, avoid the gun of these. They're frozen, not fresh. There's nothing quite like the new Between you and me, the best part is my dream. Society chair has really outdone herself this time. Yes! I'm extremely busy preparing for the award ceremony, so this better be important. Yes, I am. Actually, I've been entrusted with the transfer of the award for the last seven of its nine years. Why do you ask? Yes, it's quite marvelous, isn't it? Absolutely priceless. Alas, I'm afraid you'll just have to wait for the ceremony to see it in all its glory. 
It's far too valuable to be left anywhere else except the master safe located at the purser's office. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have much more important things on my agenda than to speak to the likes of you. Please remain in designated passenger areas at all times. Have a safe journey. With all the worthy causes and the settled systems, oh, you'd think people wouldn't waste money on these pretentious emotions. Please let me know if your voyage is unsatisfactory in any way. Welcome to the purser's office. I'm Chief Purser Murata. How can I be of assistance today? Oh, absolutely! The safe is magnetically sealed and shielded with multiple layers of fully damage-resistant, vacuum-proof plating. In the unlikely event our vessel is boarded and the threat detection alarm is triggered, the safe will be permanently sealed until it reaches port. In the even more unlikely event this ship is destroyed, we can assure you that your loved ones will be able to recover your goods from the wreckage. So, as you can imagine, your property will be completely secure until you decide to retrieve them from our safe. I've only seen it briefly myself, but I can assure you that it's quite lovely. Unfortunately, the item is locked inside of our safe, which can only be accessed by presenting an appropriate claim ID. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? Well, if you change your mind, I'll be here. Have a wonderful trip. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to make your stay more comfortable. This must be where the passengers store their valuables while the siren is underway. So what brings you aboard? Must you continue these unwelcome interruptions? I'm a very busy woman. Excuse me? And why in goodness name would I do something as foolish as that? And why in goodness name would I possibly agree to that ridiculous demand? Is this really what we're doing? I mean, it might be okay. I'd like to think so. Oh, just take the damn thing already. Listen, maybe you can keep this between us. If the award goes missing, there's no need for the insurance company to get involved. Any complaints about your cruise should be directed? Starliner. Nothing but the best for the society, huh? Here for business? Pleasure. Have you tried that the canopies? View is absolutely horrid. Spectacular, Positively isn't horrid. It? Larry has an A-level executive rating over at Galbank, which means 
He has access to everyone's accounts at the touch of a button. Could we talk about something else? The Society was founded about eight years ago by Carl S. A. Worthington, a prominent businessman from New Atlantis. That's all then? Okay. Society chair has really up. Yes, he's some kind of top dog over at Galbank. I heard he replaced someone that was caught running a fake loan scam. Nice to have met you. Hmm, an open bar would have been nice, but Trident's gouging us with regret. We've Pleased got. to make your acquaintance. Hello, are you a member of the society? I certainly hope That's they decide to hold all future society events aboard a star. I heard he uses Galbank's VIP suites on the Siren of the Stars almost monthly. Does the man ever do any real work? Enjoy the rest of the event. So what brings you aboard? <laughs> I don't know why Larry's attending this event. He could care less about any planet, let alone the Earth. No. Now why the heck are you so interested in him anyway? Hmm. Well, that was boring. Sorry. Yeah, uh, can we do this later? I'm busy. Have you tried the canopies? The considerable amounts of cash that Dombrowski donates is the only reason we allow him to attend society functions. Don't forget to donate to the cause. An open bar would have been nice, but Trident's gouging Quite us for every lovely crate we've got. He's been spending a lot of time with Claudia Swist. Quality time, if you catch my meaning. I'm certain his wife doesn't know a thing about it. <laughs> well, that was boring. Here for business or pleasure? I'm sorry, but unless you're reporting a security situation... Do I know you? Okay, wait, are you seriously... Uh, are you trying to pick me up? Look, uh, I appreciate the compliment, but I'm already seeing someone. And my partner doesn't like competition. He gets very jealous. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How did you... I told Larry to keep his big mouth shut, but did he listen? No! He had to impress his friends and treat me like a trophy. Look, I've been in this business for a long time, and I know how this game works, so let's skip all the banter and get it over with. What's it gonna take to make us both happy? If I give you dirt on that son of a bitch Dombrowski, all I'm doing is endangering myself. Why would I do that? You know more about me than I suspected. Can't have that. That's true. For once, I would like to see him squirm. I'd love to see that man suffer. If you had another way to get the information, you wouldn't be dealing. You'd be demanding. You know what? Forget it. The price of doing business by slinging mud is way too steep. What else you got? You're willing to pay me to give you dirt on Larry? <laughs> Sorry, I... I thought I'd end up on the short end of the deal. You know, this whole thing really pisses me off. Larry and I had the perfect scheme where thousands of credits all worked out, and then he goes and flushes the whole thing down the toilet. If you're angry at anybody, it should be yourself for getting mixed up in this ridiculous scheme in the first place. Judge me all you want, lady. At this point, if I'm going down, then all I'm focused on is dragging Larry down with me.
I didn't know who the hell you were. For all I knew, you were working for Dombrowski. It's called playing it cool. You should try it sometime. Oh, angry isn't even the right word. The plan was solid. Larry got together with myself and this other guy, Gabriel Vera. He's some big wig over at UC Security. I doctored the transactions, Larry wiped them off the system, and Vera kept the legal pressure off of us. We were scamming Galbank for months. It was going well until I discovered Larry was cheating everyone by changing each transaction in his favor before deleting them. Oh, I know he was using me. At the same time, he was saying how much he loved me. He was stringing me along and stabbing me in the back. I wish I had some. Maybe you should try talking to Gabriel Vera. He should be around here somewhere. If he doesn't want to cooperate, just mention my name. That should grab his attention. Good luck. You're gonna need it. What do you think is going on? I'm using that gullible idiot to get what I want. If I have to squash him on my way to the top, then so be it. Let's get one thing straight. Larry Dombrowski's no saint. He deserves everything that's coming to him. That was a bit insensitive, but my colleague's right. If you're manipulating him, doesn't that make you just as guilty, hmm? Where the hell do you get off judging me? You don't know that asshole like I do, okay? Dombrowski is a piece of human garbage. He'd stab you in the back for table scraps, then stab you again to steal dessert. The plan's always been to milk the guy for everything he's worth, and then leave him in the dust. Not bad for a lowly Galbank worker drone, right? I hope you hurt Dombrowski. Nail his ass right to the wall. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Hello. You here for the charity event? Oh, uh, I'm afraid that's a bit outside my wheelhouse. I work for UC Security, so I don't think I could be of much help. I have nothing to do with Galbank. Claudia sent you, did she? Look, friend, I don't know if you're just a little drunk, maybe a touch crazy, or both. Whatever you think you know about me, you're dead wrong. So back off. You're a liar and an absolute disgrace to the United Colonies. <laughs> just in case you weren't aware, I am the authorities. Anything you try to report will boil down to your word against mine. And since I work for UC Security, who do you think people will believe? The society chip I told you to stay out of my way. I Hello? Bet. I saw your little exchange with Vera. Keep that up and I guarantee that Embassar's gonna demand that you be arrested. Oh, absolutely. He's up the ladder at UC Security. Lots of pull. We have to handle this very delicately. Which is why he's threatening you. That makes sense. We need hard evidence of their scheme, but it's gonna be tricky. The problem is he's not gonna talk to you in public. We need to get Vera isolated so he'll spill everything he knows. Maybe, but if something goes wrong and he's able to raise an alarm, we're sunk. With all of these wealthy patrons aboard, the ship is crawling with security. Smart, 
If there's an emergency, standard practice is for all passengers to clear the decks and report to their cabins for lockdown. I think the best chance we have would be to tamper with the life support sensors. Manipulate a few controls and you can fool the monitoring system into thinking there's a, a life support failure. And there you have your emergency. Yes, exactly. We shouldn't go near that system. If anything goes wrong, we could kill everyone aboard. You don't need to know anything about the system. All you need to do is access the maintenance area and throw some switches. One more thing. If Chief Engineer Sundin gives you any trouble, tell him I'll erase that gambling debt he owes me. I prefer you use that as a last resort, but hey, what's the harm in losing a few credits when I'm on the brink of rejoining the fleet, right? Anyway, I better start backing. Things are getting hot around here, and won't be long before Trident figures out you had hell. All passengers are instructed to immediately report to their cabins. That way, we keep the halls clear and avoid a panic. Fortunately for us, all of the passenger cabin doors will automatically unlock. This is normally to ensure the crew can check cabins quickly and without interference. But in our case, it's like having an all-access pass. On the surface, he's an upstanding citizen of the United Colonies, pretty high up in UC security. Lots of clout with mast. Underneath, he's a greedy piece of garbage. Give it the chance he'd backstab you for a cred stick and pin the murder on someone else. Come to think of it, if he wasn't such a petty tyrant, he'd probably thrive with the Crimson Fleet. Go do something useful, okay? Have you tried the canapes? Hold up. This area is off limits to passengers. Wait a second. You're Captain Rokov's guest, right? Didn't expect to see you down here. Sorry to give you trouble. What can I do for you? Oh, uh, sorry. That area is off limits. No exceptions. Oh, really? Well, that changes things quite a bit. Tell you what, I'm just going to step out for a bit and stretch my legs. Maybe you can hold this for me while I'm away? Honestly, he's a seasoned ship captain. He told me he was a long hauler for years and the experience shows. Only thing is, he's always talking about trade deals and plans for get-rich-quick schemes. If all the guy ever thinks about why he decided to be a star liner captain, I'll never know. It's almost like he craves being around money. Tell you what though, for someone that loves credit so much, he sure doesn't mind gambling them when we play cards. Feel free to look around, but don't mess with any of the controls. There's some heavy security protecting this area. But judging from the fact that this is the life support control, it certainly makes sense.
May I have your attention, please? The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive further instructions. Well, it appears that we've definitely ruined the party. Everyone's gone. of this cabin. It's large I was enough wondering to if you were the cause of the ship-wide well. emergency. What a ridiculous It's time you stop playing games and tell me why you're here. You're working for Ikande's little anti-pirating outfit? So what? I have nothing to do with the Crimson Fleet. And even if I suddenly decided to stay loyal to the old UC, why would I possibly want to incriminate myself by handing over evidence. I don't know where you got that information from, but it lines up with all the troubles I've been having getting my cut from that asshole. That means my money's already gone. And Dombrowski's going to walk away with a fortune. I'd love to see the bastard fly. But if I give you that information and it falls into the wrong hands, I could end up in jail. Oh, I've got everything you're gonna need. This is a one-stop shop for you. We're talking a slate loaded with dates, account numbers, ID scans, even an audio recording. It was my little insurance policy in case the shit hit the fan. There's a solid enough trail here to send Dombrowski straight to jail. At least I walk away with something. All right, you have yourself a deal. Here. With this slate and this recording to tie it all together, you'll be able to nail his ass to the wall. He'll do whatever you want. Just remember that you promised to leave me out of it. Wait a moment. Are you telling me that this scheme is getting so out of hand, it also involves a Crimson Fleet? <sighs> That's all I need right now. Enemies on two fronts. Just because I'm helping you nail Dombrowski, doesn't mean I'm turning my back on UC security. How else am I going to ensure that he ends up behind bars when all this comes crashing down? No, you can leave me out of your merry little band of pirates, thank you very much. You better tell Dombrowski to run, because if you don't kill him, I will. Costing Claudia and Gabriel. I'm uncertain what you hope to accomplish here, but it appears we should rapidly enter into some sort of negotiation. Excellent, excellent. So, before we begin, let's review the facts. First, it's clear that you've obtained insider knowledge of my arrangement to defraud Galbank. The means and the method, perhaps, but not the motive. And second, I'm going to hypothesize that my compatriots are despondent regarding their share and have assisted you with this endeavor, hmm? Since we're speaking and I'm not at the reporting end of a bullet, this leads me to conclude that you desire something 
personal from me. I see. Well, that certainly places a damper on our negotiations. Perhaps I can hasten my diatribe to temper your violence-ridden contribution. In blunt terms, you have compromising materials about me in your possession. The only thing I have to offer in return are my gal bank credentials. I assume that's what you've been angling for all along? Oh, do get on with this. There's only so long I can stand being in the presence of this pig. Oh, it was actually a rather easy deduction to make. It's the only thing of significant value that I still have in my possession. It appears we've reached an accord. Wait, I'm sorry. Let me simplify that for you. It sounds like we have a deal. Oh, of course I trust you'll understand if I ask for us to avoid any further contact. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to formulate how I'm going to utterly ruin two very annoying business associates. Good day. There's no cause for alarm. I'm sure it's... All passengers are being asked to return to their cabin. This... Well, looks like everything worked out. Just like we planned. I wish you hadn't blown away the gambling bet that Sandine owed me. But hey, you got the job done. I'm glad you feel that way. Just remember to tell Delgado how much I pitched into hell. You know, I'm still wondering exactly what you needed those credentials for. You feel like telling me, partner? The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. Ah, so he told you to keep it from me. I see. I wouldn't want you to risk your position with the fleet like I did, so I'll just leave it alone. Anyway, I suppose there's nothing stopping me from rejoining the fleet now. It's been a long time coming. I owe you one, Dover Beach. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit short in that department myself. Perhaps I can pay you back later in some other way. Just look for me on the uh, key, and I'll see what I can do. Well, I suppose this is where we part company. Hopefully the next time we meet, we'll be aboard the key. Please return to your cabin immediately. All passengers are being asked to return to their cabins at this time. Lift off when you are, Captain.
everyone to take care of any leeches on their ships. We don't want any terror. Hello, welcome to the <clears throat> the uh, Galbank Archives. May I see your credentials, please? Just one moment while I verify. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Dombrowski. Welcome, sir. Give me a moment to log your visit, and then I'll unseal the archives. Me? No. Look, this is my first day on the job. Just cut me some slack, okay? I can't afford to lose it. I got a wife and kids to feed. Everything checks out. Give me a moment to log your visit, and then I'll unseal the archives. There we go. Have a wonderful day.
kick back, avoid the last Nova. Box in a funk that it kills. Your buddy Rokov is aboard the key. Told me everything had happened. Yeah, he won't shut up about you. Keeps going on and on. <laughs> now I remember why we kicked his ass out the fleet. Yeah, that be a first. All right, neighbor, you've made your point. Well, since you're vouching for Rokov, I guess we can give him another chance. All right, now that is out of the way, we can move on to the matter at hand, Crix's legacy. Speaking of which, let me see that data you copied from the Galbank archives. Ah, so the Galbank transport went down over Bannock 4. Bannock. Why does that sound familiar? Neva? Yeah, yeah, keep your panties on. I'm looking it up. And... I... Got it. Bannock 4. Let's see. Damn it. Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant. We can't even get a ship near the thing without frying every circuit aboard. EM-class? <sighs> Impossible. There isn't a ship in operation that can navigate that type of interference. Yeah, sure. We'll just wrap your ship in a ton of copper and launch you right in there. That ought to do the trick, right? Both of you shut up and think for a second. I'm sure Kriegs hit the same roadblock. All we need to do is figure out how he got around it. This sounds like a goddamn waste of time to me. That's the spirit, Rook. That is the essence of the Crimson Fleet that has been slipping away lately. Neva, the Galbank data says the transport had a CBR-27 transponder. Can we track that kind of thing? Pinpoint its exact location? That transponder is military grade. We're talking ultra-bit encryption, constantly reshuffling frequencies. We don't have shit like that laying around. But... Before you get that pissy look on your face, I heard that the UC's been working on a ship signal decryption system called the Comm Spike. We grab that little beauty, and we'll be able to track anything you want. All right, here is the plan, so shut up and listen. Rook, I want you and Neva to put your heads together and get us that Comm Spike. I don't care if it's mounted at the top of mast. I want it. In the meantime, I'm going to find out more about this EM class gas giant problem. And I think I know just who to ask. Give me a little time to crunch the numbers on the comm spike with Jazz, and I'll point us in the right direction. Best we can. What are you, five? All right, that is enough. We are in arm's reach of Crix's legacy, and I don't have time to deal with this kind of bullshit. Now, both of you, get the hell out of here and get to work! All right. Let's get this over with. Follow me. Except in my town, you could do Aurora anyway. 
So, looks like, once again, I'm Jazz, resident engineer here. Like Neva said, you need ship part? It may not be wider, but it's not on the books, if that's what you're getting at. I can guarantee your ship will be in. We got the best selection. Anything that keeps the UC and Free Star Rangers off your tail is a must-have in my book. Just let me know when you want to talk business. Neva's mine, so don't be getting any ideas. She may be a little rough around the edges, but she's just looking out for her own. There's no one better to have your back. All business and no fun, huh? What do you need? Oh, yeah, nothing like changing it up to make a ship feel new again. Let's get right to it. Did you get the Earth Savior Award, or am I gonna be very disappointed? First of all, this is my section of the key, so I'm gonna stand here for as long as I want. And second of all, I know all about that award and your deal with Neva. We don't keep secrets between us. Just throttle down and give her the damn thing already so we can get to work. Well, that's because you'd be absolutely right. You see, everyone above you in the fleet is making more than you are off the same gig. That's why we're all fighting our way to the top. Understood? Good. Now, you might want to hand over that award before I have you tossed off the key. Just a thought. Well, well, look at that. You followed my directions, and now you're gonna end up with some credits in your pocket. Of course, it would have been more money if you hadn't blabbed about the damn thing to roll call, but that's on you. Anyway, here's your cash. Keep this up, and I might even start respecting you. All right, Flea, we've all got work to do, so let's get to it.
Howdy. Yes? Nice work on the siren. So I heard there was a bit of excitement on the Siren of the Stars. Your handiwork, I assume? We told you we'd be keeping tabs on you. So, did you get information for us or not? Nice work. Any specific evidence you picked up regarding criminal activity should be given to Lieutenant Toft after the debriefing. If the evidence pans out, you can visit those alleged criminals in our brig the next time you stop by the Vigilance. But for now, what do you have on Delgado and his little ragtag group of pirates? Yes, and I heard there were no casualties. Excellent work. Except for the ecliptic hit squad that you took down at the Archives. We're taking care of that mess, by the way. Speaking of which, I assume you copied the information from the Galbank's computers. Let me see what you got. So the legacy went down at Bannock 4. Bannock 4. Hmm. Why does that sound familiar, Doft? Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant, sir. There isn't a ship in the fleet that could safely get near that type of world. The Bannock system was a site of a significant battle during the Narian War. I had to do a research paper on the subject at the Academy. Good. That should slow them down for a while. You're doing exactly what we told you to do. What, do you think we're stupid? All right, calm down, Lieutenant. Even if Delgado has an immediate solution to the EM problem, there's still the matter of tracing the Legacy's transponder signal. Of course I am. We don't really have a choice in the matter. There are no shortcuts. The route you're taking to secure Crix's legacy for the Crimson Fleet is the only one at our disposal. If you suddenly change your behavior, they'll know something's wrong. I realize it's difficult, but I urge you to stay the course for now. In the meantime, we'll formulate a plan to ensure the Crimson Fleet doesn't get their hands on that money. They have information about the comm spike? <sighs> Damn it. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that device, sir. No, you shouldn't be familiar with it. It's a highly classified project. It's an advanced signal decryption and tracking device that the UC Navy's been working on for years. How the hell did the Crimson Fleet find out about that? There must be an information leak somewhere, sir. It's the only thing that makes sense. I'll see what I can find out. Fine. This is what we're going to do. You keep playing along and go after the comm spike. Lieutenant Toft and I will see what we can find out about Bannock 4. My superiors are stubborn. They aren't going to authorize an attack on the key based on my flights of fancy, I've been told. We need more evidence that all the Crimson Fleet's plans will result in them actually getting their hands on this fabled cache of credits. Perfect. Just stick with the plan and we'll see who gets to Crix's legacy first.
right, Jazz. What do you got? According to the latest, the comp spike is being developed at UC Star Station SY920. Location undisclosed. Fantastic. So how do we disclose it? We could lean on your smuggling contact. Call in that favor. You know who I mean. Our friend on Jim's. Nice one, Jazz. I'll make the arrangements. All right, Rook. Next stop, New Atlantis. Your connection is Juan Dayu. She's got most of the premium UC smuggling routes locked down tight. If you don't piss her off, she should be able to sneak you past SY920's security. Just remember to count your fingers after you shake hands with her. Don't worry. We know how to deal with her type. You're in the fleet. You should always expect trouble. As far as Juan goes, even though she's one of our newer contacts, you shouldn't have any problems dealing with her. I sure hope so. Because she might be our only crack at finding a decent decryption device. Once Juan gets you past the guard dogs, it's gonna be on you to locate the comm spike. According to the data we have, it's in the prototype phase, meaning there should only be a single device aboard the station. Basically, you break it, you bought it. You'd better. For your sake. Oh, and one more thing. SY920 is a UC military installation. That means it's guarded by heavily armed troops. And we both know those idiots don't mess around. If you intend to turn the place into a shooting gallery, you might want to be sure you're hauling an arsenal, because you're gonna need it. Are you kidding? The UC's already painted giant red crosshairs on our backs. Keep Wei and his pals at Sysdef won't rest until we're dead. It's not like you can make them any angrier at us, right? Shoot the place full of holes if you want, just Bring back that calm spike. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Okay, so I'm gonna arrange a meeting with Juan at Kay's place in the well. In the meantime, I'll make sure Jazz comes up with a solution to the electromagnetic atmosphere problem at Bannock 4. Oh, okay, you'll make sure. More like get drunk while Jazz does all the hard work. Typical. Privileges of rank, my darling. We'll discuss it a little later. And you, get the hell out of here. And don't come back without that calm spike in your cargo bay. I'm gonna leave that up to you, Rook. If you get into deep trouble, and you think bringing her into the fold is gonna make the difference, tell her whatever you want. At some point, Delgado's gonna be promising everyone their cut of Crix's legacy. If we want him to stick with the fleet, it's inevitable. But until the money's within reach, the less people that know, the better. The Crimson Fleet made contact with her about a year ago. We were searching for a smuggling connection in UC space, and her name kept popping up repeatedly, so I decided to put her to the test. Not only did she pass, but the results were off the charts. Made us both a ton of credits. That was good enough for me. Beyond that, I don't know much about her. But hey, as long as she keeps my gal bank account humming, she can keep all the secrets she wants. Stay sharp, Rook. Yeah?
and turn into what? Understood. Understood. Hello. Your neighbor's new recruit? Ah, you must not be used to pirates being so cordial. But in the heart of New Atlantis, we have to do our best to keep up appearances. I can't afford to be as rough as some of our cohorts. It's bad for business. Don't we all? Let's try not to be each other's wrenches. SY 920 is one of my regular stops, so I already have the necessary approvals. Neva says you're after a piece of UC tech. So to get it, we're going to need to get you on board. I can do that, but I have conditions. Huh. Neva warned me you were difficult. Clearly I didn't understand what she meant, but I do now. If I can be candid, for this job to work, we'll have to do this my way. We take my ship, and you're a member of my crew. But make no mistake, once you board, the risk is entirely yours. This route is highly lucrative, and sacrificing it is not an option. There's more at stake than just your route. We're determined to get on that station, with or without your help. I realize this is important to Delgado. I also know he would just as soon kill me to get what he's after. I'm simply setting boundaries to help protect my interests, while still serving Delgados. In any case, when you're ready, meet me at my ship. It's the Jade Swan. And make sure you're prepared for the long haul. Once you're on board SY920, you can't come and go as you please. I'd like to, but I need to keep a low profile. In my experience, the more people know about you, the more they have over you. Famous last words. But you do this job right, and who knows what the future holds. Anyways, I appreciate the small talk. Delgado's crew aren't usually so chatty. But let's keep our focus on the mission. We can swap bar stories and share scars when we've got enough creds to buy the bar and fix the scars. We'll talk more on the ship. You're in the fleet. If you weren't, I would have been too long.
next mark. Yes? All right, a few things to note. When we get to the checkpoint, UC military will be hailing us. Let me do the talking. Pretend you're a piece of cargo if you have to. Good. Say nothing and let their minds fill in the gaps. As long as we aren't actually stuffed into the cargo hold with the rest of the crates. You'll have the same accommodations as my crew, provided you follow the rules. Now, like I said before, once we take off, there's no turning back until this job is done. If you need to take care of anything before we leave, do it. If you want to ask me any other questions, go for it. Only what I've been told. Get you on the SY920, get you out if I can. That being said, I can be a better guide if I know what it is we're after. So, it's up to you. Interesting. When we get to the station, I'll see if I can pull any information on its whereabouts. Hopefully that'll make for a smoother trip. Less than you. But if Delgado's after it, then I have a feeling there's a pile of credits waiting at the end of this job. So we better do it right. Alright, then get comfortable. We leave for SY920 immediately. All crew prepare for takeoff. Routing power to enter the grab drive. All systems go. We'll grab drop the SY920 from here. Don't worry about your personal ship, the fleet will make sure it's secure. You can take this time to prepare. Just try not to bother my pilot while they're flying. Don't worry, Captain. I've spent half my life walking and chewing gum at the same time. I can handle a little banter. Sounds like you're putting in a request for double duty. Captain, I retract my earlier statement. For the record, I don't even like gum. <laughs> Noted. Just get us there safe. Roger that. I've taken a lot of cargo to that station. Not all of it legitimate. You're the first person I smuggled, though. You've entered secure UC military. This is Captain Juan Daiyu, cargo class ship ID UC-7938, requesting permission to dock. Identity confirmed. Prepare your ship for scanning. You're clear to dock in docking bay 2. Looks like we're clear. We'll talk more once we're docked. Okay, we're in. First things first. The station is enormous, with checkpoints everywhere. To get past them, you'll need a military uniform. And to get a uniform, you'll need to get to the barracks. There should be a way through the vents. You can get to them via the maintenance door downstairs. There's an intercom there as well, where we can make contact. Once you get a uniform, it should be fairly easy to find an elevator to the command bay. But if at any point your cover's blown, I'm gone. Very funny. But if you do get into trouble, try and use that quick wit to your advantage. Either way, for now, get on that station and find that intercom. We'll talk more then. Hey. Yes? As long as the credits keep rolling in, life's good. Swan, loading and unloading only. Stay clear of the military barracks. We need a lot of cargo to keep a station this size running. The upkeep on a station this size is enormous. 
Hold up. This area is for SY920 military only. Rules are rules. Can't let you in unless you're military. Ugh, again? This isn't the first time they've done this. It was the same last time Vogel brought on new pilots. Yeah, I get that this place can be a maze. All right, fine. You're good. Just be quick about it. That goes for your friend, too. Understood. Will only be a moment. SY920 Marines are hand-picked. To maintain op security, most of us here won't work in another site. It's tough not seeing any action. Securing a station like this. My back's Like your career. Ouch. Got feelings, you know. Hey, at least something of yours works. Now suck it up and keep your eyes open. State your business. Logging Ensign level clearance. Go on ahead. Your friend there have the same clearance? Our commanding officer sent us both, so yes. Then you're both good to go. I've heard the technology in the station would be FC surrender before we even started. Time to get this ship moving. This is Captain Juan Dayu. Good. And no alarms or warnings on the comms. Music to my ears. If you found a uniform, be sure to put it on. That'll provide some cover. I've hacked into the database, and it seems information on the comm spike is in the archives. There's a checkpoint you'll have to pass, which requires a clearance code. Plenty of options, to be sure. We just need to choose the one that plays to our strengths. Right. If you know yourself, you'll know the best path forward. If the two of you plan on using a disguise, try the security office. Otherwise, there's always a way around. Going dark for now. We'll talk again once you've located the comm spike. Sure you have clearance? If you aren't assigned to this level, it's it. you need to leave. Need your clearance code, Marine. It's been that way since Commander Natara took over. No entry in the command bay without a clearance code. I'll say. You might want to track down your commanding officer and have him clarify your post. Maybe they'll draw you a map.
need your clearance code, Marine. All right, Ensign, let's hear it. Your clearance, Ensign Akasaka. I assume the two of you are together? We're from the same unit, yes. Then you're both clear. Stop right there, Ensign. All right, Ensign. Why aren't you at your post? Who's your commanding officer? Only authorized personnel are allowed here. Only senior officers report to the commander. Something doesn't seem right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember now. I'm still willing to talk. Fine, I'll let you go, Ensign. But as soon as you're done with your task, you should return to your post. proof will simply monitor the situation at the cargo bay for now I've recommended to dr. Volk If you have experience flying, you should talk to If you aren't oh. assigned to this uh, level, Ensign, you need to leave. <sighs> Intercepting transponder data in the Hoffa system might be promising. Wait, who are you? Why are you in here? Did you not see the sign? Don't you mean access to the ship? 
Because the comm spike isn't a device, it's a module. It's attached to a prototype in one of our docking ports. We're still in the testing phase, running decryptions across a variety of signal types, but the results so far have been very promising. It can even interpolate signal data lost in the retrieval. It really is a wondrous technology. Yes, it's not quite cracking the Enigma code, but it will give us a significant tactical advantage. We'll be able to infer everything from battle plans to meal consumption. Not that we'd care about that sort of thing, outside of the effects of diet on combat readiness. And yes, there are certain kinks to be worked out, missing parts and the occasional traumatic injury here and there, but it's all part of the adventure. Yes, it's not the destination, but the journey that matters. <laughs> Particularly when the destination is death. But don't worry. We've corrected the problem with the ship's life support systems, and statistical models show a failure rate of less than 2%. In short, I've requested a full squadron of these brave and fearless marines to be transferred to the station. They'll give the prototype a final run, and provided there are minimal casualties, we can present our findings to Mast. Splendid. That was fast. I thought I put in the request this morning. Normally my requests aren't given this much attention, let alone haste. It seems a tad suspicious. Ah, yes. By the transitive property, you would be what I need. And we are desperate for personnel. You're right. We do need to hurry if we're going to have this module ready in time. All right, you've convinced me. You're the new test pilot. You'll need a uniform and a terminal password to authorize a flight and get past Natara's cumbersome checkpoints. The uniform you can get in the locker room area, the password you get from me. You'll find the prototype ship at docking bay 8. Use the password to access the flight terminals in the control center. And of course, best of luck. You are doing science a great service by undertaking this sacrifice. Reporting for duty, pilot? Another test flight, huh? You pilots are braver than me. You're clear to pass. Don't forget to schedule the flight in the control center. are some of the best in the galaxy. You've been to the mess hall? warm up the engines.
prototype ship, you are cleared for takeoff. We'll begin the test on your departure. Reporting test flight data. Please adhere to the scheduled flight plan and let us know if you have any issues. Welcome back, Rook. Looks like you got a new toy for me. Go on in and give everyone the lowdown. We'll take care of things from here. That's a real nice ship you brought in. I can't wait to tinker with it. Their previous ship's being brought back to the dock. The fleet is family. Stealing from each other is just what you call... It's no different than any other business acquisition. We keep the name on the store, but the creds go to the fleet. We'll talk again later. We may not have all the issues Nice to know Neva was right about you. It's good to have a promising rookie with the fleet. Surprise? Neva talks tough, and frankly, she is tough. But she's not a machine. I won't deny I helped. Let's hope the compensation reflects that, huh? Anyway, I believe I owe you a drink. It's the last time I'm paying, of course. Because if Dalgado's right about Crix's legacy, you've earned more than your fair share already with that calm spike. Sounds like you're on board as a true believer. I have to admit, the way things are going, I'm starting to believe myself. Discovering Crix's legacy would solve one of the settled system's great mysteries. Oh, I'm as curious and excited as anyone to see what we'll find. Anyway, I've kept you long enough. Now that you've had your drink and my debt is paid, it's time for you to give Delgado the good news. we should remain silent about my background with the United Colonies. Jasmine tells me that you not only brought us the com spike, but an entire prototype UC ship. I'm impressed, Rook. Very impressed. Yeah, yeah, nice try, Rook. We know you didn't have a choice. Juan gave us the full rundown of your little smash and grab operation. She gave you some really high praise. 
Said you were a pro. And from what I hear, receiving praise from Juan Dayu is quite an accomplishment. All in all, a job well done. Now, on to the business at hand. Jasmine, are you there? Yep, I'm here, boss. What's up? How's it going? I already have two of my crew tearing the ship apart from one end to the other. Comp spike shouldn't be too tough to extract. I'm looking forward to seeing what those UC techs have been up to. Keep me posted. All right. That leaves our electromagnetic atmosphere problem. And I think we've discovered a solution. There's a corporation in the city of Neon called Genodyne. They're responsible for the massive conduction grid that powers the city. We get our hands on their electrical absorption deck, and Jasmine swears she can tame it to handle Bannock 4. You damn right she can. My girl can piece together a jump engine with her eyes shut. Literally, I've seen her do it. Lost good money on that bet. All right, let's not get carried away, Neva. Now, why don't you give us the info on our neon contact? You get to meet up with the lovely Estelle Vincent. She's had her deft little fingers on the pulse of neon for some time now. Whatever info you need, I guarantee she can get. Estelle is one of the most reliable captains we have in the fleet. If I want something done, there's none of the typical bullshit. It gets done, and afterward we all split the cash. Don't worry. When Grixis' legacy is aboard the key, we'll be splitting plenty of cash. Until then, I want you to do everything Estelle asks. Follow her instructions to a letter. She is valuable to the fleet. You piss her off and we lose her as a contact, you're going to be answering to me. Understood. We'll do our best to remain on her good side. Never mind her good side. You'd be better off appealing to her bank account. That is what drives her. Estelle will be waiting at Madame Savage's place. I'd say don't keep her waiting. But chances are she won't mind. Girl loves her liquor. And keep your eyes on the price. Neon's one big distraction for people like us. So I want you focused. We are one step away from Quix's legacy, and we cannot afford any screw-ups. Everything looks clear. I've heard the It seems you had quite the eventful mission on your hands. You still have the Crimson Fleet's trust, and you were able to spare lives in the process. Honor, loyalty, and valor are exactly the attributes we admire in a CISDEV operative. We wouldn't have it any other way, Commander. Excuse me, sir. I hate to interrupt, but there's still the matter of the comm spike to discuss. Yes, of course, Lieutenant. Time is short, and we should get to the matter at hand. Please give me your report. That all depends on what you brought back from your mission. Aside from your eyewitness testimony, I assume you have the usual evidence that could lead to her incarceration? I can take it off your hands once we complete your debriefing. But at the moment, I'm far more concerned about the comm spike. Then it's just a matter of time before she reverse engineers it to fit the fleet's purposes. So what does Delgado have you doing next? Has he solved the Bannock 4 problem? The conduction grid? That's... brilliant. But is it actually possible? It's 80-year-old tech. 
Sorry, sir. The conduction grid is how Neon generates its power. It essentially absorbs lightning strikes and converts it to usable energy. It would take a hell of an engineer to modify the technology to handle Bannock 4's EM field. An engineer, like Jasmine Durand. That's the case. Inform our contacts on Neon that our operative will be touching down there in the near future. Absolutely, sir. And before you depart, I wanted you to know that your efforts are helping us gain interest among my superiors. They're finally beginning to believe that we can take down the Crimson Fleet and make amends for the UC's embarrassing mistake. Of course I am, but it's a calculated risk. The fact that our common enemy owes its existence to the United Colonies, of course. It was the riot at the lock touched off by Jasper Creeks that inspired him to create the Crimson Fleet in the first place. Thanks to your assistance, we'll be able to rectify that mistake, and Mast will authorize an all-out assault. It's long overdue. All right, I suppose that's all for now. I'll be looking forward to your next report. Good luck. And please, be careful. Remember to turn in any evidence fragments you find. Hmm. Glad to hear it. Let's see what you got. It's amazing that all this romantic nonsense about Crix's legacy really just amounts to a rumor Jasper Crix picked up in jail. It just goes to show you how a tiny rumor can snowball into a full-blown fairy tale. Have any more? Are you kidding me? Dombrowski was already making a six-figure salary, and yet he couldn't resist starting an embezzlement scheme. It makes me sick. Ah, oh, it's gonna be an absolute pleasure to throw his butt in prison. Any other fragments? Okay, fine, fine. I know there's more out there, so keep on it. Two reasons. First, Commander Akande's playing this operation extremely close to the vest. That means keeping prisoners under his own roof, until this is resolved. Second, this is an undercover mission. For our safety and yours, we need to keep these prisoners out of the spotlight. Let me know if you need anything else. You have permission to speak freely. that shroud covering me on? Believe it or not, you're looking at the only city in the settled systems that powers itself from the Looks like some sort of checkpoint ahead. It's probably designed to suck the credits directly from your pocket. What's this about? Cut the act. Sniffers picked up the Aurora you're carrying the second you step away.
looking out for you. Looking to get zoned? Yeah. Well, if I had a credit for every time I heard that line, I wouldn't be stuck working in this place. So, I'm guessing you're the rook that Delgado sent. Well, let me save both of us some time. Turn around, fly back to the key, and tell the big boss that I'm in no mood to screw around. We'll make this deal when he starts taking me seriously. And I'm getting tired of the fleet not taking me seriously. I spent the last three months setting up this job, burned two contacts and a hell of a lot of credits. The whole time, I'm also keeping Bayou off our backs. That idiot even catches a whiff of money and he latches onto you like a damn leech. The few times I've dealt with Benjamin Bayou in the past have been rather unpleasant, to say the least. Benjamin Bayou, Neon's esteemed mayor, or administrator, or whatever the hell you want to call him. He's also the greediest bastard you'll ever meet. Got his fingers in everyone's business, and the muscle to back it up. The only reason I'm allowed to operate on Neon is because I pay well to keep my involvement off his radar. The last thing I need right now is an amateur like you getting me kicked off world. That's the way it's gonna be, huh? Fine. I don't have a ton of time to stand here and screw around, so I'm gonna make this as clear as possible. You want the conduction grid tech, then you're gonna have to download it from the power core of Jenardyne's facility in the underbelly. Love the confidence. But before you pull the ripcord, I'm afraid I need to add a bit of a wrinkle. While you're inside Jenardyne, I need you to plant a virus into their system. It's a simple side job that'll earn you some credits. I think you can handle it. <laughs> the elevator doesn't exactly go to the top floor in that head of yours, does it? Everything in the Crimson Fleet is accomplished through a decent helping of give and take. As in, I'm not going to give you the information to get your precious data unless you take this virus and upload it like I asked. Well, well, look at you. You're smarter than I thought. Jennerdine has all sorts of tasty, valuable snacks in their data banks, and I want access. Here. Take this micro drive and access the computer in Brayson Bayou's office. It'll do the rest on its own. Oh no. Are you scared, little rabbit? Well, don't worry. I've got you covered. Jennerdine's got their place locked down tight. But, as usual, the weak link comes from the people that work there. I recommend you start with Ayumi Komiko, an upper level exec at Jennerdine. Get your hands on her security pass, and you'll have the run of the place. The catch is that Komiko's having a little fling with Benjamin Bayou. Anyway, you can find Komiko at Euphorico. Talk to the owner of the place, Micah. She'll point you in the right direction. As for dealing with Komiko herself, she's got an office in the Trade Tower if you're looking for something incriminating. The rest is up to you, Rook. When you're done, come meet me at the VIP booth in the Astral Lounge, so we can celebrate. Businesswoman, tough as whole plating. She's the COO at Jennerdine, and I can assure you she didn't get there with her winning smile. As for her relationships, well, that's a bit more complicated. Publicly, she's having a bit of a fling with Benjamin Bayou, but rumor has it that she's just using Bayou and having a little bit of fun on the side with Micah, the owner of Euphorica. If I were you, I wouldn't bother trying to appeal to her good nature. She's a manipulative person who uses people to get what she wants. 
Just grab that tech and plant the virus. Should be a cinch. Love the vibe in this city. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bad part of town, buddy. I'm gonna do you a favor. Head back to Bayou Plaza before the Disciples get you. A gang. Worst gang there is. They'll stab you for kicks, taking bets on how long you squeal before you bleed out. And that's not a hyper whatchamacallit. They seriously did that. <laughs> Poor Ted. Hey, it's your ass not mine on the line. Whole area's gone to hell. Us crate rats used to think the ebbside strikers were awful, with all the muggings and shakedowns, but now that they're on the ropes, kinda wish they weren't just holed up in Madame Sauvages. Streets are getting bad. Real bad. Well, you'll find them at Madame Sauvages. They're always holding auditions, as they call it. Looking for new blood. So, for being so helpful, chance for a donation, come on, might be saving my life. What with the disciples and all, I have a heart. Hey, thanks. Look, I mean it. Go back to the plaza. Ain't nothing but shit and misery. as combustible as Helium-3, he'd be able to... I've heard that Benjamin Bayou has a private penthouse at the top of the tower. Hmm, the view from up there must be breathtaking. There are a ton of distractions in Neon, so I expect you to be on your best behavior here. Yeah, what? Is this important? I'm really busy right now. Let me save you some time. If you're here for a job, we're not hiring. If you're here about the conduction grid tour, we shut it down a year ago. Good. If you were, you'd be the twelfth person I've turned away this year. What a waste. Look, I'm sorry if I'm blowing up at you, but I've got a ton of problems and no time to deal with them all. I'm afraid that things aren't going terribly well around here. wish that was the case. Fact of the matter is, we're barely treading water. The conduction grid went online almost 75 years ago. And since then, we haven't developed a single groundbreaking innovation. At this point, the money we're taking in as a power utility barely covers the waste that's going on in the research and development division. <laughs> You'd think that, right? The problem is that Brayson Bayou Administrator Bayou's brother is currently heading up the R&D division. I swear to you, the man doesn't know the first thing about power systems or electromagnetic technology. Of course there are. But so far, Brayson has suppressed most of their work through pure jealousy. Look, I'm running out of options. No one above me seems to care what's going on, but I'm willing to take a chance. I have a full report on Brayson that I want to send to Administrator Bayou, but I don't know if he can be trusted. What do you think I should do? Uh, you know what? You're absolutely right. I've heard Bayou's killed people for doing less. What the hell was I even thinking? Hey, look, uh, 
Thanks for helping me out with this. It's been on my mind for a long time. If there's anything else you need, any questions at all, feel free to ask. As long as it doesn't get me into serious trouble, ask away. Whoa. Okay, that's crossing the line. I can't discuss company matters like this. I'd like to tell you. I really would. Maybe we can work something out. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. Okay, listen. You didn't hear this from me, but I know she's up to something with Benjamin Bayou. He was in her office a few weeks ago, and they had some kind of shouting match. It got really heated until Bayou stormed out the door. I don't know what it was about, but I happen to know Miss Komiko keeps audio recordings of all her meetings in her safe. And before you ask, yes, I'll unlock it for you. Just don't tell anyone I helped, okay? Because I'm sick and tired of the corruption that's running through this city. People around here spend half their lives terrified about being backstabbed, and spend the rest of it planning on how they're going to screw over someone else. Something rotten is going on in this company, and one day, I hope to find out what it is. Sure, sure, no problem. Thanks for taking the time to talk. Are you lost? We have security! security. You're Give what you think you're doing? Neon security! You're under arrest! You know, I can just tell you've got no contraband. Let's head to the station, though. If you want to find a place to stay while we're here, I've heard that the Hotel Voli is top-notch. So you're telling me I have to... What? Welcome. Please, make yourself comfortable. I can offer you a drink, or perhaps you're here seeking access to our members' lounge, where you can enjoy your Aurora experience in peace. See, you just proved my point. Down your third velocity... No, no, not this again. You people should leave her alone. What do you want with her? Yeah, I guess you're right. Where the hell did Yeah, sure. Tell me another one. You debt collectors are low-life assholes. She's broke, okay? Now get out of my club before I get really pissed off and have you thrown into the street. No, <laughs> really. I'd like to see you try. The... the Crimson Fleet? Oh my, I I'm sorry. I had no idea. I... I didn't mean anything by it, really. Sorry, I just... Well, I worry about her. Ayumi owes a lot of money around town. I'm trying to help her out. But, you know, I have a business to keep afloat. If you want to talk to her, you can find her in the members' lounge. Of course, access to the lounge is going to cost you. And I'm not changing my mind about that. Excellent. Then here is your access key. Please let us know if anything in the lounge interferes with your comfort. May all your journeys be safe. Haven't seen a reach in a while. You 
think the city got them all? Yeah. What do you want? Uh, you must be zoned out of your mind, because there's no way anyone sober would say something like that. How the hell did you find that? It was Estelle Vincent, wasn't it? That bitch. I knew I should have kept that somewhere else. Here, take this pass. It should get you through the storage room entry to the facility. I'm warning you, though. Once you're inside, you're trespassing in a high security zone. That means they shoot on sight. Good luck. You're going to need it. I suppose if I don't explain, a copy of that recording you found might end up on the next SSNN report. Okay. Fair enough. A few years back, the previous CEO of Jenardyne went missing. As the COO, I was next in line for the job. Instead, Bayou muscled his way into the company and gave me an ultimatum. Either back up his bullshit Mr. Harada identity, or I'm gone. I had no choice. But I decided right then and there, I was going to do whatever I could to take what was rightfully mine. If that meant seducing Bayou to tip him off balance, then so be it. Luckily for me, Mike has been incredibly understanding about the whole thing. Micah is the only person in this godforsaken city that's kept me from going completely under. She doesn't want money, doesn't use me for influence or as a stepping stone to get ahead. She loves me for being me, and I love her for being the same. And when this stupid bullshit is over, and Bayou is ten fathoms deep under Neon, we'll be there for each other. Forever. Remember, we never talked. Got it? Hmm. <clears throat> Hello. I'm We're sorry if I... We're actually closed right now. Thank you for under... a lot of valuable tech disappearing from Genodyne to justify all the scrutiny of their own employees.
the encryption cipher, you're, you're welcome to it. There's no need for all this violence. <laughs> uh, when you access the computer in the power core, it sent a notification to me here. I knew you were coming, I, I just didn't know when. No, no catch. I'm not trying to trick you. You want the cipher? It's yours. At this point, I'd do anything to get back at my brother. He deserves everything he's got coming to him. Look, I'm giving you what you want. The least you can do is hear me out. You know, I've spent my entire life living in Ben's shadow. Everything always works out for him. Well, I well, I've been bouncing from one job to the next, barely keeping afloat. And all the while, he laughs at me behind my back. Thinks it's hilarious to make fun of his, his stupid brother. Like I wouldn't eventually find out. Tyrants like your brother eventually fall. It's inevitable. Perhaps you should just give it some time. That wouldn't do any good. For every scheme he's gotten himself into, he has a bulletproof exit strategy. The man's virtually immortal. Ugh, that's true. 
He's a slippery man who can worm his way out of any legal situation. You know what? I am sick to death of being pushed around. It's my turn to take control for once. The passcode for my terminal is GEN-41A18. That should give you access to the cipher and whatever else you need. I'm getting out of here while I still can. After you're done, I suggest you do the same. Do me a favor and don't tell my brother we talked. to go? James Newell better watch his back. He's causing problems. No percentage in causing problems in Neon. kept you. I believe we have a lot to discuss. It's obvious you're here to meet someone. Fortunately for them, they rented this VIP room under a false name. I assume that same someone provided you with that clever little virus you installed into Genodyne systems. Oh, I will. With or without your help. You know, I should give credit where it's due. That virus is quite impressive. It will cost me tens of thousands of credits to remove. That's the last time I'll ever take the Crimson Fleet's capabilities for granted. Probably. But do you want to know why that's not going to happen? It's because I don't negotiate with pirates. They don't understand commitments or contracts. How to get the deal done with finesse. No. For your kind, it's only brute force and violence. Shoot first, take whatever you want, and ask questions later. That's not how I do business. That's what they tell me. Look, I'm not here to debate. I'm here to make an offer. All you have to do is tell me who's profiting from the virus you've uploaded. In return, I'll let you leave the city alive. You make my skin crawl, Bayou. You don't have to worry about that in the least. You point me to our little mole and I'll do the rest. You don't even have to get your hands dirty. Really? That's the story you're going with? Very well. There's a body that Neon Security is going to be discovering very soon. One with concrete evidence that links you to the murder. I'd say you have about one hour to leave this place before you have a price on your head. You'd have someone killed to pin the crime on us. Oh, you're a wretched excuse for a human being, Bayou. So, I assume this concludes our little arrangement, and you'll be leaving our fair city. Oh, when you get back to the Key, be certain to give Neva and Delgado my 
warmest regards. the spacers that side's a bad place for tourists these days why we're here you might want to stay away from the edge of the upper platform. It's a long way down. Yeah, I'm out of my mind right now. <laughs> Howdy. Glad you're back. Sorry about the whole Benjamin Bay you think at the Astral Lounge, but I didn't have much of a choice. Can you believe the nerve of that smug son of a bitch? The man is priceless. So I've heard. Throwing yourself under the bus like that. Ouch. You are one crazy son of a bitch. Yeah, I'm pretty much dead in the water at this point. Since Bayou flagged the virus, I can't risk accessing the system now. All that work I did trying to crack Jennerdine is gone. Now I'm in a bit of a bind. The prep work for this job put me in deep for a bunch of cash, and I have no way to pay it all back. That's pretty cool of you to offer, but I know what he's gonna say. Sorry, Estelle. This was your scheme. You're on your own. Believe me, he's not going to be much help. Look, I was hoping you'd pick up on what I was trying to ask. What the hell with it? I'll just ask. Can you cut me in for a little bit of cash you're making on this job? I mean, I did get you inside and practically hand you the data on the grid. She's right, you know. Without her help, you never would have found your way into Genodyne. I appreciate that. I really do. Having each other's back is what makes the fleet stronger, you know? How much, uh, are you willing to part with? Wow, that's way more than I expected. I had no idea you'd be so generous. I had no idea either, but we do appreciate everything you've done, Estelle. All right, I guess we're done here. Tell Delgado if he ever needs me for anything else. I've still got his back. And hey... You won't be here in Rook for me anymore. As far as I'm concerned, you're one of us now. Lifeblood of the fleet. If anyone tries to tell you otherwise, you send them to talk to me. I hear things are heating up back at the Key, so I might fire up my bird and head over to check things out. Rumor has it that Delgado has some solid info on the Crix's legacy story he's been hawking for the last few years. If there's even a chance that it's true, I want to be there when Shinya Vos starts splitting the loot, if you catch my meaning. Put in a good word to Delgado for me, will ya? Why are you bothering to carry all that junk? What a city, am I right? Inside's a bad place. Stop in the name of the law! Freeze! Neon security! I thought for sure you had contraband.
I must admit, this is exactly what I pictured a haven for pirates to look like. All hell's breaking loose, Rook. Delgado needs you in the repair bay with Jazz as soon as possible. Oh, that's hilarious. You're a real comedian, you know that? Now get your ass to the repair bay. Go! I got something. See ya. I hope. All right, make it quick. I've got just to make it quick. If you need credits, I've got hit up the mission need. board. I bet I have. Sure, we will have those defense batteries up and running. No, 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 no. I'm not sure. They're in bad shape, Dell. Really bad shape. I I'm already using duct tape and spit to keep the station from falling apart, and you want me to pull a rabbit out of my hat? I don't want to hear excuses. You've I want to hear that it's going to be have fixed. something for me. Period.
get it done. Okay. All right, all right, I'm on it. You want to quit standing there and hand over the conduction grid data? Wow, really? You know what else isn't easy? Listening to complaints and excuses. From everyone. All right, I get it. Just hand over the tech. All right, listen up because I don't want to repeat this twice. We've gotten word that UC Sysdef is massing somewhere nearby for an attack on the key. While we prepare for their arrival, I want you to head straight for Bannock 4 and bring Crix's legacy home. Lay it out, Jess. All right, first things first. I'm gonna upload this data you snagged from Jennerdyne into the Keys databanks. All you need to do is build and then install a conduction grid module onto your ship. Oh, and if you haven't already, you'll need the comp spike module installed as well. While we're at it, perhaps we should fetch your groceries for you as well? Once your ship is ready, jump out to Bannock 4, board the Legacy, and bring us the cash. Nothing around here is simple. Del's right. You have to follow these steps carefully, or don't bother coming back. After you board the Legacy, be on the lookout for two transfer modules. They're special keys that allow access to the ship's vault. Once you locate the vault's control center, hook up the data core I'm gonna give you, and download everything they've got. And before you get any bright ideas, like running off with the money, that currency is going to be heavily encrypted. Only a genius like Shinya will be able to crack that encryption. So bring it back here right away. That would be a first. I have yet to see encrypted currency that Shinya could not manipulate within hours. I mean, the guy plugs his body directly into his mainframe. He eats, breathes, and shits numbers all day. No, I'm not worried about him. Are you kidding? Everyone around here is a traitor. Look, I'm gonna make this real simple for you. If that money ends up anywhere but the key, I will hunt you down and pry it out of your dead hands myself. Now get moving. You've met some of them already. Mathis Castillo, Yevgeny Rokov, Juan Dayu, Estelle Vincent, and Adler Kemp. They might feel like independence to you, but each one of them has a stake in the Crimson Fleet, and each one of them wants a cut of the wealth. I am sending word out to every able-bodied captain that they are needed. We'll see how many answer the call. The toughest nut to crack is if you see Sysdef brings in the vigilance. That Commander Ikande has himself a hell of a ship there. Advanced shield tech, bristling with weapons. I would love to see that thing burn. If we hope to stand a chance against it, we need those defensive batteries and Crix's legacy. Come back with Crix's legacy, or don't come back at all. I need to get those defensive batteries online, so make this fast. Not a problem. Conduction grid data is all set up in the system, so it should be an easy install. Don't worry, we should be able to piece it back together. Oh. I need to get those def Not a problem. All right.
Well, you might find a deal or two here. Not like I have. If You can overlook the spatters of blood covering all the stolen goods, of course. I want all of their seals over here ship. as soon as possible. Yes, sir. It's good to have you back. What can I do for you? Excellent. Let me have it, and I'll upload it to our database. Benjamin Bayou, pride of the Free Star Collective. The authorities there have been trying to nail him for a long time. Bringing us proof that he's been manipulating Jennerdyne from the shadows is pretty tasty stuff. The FC will pay dearly for this. Good job. Any other fragments? We'll be here if you need us. There you are. Where have you been? I've received the reports about that stunt you pulled inside of Genadai. Opening fire inside a civilian facility. Are you out of your mind? Genadai is furious at us right now. They want Commander Rikande to resign. You always have a choice. People have died because you were too stubborn to find a safer solution. This is not how you see Sisdev operates. I don't care if we're one step away from Krix's legacy. If you do it again, you're off this operation and I'll have Top throw you in the brig. It'll be my pleasure, sir. All right. I think we're all in agreement here. So let's get back to the operation at hand. It's time to put all the cards on the table and prepare to attack the key. Good. The more confusion and panic we cause, the more damage we can potentially inflict. Before you jump to Bannock 4, I need to make one thing abundantly clear. The credits from that Gal Bank transport cannot reach the fleet. You have to bring them here at all costs. If Delgado gains access to those resources, we might be touching off a battle we can't possibly win. We've been monitoring the Crimson Fleet's comm chatter and the Crick system. They're gathering allies by making promises based on your success. As much as I hate to admit it, you see Sisdef won't stand a chance. The fleet will become stronger and more unified than ever. Perhaps the UC should have thought of these potential consequences before incarcerating those people on Suvorov. Perhaps. But instead of spending time debating our predecessors' mistakes, we should be working towards a rapid solution. Hey, 
Don't worry about it. You've come this far. We know you've got what it takes to bring the prize home. Well said, Lieutenant. All right. I guess this is it. Do whatever prep you need to do aboard the Vigilance, and then head out to Bannock 4. When you return here with Crix's legacy, we'll begin the attack. Good luck. The evidence you've been bringing to Lieutenant Toft has been instrumental in convincing the brass at mast to greenlight the attack. They've sent us support ships, extra troops, weapons, all on account of your role in the operation. To put it simply, if it wasn't for you, this operation would be at a standstill. Stay focused and be careful out there. Transfer module. All access approved. 
See what I'm getting. Talk to you later.
would be happy to carry. Goodbye. Searching them, make it quick. Yeah. 
I'm spending my final days. Hopefully, someone with at least half a brain will follow in my footsteps and bring this score home to the Crimson Fleet. If anyone finds this message, <laughs> tell Issa that I don't blame her for what she's done. Most important, tell her to keep the fleet strong. Crew recording terminated. Initiated. Son of a bitch! Nothing. Complete waste of time. I've tried everything I can possibly think of and I end up right where I started. Oh, here I thought I was so clever. Thought I had it all figured out. First, fix my ship and get the prototype shielding back online. Second, shunt the power from the cred tank array back to the system to drain the credits. And then third, haul ass back to my ship before the EM field rips apart the legacy. Three easy steps, right? Only problem is, I'm stuck at step one. Every system on my ship is dead, and there's nothing aboard this ship to use for repairs. <sighs> I can't believe I came all this way just to end up stuck here like the poor bastards who ran this ship. <sighs> Actually, wait a second. Isa. Isa will figure it out. I, I told her where I was going for a reason. She's smart. She'll, she'll know something's up when I miss the rendezvous. After all, we're supposed to split the loot. All I have to do is sit tight and wait until she figures out that something's gone wrong. Then she'll come here looking for me. <laughs> In the meantime, I should, uh, start rationing my food. <laughs> I could be waiting for a while. Crew recording terminated. Free to drop some stuff. Time to go.
need me somewhere? ship for battle instead of using it for exploration. Yeah, the bogey in my sights and I just fumbled the controls. I'd hate to be the one to let that stop. Don't beat yourself up, kid. The guilt's Never probably gonna know true. Good work securing the legacy. All that's left now is to eliminate the fleet. We're gonna finish it. <coughs> nice score with Prix's legacy. Commander Akande needs to have a word. My god. Is that it? Is that Krix's legacy? <sighs> Amazing. Ensign, take this and enter it into the data core analyzer. I'm on it, sir. You see, Lieutenant? I told you he wouldn't let us down. I have to admit, I'm impressed. Encrypted or not? It's quite a lot of money to be carrying around. The temptation must have been excruciating. Well, I'm pleased you made the right decision. I wouldn't have enjoyed having to task our ships to hunt you down. Now, on to other more pressing matters. We've received confirmation that the fleet ships were scouts sent to probe our defenses. Unfortunately, one of them grabbed, jumped away before you arrived. Which means that Delgado will have the Crimson Fleet prepping defenses of its own. If Delgado's aware of our attack fleet, then we're at a tactical disadvantage. We have little time to waste. That's the plan. Lieutenant, if you wouldn't mind explaining our strategy. Yes, sir. The Vigilance is equipped with the latest in hyper-resistant shielding, making it the only ship that can safely approach the key. The catch is that the key has access to three orbital defensive batteries that can fire electromagnetic energy. One hit, and we lose those fancy shields. Our mission is to take out those batteries. In fact, I'll be personally leading the assault on Battery Alpha. I need you to be my support. Sadly, we didn't get as much support for this mission as I would have liked. There just wasn't enough evidence gathered. We weren't able to convince Mass to lend us additional squadrons. They feel like they've committed too many resources already. That means we'll have to take out all three batteries ourselves. It's unfortunate, yes. But we wouldn't be here if I didn't believe you could do it. We've also given you a call sign, Renegade, to help coordinate our movements during the attack. Once those batteries are destroyed, you board the key and bring Delgado to justice. 
You won't come quietly. You do what you have to do. No, I don't. I knew we could count on your support. Well, this is it. After years of planning, it all comes down to this moment. All my hopes and my best wishes go with you. Good luck. Everyone's saying this is it. Ready to launch.
with your flagship as we speak. I wouldn't expect backup anytime soon. Gives me plenty of time to blow your ships out of the void. All right, fleet! Triple share to whoever takes the traitor down! All ships, defensive formations! Up here than down on the surface of Suvorov. Yeah, what is it? I'll only carry the goods. Bye bye.
You, you did this to me. I can decrypt and re-encode thousands of credits in seconds, but something as simple as this, I didn't see it coming. Not in the slightest. And now because of you, my bomb's been activated. Which means I'm as good as dead. Forgive me if I don't take you at your word, since you've been lying to me from the very beginning. I've paid you well, treated you with respect, and kept trouble off your back more than a few times. Look me in the eye and tell me why you've allowed this to happen to me. You owe me that much. No, but had you given me warning, I could have started researching a way to escape this place. At least had a chance. Well, now that you're here, I don't expect that you'll stay and watch my rather spectacular ending. So why don't you just get out of my sight and let me die in peace? After everything I just said, you'd still be willing to help me. I must be a complete fool, because even though it makes no sense, I believe you. The only way to deactivate the bomb is through Delgado's computer and operations. You'll probably need his ID to get in. I don't know why you're helping me, but I sincerely hope this isn't another one of your tricks.
came back to finish the job personally? Talk sense into me? You're the one who's lost their mind. What the hell happened to you? You had Krix's legacy in your hands, and you gave it away. For what? For honor? Justice? Yeah? And why the hell does Sistef get to determine what is right and what is wrong? You know, when we were on Suarov, I saw the potential for you to become a badass pirate. One of the best. And now you suddenly expect me to believe I have been fooled the entire time? That this was some kind of elaborate game you have been playing? No. No way. For once in your life, be honest with me. Admit that you were tempted. Well, at least we know you are still human. It is obvious that no matter what I say, you have no intention of honoring our pact. You clearly never did. I have already locked down the key and set its reactors to overload. Soon, you, me, and everyone near this station are going to be vaporized. Let's see how far that loyalty to Sistef takes you now. You and I both know that the moment I try to leave the station, Ikande will either attempt to capture me or blow me out of the void. No, I refuse to go out that way. If I am going down, I am taking the key with me. No one will ever set foot on the station again. <laughs> Your arrogance is unbelievable. You think I'm doing this just to be rid of you? No. I simply refuse to be the first person since Jasper Griggs to allow UC Sistef to take over this station. If this is truly the final chapter of the Crimson Fleet, then the message has to be sent that we did not go silently and spend the rest of my life in the brig without a credit to my name? Why would I do that? So you noticed. And yeah, believe me, keeping people from burying a knife in your back wasn't easy. And I suppose you want me to think it ends outside a prison cell and not in. Still, a prison door opens, just like any other. They might. And if they do, I would just be tying up their loose ends, including you. If so, letting you live might afford me some small victory. Fine. You win. Standing down the reactors. With the legacy gone, we're dead in the water anyway. But before you have Ikan to lock me up, I'm gonna leave you with some parting words. Whether you know it or not, you're damn good at being a pirate. It's in your blood. One of these days, that's all gonna hit you. And I'll be waiting for you in my cell to tell you I told you so. Go! You've taken everything else from me. The least you can do is give me a moment of peace.
Captain? Fine, kid. You were in your wings today. Thank you, sir. I was just trying to do my part. A lot of heroes on this day. Speaking of which, here comes one now. Good work taking out those pirates, Renegade. Have anything to report i believe congratulations are in order with this decisive blow the end of the crimson fleet is all but assured but as much as i'd like to begin this celebration technically we're still in the process of wrapping up the operation on that note lieutenant what do you have for me reports are coming in right now commander delgado and shinya voss have been taken into custody also, we've transferred personnel to the Key to secure the location until the United Colonies decides what they want to do with the station. And what about Neva Mora? According to our reports, Neva led the strike force that attacked the Vigilance. Unfortunately, that was the last we saw of her. It looks like she managed to escape. And we don't know her current whereabouts, but I have our operations team looking into it. That's fine. Overall, excellent news, Lieutenant. I have to admit, for the first time in seven years, I don't know what to say. How about you? I know that was difficult. You hanging in there? You should be. What you've done to serve the UC in this short amount of time is more than most people could hope to do in their entire lives. If Mast isn't already printing up a batch of recruitment posters with your face on them, they should be. I've twisted arms and cashed in some favors at Mast. I wanted to make sure you got a share of the money you recovered from the legacy. Call it a reward, a token of appreciation, whatever the hell you want. But you've absolutely earned every credit. While it was satisfying enough to watch the Crimson Fleet meet its end, having an account brimming with credits is a pleasant bonus. Don't thank me yet. If it had been completely up to me, you'd get a lot more than they're giving you. Now that you're rich and famous, maybe you'll still remember us little people, huh? Decorum, Lieutenant. Damn, I'm going to be really sorry to see you go. You've really become an important part of our team. It won't be the same around here without you. Although, if you feel like staying aboard, I'm sure I could give you access to the SysDef mission board. That is, if... You can stand spending another minute with us on Vigilance. Excellent. I'm happy we haven't somehow frightened you away. Anyway, enough talk. You've earned a break, and I'm sure you wish to celebrate. Here's your promised reward. And wherever you might find yourself, my best wishes travel with you.
We're asking everyone to take care of any anything I can help you with? Okay, sure. We'll take care of any holes, broken seals, that kind of thing. Okay, no problem. Sorry to pull you aside like this, but I wanted to take a moment to congratulate you. Taking those steps to eradicate the Terramorph threat is essential to the safety of every living thing in the settled systems. You should be proud. Yes, exactly. I'm glad you treated the situation with the urgency it deserved. I only wish that the United Colonies chose to exterminate the Terramorphs with the experimental microbe instead of choosing this ridiculous Asili solution. Apparently, their decision was based on your recommendation. <sighs> that was a risky choice you've made. Minimal risk. Are you sure? The Asili solution might take years, perhaps even decades. Meanwhile, the clock is ticking for humankind. That sounds far too risky to me. I'm sorry to hear that, but what's done is done. The Asili's method has been deployed, so we'll have to wait and see if it's effective. Thankfully, the eradication of the Lazarus plant gives the Asili's a bit more time to do their job. You haven't let me down. You've simply given me cause for concern. I'll tell you what. Let's put this past us, shall we? I'm sure everything will work out in the end. 
I'm sorry if I've said anything that jeopardizes our working relationship. There's something I need to talk to you about. Thanks for giving me a moment of your time. I promise this won't take long. I thought you deserved to know how proud I am that you chose to side with the United Colonies and put an end to the Crimson Fleet. You've almost single-handedly saved the settled systems from one of its most dangerous enemies. I can't possibly commend you highly enough. Uh, well, I'm not sure I deserve that, but I appreciate it all the same. What I want to know is what motivated you into making the right decision. You had Crix's legacy in hand, and you could have easily taken it to the key. Instead, you flew it to the Vigilance. Yes, that would have been unfortunate. The Crimson Fleet would have had enough wealth to fund their operation for decades. So, no regrets betraying Delgado then. I imagine you and he formed quite a partnership right up until the end. Agreed. With Delgado safely tucked away in a UC prison, things will certainly be quieter in the spaceways for a while. I suppose my final concern is how long this newfound peace will last. Given the fact that Navamora was never captured or killed, I couldn't agree more. My hope is that she was smart and went into permanent exile. I suppose only time will tell. Ah. Well, it appears I've soured the mood of our lovely conversation. I trust my mindless prattle hasn't been too much of a bother. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to listen. Submit your application now at the nearest kiosk. While we're here, you might want to stay away from the edge of the upper platform. It's a long way down. Interesting. This district certainly provides evidence that religion's influence has spread from their tower and out into the city. Welcome to Ryujin Industries. Can I help you?
you must be one of the candidates that Imogene Salzo is interviewing today. Her office is down the hallway to my left. Take another left at the conference room, follow it around to the right and up a small flight of stairs. Then take a left and keep heading that way until you see her office. Sounds like a maze, right? So if you want me to walk you back there or have any questions, just let me know. And hopefully I have some answers. Imogene Salzo is my idol. She's ruthless, but still knows how to behave around everyday people, if you know what I mean. She's probably next in line to take over for Ularu Chen, head of operations here, which would be a godsend considering Chen has no filter and loves to speak her mind. No one loves brutal honesty that much. Between you and me, I think Imogene is about done with the whole process. You won't believe the people we've been getting. I heard the hiring algorithm Yuko made approved all applicants. And of course Yuko bailed when interview time hit. It's technically her job. And Imogene is furious. Good. Best not keep Imogene waiting too long. And the offer still stands if you need someone to show you the way. Of course, follow me. This current floor we're on is the main operations level. It's where the grunt work happens for this department. Research, data entry, more busy work than you can stand. Most of the people here are technicians. Oh, I can't imagine being forced to spend my days doing menial work in an office like this, instead of exploring the stars on the bridge of a spacecraft. Here we are. Good luck in there. I'll probably see you on your way out. I hope you're more prepared than the last one. Have a seat. And your friend can wait outside. I'm sure they understand. When they ask for your greatest strength, tell them you lack empathy for your clients. That will make you a front runner for a mega corp position. All right, just to get a few things straight here, I'm Imogen Salzo, Senior Operations Specialist here at Ryujin Industries. I don't normally do this, but my counterpart Yuko is indisposed at the moment, so here I am. We're looking for someone to fill an entry-level administrative position. Apparently, our algorithm has failed us and believes you to be a decent match, which I'll take up with our technicians later. So... Let's get this over with. Why do you want to work for Ryujin Industries? I'll be sure to let our marketing team know their phrases are catching on. But I hope that's your sense of humor showing. Not to say we don't have our share of self-important attitudes here. In fact, you'd fit right in where some are concerned. But, moving on. This next one should be interesting considering you marked having zero experience. Why do you consider yourself qualified for a job like this? Well, at least you have some skill of value here. If what you say is true, you'll have department heads fighting over you in no time. How motivated are you to succeed? All in, huh? At least that's an attitude we can work with here. And finally, my last question. If you worked here for five years, what role would you see yourself in? Full disclosure, it's all about making deals with the right people around here. You put those skills of yours to good use and choose the right sides. You probably won't be running the place, but you'll be right next to the one who does. So look, since there's a million other things I'd rather be doing than this, not to mention that this isn't even my job, you're hired. 
On a probationary period, of course. Especially considering this criminal record of yours. First order. There's a meeting starting soon, and I need you to pick up the coffee order at Terra Brew. Fairly easy, so you shouldn't be able to screw it up. If there's a line, skip it. Tell them you're here for Imogene Salzo, and you should get served right away. In order. You must be new. What happened to Tomo? Did he finally get that- I got fired is what happened. And this... is the soulless suit they got to replace me. Tomo, I'm sorry. I know how hard you were working for that promotion. Four years behind a desk. Getting coffee. Kissing up to that high and mighty Ularu Chen just to get replaced by this Nobody? Like, who knows? I, I looked at someone wrong. The coffee wasn't hot. They didn't even have the decency to tell me. They just had security escort me out of the building. Like, like some criminal. <sighs> Hearing that ad should have been the first sign they were going to get rid of me. I bet Ularu was just waiting for the moment to hire you. And now that I've been terminated... It's only a matter of time before they send you after me. So I'm taking matters into my own hands! Believe me, it's either you or me! No one's been sent to terminate anyone. Now, why don't you just calm down, hmm? Before someone accidentally gets hurt. You don't just get to learn all the ins and outs of Ryujin operations and then just walk away! Even worse, I got fired! <sighs> They don't let that kind of knowledge run around in the head of disgruntled employees. It's just a matter of time before they send you after me. So, I'm taking matters into my own hands! You wanna talk? <laughs> I'll tell you what! You get one chance to prove you deserve this job. Change my mind, and I'll walk away. Fail? <laughs> and I think you know where this is headed. I'm listening. For now. Look. At some point, Ularu really will send you after me. Just, just promise me you'll remember this. That, that uh, when I came after you, I gave you the chance to talk me down. Hmm. Let's just say, Ryujin doesn't like loose ends. Chen fired me. And now, she's gonna see me as a liability. And that's why it's just a matter of time before our paths cross again, okay? And when they do, I'm just hoping you'll listen to me, like I listen to you. You're either one of the few good people in Neon, or you already know a thing or two about leverage. Just don't make me regret this. Hey, no worries on anyone calling security here. Take it from me, Ryujin will handle any drama that may come from this. You'll want to be sure to report it to them. Tomo had been Ryujin's errand boy for some time now. Lots of ambition. Dying to get up that food chain if you know what I mean. He always seemed really nice, so a stunt like that? <laughs> I never saw it coming. Are you serious? That's the most excitement I've had in months. <laughs> I feel like I should be thanking you. Yes, of course. Here it is. Oh, and please let Mr. Cho know that we did have the recommended maintenance done. I triple-checked the grind myself, and a mistake like that will never happen again. We've got you covered. Morning, noon, or night. Enjoy one of our 
I heard there's shortages over at Rely Medical. Well, with all signs pointing to the Astral Lounge, I suppose we should pay it a visit. Purely for exploratory purposes. that coffee is still hot considering the time it took you to get it. You either need to learn this city or how to deal with distractions. So, what was the holdup? Good answer. And the one I was hoping for since we learned of the incident before your return. Your handling of the Tomo situation has caught some attention, and we'd like to try you out in a different role at the company. And since Yuko isn't here to object, your new position starts right now. So, congratulations, you've been promoted. Not bad for your first day, right? Talking through it was the right way to handle the situation. I'm proud of you. Well, they do say it's healthy to have goals. So who am I to crush that with reality? I'm promoting you to junior operative. The position is a bit more complicated and completely confidential. Your main duty is to add influence when necessary to ensure success of the business. Any questions so far? In any case where a threat to success is established, one of us is sent out to create a more desired outcome. This may be through a conversation or presenting some new information. It's all very situational, as you'll soon see. Really? Well, this transition may be easier than I thought. Now, let's get that coffee delivered. I'll gladly take mine. And since Yuko's still a no-show, feel free to keep hers. The other recipients are eagerly waiting for you in the conference room. Just waiting for more info. As usual. Ah, coffee. You'd think we'd want to support our own subsidiary and get tranquility more often, but Terra Brew it is. Terra Brew would be a substantial purchase, but we fully intend to develop the tranquility brand. Current projections are set to surpass Terra Brew within the next five years. Tea talk aside, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lyndon Caldary, Chief Financial Officer. I'll be the one deducting expenses from your pay every time you manage to screw up. Which, hopefully, won't be often. We'll see. We've yet to have an operative with a perfect record. This introduction was... not annoying. I hope our future encounters are as productive. <sighs> Just what I needed. Imogene said she hired someone new. I'm Genevieve, Head of Marketing and Public Relations. Uh, me and an entire department at my back. Anyway, it's good to put a face to the new operative. The only question now is how much work are you going to be? <laughs> yeah. That's what they all say. Just know that one screw-up for you means a lot of overtime and sleepless nights for me and my team. So, any precautions you can take will be greatly appreciated. Coffee, finally. Well, let's have a look at you. That depends on your actions going forward. I'm Alexis Price, head of the legal department here, and I'll be direct. Any legal troubles you cause as an operative, witnesses, getting arrested, are my troubles. So steer clear of law enforcement. We may have connections with Administrator Bayou and the Free Star Rangers, but they aren't the ones I prefer to abuse. Ugh. 
Let's hope your best is good enough. So, fetching coffee one minute, and junior operative the next. Camden Cho, supply chain manager for Ryujin. We won't work together much, but as part of the same department, hopefully I'll be seeing you around. Ah, oh, so she remembered. Not that I expect much out of Terra Brew Coffee, but hey, I suspected their grinder was on its last leg. Anyway, welcome to the team. Oh, and just a heads up, people in your position don't typically see the brighter side of Ryujin Industries. But rest assured, this is a great company, and the work we do goes toward benefiting millions. Sometimes it takes uh, drastic measures to ensure we can deliver the best products possible. Of course, you'll be forming your own opinions as you go. Just keep an open mind. Oh, and thanks for the coffee. I hope you enjoyed your little meet and greet. I thought you'd like to know the execs who you'll be impacting while on the job. I can only imagine. Now that you've met a few of the execs, let's get you started. We've reason to believe that our friends at Keltcorp are trying to hack into our R&D server, since we're both competing for a contract right now. My words exactly. We can't allow them to win the contract, nor can we allow the action to go unpunished. I'll be giving you a data slate with a file that you'll need to upload through one of their computers. Remember, this is confidential. We can't have anyone at Keltcorp getting suspicious. When all is said and done, it should be as if you were never there. Here's the data slate. Good luck. As technicians, we handle travel and post office. What do you want to do for the break later? I don't know, but I gotta get out of here. It's been non-stop interruptions since this morning, and I'm not spending another break at my desk listening to Cody. I'm glad I ended up at Keltcorp. Miss McKenna treats her employees like family. Again? Look, you can tell Mr. Okaribo that I'm doing everything I can. Blood from a stone, if you'll pardon the expression. Oh, my lord. You aren't here about Mr. Okadibo's debt to Kelkor. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Let me start over. My name's Clover McKenna, but you can call me Chloe. Sorry for me outburst. That's kind of you. This mess with Mr. Okadibo over at the Neon Mining League has really thrown me off my game. Normally, yes, but in this case, Mr. Okadibo has put me in a real bind. Mr. Okadibo owes a substantial debt to Keltcor. I've given him more than enough time to try and come up with the money, but my father's patience is running out. Frankly, I don't know how much longer I can stall. You'd be willing to help out. That's awfully kind of you.
No, you've got it all wrong. Saburo, uh, I mean, Mr. Okadibo, he's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet, especially in this city. He really needs help, but he's too proud to accept any money from me. Maybe he'd listen to someone like you? Oh, that'd be splendid. Just... <sighs> amazing. If you can get his debt off my conscience, I'd be grateful. It's been on my mind so much I've been keeping a diary. And don't worry about payment. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. McKenna always keeps that promise. Have a fine day. Can't talk, I've got a deadline. If you'll excuse me, I have... You. Look at this place. You Ridiculous, good? right? Welcome. Why Welcome, my friend. It's been a long time since I've seen ocean. a new face. Exactly. I can't believe this place I'm is afraid it is. I give it a few you see, when I opened this shop, I had grand ambitions of creating a mining supply empire on Volai. Yet here I am, only a few years later, pockets empty, and my business on the verge of closure. It is a sad day. That would be a blessing, my friend, but I wouldn't want to impose. Oh, she did. Miss McKenna is very kind, but I cannot accept. It is my responsibility to pay the loan. If I cannot, then what happens, happens. Really? Let me take a look. Oh, I did not know she felt this way. She is always so professional. I thought she did not like me. That is why I have sent proxies to negotiate my debt. And I like her. Oh, that came out wrong. What I meant to say was, I respect her business acumen. <laughs> look at me, my palms are sweating. Regardless, you have done me a service and for that, I thank you. You can tell Miss McKenna, I mean Chloe, that I accept her offer. I do have feelings for her, and maybe now I will have the courage to tell her. I know they say never to mix business with pleasure, but there are always exceptions. Certainly, my friend. Stop by my
Clover, lovely day for it. That's fantastic. I was worried he'd take it the wrong way, so I'm glad you were able to convince him. I'll arrange for the funds to be transferred immediately. Hopefully Father will forgive the late fees. And if he doesn't, I can always reimburse them when he retires. In any case, thank you. And here, for your efforts. If you're here to buy, I'm afraid we only sell direct to retailers. We're a tech company that primarily specializes in mining operations. We handle everything from individuals might not be as glamorous. For now, but let's not mistake my position. He's set to retire in a few years, and I'm his only next of kin. So he shuttles me out here for two reasons. One, to flash a friendly face for him. And two, gets his fire. Nice visiting with you. Be careful if you run into those ecliptic jerks. They fly around like they own the set of systems. And they like to use old abandoned... going to need more supporting evidence. Imogene's a stickler. Well, look who survived their first assignment. How'd it go? Anything to report? It's anxiety inducing. I know what you mean, but that's your A fair question. We may have plenty of eyes and ears out there, but I'm still going to need an answer. Not a single setback. <laughs> I knew you were going to be perfect for this job. If you recall, Setbacks mean a lot of things for a lot of people. Payoffs, cover stories, cleanup crews, you get my drift. The cleaner your work, the more intact your payments stay. I'm sure you understand. And I hope it stays that way. In the meantime, I'll make sure that slate is properly disposed of. So, now that we know you're capable of handling some light cyber mischief, let's try your hand at a little uh, framing. One of our subsidiaries, Arboron, is currently competing for a contract against Laredo. Now, the buyer likes to keep their associations clean, and will be sending a representative to Laredo in Aquila City for an evaluation. We just need you to visit their office first, and accidentally leave behind some incriminating evidence against their company. Oh, the best part is, we don't even have to fabricate this information. We're just exposing what Laredo would rather keep hidden. Here's the slate we need you to plant. It holds confidential files that'll cast the perfect negative light on our friends at Laredo. Now, get going. Thanks for taking the time to talk. I wanted to ask you about the artifact you found on Bectera. 
When you pulled it from the rock, held it in your hands for the first time, how did you feel? No, no, I, I don't think you understand. I know about the visions, the light, and the music. How did you feel inside? What were your thoughts? Oh my goodness. That must have been terrifying. When it comes to the artifacts, it never ceases to amaze me how the science, well, simply fails. If there is, the artifacts are doing a heck of a job hiding it. The artifacts are so different, so alien, and I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. Quite the mystery. Is there? Well, after spending years gathering data about the artifacts, you'd think I'd have all the answers. Does that really surprise you? A universal mystery left unsolved for God knows how long? Oh, I've been dreaming about solving this puzzle from the beginning. I knew I picked the right person for the job. Look, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk and for keeping an open mind. And I also wanted to say, well, I'm pleased we're on this journey together. <laughs> it's the best decision I've made in quite a long time.
Don't you agree? Hold it. By order of Marshal Daniel Blake, I need to inform you we've got some trouble at Gal Bank. Folks might be in danger, so you may want to steer clear. I guess that'd be the Marshal's call. Frankly, it ain't going well. Looks to be a stalemate. Maybe a little outside help would do some good. I feel as though I've lived here all my life. Show we can trust, and maybe we will. Like who? Not you, and not one of your rangers, and not these city guards, neither. <sighs> what the hell am I supposed to do with that? You need to stand back now. I don't mean to be rude, but I don't know you. Now, please, stand back. Mm. I wish I could say you were wrong, but I'm backed into a corner here. Some folks from the Shaw Gang tried to rob the place, but they got spotted by a guard. They took everyone inside hostage, and now they're keeping a watch so we can't move against them. They're using the intercom to communicate. It's a big group that hides outside the city and runs smuggling jobs off-world. They take in all kinds, rookies and veterans alike. Judging by their lack of preparation, I'd say this particular group is green as hell. Probably their first attempt at heist. That should work in our favor. Right about now, they're probably wishing they've just stayed home. They won't talk to me. Say they don't trust the badge. <laughs> they want a neutral negotiator. In other words, they didn't have a plan for this, so they're stalling while they come up with one. Hmm. All right, I'm willing to allow that. But a few things first. Say what you have to, but whatever they ask for, there's no way in hell I'm giving it to them. Also, there are lives at stake, so don't get cavalier. Find out what they want, and then report back to me. I sincerely hope you know what you're doing. Hey, the Shaw the Gang's making I'm fools of us all. I'm sending in a negotiator, so don't shoot. Hands where I can see them, and don't try nothing. You're the negotiator, huh? If you think you're just gonna walk up here and get us to surrender, you're dead wrong. Uh... It's Jed. Jed Bullock. Well, ain't you polite. So tell me, stranger, how do I know you're gonna deal straight with us? I don't know you, so why should your word mean anything to me? We're staying as long as it takes. Am I supposed to be impressed? Oh, I'm so ready to get out of here. Okay, I can see you're not just the Marshal's tool. You want what we want. A nice, happy ending where nobody gets hurt. So let's talk. They talk too damn much. Complain about everything. But as much as we'd like to, none of us has shot one yet. We want to guarantee a safe passage to the spaceport and a ship. Drop the hostages off somewhere safe in the system. After that, we'll radio back where they are, and the Marshal and his crew can come and get them. But if anybody follows us when we break orbit, we start shooting people. Got it? What, do you think we want to stay locked up in here? Hell no! Oh, hell, the Freestar Rangers have got ships. They can give us one of them. This whole damn 
like jobs gone wrong. It was supposed to be just a quick hit. Clean and simple, you know? So let's just... Let's all try to keep our heads, yeah? Because my guys, they're going crazy in here. I don't know how much longer we can last. What do you mean? I know, I know. I'm disagreeing with that. You have to believe me, we never meant to take hostages. Nobody's been hurt. So maybe the judge won't come down too hard on us. Yeah. I think this has gone on long enough. You go tell the marshal we'll come quietly. Well done back there. As representatives of Constellation, avoiding conflict is what we should always be striving to achieve. What's the word? First things first. How'd you get the Shaw Gang to stand down? Ha! Well, you don't like for confidence. Well, I bet you could sell dirt to a Dusty. Here. You've more than earned this. You got us out of a tough spot, and you did it with courage that's not common. As a matter of fact, you might just be Freestar Ranger material. If you're interested, head on over to The Rock and ask for Emma Wilcox. She handles the new recruits. is one of the oldest cities in the settled systems. The UC so can't be that bad, can it? Ranger. Why don't we just close it down? It's not like it's been you know, Lord, worse. You need help? Let them. Miss Lance, a few beer down. bottles and graffiti is the least we owe them. Yes, ma'am. Just here for security. Please move along. Talk to Miss Lance if you want to make a purchase. Please, let me know if I can be of service. Here's what I have in stock.
There are a ton of distractions in Neon, so I expect you to be on your best behavior here. I was hoping you'd show up soon. Is it done? Excellent. I'll let Ularo know that we can start moving forward with our negotiations. Now, I think it's time to examine a different set of skills. Good. This next assignment could be a little more flexible than the others. Your next assignment is to find a security chief and use some creative thinking to obtain their security keycard. And when I say creative, I don't mean with a weapon. Either look the part and be persuasive, or be quick with your hands. A security chief isn't going to give the time of day to just anybody. A nice suit should do the trick. Or, who knows, some operatives are known to have a security guard uniform or two in their closet they can rely on. Just be careful. Getting caught could mean a mess, and cleanup isn't cheap. Good luck. I'm sure you'll be able to get that keycard without incident. Just remember, if anything does happen, it's up to you to bail yourself out. Welcome to the Ryujin Industries. I'm stocked up on all of Ryujin's best neuroamps. Take care. Swing by Hope Tech Star Yard and see if they have anything interesting for sale. you belong here. Can I help you? Sorry, but that's not the type of thing I can just hand over without proper authorization. Do you want to tell me what's going on? I'd like to help, but if I hand it over this card, then it's my job that's on the line. I 
thought I made myself clear. I'm not giving you my card. Oh my god, you're serious, aren't you? Maybe I can make an exception. Here's the card. Just make sure you give it back when you're done. that key card for me? I think of security the same way too, but don't let Dalton know I said that. Overall, not bad for a novice. I think you're ready to kick things up a notch, and your timing couldn't be better. All's fair when it comes to capitalism, right? This next assignment requires a bit more discretion for two reasons. First, you'll be dealing with high-level executives, and second, you'll be in the Astra Lounge here in Neon. Discretion and the Trade Tower in Neon don't exactly go hand in hand. The assignment is pretty easy. Our techs failed to uncover a potential deal between Infinity LTD and Quantum Synergies. Your job is to make sure that deal fails. It's already been taken care of. All you need to worry about is the job at hand. You'll be speaking with Quantum Synergy's executive director, Zola Adisa, and their financial manager, Arthur Cruz. I'll be giving you a dossier on both. I strongly suggest you read them for talking points. Just as long as you don't sound like you're reading out of a book. The Infinity LTD rep is Nina Hart. I'll also be giving you an altered version of her presentation to swap out with the original. We've changed several figures, just enough to cause sufficient confusion throughout their meeting. Whenever executives are faced with numbers that don't properly match up, any faith they may have had will falter. Finally, I recommend dressing appropriately, so I've taken the liberty of having a suit made for you. We need absolute discretion on this one. I don't want any SSNN broadcasts about murder in the Astral Lounge. Got it? Just don't let that confidence give you a false sense of security. And remember, no incidents.
Captain. Where are we heading next? He's got its eyes on something. Yeah, the the guy's trouble from the status quo. and Bayou hasn't let this place slip a single notch. The man knows how to run a business. Well, I take that as a compliment. Coming from someone as well-dressed as yourself, you either got great taste or great connections. Maybe even both. Tell me, you don't happen to work for Infinity LTD, do you? Got something against Infinity, I take it. I'd love to hear your reasons why. Sounds like a bad marriage. <laughs> and I can only afford one of those. Aren't you the resourceful one? That number tracks with the insider details I've been getting. Hmm, interesting. Look, it was nice meeting you. And I quite enjoyed our little talk. But it sounds like I need to take another look at some data before I head into this presentation of theirs. See you around, and maybe next time I'll be doing business with you. Dressed to impress. Here on business, or just out to escape? Ah, same here. Nothing like a business trip paid in full, especially when there is good downtime. That would be Infinity LTD. Risky, you say? By all means. Enlighten me. Cheap is a word quantum synergy should never be associated with. I believed our team had thoroughly researched infinity. But your comment gives me pause. Their instability was cited as a pain point, but one we could deal with as long as we maintained control of all joint projects. However, upheaval always comes with its own series of issues. Delays, morale, public perception, and Drexler has yet to prove he can provide the consistency that I would prefer. Perhaps it really is more than I'm willing to undertake. A surprising conversation, and one I would never expect from someone such as yourself. I suppose the old saying, never judge a book by its cover, is appropriate here. It seems I have quite a bit to reconsider now, so it looks like the pleasure aspect of my trip needs to be postponed. Thank you for the insight.
hoping there was a good reason that was locked. the person I wanted to see. Well, that wasn't too bad, was it? You're a natural. I'm not just saying that because I hired you. The Astral Lounge can be overwhelming for some, with all its bells and whistles. Tie that in with manipulating people who are the equivalent of their boss's boss, most junior level ops would start to show their cracks. Overall, not bad for your first high-profile assignment. You even earned yourself a bonus, which Linden was more than happy to give. That's exceptionally kind of you, Imogene. Don't tell me you forgot already. Our financial guru? They're brilliant with numbers. Also, if you ever want an honest opinion about anything, just ask them. They're honest to a fault, and often give their opinion on something whether you want it or not. It's well deserved. Just keep making me look good and there'll be more where that came from. But no rest for the weary at Ryujin. We've got a decent backlog of assignments and they just keep coming, so I hope you're still good to go. At least this next one will be a break from all the chatter. Well, that makes one of us. Your next assignment is to remind the competitor of their place in the corporate food chain. Some call it retaliation, but we like to think of it as tough love. Exactly. A very valuable lesson that they will hopefully learn from. Most corporations live and die by public perception. Trusted products lead to a good reputation, which leads to profits. And, like it or not, we're all here for the profits. Your assignment is to plant an arc device. The Ark will allow us to frame our competitor for gross negligence and tank the public's perception. Good. All you need to do is plant the Ark on the service panel of your target. We can handle the rest from here. Do your best to make sure you aren't seen. The key is to make this look like a malfunction. And good luck. Keep it up, and you'll probably have my job soon. I wonder how many life forms are roaming this planet. Hmm. Time to find out. I don't want to hear any complaints. Keep an eye on your valuables. Hard to get better prices for a hauler. We'd be dust, except for the factory.
Hey there, got an update for me? Good work. Now I can let Masako know how much she'll enjoy watching the news tonight. Now, on to the next, right? Oh, but before I forget, the results of your Astral Lounge escapades are in. I'm happy to say that the deal was officially called off. Masako was pretty happy about the results, so she arranged for a small bonus through Linden. It won't buy you a new ship, but it's something. Why did I have a feeling you'd bring that up? You've still got quite a ways to go, so let's keep it real and get back to basics. You can think of this next assignment as a stepping stone on your way to greatness. In order to stay on top of the market, we have to know what our competition is doing. The next assignment requires a more brute force approach, since the chances of them sharing that information is unlikely. Spoken like a true Ryujin employee. Your target is a prototype schematic for a new engine that Trident Luxury Lines is working on. According to the rumors, it's projected to be 17% more efficient than any engine on the market. The current schematic was sent to their star yard to begin prototyping, so they could be in the office area or the factory floor. The star yard is a mix of sales floor and manufacturing. If you're looking to blend in, you've definitely got options. It's not too far, in Aquila's orbit, so hopefully your ship's ready. You'll find the Trident Luxury Line star yard orbiting Aquila in the Cheyenne system. Remember, same rules apply. Don't get caught, and don't make a mess. Welcome to Trident Luxury Lines, where we craft the finest and most luxurious starships in the galaxy. If you have any questions about our product line, or would like to book a cruise, I'll do my very best to assist you. Now, how may I help you today? We do not sell ships or parts, and it's not like you would have any use for them. Unfortunately, all of our cruises are booked for the foreseeable future. That should speak volumes about the quality. Certainly. Goodbye. I'm not certain why we're visiting this star yard. It's doubtful any of us have the credits to afford these overpriced vessels.
that easily since I traveled with Vladimir Sol. Just the person I wanted to see. You got that schematic? And we aim to keep it that way. I need to deliver this to Vina so she can start the reverse engineering process, but first, Ulara wants to see you. I've upgraded your security level so you can access the executive floor, where her office is. Tell her assistant Maeve you have an appointment. I won't be far behind in case you get lost. Name and appointment. That's neither your name or appointment. If you're expected, I need that information before allowing you in. So again, name and appointment. He's with me, Maeve. We have an appointment with Ularu. She should be expecting us. Thank you, Imogene. I'll mark you down as confirmed. Ularu's in a meeting with Genevieve, but they should be done any minute now if you want to wait right here. Thanks, Maeve. Sooner than I thought. Looks like Ularu's ready now. That leaves us with only one option. God, Ularu. Is that my way and I'll keep out of yours? I don't want another PR mess on my hands. Yes, Viv. Because you're too good at your job. Now, we can talk details later. My next appointment's here. Fine, but you can break this news to Alexis. I don't I've got my eye on you. Good, you're finally here. The one I've been hearing so much about. I'm Ularu Chen, head of operations here at Ryujin. So tell me, what do you think of your new job so far? In that case, it sounds like our initial impression of you is turning out to be quite accurate. Now, my dear genie here says you've been through the basics of what we do, and pulled off success every time. Five successful standard assignments, and one specialized. And on top of all that, a flawless record. It's no wonder they love you up here. I happen to have a personal assignment that I'd like to send you on. 
One that involves meeting up with an outside contact. Genie seems to think you're more than capable of handling it. He's the best operative I've ever hired. <laughs> Let's not forget the only operative you've ever hired. Meeting with outside contacts isn't always as straightforward as your past assignments. Some can be fickle or demanding, so you'll need to decide how to handle them and what decisions to make on the fly. That's exactly the type of operative I want. Someone who doesn't take no for an answer. Your contact is Simon Rychek. He claims to have information on a new project that Infinity LTD is working on. He said it's a game changer that Ryujin would be especially interested in. So his asking price is the big thing to consider. Finance will reimburse up to a thousand credits. So if you have negotiation skills, use them. Negotiation it is, then. Because losing such a valuable asset is certain to have repercussions. Now in order to confirm your identity, Simon prefers code phrases. I'll let Genie give you the details on this one because the concept is just beneath me. Simon is into sports, so he enjoys any opportunity to talk about them. At some point, he'll casually say, Looks like the Galactic Raiders are the number one pick for the Universal Championship this year. You get to respond with, Razor Derby is the only real sport. Got it? Oh my god, you corporate types never cease to amuse me. Now I feel like I'm trapped in some kind of spy thriller B-movie. Well, now we know what kind of taste our latest operative has. It does make things a little more interesting. Luckily, he's not a huge stickler for it, but sometimes we like to give him a hard time. You'll need to travel to Sidonia to meet up with him. Just look for him above the Lux condos in the plaza. You spoke very highly of this one, Genie. Let's hope he doesn't make a liar out of you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some things to take care of. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Don't wander into any restricted areas. Well, that wasn't too bad for your introduction. What do you think of Ularu? I'm pretty sure all of our field operatives have shared that sentiment at one point. Ularu loves to remind people how expendable they can be. Let me know if you have any questions regarding your assignment. And enjoy your time in Sidonia. It's certainly no neon. For you? <laughs> no. Only Ularu calls me that, and it's not up for negotiation. I worked with Simon a lot in my time as a field op. He's a perpetually grumpy man, but I think he just likes to keep his distance. Getting close to people isn't a luxury he can afford in his line of work. Much like ours. I might complain about landing here, but I have to admit, there is a sort of hidden beauty to the Martian landscape. Come to ask an out-of-work miner how his day is going. Eh, only good thing worth talking about these days is sports. Speaking of, looks like the Galactic Raiders are the number one pick for the Universal Championship this year. You're damn right it is. <laughs> I heard they were sending someone new. Nice to see you made it. 
I have information on a deal being proposed between Infinity LTD and Deimos Stockyards. It's my belief that your employers would be highly interested in the details. So I'm upping my price. It's steep, yes. But that is why I'm also offering a little side job if you can't pay up. For this little tidbit? <laughs> Believe me, I know exactly what this is worth. Ha! Let's not overlook that this could be the only time we do business. Let me put it that way. All right, I'll lower the price. But that's my final offer. Unless you may prefer the side job now? <laughs> You're going to like it. As you may guess, being an informant is not without its risks. I've heard there's a merc in Saturn's orbit who'd like to cross my name off her list. Malai Liskova. If you take her out and bring me her gun as proof, I'll consider my feet to be waived. She's a freelance mercenary, used to work for Inception Technologies. But she likes her independence, so she went into business for herself. She specializes in killing for the right price. So before you get any second thoughts, you should think of it as doing the settled systems a favor. Good. Malai's ship is called the Detura. And like I said, you can find her in orbit around Saturn. Just remember to bring the gun back as proof. I'm impressed Simon managed to find someone with guts to come after me. I suppose it shouldn't surprise me that he wants Ember as proof of this. He knows I'd never part with her. 
We were a thing for a while. Until the coward sold me out. I'm sure he regrets it, considering I survived the attempt on my life. And now... I live to blackmail him and make his life a living hell. So if Simon told you I wanted him dead, it's a lie. I want him very much alive. And suffering. Oh, will you? You really think I'd let you just waltz onto my ship and I'd hand her over? If you knew anything about me, you'd know honesty isn't my strong suit. The only truth here is that I've intended to kill you since the moment you set foot on my ship. Your ship, of course. <laughs> I'd hate to risk damaging something I could easily sell. Plus, this way I can simply climb aboard to see if there's anything of value rather than have to sift through debris. Any access cards I need, I can just take off your dead body. I'm pretty sure I've already made up my mind. I do hate the thought of risking any major damage. And the cleanup wouldn't be pretty. Okay. Fine. You've compelled me to hold up my end of the deal after all. You get Ember, I'll disappear. Besides... I like to think of this as just a temporary arrangement. She's always found her way back to me before. Why should this time be any different? I already gave you Ember. And the truth is, you don't. Something you may want to keep in mind next time you make a deal with a total stranger. Oh, don't worry. I see this as some well-needed, dare I say, deserved time off. I'm looking forward to the fresh start. I guess Simon chose wisely. For once. Now get off my ship. I've got an identity to arrange and a vacation to plan. survived the devil herself. Well, either that or you decided to pay up. Things aren't as easy when there's a history to consider. A moment's hesitation or a slip in judgment is just a bullet in the brain. I haven't given it much thought. The truth is, I never thought I'd see it. <laughs> the only thing I know for sure is that I'm sure as hell not going to use it. Hmm. A world without Malila Skova. It's strange. Um, I always imagined I'd be happy knowing she's gone. 
Perhaps I've been running so long now that it will just take time for the relief to set in. <laughs> hmm. You know, why don't you keep that gun of hers? I think it's time I left the past behind. Let's hope you're right. Now, back to business. The information I have is on a deal for something called Project Dominion. I'm giving you two slates. They contain surveillance and interaction data for Stanley McMillan, the Infinity Rep, that I obtained myself. I'm also giving you a third slate because you're going to need to download the files on Project Dominion off his computer yourself. Best guess is it has something to do with Infinity getting into the NeuroAmp business. Stanley McMillan seemed to think Ryujin would be the one company threatened by this news. So their entry must involve something big. Nice doing business with you. What the hell are you doing in this dump of a city anyway? You draw the short stick at work or what? Infinity sent me to get Deimos to bite on a deal. It's even got a catchy code name. Project Dominion. Sounds like world domination to me, buddy. I'd buy into that in a heartbeat. Right? I'm telling you, this Project Dominion is the real deal. We ought to be selling this to Inception or Quantum. Hell, you should be in the Astral Lounge making Ryujin Industries beg for that tech. Ha! <laughs> That'd be the greatest irony of them all, but not this baby. Dominion is finally gonna put Infinity first. We'll beat Ryujin at their own game. Contract?
restricted areas. Well, that took longer than expected. I hope whatever information Simon had was worth it. <laughs> You've got a little spark in you. I like it. Now, let's see if what Mr. Rycheck found was worth all the fuss. Give me a moment to run a decryption. Let's see... Got the key, deciphering, and... done. Well, well, well. Looks like our friend Simon wasn't joking. This is a sales initiative for Project Dominion. It's not an Infinity LTD design. It's one of ours. <laughs> they didn't even bother to scrub the name. Meaning someone never thought they'd get caught. Come with me. Masako needs to hear about this. Keep out of my way, and I'll keep out of yours. Laru? What is this about? Who is this? This is our latest junior operative. I sent him on an assignment to rendezvous with an informant. But here's the real news. Infinity LTD has gotten their hands on Project Dominion. Impossible. Not only that, they're trying to sell it under their own name. Of course they are. <sighs> We need fines to investigate this immediately. Since you found this information, I am trusting you to help investigate. You see, Project Dominion is confidential. It requires a high security clearance to even know it exists. If Infinity LTD has obtained any information on it, that means we have a very well-connected mole within our corporation. Exactly. I want you to go see Dalton Fines, our chief security officer. I'll send him the details. You've brought an enormous security violation to our attention, so I trust your help in any way possible. And thank you. Some operatives may have seized this as an opportunity for extortion. It's good to know your loyalty lies with us. any trouble. Good. You're here. So, thanks to your work in Sidonia, I'm told someone here has leaked information on Project Dominion to our adversaries at Infinity LTD. A mole within the company means a failing in my department. We're initiating Security Directive Theta, which means a full sweep of every employee in this building, Masako and myself included. Directive Theta allows for a third party to conduct the sweep. This way, the results can be objective. We certainly are. Directive Theta has one unique case, and that's Ularu Chen. The Directive calls for a specialized programmer known as Nix to investigate her, but he'll need your assistance for an unusual assignment. Ularu has the ability to thwart any investigation, so it's imperative she knows nothing about this directive. Her knowledge and talents are why she's the Chief of Operations. 
so she is the best equipped to evade detection. We don't deal in trust here. Think more in terms of mutual benefit and leverage. And in this case, it's mutual benefit. Nix will be giving you a program to run on Ularu's computer that will pull any data needed to prove her guilty or innocent. Your job is to infiltrate Ryujin Tower as an anonymous outsider in order to run this program. Completely off the books. This means your keycard will be turned off, and the security guards in the building will consider you to be trespassing. If you get caught, the guards will follow standard procedure and lock you up in a cell for questioning. Provided you don't provoke them, and I strongly advise against provoking them. These are your fellow employees. We want this to go as smoothly as possible. We employ over 100 members of our security team who rotate floors and shifts. It's possible you'd be recognized, but even so, my orders will be strict. Authorized security personnel only. And you certainly won't qualify, making you an immediate suspect. At least one of us is. In the meantime, I'll ensure all non-essential employees, Ularu included, have left the building, claiming routine security maintenance. During that time, I'll be unlocking access to the tower's ventilation system, which you can utilize to help avoid detection. I'm also issuing you a disruptor, which should help in avoiding casualties should a worst-case scenario turn up. Ularu doesn't know about Directive Theta, but she'll fully expect a building closure while we investigate. As far as she knows, it's standard procedure, one that she no doubt has already made accommodations for. This is why we're bringing in a third party. She won't be expecting to go up against Neon's best. And it's also why secrecy is of utmost importance. Not even our own security detail can know, in case the information leaks. I'll keep a watchful eye and make certain your employee doesn't go on some kind of rampage. Good. No one can know about this, not even our own guards. So stealth will be of utmost importance. In fact, as much as I appreciate the words of your associate here, you may be better off heading in alone. Any precautions to mitigate risk should be taken. You'll meet Nix at Madame Sauvage's place. He knows Directive Theta has been enacted. When you have a moment, I'd like to speak to you. Don't cause any trouble. Remember our last conversation, when you told me the artifacts made you feel like you were being pulled across the entire galaxy. Well, it got me thinking, so I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Aja just started flooding back. Oh yes, absolutely. I, I didn't mean to compare. Those were just... Oh, I don't know. Different times. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation and took me under her wing as her protégé. Hey, so I pinched a few ideas from my old boss. <laughs> Can you blame me? At any rate, we logged quite a few discoveries together, but it was the actual journey that I cherished the most. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was 
Nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of cozy isolation the best way to really get to know someone. At this point, I'd say you've graduated from protege and moved up the ladder. A bit. You know, all this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I miss her dearly. No, she retired. Living on Porima 2 now, I think. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit and I could make proper introductions. Well, I don't expect you to be a carbon copy of Aja. Just be yourself. You see, it's clear that we share the same hunger to discover what's out there. And that, well, that's what intrigues me about you. I... I don't know if I deserve to be that close to anyone right now. If you knew about the things that I've done, the way my life's unfolded, I think your opinion of me might change. Please, give me some time. I... I, I, I have to go. It's a bad place for tourists these days. Nice. This place always has just the right atmosphere. You got an appointment? Cause if not, consider this area reserved. Wow, nice to meet you, too. Good thing you aren't with marketing. I've written up a program just for the occasion, but as Ryujin knows, it's yours for either a price or a favor. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's not. Ah, Ryujin is my second best long-term client. I suppose you're not wrong. Maybe I could be a little more reasonable on that price. All right, you win. No wonder Ryujin hired you. A pleasure, as always. Your job is simple. Just run this little beauty on Ilaro Chen's computer, and the program will take care of the rest. Once you're done, bring the slate back to me at my place. Whatever encryption Alaru has is bound to take some real work, more than my little setup here can handle. It's nice to see you know more than just sneaking around and talking a good game. Here's the slate. I'll be waiting.
gun and no one was seriously harmed. Hmm. I'd call that an excellent day's work. Inside's a bad place for tourists these days. Make yourself at home. Just don't take any souvenirs while you're here. So, you made it. Guess Ryujin security really is slipping. <laughs> Just brimming with confidence, aren't you? But I've seen your work in the Trade Tower, so I'll at least give you some credit. Now, I'll take that program back that I gave you, and let's give the data a look. All of that money at their disposal and a cutting-edge megacorp like Reusion can't prevent a hacker from leeching their data. <laughs> Unbelievable. The program I gave you to run on Ularu's computer basically opens an all-access back door for me. I can see everything and anything, so let's take a look. Ularu has some impressive encryption on her files. Not that I can't crack it, of course. Circumventing protections, running decryption... This should just take a moment now. Damn, I'm good. That went faster than I thought. I'm saving several files to a slate for Dalton, including access history and anything related to Project Dominion. Adding in new encryption for him as well, so he's the only one that can view these. And done. You're all set. I've got the new encrypted slate. Let me tell you, it looks like fun times ahead for Ryujin. Technically, I'm not supposed to look, but it's kind of hard to not see what's going on while running all my software. Since you came through on your end, let's just say that slate isn't going to paint the best picture for Ms. Imogene Salso. But bear in mind, you're dealing with some pretty talented people when it comes to falsifying information. Don't be too sure about that. Imogene was practically raised in the corporate underworld. I'd almost guarantee there's intent behind everything she does. Here's the slate. As usual, always a pleasure doing business with Ryujin. What can I help you with?
Dallas. You know the DJ? It seems your time spent in the tower didn't go so well. Our legal team is taking care of the deceased. I only hope you got the data Nyx needed. It will be handled once this mess is cleared up. Now, let's see what we have here. Someone's been accessing Ularu's files remotely. It's quite a complicated trace, too. I'm impressed Nyx was able to track all of this. Damn. And there's our culprit. Imogene Salzo, senior operations specialist, and one of the few I had in mind for who could pull this off. Well, the motive could be anything. Credits, grudges, even boredom. Either that, or she's highly displeased with someone at the company. Imogene? Hmm, she doesn't seem the type. But maybe that's her tactic. If she had me thinking that way, perhaps it proves that she's a master manipulator. Well, before we make any harsh decisions, I'll need to question her myself. I want you to head to her office and escort her here. You have to make sure she doesn't try anything before I have a chance to speak with her. I just want to avoid a scene. Sending you keeps the rumor mill at bay. If she runs, the guilt will be apparent. And you'll have no choice but to dispose of her. As much as I'd like you to subdue her and bring her in, Imogene would never allow it. She knows what fate lies ahead for those who betray this corporation and get caught. Don't put anything past her. When you're dealing with corporate workers, discerning the truth from the lies is the hardest part. to harass my text too much. They have work to do. I'm sure you can tell by now. She isn't here, which is a shame since I have several documents I need her to sign off on. She's always been the master of avoiding desk work. I'm not even sure that's any business of yours, but I do enjoy keeping close tabs on my counterpart. Dare I ask why you need to know? Aren't you the boring one? I have Imogene's last location at Frankie's Grab and Go, which we all know is a front for the Sioka Syndicate. You'll want to get executive sign-off if you plan on chasing after her. I'd say Dalton is your best bet. Perhaps we need to get Dalton's permission to relieve ourselves as well. Good lord, this corporation keeps you on a short leash?
Yeah, because bosses love it when you go around them. Have fun with that. Word of advice. If you're planning on forgoing authorization and just tiptoeing your way to Imogene, park your friend at the door. Two's a crowd if you're trying to lay low. Good luck finding Imogene. Oh, and if you do catch up with her, be sure to let her know I had everything to do with it. No Imogene, I see. Could she really be on to us already? Of course, Yuko would know. If Imogene's with the Syndicate, I can't just send you after her. You'll need to speak with Benjamin Bayou. We have to make sure he's aware of the situation. If we're lucky, he may even help us get to Imogene. This is not a choice. It's an order. Head over to the Trade Tower and be discreet. Let Bayou know that you're there on Ryujin's behalf. He may ask for credits or even a favor. Just give him what he wants. Sounds lovely. Could we requisition a towel so we can wipe off all the slime after dealing with that repulsive man? If you think my job has been easy since learning about the Mole, let me educate you. We've been working around the clock on security upgrades, rerunning background checks, and combing through timelines. Just be sure to bring her back here in one piece. If she's truly the Mole, she'll have a lot to answer to. If she resists or tries to run, we have no choice but to take it as an admission of guilt. I'm afraid you'll have to dispose of her. Dispose of her? As a valued member of your corporation, she at least deserves the opportunity to explain herself. Imogene may be a valued operative here, but that's what makes her equally dangerous. We're lucky enough to have her position now. But should she disappear, we may never have another chance. Don't tell me a corporation like Ryujin isn't prepared to track a rogue operative throughout the galaxy. Of course we're prepared, but the expenditure would be great. Our chances of finding her would only decrease with time. So elimination is the most efficient path. It's something I hope our mutual friend here will understand as well. I'm glad you're willing to give Imogene a chance to speak for herself. She deserves that much, at least. The risk of Imogene continuing to operate as a traitor is too high. If we don't dispose of her now, she could cause a great deal of harm to this company. She knows the consequences of betraying Ryujin, which makes her dangerous. If the situation does take a turn for the worst, I only ask that you perform a thorough search for any evidence she may have in her possession. I trust you won't let your past relationship cloud your judgment. Just 
Stick to the main plaza, unless you like getting soaked by the rain. Call sending for anyone. What do you want? No. I can always make time when it comes to an old friend. So, what would be the reason? I may consider Ryujin an ally, but Dalton especially knows I don't give anything blindly. As long as it doesn't involve the Syndicate members themselves... I'll tell you what. I'll make sure the Syndicate lets you in hassle-free. Provided you do a little something for me. And what mutual benefit would that be? Around here, I already have all the weight I need. Easy. We're just talking, right? Of course. Ryujin's success always pays out when it comes to neon profits. All right. You talk a good game. And I suppose if we're looking at a mutually beneficial situation, there's no reason for me not to allow such a small favor. Check in with Ms. Moore at Frankie's. I'll send word along that you're to be expected, so she shouldn't give you any trouble. Fair warning. The Syndicate should let you search any common areas, but if anyone catches you snooping around private quarters, I'll just say, be prepared for some hostilities. Lost, kiddo. Oh, so you're the one getting special treatment. Don't look like much to me. I've got one rule for you in there, so it shouldn't be hard to remember. Third floor is off limits. They catch you snooping around, and it's open season. Don't worry. She wouldn't be allowed up there either. For the record, I'm only granting you access because I have to. You'll find that young lady you're looking for holed up in a room almost straight ahead. Just remember to keep your eyes on the prize. The less you consider this an open house, the better. Careful screwing with the security around here. These idiots aren't quite as honest as the Free Star Rangers. No funny business. Well, this amount of firepower is a bit of overkill, wouldn't you say? I 
paths would cross sooner or later. Not that I thought I was safe, but I never expected anyone to just slip by all the syndicate here. I had a feeling you'd be the one to come after me. Yes, and no, but mostly no. Just hear me out, okay? You stay in this business long enough, you get enough favors and connections that can help you see anything coming. Nyx owed me a favor, and gave me the heads up. I know this doesn't look good, but I had no choice. Ularu set me up. Yes, I've been acting as a double agent, but because she ordered me to. The assignment was meant to deceive, not benefit. And Project Dominion is way above my pay grade. It'd be impossible for me to deliver it, at least intentionally. Of course. But first you have to understand, she used me to play an unwitting part in this, so I'm the one that takes the fall. That's why I said it'd be impossible for me to intentionally pull this off. Look, I only know about Project Dominion because I wanted to know exactly what I was being accused of leaking. But that tech is dangerous. An internal neuroamp that can theoretically control other people? If the evidence points to me, it's because Ularu used it to set me up. What better way to frame someone than to take control of their mind and have them actually perform the actions? The existence of a device that can control a person's mind is terrifying. Imagine the horrors you could... Oh, never mind. I don't want to think about it. Power, of course. Corporations maintain their success by any means necessary, but there are some measures Masako is reluctant to take. You may have noticed that none of your assignments directly involve murder. Masako reserves those actions only when it's absolutely necessary. Ularu sees this as a sign of weakness that needs to be dealt with. Because she knows I'm the most believable target, I'm the only one at Ryujin with the skills to even come close to being able to pull off a job like this. It's the only scenario that makes sense. Besides, what's my motive? My career is solid at Ryujin. Infinity can't possibly beat my current benefits. Believe me, after having to play double agent, I've learned all of this firsthand. Yes, it's what the technology does, and it explains why the evidence against me is so solid. Come to think of it. It also explains a few strange bouts of disorientation I've been having the past few months. That's exactly what I've been doing here. Ularu has the skill to pull this off, but she's also been behind the desk for years now. I knew she'd miss something. This slate holds all the evidence against her. I just need you to deliver it to Dalton. It's the only way I can prove I'm innocent. I was hoping you would. I'm still going to lay low until I hear the coast is clear. As long as Ularu still thinks I'm on the run, she'll remain confident that her plan is working. And, I know you don't hear it much around the office, but... thanks. So Ularu is the actual culprit. That complicates things. We're going to have to proceed very carefully, or else Dalton might send someone after us.
quick piece of advice. We hear the name Benjamin Bayou, and we should duck the other way. Fast. Well, look who's back. So tell me, what did you find out? <laughs> if you think I'm paying for that information, think again. It's just a matter of time before it finds its way onto my desk. And I can be a very patient person. Inside the Syndicate? That area's off limits, and I think we both know why. Imogene knew exactly what she was doing when she went there. Oh my. Imogene pointing the finger at Ularu. That would be a first. Ularu will want her head when she finds out. Those two have been a team ever since Imogene started here. And saying they had a student-teacher relationship is probably an understatement. For either one to betray what we all assumed they had, it's more than a bit surprising. Of course she did. Imogene knows better than to make an accusation like that without being able to back it up. I can't wait to see how this unfolds. This situation is gonna give Dalton some serious anxiety. At least it sounds like Imogene has it under control. For now. If I were you, I'd leave it up to Dalton. If there's even a chance that Ularu is betraying the company, you'll never find out if she knows she's under investigation. A mole? No. Ularu's not about to work for another corporation. If she's betraying Ryujin, She's doing it under her own personal agenda. You and me both. Imogene and I may not always get along, but there's no one better at her job. Besides, I don't have the patience to build a relationship with someone new. You're back. And Imogene? I suppose you suddenly have all the facts now. This explanation better be good. I have a mind to fire you just for that comment. Of course. We've scrubbed security footage and run through access card permissions and found nothing. The project itself is an enormous security risk, but our lead R&D engineer, Vina Kara, has been working on ways to mitigate this. Hmm. Well, this evidence certainly complicates matters if Imogene believes Ularu to be the true culprit. I hope she's willing to attest to this in person. Now, I need to undertake the laborious task of writing up a report to summarize all of this. In the meantime, Masako has requested your presence in R&D. She wants you to meet her in Vinakara's office. Masako's been focusing on how to deal with Infinity LTD and their knowledge of Project Dominion. I believe her plans rely heavily on you. Vina's the head of our research and development team. She's the creator of Project Dominion, and often considered the protege of Ray de Caris, Ryujin's founder. <laughs> Not that I enjoy it, but I wouldn't trust anyone but myself with these reports as it is. I've got my eye. station was wiped out by something. Don't worry, we'll figure it out and get that shipment back.
Good, you're here. It's time to put a plan in motion to take full control of this situation with Infinity LTD. Ah, uh, the Mole took priority. Now that Dalton has everything he needs, thanks to you, we're free to proceed. We don't know to what extent Infinity has taken the current NeuroAmp schematics, so our top priority is completing our own. Let me introduce you to Vina Kalra, Head of Research and Development. She'll give you the initial details. Yes, details. You see, the internal NeuroAmp is supposed to consist of two parts. The first part, the part Infinity stole, handles the manipulative effects. The second part is a shielding modification, designed to protect the user against other NeuroAmp... users. Big time. We'd be the only ones unaffected. No one wants their greatest asset used against them. Once Vina can complete the internal NeuroAmp and shielding mod, the plan is to outfit you with both and have you infiltrate Infinity LTD. We can't risk the assignment until we know your mind has the necessary protection. I think implanting that device into your head is a mistake. But it's your choice, not mine. We expect our employees to do whatever it takes to ensure Ryujin's success. Consider this an opportunity, not a risk. Besides, you're in good hands with Vina. You're a Ryujin employee, and we need a job done. We've trusted you this far, so I feel it's safe to continue the trend. Good. I'm glad you see this as an opportunity. And I love a willing subject. Now it's just a matter of getting the key ingredient. The final kink in both designs was finding compatible materials to use for conductivity that the human body wouldn't reject. I've finally created the perfect alloy, but it requires a newly discovered refined element called Rothesite. Which is where I come in. We have a confidential contract with Consolidated Mining to gather, refine, and ship the Rothesite straight to us. Their last shipment is late, and neither we nor Consolidated Mining have had any communication with the Karenay Station. Correct. The updates have been regular up until now. Last we heard, the shipment was ahead of schedule. We need you to head out there, secure the shipment, and bring it back here so Vina can complete her prototype. And I want to know what happened. We need to take any safety measures to make sure this doesn't happen again. Good. Feel free to deal with any resistance however you see fit. The mining station is CM Station RC-1. It's on a moon called Karen A-3A in the Karen A system. The shipment should be in the research and control tower, but the outside doors are kept locked down. This keycard will let you enter the mines so you can access the tower from the inside. Good luck. Remember to be prepared.
something I'd like to discuss. Emergency patients. The clinic welcomes all. Stopping at the clinic. Did I have something I need to discuss with you? Ma'am, I'm just the curator. We're asking everyone to I take care of any leeches on their ships. You we don't want any terrible stuff. Dr. Salvatore, how long have you been here? And in whoa, that whoa, year, whoa. how many times have you been here? Aren't you the one to take down the missing shipments of supplies? Buddy and Sis Def was telling me all about it. This is the dirt time. Pretty amazing stuff. Yes, that sounds like This area's off limits. Authorized personnel only. An outbreak? I haven't heard anything about this. Uh... Understood. Uh, here's an access card. Good luck. took an oath, and I'd say this is a firm violation. Look, we got that shipment. Although, who knows what Faye expects me to do with it. But maybe approvals really are on the way. Now please, get back to Kyle. Make sure his vitals are stable. I don't want to lose him. We'll figure this out. I promise. Fine. But if we lose Kai, that's it. I'm going to SSNN. I don't give a shit about my career anymore. We better get that approval soon. Excuse me, but this is a restricted area. You need to leave. Uh, your timing could be better. A little warning next time? I'll just take a moment to check up on my patient.
Time to move on. Encouraging to know that every case we Thanks for taking time to chat. I... I really need a friendly ear right about now. I received a message from Constellation and it's given me a lot to think about. No, no, it's nothing like that. It's just a list of requests. Things I would normally handle if I was there. <sighs> but I'm not. I'm out here instead with you. You're not keeping me out here. I am. Just... Here, let me explain. Before I joined Constellation, I served for eight years as the head of the Navigator Corps, until the UC decided to axe the department. Yeah, I suppose painful is an appropriate way to put it. You see... The top brass demanded pressworthy discoveries to justify the spending, and money was tight after the war. Shutdown was inevitable. At the end of the day, I was in charge, so the blame obviously fell on my shoulders. <sighs> yeah? You once told me that you favored the journey over the destination, so I'm hoping you'll understand what I'm trying to say. I failed because I was more concerned about exploring the stars than pushing a pencil. Ah, because of my lack of foresight, all I ended up with was a shattered division and a bunch of excuses. That's just it, though. Did I push too hard? Did they shut us down because I wasn't quietly sitting at my desk approving meaningless memos? We'll never know. Well, that brings us to this message now, doesn't it? Call it whatever you want. My drive, my initiative, my optimism. <laughs> it's been my greatest strength and my worst nightmare. It elevates me to these positions of authority. But all I want to do is explore, not sit and make sure all the accounts are balanced. Yes, exactly. If it's obvious to you, imagine how obvious it is to someone like Barrett or Matteo. Oh, they must be itching to replace me by now. God damn it. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Oh, here you are trying to help me and I'm yelling at you. You have to understand. Once Aja retired, I lost the only person that gave a damn. Look, it's clear that you have feelings for me. It's just, I've never had time for this sort of thing in my life. Please, it's not you, it's me. I'm just not ready to get that close. I can't, not now. But thank you for being there and listening. It helped, it really did. Yes? Have something for me? Goodbye. Warm up the engines.
cause any trouble. I hope we're keeping you busy. We are wasting time. Is that my beautiful shipment? You were right about this one, Masako. So I've heard. Now, I shall excuse myself and get to work on finalizing this prototype. So, what did you learn about CM Station RC-1? I knew something bad had happened. Were there any survivors? Good. I may not condone murder, but I refuse to have sympathy for indiscriminate killers like Ecliptic. Especially after massacring innocents working for us. Now, I also had a report that you were spotted at the clinic. I take it you traced the shipment there? Dr. Lane. Hmm. I believe Vina is familiar with his work, specializing in neurosurgery. Were you able to determine what he was doing at the clinic? So, it sounds like Lucas has reached a new level of desperation to ensure his future as CEO. To hell with corporations and CEOs and profit margins. People have died. And you aren't showing the least bit of remorse. Ugh. I'll make sure Yuko's team extracts every bit of information they can from the clinic's database on this. Between hiring Ecliptic and unauthorized human trials, we have enough to take Lucas down for good. And with the Rothesite secure, it's almost time for us to make our move. Exactly. Without the Rothesite, their research comes to a halt. Head up to the executive floor and speak to Dalton. He has an update for you on the Mole's identity. I've called a meeting, and I expect you to attend. It's time to put the final plan in motion. Hey there. I reevaluated all the evidence. It took every resource I had, but the final answer is clear. Ularu is the mole. Indeed. I've briefed Masako and discussed her plans on handling this. While we both agree Ularu is guilty, we need irrefutable evidence before presenting this to the board. For now, we lead everyone to believe that Imogene was the Mole, and the situation was dealt with. Imogene is a resourceful woman. I have no doubt she's in a safe house of her own design. In fact, she probably sees this as a paid vacation. My guess is she's lounging on a couch somewhere, binging all those movies she hasn't had time to watch. Good. Keeping Ularo in the dark is the key to taking her down. Masako has tasked Ularu with writing the program to bring down Infinity LTD. We believe she'll take the chance to incriminate Masako within the program. So this could provide the evidence we're looking for. You will be tasked with the assignment to infiltrate Infinity. So before you go, I want you to bring that program to me. If I can't find hidden code on a single slate, I certainly deserve to be fired. Ularu is limited in what she can hide here, 
Plus, she'll have no reason to believe anyone will be looking in the first place. I can't imagine a more satisfying ending. Now, let's attend a meeting. We called you all together to discuss a recent security breach. We discovered a mole within the company who leaked vital information about Project Dominion to Infinity LTD. You've got to be kidding me. Just don't tell me it's Vina. I think we've all noticed she's not here. Before you speculate any further, no, it's not Vina. The guilty party is Imogene Salzo, much to my disappointment. Our operative here obtained the evidence to confirm it. Dalton, how does something like this happen? Imogene is highly trained. Ularu can even speak to that. We demand the best. So that's the threat we deal with. I may have well-trained operatives. But security is your responsibility, Dalton. This is a huge failing on your part. I accept the responsibility, but let's not forget. The mole has already been exposed and dealt with. Of course, thanks to another of my operatives. I know you're not insinuating that this is my fault. Imogene's been dealt with, so bickering is pointless. All I care about is reacquiring our property and what this might be costing us financially. Vina is completing the internal NeuroAmp prototype as we speak. Our operative will receive the implant, infiltrate Infinity LTD, and obtain any and all research. I have it on good authority, the experimentations they've done to replicate the missing pieces of our work have resulted in fatalities. Botched human trials and murder for hire? You don't bounce back from that. At least not with Infinity's legal team. If I may make a suggestion, we should give this evidence to David at SSNN. It's the best neutral method of releasing this information to the general public. That'd make my job easier. David it is, then. Psycho, the internal neuroamp is ready if you want to send out the candidate. I hope you're ready for this. Good. I can tell Vina is going to enjoy working with you. Vina will be waiting for you in the NeuroAmp division in R&D. Once you're done, meet me in my office. Be ready to discuss the details of your next assignment. Against their will is disgusting. The device shouldn't be allowed to exist. Ah, here's my lucky candidate. I hope you're ready to embark on one amazing journey. Oh, don't worry. That's not on the agenda. Now, just a few details before we begin. Obviously, we'll be putting you under. I'll be making a small incision in the back of your skull where the internal neuroamp will be fitted. The whole procedure should only take three to four hours with little to no downtime afterwards, provided DeMarcus got everything entered correctly. 
Did I not just say I quadruple check the numbers? You know I'm just giving you a hard time. Besides, I've got to make sure my patient is reassured. Eh, you're gonna be fine. All I'm saying is that you're in good hands. Now, just lie down on the table once you're ready, and we should be good to go. I hope you know what you're doing. I worry about you. Be safe. All right, let's get this party started. Focus, let me know how you're doing. So, how are you feeling? You look good? Huge success. No surprises, no signs of rejection. You were the ideal subject. Now, we just keep our fingers crossed and hope no unknown side effects come creeping in later. That's exactly what we want. Just a couple quick notes before using the internal neuroamp. First, you can only influence one person at a time. And second, the effect is temporary, so be prepared if you use it in a combat situation. Now that's something to talk to the drone engineers about. Now let's test this sucker out. DeMarcus has graciously volunteered for science, he says. Please, we're not infinity. We believe in due diligence when it comes to tech like this. But just in case something does go wrong, we've got him locked up in the test chamber. DeMarcus loves being hands-on and experiencing things on his own. It's probably why he's the second most published scientist here after me. Just head up the stairs nearby to the observation deck. Warning. This unit does not possess any units to search for people. fall into the wrong hands. I've never been so divided about something in my life. Oh my god, that was incredible. What was it like? Wow. How to describe it? One minute I was excited about seeing how the experiment would go. The next, I had a brief moment of disorientation and Figured I must have lost my train of thought. It felt eerily natural. And yes, I admit it, just as you predicted. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it! I can hardly wait to finish writing up my latest dissertation. And you owe me a hundred creds. I'll be keeping myself under constant surveillance now. I'm curious if any other side effects may manifest. So, tell me all about it. How did it feel? Any side effects? 
take that as a no on the side effects, and that toy you love so much is very powerful, so use it wisely. Yeah, toy is hardly the word I'd use to describe it. It really was fascinating how all I experienced was a moment of disorientation. It's truly remarkable tech. Maybe that's the beauty of it. You'd never know. Uh, besides, the neural Elm isn't total control. If a subject's morals or beliefs in something are strong enough, we still see points of failure. That being said, it's been interesting to discover the actions our subjects sanction in their own minds. Okay, okay. As much as I'd love to go over the details and potential of this amazing piece of technology I created, Masako wants to see you. It sounds like you have an assignment to complete, and Demarcus and I have a lot of notes to record. Uh, was I supposed to attach that one? All right, relax. I wasn't sure how accurate Vina's promise of no downtime was going to be. Let's just hope her promise of no brain damage holds true as well. Now that you've been outfitted with the internal neuroamp, it's time to put that tech to work. We're sending you into Infinity LTD. Lucas Drexler is about to learn exactly why you don't steal from Ryujin Industries. It's good to know we're of the same mind on this one. All right. Yuko has provided a layout of Infinity LTD. You have two options for this assignment. We'll be providing you with the means for both. Option A, you gain entry through their maintenance access on the roof. Option B, we give you an assigned identity and arrange a meeting for you. Option A, you need to remain under the radar the entire time. Option B, you have a slight cover that may give you the opportunity to talk your way to your objectives. Just hope those acting skills don't get you caught or killed. Now, depending on your preference, you'll either find yourself in the maintenance hallway or the marketing department. From there, you have three targets. First, you have Lucas Drexler's computer, located in his office on the executive floor. Second is Faye Sengsavan's computer, in research and development. And third, you need to obtain the prototype they are working on, also in R&D. As you can see, you've several floors to traverse. So I hope you're prepared for an adventure. You'll only have free range on the marketing floor. Infinity may be cheap, but they know at least some level of security is needed in this business. That's what we're counting on. Now, I had Ularu create a program that you need to run on both Lucas and Faye's computers. I'll let her explain the details. You see, once we expose Infinity LTD, all of their data is going to come under intense scrutiny. We only want the public to know about their mercenary hires and unauthorized human trials, but Project Dominion needs to remain confidential. I've created an overseer program that will gather all the evidence we need, and at the same time delete anything relating to Ryujin and the internal Neuroamp. Anyone who comes forward to defend Lucas would be prosecuted as either aiding or being an accessory to these crimes. They all know career suicide when they see it. As for Lucas himself, if he wants to speak up and add corporate theft to his laundry list of crimes, fine. But who's going to believe him? With tech like that, I can see why you'd want to maintain control of the narrative, though I strongly object to the methods. If the media were to draw their own conclusions, I'm certain they'd just create a panic among people. 
Controlling the narrative is of the utmost importance. Oh, let's just hope this program is as thorough as you say then. And as safe. Now we don't want to mess on this one. A body count will only distract from what we're trying to accomplish here. In fact, unless they're a master at being one with the shadows, I'd suggest you leave your friend behind. Lower the risk. Simon Rychek provided some useful info on how to evacuate civilians from the building. I'm sure you remember him from Sidonia. Infinity's maintenance crew is understaffed. It's only a matter of time before pressure gauges go unchecked and they have a massive issue on their hands. Once that pressure becomes too much, every floor in the building is going to suffer from gas leaks, setting off an automated alarm to evacuate the building. Simon was able to get a passcode for you to access their system's computer, so you can force the heating system to fail. My thoughts exactly. We're also issuing you an operative suit. It should help reduce their ability to detect you. These suits are typically reserved for the senior ranks, but we want to reduce as much risk as possible. Just make sure you follow through on that statement. Once you've run the Overseer program and obtained the prototype, your final step is to deliver the slate to David Barron at the SSNN field office. If he asks questions, feel free to give him just enough information to pique his interest, but no mention of Ryujin or who you are. SSNN is used to anonymous tips. They'll do whatever verifications they deem necessary on their own to confirm the story. It certainly will, and we'll have front row seats. So, any final questions before you go? You'll be restricted to the mark. Good luck. And be sure to report directly back to me when you return. Here's Simon's passcode, your operative suit, the Overseer program, and your cover identity. Your cover ID card is encoded with roof entry and elevator access. So that's your ticket in, either way. Don't screw this up, Skylar Lumen. Certain Ularu won't pass up this opportunity. So, let's take a look. Aha! The decryptions hit a snag. There's definitely something here. This is exactly what we needed. According to this code, Ularu intended to plant false evidence that would show Masako was working with Lucas. The moment you launched the Overseer program, a series of fabricated communication files would have been uploaded to the Infinity LTD network. One of them even frames Masako for encouraging Lucas to push for early human trials. First Imogene, now Masako. Ularu keeps using people as rungs on the way up the ladder. Any one of us could be next. I'm going to copy the necessary files off this slate and issue you a new one. I want to keep this one intact, so Alaru can't dispute it. All right. Now, we finally have the evidence we need to prove Ularu's guilt. Good. Then let's nail Ularu right to the wall. She deserves everything that's coming her way.
there's no doubt. Should you have even noticed the upload, the program itself is designed to ignore any stop commands. It would have been too late. Yes, and had you not brought this program to me in the first place, you would have been the one planting the false evidence. Without that falsified evidence, Ularu is in for a big surprise. I fully expect she'll be eagerly awaiting SSNN's broadcast, anticipating Masako to be accused alongside Lucas Drexler. Here's the new slate with the revised Overseer program. Let's get this assignment finished the right way. Hey, uh, can we skip the local chunks this time? Mm, never agrees with my stomach. No problem. By the way, Captain, the Sergeant you be That would be me. You got this. Welcome to Infinity LTD's corporate headquarters. Hello. Did you have an appointment with us today? Like staggeringly huge. They need people to Ah! Yes! From Lumen Interactive. The elevator here will take you to the marketing floor. Once you arrive, you'll want to talk to Ellis Ortiz. He's the receptionist there and will be happy to help you. I could see how you made him shield. Welcome to Infinity LTD's marketing department. Desi notify me that you are on your way. If you just have a seat, I can notify Miss Hart that you've arrived. Excuse me. Find Miss Hart that you're here. Feel free to use any of the facilities on the floor while you wait. The break room and bathrooms are just around the corner.
life insurance package. Sounds good. Lead on. Mr. Barron's a very busy and important man. 
All right. You've got my attention. What's this so-called story about? Maybe get you a ticket to a speaking gig he's got. That's all I can do. Corporate greed claims victims once more. And you have evidence to support this claim. Perfect stranger or not, we won't air anything without some sort of hard evidence. I don't suppose you want to tell me how you got this evidence. Of course. I just hope your source is as reliable as you think they are. Is there at least a name I can cite as my source? Why am I not surprised? As long as the evidence is adequate and verifiable, I expect it'll be aired within the hour, if not sooner. Now, if you'll excuse me, I obviously have some work to do. While we're here, you better stay off the Aurora. We don't want that drug scrambling the planes. You were specifically told that we did not want a body count on this assignment. Phase death may be a pain point, but at least Lucas is still alive to face the incoming consequences. A poor excuse. All the tools at your disposal, and yet here we are. I hope you at least attempted to use the internal neuroamp. And yet not useful enough to avoid a body count? Still, it's good to know the applications are proving themselves. So now it's just a waiting game for SSNN to break the news. Once the story airs, we have another board meeting scheduled to decide how to handle Infinity. Go ahead, Maeve. The SSNN broadcast has started. Shall I patch it through? Yes. Yes. Thank you. The murders are believed to be linked to a new investigation where Drexler would have been accused of numerous violations, including murder for hire, unauthorized human trials, and corporate theft. Authorities representing the UC and the Freestar Collective have been dispatched to a consolidated mining station and the clinic. Both locations are believed to hold numerous victims. Drexler's motivation appears to be an attempt to launch a new product based off stolen information from a competitor. The details on the project itself and the competitor have yet to be confirmed. This has been David Barrett for SSNN. Perfect. This exposure puts Infinity right where we want them. The meeting will begin momentarily, but I want you to discuss the options we have with the other members. Infinity's net worth is about to hit rock bottom. So this gives us the opportunity to win a little more public faith. Quite right. The truth is, we'll be making evaluations. We'll shed any employees who don't make the cut, slowly but surely. By incorporating Infinity, we eliminate a competitor, get their best employees and contracts, and all while boosting our public perception. Shed any employees. Ugh. Oh, terminology like that, where you reference manipulating people's lives. Oh, it makes my skin crawl. It is the right thing for Ryujin. Which is why I'd like you to talk to the board to convince them this is the right move. There are several who might disagree, and you have the perfect tool to help sway them. If 
Fine. Whether or not you use the internal neuroamp is up to you, but I still want results. You'll find most of the board members in their offices preparing. Vina is also here, waiting for the meeting to start. We'll need at least 50% of the vote to go our way. In the event of a tie, I will make the final decision. I trust you'll get it done. Did Masako send you to try and convince me to acquire Infinity LTD? I think we both know that's not going to work. Our public perception is good enough. If you ask me, reaching out to save Infinity just makes us look weak. The internal neuroamp gives us the power to crush our competitors, not take them under our wing. This is exactly why Masako's time as CEO is finished. Good. If you use that neuroamp wisely, it will guarantee that Infinity gets shut down. Ah, uh, well, it does make Ryujin look good. And we do gain a wider customer base, which means higher profits. You're oddly right about this one, Op. I guess you are worth keeping around. As long as everyone has Ryujin's best interests in mind, this should make for an interesting meeting. An issue? That would be a foolish move. Dalton and Alexis are the only two against it. You'd never get the rest to shut it down. Dangerous indeed. For all I know, you're using it right now. The irony. Perhaps I didn't see it earlier, but you're right. The moment a competitor reverse engineers Vina's work, it'll be chaos. The last thing I want is to have my brain scrambled because some engineer didn't do their due diligence. Now if you'll excuse me, I still have a lot of preparations to make. Just the person I wanted to see. I want to get all the details locked down for this meeting, and I believe you to be one of the best sources available. I doubt that. But moving on. You've had the chance to encounter members of Infinity LTD throughout your assignments here. Do you think they're worth redemption? And why? Saving the jobs of thousands is altruistic, which is not a luxury corporations have. It's a financial burden. It would be a huge undertaking on my part. Hmm. Your disdain is noted. And perhaps you thought I'd care because you're hopeful. Next question. What is your opinion on how Masako handled the mole situation? Any insight into what made it successful? Being prepared for anything is a great asset, one that Masako excels at. I appreciate the insight. I suppose I should ask if there's anything I can do for you, considering how helpful you've been. It's only dangerous to those who can't afford one. Hence the added motivation that will bolster sales. I think we all know how averse I am to chaos. Finances are my forte, so you make a good point. Our competition has yet to truly master neuroamps, but the possibility is there. It's a risk I am unwilling to take. At this time. This has been rather enlightening for me. I appreciate the time. Is Masako checking up on me to make sure I'm on her side? 
In this business, there's always a side. And right now, I'm backing Masako. We just need to grab Infinity LTD while it's got the public's full attention. I'm all about free PR, especially when it's painting us in a good light. I'm sure I can squeeze enough goodwill out of this to last us at least a year. All right, I suppose you've earned the right to voice your opinion after everything you've done, qualified or not. So let's hear it. The possible backlash on tech like this is not lost on me. However, the internal neuroamp will define the next era of tech, with Ryujin at the forefront. It's not an opportunity you just walk away from. Of course there is. You just have to know the right way to spin it. As any good marketing person knows, the public doesn't know what they want until we tell them. Well, it seems your talents really do stretch beyond just being an operative. Good talk. Maybe I'll even consult you on future endeavors. It's good to see you again. And how's my favorite patient doing? Not seeing any temporal memory flashes or losing time, I hope. <laughs> Reminds me of my undergrad days. I mean, I assume you're joking, right? I'll have to get that documented and we'll definitely want to run a few tests if not. So, tell me what you think of the Neuroamp. I hope you're not actually suggesting that the technology I spent years working on and perfecting never sees the light of day. This is groundbreaking work. My life's work. Fine, fine. Make your case. No, I'm definitely not sure about risking my career over this. Well, this conversation's made me feel like a proper monster. But you're right. In a perfect world, tech like this is used for good. But this world is far from perfect. It is. It really is. For years, my only focus has been, is this possible? And then, how do I make it work? I never stopped to consider if it was right, or what it would mean. I guess it'll be up to a vote either way. It's not on the meeting agenda, so I assume you'll bring it up yourself? We just have to hope the others will see reason. So the next question is, what will the fate of Infinity LTD be? Exactly. Not that I want to gloat over it. Maybe just a little. Okay, so Demarcus and I have really been looking forward to it, so fingers crossed this deal goes through. Well, this has certainly been the most interesting conversation of my day. All we can do now is look forward to the meeting, right? See you in there. If only there were more hours in the day. <sighs> Great, the bane of my department. If you need something, make it quick. Choose your words carefully. If you expect me to respond to threats, you're sadly mistaken. Now, I can only assume you're referring to Infinity LTD, and there's only one right decision regarding that corporation. Complete disillusion. I'm not sure how the leader of an exploration club would change my mind. I appreciate the flattery. And what sort of benefits do you see in a risk like this? I see now where your experience comes into play. From a financial and marketing viewpoint, you're right. And maybe I'm being more than a little selfish by focusing on my own department. And you're right. My legal team is more than prepared to handle any surprise situations that might crop up. Don't even get me started. 
First off, if I find out you use that device on me, I will tie you up in court on whatever charges I can conjure for the rest of your life. Second, that tech is one major human rights violation that no legal team wants to fight. I'll do whatever I can to make sure it's either severely delayed or collects dust in storage. I couldn't agree more. It should be completely banned from the settled systems. Well, I'm both glad and surprised to hear the one person who has one say that. Masako's lucky to have you at her disposal, even if you are a continual thorn in my side. You may be the greatest asset, aside from the internal neuroamp, that Ryujin has. This exchange has been surprisingly insightful, but now I really do need to get back to my notes. This meeting should prove to be very interesting. I assume Masako briefed you on her preferred outcome. Good on you. Indeed. That technology shouldn't be used for such nefarious purposes. Or in fact, any purposes at all. If it were up to me, I'd have shut down Project Dominion a long time ago. I knew it was a grave security risk. And look what happened. You read my mind. Let's just hope Masako and the others see it that way. Plus, if we vote to acquire Infinity LTD, we're about to add a significant workload onto my team. The last thing I want to deal with are any more incidents this new neuroamp might cause. I imagine we're looking at months of work. Infinity LTD is obviously not known for their security. I only hope that Masako and the others will be patient with the process. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some preparations to make. We'll be announcing Ularu's termination of employment at this meeting, so I need to have security ready to escort her off the premises. All right, everyone. As you all know, we've successfully exposed Infinity LTD's botched human trials and murder for hire through SSNN. The public is demanding their leadership, namely Lucas Drexler, face trial. And he's probably writing his resignation as we speak. Ryujin will be launching a statement, but I believe now is the perfect time to acquire Infinity LTD. Believe it or not, I agree. The acquisition has risks, and it's going to create a lot of work for all of us. But the overall payoff will be worth it. My team is prepared to handle the influx. We're more than happy to rid ourselves of a rival. Arguments? Infinity LTD could be the Pandora's box of financial and legal risks. I simply cannot support an acquisition. I think what we're all overlooking is what led us to this situation to begin with. Yes, our security was compromised. But considering Dalton was hired by Masako, the issue obviously starts at the top. In fact, 
I propose that Masako be removed from CEO altogether. Ularu, this isn't a line you want to cross. And considering you're the mole, if anyone's going to be removed from power, it's going to be you. Hold up. Are you saying you lied to us? Dalton, the last meeting we had, you distinctly said Imogene was the mole, and she'd been dealt with. Do you even have any proof to back up this outrageous claim? Of course we do. The malicious code you hid on this slate to upload incriminating evidence against Masako onto Lucas Drexler's computer. To put it bluntly, Ularu, you're fired. Security will hold you in your office until a proper exit interview can be done. This isn't right. <laughs> I should at least have the opportunity to resign. And allow you to still be marketable to a competitor? I don't think so. This may be news to me, and I will be reviewing the evidence closely. But this isn't something you just get to walk away from. Security, escort Miss Chen to her office and see that she stays put. You'll regret this. All of you. I believe the only regret would be trusting you to begin with. All right. Back to business. All in favor of acquiring Infinity LTD? Aye. Aye. All against? Nay. Good. Alexis, start drawing up the necessary documentation. Anyone have anything else they'd like to bring up? The internal NeuroAmp is a key component of Ryujin Industries' success for the next ten years, if not more. Why would we shelve it after we've finally perfected it? I can't believe I'm saying this, but he's right. Regardless of the pros, the cons are too morally and ethically irresponsible to move forward with. I must agree. We can't go through with production on technology like this until certain safeties can be guaranteed. Very well. All in favor of shelving Project Dominion? Aye. Aye. All against? Nay. Vina, prep Project Dominion for storage. Any other matters to bring forth? None? This concludes our order of business for today. At least if you're here, you're not screwing up out there. You're looking... interesting today. Shelving the internal neuroamp. Not the outcome I anticipated. A fine point, but it still proves its usefulness. The truth remains, Lucas Drexler learned a hard lesson, and we exposed a traitor among us. You've proven yourself to be quite the asset here at Ryujin. It's well earned, and deserved. I truly appreciate the work you put in to exposing Ularu. No operative has ever had to investigate our own to the extent that you did. I can imagine it may have been a lot of pressure, considering you were fairly new at the time. Yes, I'm proud of you as well. Ularu needed to be brought down. If you wouldn't have stopped her, who knows what she would have done next. I hope that enthusiasm sticks with you for the foreseeable future. Imogene's instincts were right about you. Now, as promised, I have your bonus. I hope you'll find it appropriate for all you've done. And I'm promoting you to senior operative. You've more than earned it. And also your opinion. 
As for the details, I think someone back on the operations floor would prefer to explain those to you. When you have a few moments, there's something I'd like to discuss. Not if when you have a few moments, there's something I'd like to discuss. Handling those tricky decisions regarding Ryujin must have been difficult. In fact, I'm amazed you were able to deal with them at all. Those types of corporations remind me why I never ventured into business. I can't stand that way of life. It is disgusting. And I'm pleased you recognized that Ryujin almost made a grievous error in judgment. After all, based on your recommendation, they've ceased their work on that disturbing NeuroAmp technology. Why wouldn't I be pleased about your decision? Can you imagine if that technology had fallen into the wrong hands? The awful things you could force people to do. Oh, it's terribly frightening. Yes, quite. Mm -hmm. Well, I've certainly taken up enough of your time. Thanks for letting me get that off my mind. When you have a moment, oh, I'd like to speak to you. Still feels a little weird, hey, Guess I'm not used to having the I have an important but personal decision to make, but I need to discuss something with you first. Guess that means you won't be telling the marshal that I'm Phew, thank you. So, where to start? Um, before I was with the Navigator Corps, I was career military, part of the United Colonies Navy. When the colony war broke out, I was posted as the chief navigator on a warship, the Dauntless. Then you were right. I didn't want to go into detail before because... Well, just hear me out. There was a particularly bloody battle. We were fighting over a world in the Ata Cassiopeia system. Worst fighting I'd ever seen. We lost 12 ships that day. Including my own. <sighs> With hundreds of lives lost on both sides, I'd argue there were no winners at all. Now let me finish. The ship was barely intact. The captain and first mate died the previous day, which put me in command. A shrewd captain would have called for the crew to abandon ship, but I was so angry. I wanted to stay. I needed to fight. <sighs> I believe you. 
But you haven't heard the worst of this. We fought for hours, but the damage was fatal. I gave the order to abandon ship and the crew piled into the escape shuttle. As the shuttle launched, I could see it was damaged. I... I heard screams before the radio cut. The last thing I saw, they were spiraling helplessly towards the planet's surface. There was... There was nothing I could do. It was my duty as acting captain to be the last person to leave the Dauntless. We had more than one escape shuttle available. So, I elected to wait until they were... safe. Thank you. But condolences can't reverse what I've done. I was caught up in the moment. An inexperienced captain making rash decisions that cost people their lives. Try telling that to their loved ones. When the dust settled, the United Colonies gave me a medal. Can you believe that? A damn medal! I never even had a chance to find the shuttle wreckage and give my crew a proper burial. That's true. But still, it doesn't erase the real issue here. Remember when you said no one but me would have pushed harder to keep the Navigator core going? Well, this time, pushing too hard cost lives. Don't you get it? Everything I do, everything I touch, somehow falls apart. That's why I'm worried about us. All this nonsense, and you still have faith, eh? You really care about me, don't you? You know, I've spent a lot of time thinking about us. About our relationship. How we've clearly become close. I practiced what I was going to say when the moment was right, and now that it's here, my mind's gone blank. <laughs> uh, look. You deserve the best. Someone who can give themselves to you entirely. But right now, I have too much baggage. Too much on my mind. I hope you'll forgive me for pushing you away. I just need time. Well, hey there. Seems that way. That's pretty crazy, even by Shawgang standards. Well, nobody ever accused those boys of having an overabundance of common sense. Ain't that the truth? Need something? You got some business with me? Really? You must have impressed the Marshal. I'm guessing he wants to recruit you, so I'll tell you a little bit about who we are. Well, the Freestar Rangers ensure the safety and security of the Freestar Collective and its people. We might hunt down a fugitive, break up a smuggling operation, investigate a starship theft, or put some would-be bank robbers behind bars. Whatever needs doing to keep the people safe, we do. Like most things that are worth doing, it ain't always easy. But... Do I think we make the Freestar Collective a little safer for everyone? Yeah, I do. I imagine you've got some questions. I'll answer anything I can. Well, in theory, a Freestar Ranger can go anywhere in Freestar Collective space, uh, even private property. But of course, it doesn't always work out that way. We also have jurisdiction over any local security when we're tracking a fugitive. The number's always changing due to retirements, recruiting, and unfortunately, death in the line of duty. But as far as I know, there's never been more than a dozen rangers at any one time. 
I'll say right up front that if you're looking to get rich, this ain't the line of work for you. But yeah, we do get paid from time to time to help with expenses and such. Okay then. A word about myself. I'm in charge of making sure anyone that wants to be a Freestar Ranger is up to the task. That being said, the Marshal wouldn't send you here if he didn't think you had potential. So, what's it gonna be? Are you ready to sign up with the Freestar Rangers? If you knew half of what I did about the man, you'd show him a lot more respect. Besides, I'm next in line, and I'll be damned if I'm letting you cut ahead of me. Before I hand you a badge, I need to know you can handle the job. You helped out with the hostage situation, but sometimes people just get lucky. Tell you what, use the mission terminal and take one of the listed jobs. Your choice. Come back alive, and we'll talk about you joining up. Oh, got no lack of confidence, have you? Well, let's see if you back it up.
got a lot of bars in the city. Oh, you're back. How'd it go? Well, except Aggies. Well, don't love it too much. Bloodthirsty ain't high on the list of qualities we're looking for. You did what I asked, so let's go meet the marshal. Follow me. Hiya. A lot of famous people visit Aquila. I'll be back up here. We're headquartered in the upper floors of the rock, but we also have remote stations throughout Freestar Collector Space. Helps us to identify and respond to threats more quickly. Like I said before, there are less than a dozen rangers in all, and we operate with limited resources. Thankfully, most people respect us and are willing to cooperate. In this job, your eyes, ears, and wits are every. Thank minute. goodness we have our jetpacks to offset this ridiculously heavy gravity field. Marshal. Emma, I came in here because I'm satisfied that our new crew can handle the job. Violent tendencies aside, I'd say yes. All right then. Step forward, recruit. Let me have a word with you. I've got just one question. Do you pledge to defend the people of the Free Star Collective, even if it means risking your own life? Well, that's not quite the same thing, but it'll do for now. Here, take these. You're now a Freestar Ranger deputy. I'm assigning you to Ranger Wilcox for some field training. Listen good to what she tells you. Welcome aboard, deputy. You've made a wise choice, but I trust that your duties as a Ranger won't interfere with your service to Constellation. Wish we could throw you a welcome party, but there's work to do. We got word from a farmer on Montero Luna. She says someone's trying to take her farm, and she's afraid she might be in danger. Whoa! How about you ease back on the throttle there, deputy? Violence is the last resort. You don't draw your weapon unless innocent lives are in danger. Grab any supplies you might need, and let's get going. Pay attention to what Ranger Wilcox tells you. Welcome to the Freestar Collective. Please maintain your current course while we scan your ship. Scan complete. like this, I think I'll stick to the comforts of New Atlantis. The Free Star Rangers. You have no idea how happy I am to see you. I'm Ranger Emma Wilcox. My deputy and I are here to help. Now, tell us what happened. I was out planting in the fields when I saw some men approaching. They looked like soldiers with uniforms and weapons and such. They wanted to buy the farm. Didn't even ask if it was for sale. Their offer was so low, I told them right where they could stick it. They said they'd give me time to think about it, but if I didn't change my mind, I was gonna regret it. Then they left. Well, they sure as hell look like fighting men to me. Go see for yourself. They headed into the canyons back behind the house. That place is dangerous. Steep slopes, narrow trails, rock slides, and all manner of hostile creatures, too. If you're going after those men, be careful. Oh, there's one other thing. They said they were the first. The first of what, I'm not sure. But there must be more of them coming. 
Thank you, ma'am. That should be enough for us to find these men. All right, deputy. Keep that weapon handy and your eyes sharp. Since these guys don't know we're after them, they're probably not making an effort to hide their tracks. Now, let's go and check out those canyons. Several pairs by the look. Not too old either. Let's head down into the canyon and see if we can find more. Quiet out here. I like it. Nice change of pace from Aquila City. Are you certain that traveling into these canyons is wise? The route looks treacherous. Me busy for months. I don't look at it. That jump looked painful. Just hope they're not perched up onto these canyon walls, waiting to snipe at us. Mm, nice to get out under the sky for a spell. Being a mother means I don't get as much field work as I used to.
a natural tracker. My badge that's wood smoke from a campfire. Be close. Be ready. We should be careful. This bottleneck is the perfect place for an ambush. here. Ms. Wagner called in the cavalry. <laughs> Except it ain't much of a cavalry. I suggest you turn around and walk away while you still can. Normally, I'd suggest you choose your words carefully so we could avoid bloodshed. But something tells me that isn't going to be possible. That's none of your damn business. Oh, it ain't exactly the farm that's special, but that ain't none of your business. Don't recognize the uniforms. Guess I shouldn't be surprised. It's like the Major said, everyone's conveniently forgotten. Forgotten our sacrifice. Forgotten how we were betrayed. We'll make them all remember soon enough. I promise you that. You think you're in a position to make demands. Well, I've got news for you. All you're getting from me is a shallow grave. So, got any last words I should try to remember? If you think I give a damn about the Free Star Rangers, then you've got no idea who you're dealing with. Matter of fact, that just makes it even more fun. Air them out, boys!
find anything interesting? Let's see what we have here. Hmm, interesting. So, their ship was stolen from the Hope Tech factory. Whoever pulled that off must have been one hell of a shipjacker. Well, I guess someone really wants that farm bad. Speaking of which, let's get back there and let Miss Wagoner know that she's safe. For now. What's the news? What happened? Did you find those men? Well, it's good to see you're all right then. They must have been crazy or desperate, trying to take on the Free Star Rangers. So who were they? And why do they want my farm? Hope Tech, the cargo ship company? Sorry, I don't know anything about that. They say the Rangers always get their man, so to speak. I'm sure you'll figure it out. I can't thank you enough. I'd hate to be remembered as the wagoner who couldn't hold on to the farm that's been in the family for so long. Of course. All the same, I'm grateful. If you have any more trouble, give us a call. We're in system, so it won't take long to get someone out here. All right, Deputy. Let's get back to the rock. We need to report this to the Marshal. Looks like it's going to be quite a harvest this season. Free for 200 years, and this city is the best the Collective can come up with? What's the story on Montero Luna? That call we got from Wagoner Farm turned out to be a little more interesting than I was expecting. Some men were trying to run the Wagoners off the land. They tried to buy it first, but when that didn't work, they turned to threats. We confronted them, and unfortunately, it came to violence. None of them survived. You helped someone in need and came back alive. That's a job well done. I agree. Until we see the whole picture, we won't know if Miss Wagner is truly safe. What did you make of these men who were trying to take the farm? I had a feeling you were no stranger to combat. Good thing, too, given the turn of events. You can take the soldier out of the war, but you can't take the war out of the soldier. You carry that experience with you forever. Now, did you find anything that might give us a lead on why these men wanted the farm? Hope Tech ships ain't exactly cheap. That thief could probably tell us a lot about these men you ran into. There's something else. They were dressed in Free Star Militia uniforms. The unit badge was yellow on black with the number one. They also said something about being forgotten. They seemed bitter about it. Resentful. Didn't you fight in the Colony War, Marshal? Any of that sound familiar? The 1st Cavalry. I was in that unit for a while. 
but it was disbanded decades ago. After the Battle of Nera. What was left of it, anyway. Hell, it's our only lead. The Hope Tech factory is in Hope Town on Polvo. Nia Kalu's our ranger stationed out there. She can introduce you to Ron Hope, the president of Hope Tech. He might be able to help you find the thief. Just make sure you stay on his good side. He's on the Council of Governors, and they're the ones we answer to. Good. The last thing I need is the Council breathing down my neck. This is your assignment now, Deputy. Work with the other Rangers. Find out what you can about those men on Montero Luna. Meantime, I'll look into a possible connection with the 1st Cavalry. Good hunting. Please tell me you're here to help, not to try and steal my ship. Yeah, well if you want to keep that badge, then don't get any ideas. This old girl and I have been through a lot together. I was tracking a crew of outlaws that's been preying on merchant ships. Bastards got the drop on me. I ran them off, but they got a few good hits in. As you can see, I ain't in much shape to make repairs. I'll be fine once the pain medication kicks in. The priority right now is the ship. Can't do my job without it. Just patch her up enough to get to Hopetown. The rest can get fixed up there. Thanks. I owe you one. We're happy to help. We have these jetpacks for a reason, you know. Thanks. That should get me home. You're right. 
They were pretty beat up, so I don't think they got real far. But if they make it back to their hideout, I might never find them again. We can't let that happen. They look to be heading for Polvo's moon, Miatha. Good hunting. somewhere? Those outlaws didn't give you too much trouble, I trust? Good. I'm sure it didn't hurt that I softened them up for you. You've got good timing. A courier just came in from Aquila. The Marshal sends his regards along with a briefing on your case. I was surprised as hell to learn about the starship theft. Nobody said a word to me about it. Anyway, Mr. Hope can see us whenever you're ready. If you need to take a little time first, feel free. His office is upstairs. He's in a meeting, but it should be wrapping up. Come on. I'm guessing the Marshal already told you this, but I'll say it anyway. Ron Hope isn't just the founder and president of Hope Tech. He's on the Council of Governors. The Council oversees the Free Star Rangers, so don't rile him up. I've spent a long time trying to build a good relationship with Hope. <laughs> he comes on a little strong, but there's a lot to admire about the man. Everything you see around you, he built. Pretty much everyone in this town owes him for their livelihood. Can't begin to imagine the kind of pressure that must put on someone. All I'm saying is, try to show a little respect. All the way up. Is it just me, or does every executive in the settled systems have an office on the top floor? Uh, I guess being above everyone makes them feel like they're, well, <laughs> above everyone. Keep an eye on your valuables. If you can't protect your own, you don't belong here. I guess I could offer double shifts. It'll push payroll pretty high, but I think it's a worthwhile trade-off. 
As for parts, we could try outsourcing. Do a contract with scavengers, maybe, but that's a decision that's got to be made upstairs. Hmm. Well, talk to Elaine about the scavengers. It's not a bad idea, provided we get a good deal. And I don't mean a fair deal. I mean a good deal. Remember, it's not just our bottom line that matters. We're also responsible for the welfare of everyone in the factory. We look out for our people here, Burchett. That's a point of great personal pride. And um, excuse me, uh, Mr. Hope? Well now, the Free Star Rangers. At last! <laughs> ah, damn, good to see you. I think we're done here, Burchett. Yes, sir. This is the deputy I told you about. Splendid. Splendid! It's a noble calling, being a Free Star Ranger. We certainly could use more of you. I'm sure I don't have to tell you what an outrage it is to have a ship stolen right out of the factory. Justice must be done, and the sooner the better. That's good news. I'll send my people over to bring it home. Of course, that doesn't mean your work is done. I want the thief found and prosecuted to the full extent of the law. I'm sure I don't need to remind you of my position on the Council of Governors. You'd better learn some respect, deputy. One dispatch to Aquila City, and I can end your brief career in the Free Star Rangers. Don't listen to him. You have every right to call him out for the Free Star elitist snob that he is. Now, tell me that you've at least got a lead of some kind. Hmm? Well, I can't say I'm surprised. Sadly, there's no lack of mercenaries in the settled systems. I suppose the chance to cut costs by stealing a ship was too good to pass on. Well, I'm not sure I can be much help, but I'll answer whatever questions I can. We questioned everyone who was in the building when it happened. And not one person seems to have seen anything at all. Frankly, I think that's both highly unlikely and more than a little suspicious. However, I can't deny there are times when the hangar is empty, so it's not inconceivable the thief could have slipped in unseen. What? Nonsense! We vet our people thoroughly here. Hope Tech holds its employees to the very highest standards. Nevertheless, I suppose I could have Cosette conduct a, a thorough personnel review. <laughs> Rest assured, if we turn up any evidence that one of our people was an accomplice, I'll let you know. Because I told them not to. If word got out, it would do irreparable harm to our image. I'm in fierce competition with other Starship manufacturers. Any sign of weakness could be fatal. Uh, what's more, every Starship thief in the settled systems would, would likely flock to Hopetown and start planning the next heist. No, nothing at all. It was just a, a standard Hope Tech cargo hauler. Not that it didn't have great value, mind you. Hope Tech builds some of the most durable and reliable starships in the settled systems. Now you can bet my ships last twice as long as anything Stroud Eklund makes. Very well. I need you to understand something, Deputy. This town is home to men, women, and children who depend on Hope Tech for a living. I provide jobs. 
that put food on their tables and a roof over their heads. It's a responsibility that I take very seriously. If word gets out about the stolen ship, my investors will lose trust and my workers will pay the price. I can't allow that. Well, heavy is the head that wears the crown. I'm sure the burden of responsibility for your workers is an inconvenience, Mr. Hope. But the deputy has responsibilities as well. Despite what you think, I have great respect for the badge and the difficult choices that come with it. But my primary concern is for the welfare of my people. A ranger's first duty is to protect the people of the Free Star Collective. If your carelessness costs my workers their livelihoods, then you've utterly failed in that duty. I hope you understand that, Deputy. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Hope, but there's been a development. Not now, Cosette. I'm in the middle of something. But, sir, we have new information. I've just received a report that the stolen ship was seen landing at Neon just after the theft. A breakthrough at last. Well, Deputy, it sounds like you'll be heading to Neon, which means I can get back to work. Remember what we discussed. My people are depending on you. Hey, can I get a word? That wasn't as helpful as it could have been. Still, at least you know where to pick up the trail. Let's hope. So, guess you're headed for Neon. There's a ranger station there. Name's Jalen Price. He's a little different than the rest of us. But a Neon's a different kind of place. Well, we could talk for an hour about that. The short version would be that crime, law, and justice don't exactly mean the same things there. The badge doesn't carry the same weight on Neon, so you might have to get creative. He's what I'd call a pragmatist. He sees things for what they are. He's also well-connected, which means a lot on Neon. You should listen to what he tells you. It'll keep you out of trouble. He should be able to help you out. Well, we've both got work to do. It was good to meet you, Deputy. Thanks again for helping me out up there. I'll be taking it easy for a couple of days. Need time to heal up. Then, I need to get back up there and keep an eye out for more pirates. I'm hoping to track one of their ships so I can find their hideout. Guess we could both use a little luck, huh? No problem. Good luck on Neon, Deputy. Stick to the main plaza, unless you like getting soaked by the rain. Hey, I don't care who you work for, you can't just... Oh, you're the rookie, aren't you? Not exactly. But I get a lot of unwanted visitors. Kinda comes with the territory here. The one and only. Well, the Marshal's message said you were following a lead about a stolen ship. Truth is, a lot of stolen goods flow through here. But this city is real good at keeping its secrets. Even from us. Yeah, about that. This isn't Aquila City. The badge doesn't carry the same weight here. The people who run this place aren't overly concerned about the law. Our job is to keep the peace, make sure the violence doesn't get out of hand. A 
last thing anyone around here wants is some hotshot deputy looking in every dark corner. Law enforcement isn't exactly welcome in Neon, but that shouldn't deter you from your duty. Ah, rookies. I'm proud of you. Without duty and honor, you'd have nothing left. Your stolen ship would have had to land at the spaceport. If it was right off the factory floor, it would have stood out. There's a guy I know, Billy Clayton, does maintenance work around the city and keeps an eye on ship traffic for me. I'll introduce you, but don't expect a favor. Even if it doesn't cause credits, nothing in Neon is free. Stay out of people's business until you can. not Be willing to let the small stuff slide. Don't break up a fight unless it's getting out of hand. Most of all, don't assume that badge will protect you. Nah, I've got friends in high places, so to speak. I'm the son of a Ryujin Industries executive. Maybe you've heard of her? Name's Alexis Price. There's a sort of fragile piece here in Neon. It's better for everyone if the syndicates and the corporations coexist with minimum friction. Believe it or not, yeah, it was. My mother's an executive with Ryujin, so I grew up here. I volunteered for this post as much to keep the other rangers out of trouble as any other reason. If some hotshot rookie took this job and started flashing the badge everywhere, it wouldn't end well. Come on. Pretty impressive how you volunteered to help out with the bank heist in Aquila City. Yeah, I read all the reports. I learned quickly that a neon staying informed and staying alive are closely linked. What stood out to me was that you didn't lose a single hostage. No wonder the marshal tried to recruit you right away. If he hadn't, it would have made him look like a fool having some random stranger step in and do the job he could. Now, if someone tried to hold up a bank here. I need to impress that upon you. Because the fact that you think justice is absolute concerns me, Deputy. It's never that simple. Justice can mean different things to different people, and laws can be interpreted and debated. A ranger relies on judgment and intuition to do what's best for the people. Deputy here is working a case, and I thought you might be able to help. Take it away, rookie. What do you need? Right out of the factory? <laughs> Damn, that's pretty impressive. Well, here's the thing. Neon's got no end of shipjackers. I see them come and go every day. It's tough for a guy to remember one from the other. You know what I mean? I suppose we shouldn't be surprised that he's asking for something in return. Yeah, well, I'm one of them. I can help you. But right now my life is in danger and I haven't even done anything wrong. Freestar Rangers are supposed to protect the innocent, right? Then you need to hear this. 
It's about my brother. He died while still in debt to a syndicate loan shark by the name of Emmett Goodman. Now, Goodman's coming after me to collect. He says if I don't pay up, I'm a dead man. That's terrible. You shouldn't be responsible for your brother's debts. Yeah? Well, tell that to Goodman, because he doesn't seem to care. He just wants his money. From where I'm standing, it seems like our problems are intertwined like a couple of fuel lines in a thruster assembly. There's no need for that. I don't care how badly you need it. I'm not telling you. You know what? You might be... Wait. No. What am I saying? I'm sorry, but this is my life we're talking about. If you were in my position, I'm sure you'd feel the same. I swear it on my best set of wrenches. Goodman's holed up in one of the warehouses on Ebside. Place is locked up tight, but there's a guard who watches the door, and he's got the key. I'll stay with Billy in case Goodman's men come to collect. They're not stupid enough to tangle with me. I just think I need to go all in. private property. You'd better keep walking. This is private property. Do you now? Well, that's... Uh, thank you. I think you may be right. You go in, talk to the man, and then you come right back out. Try anything stupid, and it's your funeral. Here, this will get you in. A new customer, perhaps? Well, now. Always happy to have a visitor. Tell me, what brings you by, friend? Little light on credits, are ya? Ah, oh, it's awful kind of you to intervene on my behalf. But I think I have the matter well in hand. Thank you all the same for your concern. What an absolute imbecile. He's clearly mocking us. Well, that's where you're wrong. Cal agreed to my terms, including collection from family on the event of his passing. It ain't my fault he dragged Billy into it. But make no mistake, that's exactly what he did. What's your stake in this anyway? But you're making it my business. I have a legal right to collect what's owed to me. No law is being broken here. Then offer me something I want, and I'll consider it. Let's just calm down now. Huh. That makes a lot of sense now that I think about it. Well, I suppose I could make an exception. It's just this once, you understand. It just promise me you'll keep my compassionate nature a secret. Folks might try to take advantage.
That side's a bad place for tourists these days. Don't make it up. Did you talk to Goodman? Yeah. I figured he wouldn't want to make an enemy of the Freestar Rangers. Glad the badge still means something around here. Hmm. The Syndicate doesn't worry all that much about the Rangers. I think our new deputy here is just a real smooth talker. Okay. Time for me to keep my end of the bargain. The woman you're looking for is named Grace Early. Stealing ships is her line of work. She usually comes here to sell the goods. Rumor has it she just finished a job for some mercenary outfit. And she's been throwing money around, so you must have paid well. I know her. When she isn't out on a job, she's a regular at Madame Sauvage's. That's on the upper platform. I'll back you up. something I need to discuss with you. <clears throat> a Freestar Ranger and his... What are you? A sidekick or something? Now that's what I call real conviction. So how come I'm talking to the sidekick instead of the Ranger? Uh, this is the deputy's case. Is that so? And you had to bring backup just for little old me? <laughs> I'm flattered. Anyway, this ain't my first interrogation, so let's just get on with it. Aw, ain't you polite. I'm guessing this is the part where you tell me that you've got questions and that you expect me to answer them. That sound about right? Fine, yes. I jacked the ship. But look, I was just a contractor. I didn't even keep the ship. I gave it to some men. It was just a quick, clean job. I made sure nobody got hurt. Look, they didn't tell me what they were going to do. How was I supposed to know they were going to go after some farmer? You should have asked when you took the contract. If that woman had been killed, you'd be an accessory to murder. Did you think about that? I... No, I, I guess I didn't. It's not that simple. Huh. That makes a lot of sense. Now that I think about it. This isn't getting us anywhere. Maybe. Need to think about it. I guess if I can't trust a free star ranger, then I can't trust anyone, right? I was approached by a woman named Maya Cruz. Said she was a senior member of the first and that she had a job for me. She was working with someone inside Hope Tech and pitched me on the idea of jacking a ship right out of the factory. We were deep into planning the job when she had some kind of medical emergency. She said she needed surgery and would be in recovery for a long time. That was a few weeks ago. Haven't heard from her since. No, but it sounded serious. She was upset. Seemed kind of shaken, you know? Didn't seem right I should pry, so I didn't. Only some kind of offhanded comment about their client wanting to expand the operation ahead of schedule. In my line of work, you learn not to ask a lot of questions. It tends to make people uncomfortable. Not long after that, I got a message from a guy named Marco. He said he was the money man for the first, and he offered half up front. Never met him directly, though. It was always through intermediaries and using encrypted slates. Got the feeling he was paranoid as hell. Do you have one of those encrypted slates on you right now? Yeah. Here. Take it. I'm done with all this. Anything else you want to know? Yeah. 
Sure. Next time you're at the Rock, you should give that encrypted slate to Ranger Alex Shadid. He's got a gift for cryptography. If anyone could crack that slate, it'll be him. I'm gonna head back. Good luck, Deputy. Then I'm free to go. Suits me. I'm getting too old for this line of work. Besides, I'm going out on a high note. Ain't many can say they grabbed a ship right out of Hope Deck. Should make a good story for the kids one day. I'm not when you have a few moments. There's something I'd like to discuss. Ever since we talked about the Battle of Cassiopeia, I can't get what happened out of my mind. Was it that obvious? Oh, I thought I could handle these memories, but until I return to Cassiopeia, I'll never be able to put this to rest. I would like that. Actually, I need that. One problem, though. Pinpointing the crew's shuttle wreckage is going to be like trying to find a grain of salt in a sandbox. I think we need to start by locating my old campsite on Cassiopeia 1. What's there to tell? I survived. My crew didn't. Still, oh, I'll never forget my finger hovering over that launch button. Would I launch safely or explode into a fireball? It turned out that my shuttle had just enough power to allow an emergency landing on the planet's surface. I'd be lying if I told you I'd carefully weighed all my options. Truth is, I was on autopilot, acting purely on instinct. That's what I was hoping. But I don't know the exact location of my survival campsite. For that, we are going to have to head to Mast and see if we can get the information from my old friend, Admiral Logan. Your instincts are right on target. Logan and I butted heads more than once during my time with the Navigator Corps. We've never seen eye to eye. Look. I hope this isn't asking too much. Last thing I want to do is drag you into some kind of personal crusade. That's why I need you by my side. Truth is, I'm scared. When I set foot on Cassiopeia, I don't know if I'll be able to handle what I find. If I begin to fall apart, I need someone I can trust to keep me in check. I know you will. You've always been there when I've needed your help. Why you continue to support me, I'll never understand. I... I don't know what to say. Ah, oh, I've been so busy searching the stars for answers. I've overlooked what's been in front of me all this time. True love. Something I've seriously considered sharing with you for a long time. Just... not ready. Not yet. You're right. I have. Hey, um, anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. I know you have a lot to do. I really appreciate your offer to visit Cassiopeia. Hopefully, it'll bring me the closure that I've needed for far too long.
better this than being some dumb stranger. Hey, I wondered when you might come by. I'm Alex. Nia's report said you were heading for Neon? I've always wanted to go there. What did you think? Yeah, I bet. It just sounds so exciting and so stimulating. Probably makes Aquila City look like the more boring backwater town in the settled systems by comparison. Alas, I'll have to experience it vicariously through you and the other rangers. So how'd it go? Turn up anything useful? Did he now? Well, in that case, challenge accepted. It's only a matter of time before I know every dirty little secret stored in this thing. Now, if you get any more of these, bring them to me. It helps if I can compare different instances of the encryption they're using. Just look for me up here. I have no life, so I'm not usually hard to find. Oh, I will. I guarantee it. Welcome back. Any luck finding out who stole that ship from Hope Tech? Grace Early? Yeah, I've heard the name once or twice. Sounds like you're making real progress. That ain't for you to decide. I want you focused on the job at hand, not on a promotion. I don't know why you said that. I'm certain the powers that be will make that decision when they're ready. What did you learn from the starship thief? Now we're getting somewhere. Sounds like you've got a couple of new leads to follow up on. I have a guess who Marco might be. I served with Maya Cruz. She's a technical genius and an expert hacker. I can give you some background if you want it, or we can go straight to planning your next move. They said she was a child prodigy, which probably explains her arrogance. Even so, she was fiercely loyal to Major Hull. I don't think she'd ever give him up. If you find her, don't expect her to cooperate. All right, how can I help? Most likely place would be the clinic. It's in Freestar Collective Space and provides the best medical services credits can buy. They also guarantee privacy. So it's an ideal place for someone trying to keep a low profile. Ranger Ben Armistead has posted there. I'll send him an update on the situation. Around the time he got out of jail, we started hearing Marco's name in circulation. Word is, he's heading up a smuggling racket. Based on what you've learned, I'd presume he's funneling his ill-gotten gains to the first. Ranger Autumn McMillan is out at Red Mile right now, looking into the smuggling operation. I suggest you pool your resources. Uh, just remember, that's outside Freestar Collective Space, so we've got no jurisdiction there. Your priority is to gather more intel about the first. What are they planning? Who are they working for? Where are they headquartered? Just remember that your targets were locked up because they were loyal to their unit. They think the Freestar Collective betrayed them. In other words, you ain't gonna get a warm welcome, so be careful. Good hunting, Deputy.
Yeah? Got some trouble? Oh, now hold on a minute. You're the new deputy, ain't you? Yeah, the marshal's been sending out reports, keeping us all in the loop in your investigation. And having some success, by the sound of it. Ben Armistead, pleased to meet you. Well, I guess that's the long and short of it. You're the newest member of the Rangers, and I'm the oldest. So, is one of them first mercenaries here at the clinic? Well, every ranger knows it's important to trust your instincts. No better place in the settled systems to get medical treatment. <laughs> you can bet it beats anything them UC piglets got. Ironic, given they're the ones who built it. I know just the man who can help you. Right this way, deputy. Just between you and me, I ain't entirely sure why someone felt the need to station a ranger out here. I'm not much more than a glorified bodyguard for Dr. Darvish. She's the one in charge around here. And she's also on the Council of Governors. Most of the staff don't seem fond of the idea of me being here. Bunch of stuffy eggheads, if you ask me. Except Ari, that is. He's about the only one I can have a conversation with. Now, hey there, Ari. Working hard or hardly working? <laughs> hey, Chief. A little more the former than the latter. What brings you by? Well, the deputy here could use some help. Came looking for someone who might be a patient. I'll see what I can do. Well, I'll leave you in Mr. Miller's capable hands. You need anything else, I'll be in my office. I'll try to help you, but our computer systems have been having some issues. Huh. Well, we don't give the patients free access to our computer systems, so I doubt that's related. And still, it's worth keeping in mind. So who's the suspect you're after? Hmm. The name's not ringing any bells, but maybe we can approach this another way. Do you know what was wrong with her? That should be more than enough. I can access the patient records from my terminal, assuming the database cooperates. Come on. You need anything. Just say the word. One of the docs will get you right as rain in no time. Okay, give me just a minute here. Maya Cruz. Maya Cruz. Come on, Maya. I need you to be in here. Okay, finally. Here we go. Oh. No matches found for Amaya Cruz. If Maya's here, then she's got to be using an alias. Which actually makes a lot of sense if she's a wanted woman. Yeah. Let me think for a second. All right, hang on. I know that we do have a few female patients staying with us. There's Candace... What's her last name? Doolin. Candace Doolin. And then there's the Nakamori woman. I think her name's Jane. I don't recall offhand what they're here for, but it's a start. You're welcome to use the Ranger Station Terminal. I'll enable admin access for you. Keep your nose clean. Last thing I want is to charge you for a DP and AMP.
Yes. What do you want? Even if that were true, which I doubt, access to that area is strictly limited. Who exactly are you? You could be Solomon Coe himself and my answer would be the same. No. The rules are the rules. No exceptions. Oh my goodness. Are we really going to let this bureaucrat block our progress? Oh. I wasn't aware. I suppose if I can't trust a colleague, then I can't trust anyone. This will get you in. Conduct your investigation quickly and without disruption. I do hope you won't make me regret this. for a nap before we leave. Hmm? Doc, if you are who I think you are, then you're here to bring me in. I have to warn you, 
I've had more than enough time to prepare for this. So either you leave now, or I'll be burying what's left of you. like an enormous geode. Crystalline formations like this are incredibly rare. Why if this place was abandoned? I'll never understand.
might as well take what we can. You might not think so now, but it's likely to end up that way. How about I make this real simple for us both? I've got maybe a few weeks to live and I ain't spending them behind bars. You want to put an end to me here and now? Then fine, get it over with. Life's kicked me around enough as it is. But if you want to let me die on my own terms, then leave me in peace. Well, how about a test? Rangers are known to be handy with a gun. <laughs> but here's a problem you'll have to solve with your brain instead. I've encrypted this slate. If you can crack it, you'll learn something useful. Now get out of here and leave me in peace. The jackpot. I heard that the walls of Aquila City were built to prevent nocturnal predators from overrunning the place.
proud to be helping the Three Star Rangers. Hey there, Deputy. The way I hear it, you've been keeping busy jumping from one side of the Free Star Collective to the other. How do you like the job so far? That's good to hear. So, what brings you by? Well, well, what do we have here? Well, this is new. Hmm. Very interesting indeed. I'll see what I can do. If you can get me another one of these, it'll give me more context for the encryption and should speed things up. In the meantime, you be careful out there, Deputy. From what I've heard, these mercs mean business. run the red man. Please return to your table. It's bad practice to leave our establishment without paying your bill first. If you Hey, back off. Wait a minute. Judging by the wide-eyed and clueless look on your face, I'm guessing you're the new deputy. We'll find out, won't we? Well, your timing couldn't be worse. I've spent weeks trying to crack this smuggling ring, and I'm about to take a very important meeting. I hope so. I don't have time to catch you up, so you're gonna have to follow my lead. I'm about to meet with a contact who might be able to give me vital information about the smuggling ring. If you play your cards right and don't do anything stupid, she might be able to help you find Marco. If you're ready, my contact is here and waiting. Follow me. Pardon. Here to bask in my glory, I... Thinking of running? Oh. I can't believe people who participate in blood sports can possibly be considered celebrities or heroes. Oh, in my mind, they're worse than criminals. So you're working with Autumn, huh? Who are you? Wait, Autumn has friends? Like hell. The deputy here is interested in meeting Marco to talk about that mercenary company he's been funding. Since part of that money is coming from his smuggling operation, we're working together. So you're investigating the first? Why? Mm, seems like a strange thing for a mercenary company to be doing. I guess an introduction is in order. 
Like Marco, Jade here is the head of a small smuggling cartel. Difference is her crew stays out of Freestar Collective space, while Marco's group operates exclusively within it. Except now he's looking to expand his operation. And he started moving in on my territory. That's exactly what this meeting is about. Look, the bad news is, Marco's incredibly paranoid. He never stays in one place for long. The good news is, I know how to find him. But you're not gonna tell us yet, because you want something. I want the same thing you do. I want Marco out of the picture. But like I said, getting a meeting with him can be damn near impossible. One of the few people who can arrange such a meeting is right here at Red Mile. May Divine. We've suspected for some time that Red Mile was a meeting place for smugglers. If she's in business with Marco, she won't give him up easily. Yeah, well, so can she. I can tell you right now what she's gonna want, because it's the same thing she always wants. She wants runners. It's how she makes most of her money. Of course, people that hard-blooded aren't easy to find. Yeah, well, I'm not going out on the mile. That's a death sentence. There has to be another way. You've been a ranger long enough that too many people know your face and your name. Runners attract a lot of attention. If someone recognizes you and tips off May, this whole thing is shot. You, on the other hand, are just a deputy. It's pretty unlikely that a lot of people know you. You don't have to do this. We'll find another way to get to Marco. I hope that's not false bravado, deputy, because this is life and death we're talking about. If it's really as simple as asking May Divine for a meeting with Marco, then I guess that's all you need to do. We'll wait here for you. Try not to die, will you? You're really going to take on the mile, huh? If you don't mind, I'd like to speak to Admiral Logan sooner rather than later. Please be careful. It's not every day you meet someone known for your Ah, a new face. I wonder, is this the face of a brave runner here to challenge the Red Mile? Or simply one seeking a respite from the burdens of life? My name is May, and I'm the proprietor of this establishment, home of the famous Red Mile. I assume you're familiar. Never heard of it. Never heard of it? I won't even ask how that's possible. <laughs> You're in for a treat, then. The Red Mile is the settled system's most exciting sporting event. Brave contestants from all corners of the galaxy come here to try their luck in a deadly race to the finish. Those that survive are celebrated as champions. Those that don't are quickly forgotten. <clears throat> I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have. In the meantime, please enjoy our world's famous hospitality. Well, it's quite simple, really. Once you register with me, we'll have a little pomp and circumstance before sending you on your way out the big red door. Then it's a race to the buzzer at the other end of the course. You'll deal with obstacles and deadly creatures alike, while people up here place bets on how far you'll get. Make it back alive, and you'll stand to win riches and the admiration of your fans. I'm sure you can figure out what happens if you fail. <laughs> You're too precious! Yes. Of course they bet on our runners' lives. We're outside of the colonies and free stars for a reason. Betting is a huge part of the Red Mile's appeal. How better to make the most exciting sport in the universe more exciting? Repeat runners draw bigger bets. You should ask Donovan how much bets on him were worth before he was forced to retire. Of course. And if you're thinking of running, just let me know. I'll be glad to sign you up. That is true. But Mr. Graziani values his privacy. What is your business with him, exactly? 
It's no small favor that you're asking. But yes, I can arrange such a meeting. It's been too long since we've had proper entertainment. If you're willing to provide it, I'll give you Marco. Are you prepared to run the Red Mile? Oh, I'm afraid this is the only thing that I want from you. At least for now. I give you my word, which is something I never do lightly. Once you've begun, I'll collect bets from my patrons who will place wagers on your survival. That's entertainment! It's also business. It takes a lot of credits to keep the lights on and my guards pay. Frankly, I find the whole concept disgusting. Like my partner said, that's nonsense. For the Red Mile to even exist in this day and age is just utterly preposterous. Now that we're clear on what's expected of you, are you ready to begin? Good. Come with me and I'll introduce you. Yes, what?
why I adore traveling together. You take me to the loveliest places. Exactly a pot of gold, but this will do. Now all you need to do is return alive. Unfortunately, the beacon tends to attract unwanted attention. Good luck.
Congratulations, runner. You have succeeded where most have failed. In fact, you seem none the worse for wear. I'm not easily impressed. But you've managed to surprise me. As promised, I'll set up your meeting with Marco. I'll dispatch a courier to let him know you're coming. Please take a moment to relax and enjoy our hospitality. I'll return shortly. Enjoys the adoration of the masses. You're back. Are you okay? Well, I'm afraid. Really? Either the Red Mile's reputation is exaggerated, or you're just that good. Anyway, I'm relieved you made it through okay. Why? Afraid you'd lose all that work you put into your smuggling investigation? I wouldn't expect you to understand. All you see in people is what you can get from them. I'm glad, because that was an incredibly brave thing you did. And we need rangers with that kind of courage. Also, I... I owe you an apology. I was pretty awful to you at first. I'm sorry about that. No, it's not bad. I had a... a bad experience with another deputy that I was training. I'll tell you all about it after this is over. Okay? So, you need to stay alive or you'll never hear the story. You're right. Let's focus on the job. Once you're on your way, I'll return to the rock and let the marshal know what's going on. Come home safe, deputy. That's an order. You always were the soft one, little sister. Oh, go to hell. Or at least make yourself useful and get us some drinks. Babe. Feeling about you. Hmm. <clears throat> Time for me to keep my promise, Runner? You can find Marco on Kodos aboard his ship. I'd advise you not to keep him waiting. He is not exactly patient. Only that someone wanted a meeting. Don't expect to catch him unprepared. He keeps a sizable force of mercenaries aboard his ship as bodyguards. He's intelligent, well-connected, and utterly ruthless. He's also a man of taste who appreciates the finer things. You'll find out soon enough what I mean. Good. Travel safely, runner. Should you ever crave the challenge of the mile again, it will be here, waiting for you. Certain, Graziani certainly isn't afraid to flaunt his wealth. Beat the Red Mile, huh? Nice. Welcome. May's message didn't exactly make it clear why you 
wanted to meet with me. If you're looking for work, my organization is always in need of pilots and security personnel willing to take risks. Ah, I see. You did well to find me. I'm not an easy man to locate. Though I suppose we haven't exactly been keeping a low profile lately. Given the nature of the contract, the degree of exposure was always a risk, but a calculated one. To be honest, I think the Major is all but spoiling for a confrontation with the Rangers. Still, I confess, I'm a little disappointed that the Marshal sent a deputy instead of a full-fledged Ranger. I'm willing to bet this deputy can handle whatever you intend to throw in our path. And who might you be? Sarah. Sarah Morgan. It's a pleasure to welcome you aboard, Sarah. It's clear you are a woman of refinement as well as beauty. How about we skip the compliments and move things along, shall we? Your deputy friend here could have a bright future, assuming we all keep our heads. That's right. Major Hall spent 20 years in lockup nursing a grudge against the Free Star Collective. We all did. A lot of good men and women died for nothing because of those cowards you work for. You've chosen your side, and I've chosen mine. To settle accounts, Major Hall served with distinction during the Colony War. But the leaders of the Free Star Collective, they turned on him. In his eyes, the Rangers are enforcers for a corrupt Council of Governors. That makes you his enemy. As for me, I didn't see any profit in nursing that grudge. I prefer to focus on the future. <laughs> I'm not sure you are grasping the situation here, Deputy. You are on my ship, outnumbered by my guards, who killed you without hesitation. I'm a businessman. If you expect me to cooperate, I'm going to want something in return. I won't tell you everything. I do still have some loyalty to my unit. However, I can point you in the right direction. In exchange, I want the Rangers to let me operate with a free hand. I have a better idea. Instead, I tell you something you don't want to know, but you should. The Council of Governors is a group of greedy and corrupt liars who are using you and the other Rangers to protect their own interests. Do you really think they give a damn about the people of the Free Star Collective? Whatever road brought you here, your journey ends today.
business quick. How about I just show you? Deputy, how goes the hunt for the first? Good, good. If you ask me, I don't think they stand a chance. You're like an Ashta creeping silently through the high grass, waiting for your chance to pounce, and then boom! Down they'll go. So, did you get any more of those encrypted slates? Because, let me tell you, I am so close. Who, me? Without you? Not a chance, deputy. I knew you were a natural the moment I laid eyes on you. Come in, deputy. Take a seat. Grab a chair. While you've been in the field, we've had more reports about farmers being threatened and attacked. Unfortunately, some didn't survive. Not really, no. We can't be everywhere at once. Right now, our best hope to stop them is you. Set those thoughts aside. Right now, I need you to focus. How's your investigation proceeding? That's assuming he finds something useful. Otherwise, you'll be no better off than when you started. It must be very easy for you to sit back and criticize when we've been doing all of the field work. I've done my part. Besides, this is ranger business, so why don't you keep your mouth shut? Let's move on. I asked the other rangers to share their opinions of you, and there are some things I want to go over. We'll start with Ranger Callow in Hopetown. She was grateful for your timely arrival, and impressed you had the guts to take on those pirates. Nia says you came on pretty strong with Ron Hope. Tried to lay down the law with him. Guess I didn't get the point across when I said go easy. If it's any consolation, I feel the same. Excuse me. Let's continue. We've got a detailed report from Ranger Price about your recent visit to Neon. He said you took on a syndicate loan shark to help an informant. And you were right to do so. Helping people is our most important duty, even when you're conducting an investigation. You got results, and that's what matters most. Price was impressed by that. Said you really took the initiative. Ranger McMillan praised what she called your uncommon bravery and dedication. She said you took on the Red Mile so you could get a meeting with Marco Graziani. Sounds like you're starting to understand what it means to be a Free Star Ranger. So what happened with Marco? I doubt he gave you that slate out of the kindness of his heart. Uh, 
I suppose underestimating you was his last mistake. Damn. I thought if anyone could see reason, it'd be Marco. What about Maya Cruz? Her loyalty to Hull and the 1st Cavalry was stronger than most. I guess I'd want the same thing if I were in her place. Excuse me, Marshal? Not now, Alex. We're in a meeting here. I know, but this is important. I've done it. I've cracked the encryption on the slates. Now, I don't know exactly where the first are headquartered, but there are references to a place called the Factory. The Factory? That was our nickname for the main facility where the mechs were manufactured. Under the terms of the peace treaty, they shut all the mech factories down right after the war. But they didn't destroy them. At least not all of them. The facility was on Arcturus too. It could be a dead end, but if it's not, then you'd better be ready for a fight. Plenty here. It's a relief that they've been outlawed by the Armistice. It's clear that there were people here at one time. they went is anyone's guess. Justice. It's waiting for you inside. 
sein. I'm a man of action. I've got no use for lies. So when I tell you that you're being manipulated, you know I'm telling the truth. You think the Council of Governors really cares about anything but themselves? They're greedy and corrupt. You're a tool in the hands of the unworthy, just like I once was. I was loyal. I followed orders, and I led good men and women to their deaths. I'll carry the stain of that dishonor to my grave.
is the greatest fighting force the Freestar Collective has ever seen. At the Battle of Mira, the first cavalry was destroyed. Why? Because the generals got scared and asked for a truce. I've got no sympathy for cowards.
much for my soldiers. Minutes away, minutes from winning the battle and the war when the ceasefire order came down. Now there's a debt of honor, and the people who betrayed us, the people of the Free Star Collective, are going to pay. believe the scope of the operation the FC was running here. It's a miracle that the fighting ended at all. Don't leave any of that behind.
sentries in the Free Star Collective and cut right through them. <clears throat> if we'd have had more like you in the war, we could have planted our flag in New Atlantis. You fought because you had to, and you fought well. Don't apologize for that. More importantly, you survived. Most soldiers don't. I know, because I'm the one who led them to their death. You don't know what it's like to look around and see the faces of warriors who trusted you to lead them as they die screaming. I watch brave men and women torn limb from limb by monsters. I saw mech pilots cooked alive in their cockpits as their machines burned. <clears throat> Those deaths didn't have to be meaningless, but spineless leaders gave up on us even when victory was within our grasp. We've both seen our share of hell. It's whether or not we allow those awful memories to consume our souls that defines who we are. You have no right to judge me! <sighs> innocent? <clears throat> Nobody is innocent while they allow corrupt leaders to take control. The Free Star Collective has lost its way. The dream that we fought for died a long time ago. <laughs> you really want to know? Because you might not like the answer. Last chance, deputy. You can walk away right now and remain blissfully ignorant, thinking you fight for a noble cause. But if you still want the truth, <laughs> I'll shatter that illusion for you. Right now. Because I can prove it, you'll see. <laughs> we'll see about that. Not long after I started the first, I was contacted by a man who said he represented someone wealthy and influential. <laughs> I refused to work for a shadow client, so he agreed to set up a meeting. Imagine my surprise when Ron Hope showed up. He offered me a lucrative contract to take possession of certain farms throughout Free Star Space. That's quite an accusation. <clears throat> All I know is that after we cleared the place out, Hope was sending in some kind of machinery. Our job was to make sure nobody saw the operation. The credits were good, but yeah, getting some payback was the real reward. You think I've lost? Is that it? I haven't lost. <laughs> you go find Ron Hope and tell him what I've told you. Then you can deal out whatever justice you see fit. You do your job, and I get one last piece of vengeance against the Council. If what he says is true, then there's no question Ron Hope has to answer for what he's done. Don't bother. We're trying to take you in quietly. Violence is not the answer, Major. I'm gonna make this easy for you. Deputy, I'm gonna die the way I lived. Weapon in hand, no compromise, no fear. But first, here, take this. Use it to cut out the weakness rotting at the heart of the Free Star Collective. When the next war comes, <laughs> and it will come, the Collective needs to be strong. Now my unit's waiting for me. And I'm gonna report for duty one last time. Goodbye, Deputy. I'm sure they had something we can use.
I don't want to hear any complaints. One hopes the best thing Local security handles most problems here. Bye. And it was easy, but everyone pulled together and we got it done. I'll let you share the good news, whenever and however you like. Thanks. I appreciate that. We be dust, except for the factory. Something more you need, Deputy? Good to see you again. Received a report from the marshal about your progress. He said you had a promising lead on the mercenaries who stole my ship. I trust you're here with good news. And what's that supposed to mean exactly? Well, that's one hell of an accusation, Deputy. Seems I put my trust in the wrong man. I suppose that changes things. <laughs> I'm impressed, Deputy. It's clear you have a bright future. What's going on? What is this about, Mr. Hope? Nothing that concerns you, Birgit. In fact, why don't you make yourself scarce? I think I'd like to hear what the deputy has to say. Well, I can see you're upset. Allow me to explain. And you'll see that there were very good reasons for what I had to do. The truth is, we've been falling behind the competition. <laughs> Significantly so. We needed solutions. A few years ago, I began to diversify. We started to research chemicals, fuel, those sort of things. We developed an experimental fertilizer. <laughs> and it failed utterly. It wiped out entire crops. I was prepared to write the whole thing off. When we made a discovery that changed everything, turns out our fertilizer was transforming the soil, bolstering its mineral content tenfold. Mining is expensive, and so is the cost of raw materials. My fertilizer solve several problems at once. The farmers provide free manual labor, and once the land is ready, we move in to extract and process the soil. So those farmers poisoned themselves, and you ended up reaping profits. How can you even live with yourself? It's nothing personal. It's just good business. I don't 
expect you to understand. Look. I'll level with you. We're falling behind the competition. The hardworking people of this town depend on me for their livelihoods, and I won't let them down. Cutting my costs means saving their jobs. I can't believe what I'm hearing. How could you do something so, so awful to innocent people, to families? Not another word out of you, Birgit. I can take your job. And more. We'll discuss this later. In any case, I suppose the gig is up. I give you my word that I'll call off the operation and return the land to its rightful owner. You're right, of course. Something must be done. I'll set up a fund to handle funeral expenses and take care of any surviving family members. We'll do this the right way. I give you my word. You're right. Yeah. Those families deserve to be compensated for the... Uh, Inconvenience? Hmm, well, uh, perhaps a discount on their next purchase from Hope Tech. You're seriously turning an apology into a business pitch? That's disgusting. With that resolved, let's talk about you. As a member of the Council of Governors, I'm authorized to award you a substantial bonus. And of course, we'll both agree to forget about my little cost-cutting endeavor. Well, let's not be too hasty, Deputy. There's something else you need to consider. I'll do what's necessary to protect my company and my employees. If you tell anyone about this, you're risking their livelihoods. Do you really want to put all these people out of work and make their families suffer? Well, I'm afraid there's no avoiding it. The past can't be changed. But the future is very much in your hands, Deputy. You put me away, and this company will fall apart. You have destroyed far more lives than I did. I'll make myself very plain. I won't let you jeopardize my reputation, this company, or the people who work for me, if that means you suffer an unfortunate incident at the hands of my security personnel, so be it. I'm important. You're nothing. You're not actually threatening to attack a Freestar Ranger, are you? You're a despicable man, Hope. And I hope you get exactly what you deserve. You just threatened a member of the Council of Governors. On my authority, you're stripped of rank, declared an outlaw. Guards! Dispose of this criminal!
tried to have you killed. I don't understand. Mr. Hope always seemed like such a good person. But everything he said about the farmers and hiring those mercenaries? It was so awful. No, you're wrong. That's not all he was. He always looked out for us, for his employees. No, of course not. But there was more to him than that. He had a genuinely good side, a caring side. And now he's... You. You killed him. Nobody should ever want that. Especially when it means killing someone who meant so much to so many people. <sighs> what happens to us now? That's... That would be... Elana. Elana Nwankwo. She seems pretty capable. Maybe... Maybe we'll be okay after all. I guess we'll have to figure things out. Find a path forward. There might be some difficult days ahead, but I wish you good luck. Just so you know, keep What? Good to see you back safe, deputy. What's the word on the mech factory? Were the mercenaries hiding out there? Well, don't get too used to killing. For a ranger, that's always a last resort. Did you find out why the first was taking over farms? Wait, you're saying it was Ron Hope who hired the first. Are you really that surprised? Hope's always had a reputation as a man who'd do anything to succeed. He's on the damn council, Emma. So he can make laws favorable to his business interests. Sure, he's known to look after his people, but do you really think he gives a damn about some farmers on Montara Luna? Did Hope explain his motives at all? That has a familiar ring to it. I recall hearing about some Hope Tech initiative to help farmers. At the time, I just figured it was a PR stunt. Seems a little more sinister now. Please, tell me you've got some evidence to back up these extraordinary claims. All right, let's see what you've got. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, this is pretty damning. Especially this last bit about destroying the slate. And you confronted Hope about this? You almost sound pleased with yourself. Well, you shouldn't be. This is going to send shockwaves throughout the Free Star Collective. If the people can't trust their leaders, anarchy could follow. 
Have a little faith, Daniel. We're not the United Colonies. One bad apple won't spoil the whole damn barrel. Easy for you to say. You ain't the marshal. Not yet, but you ain't gonna live forever, old man. While we've got you here, there's one last piece of business to take care of. Emma, would you please? With pleasure, Marshal. When you first joined us, I told you that you'd undergo an evaluation process. There's one thing left to do. A simple question. Do you feel ready to wear the badge of a full-fledged Free Star Ranger? In that case, I won't hold you back any longer. Marshal, I approve the deputy for advancement to the rank of Ranger. Thank you, Ranger Wilcox. In your time serving as a deputy, you've shown exceptional courage, fearless tenacity, and a high regard for the safety of our citizens. By the authority granted to me by the Council of Governors, I hereby promote you to the rank of Ranger. Here's your badge. Wear it with pride. But don't forget the solemn responsibility it represents. You've shown that faith was well placed. Let's hear it for our new ranger. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations, the promotion's well earned. Well, hey there. If you don't mind, let's see what you've got. Admiral Logan's office shouldn't be terribly far. Let's go. You ask me? Trap? You see him all right. Did you know I used to have an office near the top of Mast? Hmm. How far the mighty have fallen, eh? By the way, Sergeant Yoon is looking at Okay, hello. Yes, what? Sarah Morgan. It's been what, almost 10 years? Admiral, it's uh, good to see you again, sir. You're not required to address me as sir. That protocol ended the moment you dropped your clusters on my desk, remember? Look, Admiral, I'm not here to open old wounds. Old wounds is an interesting turn of phrase, given our past. Listen to me, Commander. I'm not sure why you're here, but whatever it is, why don't you just get to it? I'm here because I need your help, Admiral. You need my help. That's interesting. The last time we spoke, you made it quite clear that you were turning your back on the Navy. That was a decade ago. 
Things change. People change. Admiral, please. I didn't come here to argue. I'm here to come to terms with my past. Your past is sitting in a closed file in the archives. That's where you left it when you walked out on the United Colonies. And what about you? Just who in the blazes are you anyway? Ex-military, eh? Okay, soldier. Then give me one reason I shouldn't have both of you brought up on charges for insubordination. With all due respect, Admiral, this is ridiculous. If you have a problem with me, then there's no need to berate my colleague. I don't have a problem with you, Commander. I'm simply trying to determine why you deserve the Navy's help. That's quite a noble gesture. Is this true, Commander? It's about Cassiopeia, Admiral. I'm heading back there to find out what happened to the crew of the Dauntless, and hopefully, to bring their legacy home. That sounds like a dangerous operation. Are you certain it's worth the risk? I... I don't know. I understand. Mental scars left by war rarely heal quickly, if ever at all. I sympathize with your struggle, Commander. I want to put an end to the sleepless nights. The nightmares waking up in cold sweat. It's been difficult, Admiral. I understand. And I believe I owe you an apology, Commander. Our last encounter has obviously distorted my impression of your character. What can I do to help? If you wouldn't mind allowing me to access the files regarding my rescue, I'd be most grateful, Admiral. That shouldn't be too difficult. I've sent all the relevant information to you, Slades. Was there anything else? No, Admiral. Thank you. You don't need to thank me, Commander. I just hope you find whatever it is you're looking for. We should make sure we're well supplied for the trip to Cassiopeia. Feels like walking into a dream. I'm okay. It's just so surreal. Phew. Okay, so let me get my bearings for a moment. Yes. Yes, this looks correct. Those rock formations nearby look familiar. My old campsite shouldn't be far. Knowing that is the only reason that I'm here. <sighs> Once we get to the campsite, we'll use that as a starting point to search for the crew's shuttle wreckage. <sighs> Let's go.
This is it. This is the spot where I spent close to a year waiting for rescue. Not exactly Paradiso, is it? It was difficult and painful, but it kept me alive. It was home. Look at this thing. It's been sitting here rusting. I think we need to grab an emergency power cell to get the ship's computer up and running. Sure, if we're lucky. When I was stranded, I set up a distress beacon powered by emergency power cells. The beacon was up there on the plateau. I guess it's time to start climbing.
We've located where the other shuttle went down. I can't believe our plan worked. And so modest, too. Hmm. The telemetry data puts the wreckage out of range to hike. We're going to have to head back to the ship and land on a different part of the planet. Let's get going. shuttle but it looks like parts were scavenged and dragged somewhere else could there have been survived we should have a talk when you have the time of course one hope was a real piece of work wasn't he despicable is too kind a word he held innocent people with little regard treating their lives like numbers on a balance sheet it's an absolute disgrace I'm relieved to hear you say that. Letting him off the hook would have been a terrible injustice. Had you taken the money, this would have been a very different conversation. I'm proud of you. It took a lot of integrity to say no to that offer. No, it certainly isn't, especially when it comes at the expense of human lives. Well, I think I've lectured you enough. Thanks for taking the time to listen to me. If I have to, just turn around and, and leave. I know how to use this thing, and I will. Oh my god. Who are you? I'm nobody. Just go away. I'm not going to let anyone take my stuff again. No way. Both of you, just go! 
Yeah, sure. Try and trick me. No, no way. I'm not getting fooled again. Forget it. Stop it right now. Put away that gun and talk to us. We want to know what happened here. See? You're not nice at all. I knew it. You're a liar. That's all grown-ups do is lie. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> I was wrong to get so angry. We are here to help you. And we promise to tell the truth. I don't know. You're kind of scaring me. Why should I listen to you? The crew? No one's been looking for that crew since before I was born. So tell me another lie. Go ahead. You were born here? Hold on. Oh my god. Your parents? Your mom and your dad? What were their names? Jenna and Elias. Why? Jenna and Elias. Private Jenna Marsh and Corporal Elias Oberst. You're their... daughter. Listen to me. I knew your parents. They worked with me on the Dauntless. I'm Commander Sarah Morgan. You're Sarah Morgan? Mom and Dad's captain? My parents used to talk about you all the time. It's like a dream to finally meet you. Yeah? Well, I wish you wouldn't have taken so long. My parents are dead. My father died a long time ago. And my mother, she was killed by those, those monsters at the graveyard. It's just me here now. All by myself. Let me ask you a question. Actually, I don't even know your name. Oh, yeah. My name's Sona. Sona? <laughs> what a lovely name. Sona, you mentioned a graveyard. Is that where the crew is, um, you know? Buried? Yeah. It's a bunch of stones with those necklaces, like the ones my mom and dad had, hanging on them. Thank you, Sona. I'm going to talk to my friend here a minute, okay? Okay, Sarah. Phew. I don't even know where to begin. That's probably good advice. Oh, there's so much to process. But I don't have time to deal with it right now. If you want to help, then find that graveyard and bring me those necklaces Sona mentioned. I'm hoping they're my crew's gene tags. Good. Just be careful. Sona's monsters are undoubtedly hostile life forms that have claimed the graveyard as their territory.
No! No, 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 no! How many times do I have to say it? I said I don't want to go! Leave me alone! So now, calm down and listen to me. It's much too dangerous to stay here all by yourself, darling. I don't care. This is my home. You can't make me leave. We can't leave her here. It's not safe. She has to come back with us to Jemison. Oh, I don't know what to do. Can you talk to her? I knew I could depend on you. Now all we have to do is convince this poor girl that she's better off leaving the planet with us. I just... I don't know if I have it in me to say the right things. I can hear you talking about me. And I don't care what either of you say. I'm not going anywhere. Look, I'm clearly out of my element here and not in the right state of mind. Could you just talk to her, please? Why won't Sarah listen to me? Doesn't make a lot of sense. She's only known about me for a little while. That still doesn't mean I should leave the only home I ever had, does it? Well, I've always dreamed of finding a place that's safe from the monsters. But uh, leaving mom and dad behind. It's really hard. Even though they're dead, I don't want to abandon them. Yeah, you're right. I never thought of it that way. I'm sorry I yelled at everybody. I know you and Sarah are just trying to help. I'm going to go get my stuff and then I'll board your ship. Don't worry, I'll stay out of the way until we get, well, wherever we're going. That poor girl. I hope we've made the right decision. I realize that, but there's still cause for concern. We're ripping Sonia from the only home she's ever known and casting her back into society. It's going to be difficult for her to adjust to the changes. Wherever she ends up, just promise me we'll check on her from time to time, please. Thank you. Look, um, before we leave Cassiopeia behind, I wanted to say one more thing to you. Perhaps at the Overlook we passed on the way here? I promise it won't take long. Let's go. Before we head back to the ship, I wanted to tell you how much of an amazing gift this has been. You had to push me to come out here, and if I hadn't have listened to you, the universe would probably have never known about that little girl. It's been a long journey, and I'm glad it's over. You know, this is the second time I've been on this world. And until this very moment, I never stopped to reflect at just how magnificent it was. Oh, look at this place. This is the reason I'm out here, exploring the stars. Worlds upon worlds just waiting to have their beauty discovered. Shedding this burden of my past has finally allowed me to open my eyes 
wider than they've ever been opened before. And it's all because of you. Perhaps. I suppose we'll both have to think about that for a while now, won't we? <sighs> well, I suppose it's time to bid goodbye to Cassiopeia once again. This time, under much happier circumstances. Now, let's head back to Jemison. I want to give those gene tags you gathered to Admiral Logan and figure out what we're going to do with Sona. Hey, let me know if we're going to head into the well so I can watch your back. Military's lucky to have you. Welcome back. Did you find your answers? And it's my duty to report that we found someone there alive. A child born from two of the crew that survived the crash. After her parents died, that poor girl spent years surviving on that hostile world, alone. We abandoned her, Admiral. We let her down. I'm sorry. I had no idea. How could we have possibly known? Yes, of course. I think we can all agree that this was another unfortunate circumstance of the Colony War. What you'd call an unfortunate circumstance, I call a tragedy. You're absolutely right, Sarah. It is a tragedy. One thing that I can assure you is that the names of these men and women will never be forgotten. I'll see to it personally. Thank you, Admiral. Good luck to both of you. It's been an honor. Once we're done here, we should have a little talk with Sona. Poor thing's waiting for us at the lodge. Daddy? Perhaps we should check in with Matteo or Noel. We should probably talk. There you are. I was wondering when he'd come and say hi to me. 
Hello, Sona. I see you found your way to the lodge without any trouble. Yeah, it was kind of hard, though. All these people around. Never seen so many people in my entire life. I think I like it. I don't know yet, but it's all really new to me. You'll fit in just fine. You're one of the smartest people I've ever met. So, what do you think? Do you like it here, Sona? At the lodge? Yeah, this place is huge. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. You must be like a bazillionaire, Sarah. <laughs> oh, don't I wish. This place isn't mine alone. It belongs to everyone who's a part of Constellation. And I think it should belong to you too, Sona. I want you to stay here and make this your home. Whoa. Does that mean I get to go exploring with both of you? Or wait, do I get my own ship? <laughs> well, uh, Auntie Sarah can't exactly afford that right now, but she can provide you with the best exploration training in the galaxy. I understand. Oh, and don't worry, I learn real fast, so you better get ready to have another member of Constellation signing on for missions. I can't wait. Well, anyway, thanks for letting me stay here. I promise I won't let either of you down. I'm sure that you won't. Well, I think we should let Sona get settled. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to visit the Colony War Memorial now. I want to, uh, to pay my final respects. I hope you are satisfied with the orders available. Look at this. All these people, their entire lives distilled down to names on a memorial. I wonder how close I came to being reduced to just a name. I am proud. <laughs> I was simply too foolish to realize it until you changed my perspective. And I care about you, too. There's obviously some kind of a connection between us that I think we need to discuss. Just let me have another moment here, and then we can head over to the waterfall, so we can talk in private. I'm ready. Let's go.
When things at the lodge are too much, I love coming to this spot to just sort of, I don't know, melt away for a while. It's lovely here, isn't it? <laughs> I've been from one end of the settled systems to the other, but this place... This exact spot. There's nowhere else like it in the galaxy. I hadn't thought of it that way. But you're absolutely right. I usually come up here to mull over some of the heated debates we have at Constellation. You'd be surprised how many decisions I've made on this very spot. That's actually why I asked you to meet me up here. <clears throat> I was hoping we could talk about something very important. No, not at all. Just let me get all of this out. I have a lot to say. It's about my return to Cassiopeia. What we learned about Sona has been constantly replaying in my mind. Oh, maybe it sounds crazy, but that young girl's isolation feels like a reflection of my own life. Maybe. But for how long? I've spent my life surrounded by all sorts of people. Constellation, the Navigator Corps, <laughs> hell, even the UC military. Despite that, no matter how hard I've tried to make them a part of my life, they tend to drift away and disappear. I suppose. Well, if that's true, this challenge is wearing me down. Right now? Are you talking about Constellation? Or what exactly are you saying? Ha! Huh. <sighs> Sorry, I am... Um, I just need a moment to gather my thoughts. I know you want to have a serious relationship. You want to become close. So, if you're willing to take that leap of faith with someone like me, then I'm ready to do the same. I can't imagine being in love with anyone else. So, if you're willing to make the leap, I'm ready to do the same. You're something truly special. You know that? You've helped me conquer my self-doubt, my confidence, hell, everything. For the first time in my life, I feel... complete. <laughs> and with you by my side, I'm convinced that feeling will last forever. You're the best thing that's happened to me in my life. I love you. Always. Funny when you have a few moments, there's something I'd like to discuss. It appears things have gone downhill since the last time you were here. Argos has clearly washed its hands of this operation. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. We never discussed this, did we? The thing is, my mother and I don't talk very much. We're not estranged or anything of the sort. We're just far apart. Sure, when you're younger, 
But as soon as you get older and they begin controlling your life, that's when you need to strike out on your own. Oh, I'm certain they felt they were doing the right thing. You see, both of my parents were diplomats working under the flag of the UC Administrative Division. After I completed my basic education, they signed me up for a one-year apprenticeship in their department, without bothering to ask. Look, I was 18 years old, fresh out of school, and I idolized my parents. I trusted them. I'm certain they felt they were doing what was best for their daughter. Who was I to argue? Hmm. Wanted isn't the right word. Demanded would be more appropriate. For my apprenticeship, I was sent to Sidonia. My job consisted of drafting political policies and arbitrating trade disputes. The silver lining of the job was that it allowed me to spend time exploring every square inch of Mars. I was swallowed by it. Months before the apprenticeship ended, I dumped my diplomatic certification and joined the UC Navy. Of course, my parents didn't approve. We had a huge argument that resulted in all ties being severed between us. Well, that wasn't the worst of it. You see, my father was killed during the opening shots of the Colony War. I returned to Jemison for the funeral and reunited with my mother. After that, we vowed to stay in touch. Oh, aren't you sweet? Always concerned with how I'm feeling. That's why I fell in love with you. Your smile, your caring. <laughs> it brightens even my darkest days. Listen, I'm going to be completely upfront with you. All this talk of family, it makes me wonder where our own relationship stands. <laughs> you mean that? You do that? For me? I've been dreaming about this moment and still... I don't know what to say. Then you know my answer is yes. A thousand times repeated, yes. Ah. <sighs> I just need a little time to think about the ceremony. I have some thoughts about how we should move forward. You know, I used to dream about finding the love of my life. And here you are. All I ever needed was you right here beside me. <laughs> <laughs>